Hi guys, I want to invite you to join the Patreon where you will get some benefits as well as audiobooks that will not be uploaded on YouTube. Chapter 101 The first thing I thought was, wow, I've eaten tuna before, but this is the first time I was eaten by one. Wait, now isn't the time to be making stupid jokes. It was slimy, claustrophobic, and irritating. The pressure of the tuna's insides was no joke. What was this? Were my clothes melting? Acid. God. The melting tuna seemed to have dived back under the water after swallowing me, as water began to flow around me. Although things were chaotic, I first grabbed the top and bottom of the slimy walls. However, because it was so slippery, I failed to hold on. As if to quickly send me to its stomach, the surrounding walls wriggled and convulsed around me. Ruyue. Got it. My elementals loved me so much that they came out the moment I called their names. I was thankful, but it was slightly overwhelming. Ruyue was especially so. Surround me with an ice wall. Make it especially hard. Okay. The moment Ruyue started using ice wall, I activated my bracelet and equipped my armor. After wearing the armor, I realized I was almost out of mana. As I struggled to keep my balance, I took out a mana potion from my inventory and drank it. This place sucked. In any case, I now had some breathing room. Although Ryu's ice wall began to melt the moment it was created, the space around me was getting bigger. However, the melting tuna's body suddenly twitched violently. It was to be expected. If someone tried to open up its throat, it was bound to be irritated. A flood of water suddenly swept over from one side. It seemed the melting tuna had opened its mouth and was letting water pour inside. It thought I was stuck in its throat, so it was trying to flush me down with water. It was pretty smart, though I might drown because of it. I considered using return and going back to Korea, but I decided to endure. There was a reason I couldn't give up here. Ruyue, you can block it, right? It's hard. Shin, I don't have much mana. Damn, even though I drank the most expensive mana potion, I was still running low. In that case, I'd have to ask Pika, huh? Pika, Pika. Master, are you okay? Pika's outside. It's just the two of us in here. Oh. Right, I deactivated Spirit Aura. The melting tuna had swallowed me, almost as if it knew. I quickly unsummoned Pika and resummoned her. Watching the vast amount of water pouring in with despair, I took out the Crimson Gluttony Spear. Ruya's ice wall was making cracking noises and starting to crumble. Please hold out a little longer. Pika, come inside my spear. Okay, master. The spear that originally carried fire energy began to flicker with lightning as well. Although I wanted to continue watching the mystical and fascinating sight, I didn't have the time. The water was flowing in. Hugh Hap. Cool. I strongly pierced the floor with my spear. Ignoring the melting tuna's painful cry, I dug the spear in deeper. Then, with one hand, I pushed the ceiling up, and with the other hand, I made the spear stand vertically. Letting go of the hand holding the ceiling up, I let the ceiling crush down on the top of the spear. Kayak. The melting tuna let out another blood-curdling scream as its blood splashed on my armor. Although the heat from my armor evaporated the blood almost instantly, the problem was that the melting tuna's movements had become more violent. Almost as if it was salsa dancing in the water, the ceiling flipped a few times and trembled. I held on to the spear I had wedged in its throat and hung on desperately. Shin, I can't hold on anymore. It's fine, Ryue. You can go back now, they'll call you back later. You have to love me lots later. Yeah. During the daytime, I'd only been calling Pika, so it seemed Ryue was feeling left out. Seeing the usually obedient Ryue speak out before she left, I couldn't help but smile. No, now was not the time for that. Hue Dark Thunder Explosion Although it was a very filial skill that had saved me on multiple occasions, I cringed and flushed from embarrassment whenever I used it. Regardless, the violent shaking stopped from Dark Thunder Explosion's initial paralysis shock. When the following black lightning attack started, 
I closed my eyes and focused on holding onto my spear tightly. I knew its body would jolt violently. Qua! It let out a horrifying scream, almost like a human's, as it shook in a frenzy. The ceiling flipped again and again. The water finally swept over me, but I closed my mouth and held on. Shin, Shin! Are you alive? Are you okay? Oh, please! Sorry, I'm underwater, so I can't reply. However, Waya seemed to have misunderstood my silence as she raised her voice. Shin! Please, Shin! You said you had a way to survive any situation. I won't forgive you if you die like this. Dark thunder explosion ended. Although I wished it would have killed the melting tuna, it seemed a boss wasn't so easily killed. Its insides were burnt black, but it was still moving. Hugh, how uselessly tough. If it was just one month ago, I would have had no choice but to use deific manifestation to let Puryuta save me with what little mana I had left, or use return to go back to Korea. However, right now, I still had another skill I could use. In fact, Dark Thunder Explosion had only been to see if this skill would be effective. It was the skill that came with my beloved armor, Crimson Roar. Although it would be annoying to roar underwater, now wasn't the time to be complaining. You whack. You used Crimson Roar. Everything blazes as flames. Roaring while swallowing a mouthful of water, I suddenly thought, what was the description of Crimson Roar again? Didn't it turn all air that my voice could reach into flames? Since I'm underwater, isn't there little to no air? Did I have to use return and go back after all? Although I was worrying greatly. Qua. My worry was soon proven to be unfounded. Everything within the reach of my voice, including water, turned into scarlet flames and blazed. There was one problem. Because the air I needed to breathe also turned into flames, I could not breathe. Even so, the flames blazed imposingly and with grandeur as if to burn away the entire lake. Cool. An earth-shaking scream struck my ear. I instinctively knew that it was the melting tuna's death throes. Its shaking was getting less violent, and the pressure from its flesh was decreasing as well. I took my spear out. Scratching the burning walls, I walked forward. Suddenly, I felt as if my body was rising. No, it was the melting tuna's body that was rising to the surface. It had finally died. You swept the field dungeon, graveyard over the lake. You defeated over 80% of its monsters, two of the field dungeon bosses, and forced one field dungeon boss to retreat. The reward will be distributed. Waya Eleni Mastafordnim's contribution is the highest. You successfully swept Graveyard over the lake. For the next six months, a new boss monster will not appear on Graveyard over the lake. The reproduction rate of normal monsters will decrease significantly during this period. TSK as I thought, I wasn't able to overtake Waya in contribution just by killing this guy. After all, she had been hunting monsters here for weeks longer than I had. Even so, I had killed this tuna by myself and I had even chased away that singing woman. Perhaps Melting Tuna was a weaker boss than the Tooth Saw. That had to be it. Shin, Shin. You're not dead. Of course, not. Did you ever see a chef getting eaten by his ingredients? Thank God, Shin. You don't know how scared I was thinking you were dead. Because of it, I realized that more than I thought before, I, ah. Uh, hmm. Hugh nothing, forget it. I got too excited from the sudden change in the situation. Alright, well, they'll be out in a moment so hurry up and choose your reward. I want to pick mine too. Heh, yeah. This much doesn't even count as danger to you, right? Of course not. If I died like this, my father would start another season of thrashing phase. I answered Wyatt casually, unequipping my armor and putting my spear back into my inventory. While I was crawling out of its throat, the reward window popped up in front of me. Since Waya and I were the only dungeon explorers here, I was the only one left to choose a reward after Waya chose hers. 2. Great Tooth Sword. Wow this looks completely useless. I chose the reward with a frown and checked the item description. It was a sword breaker with a spiky saw-like blade, just like the Tooth Saw's saw blade snout. 
It was even larger than most large swords, and had a strong vibration functionality in its options. If the vibration could be controlled, it could be a powerful weapon. It would have been nice if I was a sword-wielding warrior, but yep, it seemed I would have to feed it to my gluttony spear. Although I was looking forward to how much the gluttony spear would grow, I also knew it probably wouldn't grow by much. For now, I put the great tooth sword in my inventory. Then, the smell of fresh air tickled my nose. The outside was right in front of my nose. I pushed the melting tuna's huge mouth open and peeked my head out. Waya and everyone else had driven the ship towards the tuna when it had floated up to the surface. The first person I looked for was none other than Brightman. From the look on his face, he seemed surprised that I was still alive. I simply looked at him and smiled. As he didn't expect me to smile, that shameless Brightman frowned like he couldn't believe it. Then, he smirked. I wondered what his smirk meant. Was he looking down on me? I could feel how nonchalant he was, as if to say that I could not stand up to him in any way. Whether that was true or not, it didn't matter. What mattered was how I now understood him. Although it was a bit embarrassing to say it myself, I had a tendency to be soft toward people I considered my allies. My family was obviously included, and I also cared deeply for those I considered my friends. I couldn't come to dislike those that considered me their friend. Paludia was like that. Even though our first meeting on the fifth floor couldn't have been worse, while I was still grinding on the fifth floor, she had contacted me to cheer me up, changing the impression I had of her from strange girl to friend. Yiyun was also like that. Even though she was a nuisance when I first met her, she continually showed her interest towards me and repeatedly wanted to become friends with me. Perhaps for the same reason, those that I considered to be my enemies took on my full hostility. Walker was the biggest example, as he sneaked into Waya's lodging and was almost beaten to death by me. Although Walker was now on my side, it seemed there was a new enemy to replace him. Brightman. He had to be laughing right now. Why did he hit me? Did Pika's lightning wake him up? Was he surprised because he saw me the moment he opened his eyes? Did he not like that Waya was so close to me? Was he awake the whole time? but pretended to be unconscious just to put me into danger. Was it revenge for losing his subordinate? I didn't care. I wouldn't listen to his excuses later anyways. There was one thing I was sure of. It was that Brightman's punch was extremely painful, and that I had almost become a fish food because of him. That was enough. You are my enemy. It'll make you bitterly regret this moment one day. Look forward to it. It won't take long. In the heights I wish to achieve, you are only a stone in the path. I took my eyes off of Brightman and took my body out entirely. Then, I jumped on the melting tuna's head with a thud. Everyone seemed to have gotten back their sense of reality from the sound. Mike shouted. My God, T. You were alive. Hugh Mike, there's no way I would die without eating this melting tuna. You really love melting tunas. Of course. From now on, in honor of me killing this giant melting tuna, you can call me Tuna King. But really, if you actually call me that, it'll hate you. Author's Note Just like that, the Tuna King was born. Just kidding. Chapter, 102 The hunt was over. At least for the next six months, this field dungeon would no longer be dangerous. Although it was only temporary, Windermere had regained its peace. From what I heard, the tourism would reopen as well. As a rank or higher awakened had to continue observing the lake, the tourists would go along with them. However, in a situation of life and death, the tourists' lives wouldn't be guaranteed. With such danger, I doubted whether any tourists would come. However, the moment people found out that the field dungeon had been cleared, tourists flocked to the area. Amazing, Windermere. In a way, it made sense. Supposedly, running into a monster once a dungeon was cleared was the same chance as being hit by lightning while walking in the rain. Waya, what are you doing? On the night we cleared the dungeon, I visited Waya as usual to teach her how to control mana, and saw Waya packing her belongings into boxes. Isn't it obvious? Since we cleared the dungeon, there's no reason for me to stay here. Oh, right. 
Did you get the permission? Of course. I ended the negotiation with the government myself. Thanks, Shin. You're the reason I could regain my freedom. Freedom, you say it's thanks to me? I asked with a grin. Yep. We could clear the field dungeon thanks to you, and you even found Brightman's wrongdoing. I can return to Korea because of it. The info on Brightman was especially useful in the negotiation. It seemed she complained and revealed everything about Brightman's misconduct. Brightman had punched a famous ranker though it's embarrassing, that was me that Waya invited for aid, and put him in a life-threatening situation. Waya was incredibly angry at the time. It was the same for her party's S rankers, although the other country's S rankers only turned a blind eye as Brightman had likely paid them off. Brightman himself had made a ridiculous excuse, that he thought he was being attacked and acted in self-defense. Waya's anger had reached its limit at that point, but I calmed her down. Nothing good would come out from Britain's strongest rankers fighting. More importantly, I couldn't let her take my revenge away. Brightman smiled, and so did I. In any case, with this incident, Wyatt could easily detach herself from Brightman and the British government protecting him. Although the incident had not become public because of the British government's desperate beseechment, but with my approval, Wyatt used the incident to put heavy pressure on the British government. She said that a friend she specially requested to help had suffered a humiliation from Brightman that couldn't be washed away, and that she had no plans to step a foot in Britain unless it was a national crisis. In other words, just as Waya had warned them before, Britain had lost Waya in exchange for Brightman. No matter how I thought about it, Brightman's actions were incredibly foolish. I wondered how an idiot who was blinded by his desire for a woman could rise to such a position. Are you coming to Korea? Yep. I was planning on going to Korea anyways when I was done. Mom said she'd rather die than come to Britain. I think she wants me to come live with her in Korea. I was originally going to try convincing her again, but with what happened this time, I really didn't want to stay in the same country as Brightman. If it's him, he would come visit me no matter where I was in Britain. Do you not want me to go to Korea? Waya complained, then asked after a bit of hesitation. Her cheeks had turned red just like her hair. Not at all. We can meet more often too. I'm glad. Right. We could. Koham. Waya looked away and let out a dry cough. Did she breathe the wrong way? I got up with a grin. You must be busy with all the packing, so I'll go back for today. Ah, don't forget to give me the melting tuna later. You'll save some for me, right? Of course. You can eat to your heart's content. Grilled, sashimi, stewed, steamed, it'll give you the full course. Good, excellent. We made an expression of camaraderie and gave each other a thumbs up. The melting tuna I was talking about was none other than the giant melting tuna I killed. Waya put it in her inventory, using the ridiculous extra-dimensional storage magic excuse, and said that she'd give it to me later. In exchange for her performance in front of the others, I promised her an unlimited refill on melting tuna dishes. In truth, I didn't know how long it would take me to finish such a giant melting tuna, so I was glad Waya was there to help. Ah, uh, by the way, Waya. Yeah. Where can I get a good apple pie around here? Apple pie. Although Waya tilted her head, she still gave me an answer. I thanked her and left her lodging. I then went to the place Waya told me about to buy an apple pie. Because of the enticing smell, I ended up buying two apple pies, one of them for the obvious reason and the other to share with Yua when I got back home. Then, I summoned my elementals and circulated per Yuta circuit, waiting for dawn. Once the night had passed, I could enter the dungeon again. There were things to take care of, a person to find and questions to ask. I also had to stick my spear in the damned reaper's face as a reunion gift. Then, a little before dawn, when no one was around, I went on the lake using Ryu's power. Just by freezing the area of the water I was stepping on, I felt a strange sense of omnipotence. Lady of the Lake had finally blessed me. I brought the apple pie. After walking deep into the lake, I shouted in a rather loud voice. Although I felt like I was being stupid, but I couldn't help it. I said I brought apple pie. Show me. Yua. 
a girl's face suddenly appeared above the surface. I almost fell underwater from being startled, but Ryue saved me by instantly freezing the water around me. I thanked Ryue, and since I was lying on the ice anyways, I observed the girl's face. Simply put, she had an unrealistic appearance. Her sky blue hair, half submerged underwater, was shining as if the entire thing was an LED light, and it was the same for her blue eyes staring at me. She looked like a beautiful woman in other areas, but I was surprised by how mature her face looked. I had expected her to be a young girl. Hurry up, show me. Ah, uh, here. I took out the apple pie from my inventory. The woman then made happy exclamations and crawled up onto the ice. Although I thought she wasn't wearing anything, she actually had a translucent light blue dress, which stuck to her body tightly. Although her slender, yet bountiful, figure was in full view, because I had seen Waya's voluptuous figure for about a week, I could act aloof. Apple pie. It's really apple pie. Yeah, it is. Can I eat it? Can I eat it? You don't have to ask twice. There's only one for you anyways. Yay. Her long, slender fingers reached forward and took the apple pie whole. Feeling the coldness of her skin for an instant, I was reminded once again that she wasn't human. It was then that she took out a slice of apple pie and handed it to me. She blinked her eyes, glimmering with shining particles of light, looking unrealistically cute. Here. Thanks. Thanks for the meal. When I accepted the slice she offered, she took the rest of the apple pie and took a bite. Then, the light in her eyes gathered and made a clear star shape. I was truly surprised. She was showing her non-human side too much. So she could control those shining particles. Delicious. So delicious. Delicious, delicious. Why yeah, eat lots. Yeah. She munched on the pie, making me wonder just where it was going in her slender body. The pie was gone in the blink of an eye, and she stared at the apple pie in my hand with longing eyes. The particles of light in her eyes were repeatedly scattering and regathering. Do you want it? Woo! As if she was waiting for me to say it, she snatched the slice of apple pie and ate it. After that, she made a satisfied expression and lay down on the ice. Thanks. I'll forgive you for hurting me. Yeah, thanks. I like you now. Yiyun, be happy. There's someone similar to you here. But I got her heart with just a single apple pie. The difficulty was lower than even Yiyun. I thought about all the fries I had to feed Yiyun before she said she liked me. Ah, not that I was doing it so I could hear that. Really? Why yeah? If if you don't bother other people anymore, they'll like you too. Although I couldn't be completely sure, she seemed different than the other bosses who showed clear hostility towards humans. She really just wanted to let them listen to her singing. Not knowing the danger of her own actions was foolish and it was annoying that she chose to appear during the boss fight, but since she hadn't killed anyone yet, it wasn't too late. She could still be redeemed. Her following words served as proof. But I never bullied anyone. Besides telling me to kill you, everyone said I could just sing like I wanted. I don't bully anyone that doesn't bully me first. Right, right, but who's the one that told you to kill me? I don't know, I can't remember. I forgot when I came here. Do you know why you were told to kill me? Because you're a hero. That's all I know. But I won't kill you. I won't bully other people either. She was told to kill me because I was a hero. I suddenly felt chills, but nodded my head regardless. Then, I answered her question. But you see, people are bothered by your singing. Why? Is my singing that bad? The problem is that it's too good. It infatuates people because of it. Is that bad? If people become infatuated by your singing and lose their consciousness, they'll fall into the water. What would happen after that? Wouldn't they come play with me underwater? They'd die. They'd die. Yep. At my words, she became noticeably sad. The particles in her eyes also spiraled around in shock. I hate killing, but everyone else tries to kill people. I'm scared. 
He said I was special, but he didn't try to understand me. Special, huh since you hate killing people, you are indeed a special monster. But who is this person you're talking about? I don't know, I forgot. Hugh, there's really nothing I can find out I wanted to tell her how she almost killed people out of anger, but I held myself back. However, she seemed to be angry from what I just said. Also, I'm not something like a monster. Ah, uh, sorry. Then what should I call you? I'm me. You don't have a name. What's that? It's a mark that defines you. It's a way to separate you from everything else in this world. Something that can prove that you are you. Wow. Hugh, it really was like teaching a child. In truth, I hadn't planned on talking to her so leisurely although I didn't get the information I wanted, I couldn't chase her away, so I decided to stick with her for a while longer. Then you can give me a name. I can. Yeah. If it's you, it's okay. For a moment, I hesitated. However, when I saw her innocent eyes, a word flashed across my mind. Since it wasn't a fitting name for a girl, I took off the front of it. Pleen. Wah, pretty. Is that my name? Yay. She seemed to like the name I gave her, as she raised her hands and jumped. At that moment, messages I never expected rang out. You made an achievement of taming the A-rank boss monster siren. You obtained one skill point. Current skill points, 16. You can obtain the subclass tamer. However, you must give up your current subclass skill collector to obtain a new subclass. If you give up the skill collector subclass, you will no longer be able to use the collector's pocket watch. Would you like to change your subclass? If you do not obtain the tamer subclass, you will not be able to use your tamed monster in event dungeons or the normal dungeon. However, you will not need to give up your tamed monster, and it can accompany you in field dungeons. Author's Note I'll say it now. Siren Pleen isn't a harem member. She's just a slightly important support character. I mean, ICDS isn't harem in the first place. P.S. Lady of the Lake Blessing, Fate Zero Animation's Saber Servant Reference Truly a short explanation. Chapter, 103 What's this? I had already heard about taming before. In games, it referred to domesticating hostile monsters with food or training them to become one's allies. However, I didn't think a tamer subclass would appear like this. Just by naming a monster, I could make it my ally. No, that probably wasn't it. I shook my head at the words asking if I wanted to change my subclass. The skill collector subclass was a huge part of my strength. No matter how strong Pleen was, she couldn't replace it. Not to mention, it seemed I could always change my decision. Though, I didn't think I would ever change to the tamer subclass. After looking through the messages, I looked at Pleen, who was rubbing her head against my shoulder with a smile. Thanks for the pretty name. You gave me an apple pie and a name. I like you. She was being completely submissive. I patted her head as a test, and she showed her happiness by making her eyes into star shapes. Easy, she was too easy. If a bad appa became your master, bad things would have happened. Pleen. Yeah. It looks like I became your master. What's a master? I like you. With that, she hugged me directly. Feeling the cold, soft, and squishy sensation the ice below me began to fissure with cracking noises, I sat blankly, then remembered I had things to do. In fact, there was something I had to ask Pleen. Pleen, you said you didn't want to kill humans, right? Yeah. I hate monsters more than humans. They only want to eat, and they even tried to eat me. But I also want to sing. Then do you want to come with me to find a way to do that? Okay. I like you, so I'll follow you. Why yeah? Damn I didn't think someone stronger than Ryue would appear. Plus, although Pleen had an unrealistic appearance, she still looked human. I couldn't help but react as a man. Snap out of it, Kong Shin. No matter how cute and pretty she is, she's a monster. Don't forget it. Crack. The ice split into two right down the middle of my stretched out legs. The ice then began to drift apart, splitting my legs along with it. 
Aruyue. Shinmini. Not now. It'll play with you as much as you want later. From then, it took a considerable time before I could make it to the dungeon's residential area. So you tamed a siren, Shinnim. This is the first time I've heard anyone taming a siren. Kook, as I thought, a man that I find charming will also be like that to other women. Loretta made a displeased expression as she stared at Pleen who stuck was to me like glue. If I thought more about why Loretta was feeling unhappy, I felt like I would be in serious trouble, so I quickly changed the subject. Pleen said she wants to sing without killing people. Is there a place like that in the dungeon's residential area? Of course. There's the recreational area. You should already have the qualification to enter it, Shin Nim. Ah, uh, yeah. I also got a lifetime free voucher for a place called Resting Place of Angels for the first achievement, a huck. The moment I brought up Resting Place of Angels, Loretta's eyes sparkled, pushing Pleen aside and grabbing my hands. After being thrown on the floor, Pleen blinked her large, clear eyes, unsure of what had just happened, then began to tear up. Shin Nim, go there with me. Now. Can you let go of me first, Loretta? I want to pick Pleen up before she cries. If you go there, you can probably find what this shallow and arrogant siren wants. I'm not shallow or arrogant. I don't even know what that means. From what I heard, Resting Place of Angels was a resort. The so-called recreational area was similar to the residential area's residences. Unlike the residences, however, it was a place purely for the purpose of recovering the fatigue built up from exploring the dungeon and letting dungeon explorers relax freely. It was truly like a resort in real life. Apparently, anyone from the guild of the resort's master could enter, and other than them, one person could enter as long as that person was accompanied by the master. Explorers could go there by making achievements or completing special quests. Like the mansions and the houses, the area they could go changed depending on the scope of the achievement and the difficulty of the quest. There was an even trickier condition. Only those that owned a residence, had a room in a tenement house, or were a member of a guild could go to the resorts. Furthermore, Resting Place of Angels was one of the few special resorts. Unlike the other resorts, which explorers had to share, it was bound to one specific explorer. If a guild master owned a special resort, the guild members could enter the special resort with the guild master's permission. Because it was called Lifetime Free Voucher, I thought it was for something like a water park, but it seemed it was even more generous. Then, can Loretta come with me? The person accompanying Shin Nim can even be an outsider. What about Pleen? I'm going, I'm going. That siren is Shin Nim's servant so of course she can go with you. Without having to visit Melodel, Loretta exchanged the resting place of Angel's voucher for a key. Thinking, so it's another key, I received it with a bitter smile. Then, just like how I opened the path to my mansion, I used the key with familiarity. When I used the resting place of Angel's key with Loretta and Pleen standing next to me, the surrounding scenery melted and a new scenery appeared. High, blue sky, warm sunlight, a sandy beach, crystal clear ocean, and fairly big birds flying above it. Behind me, I saw trees with all sorts of fruits hanging from them and a big seaside villa. This is an island, right? It's the picturesque uninhabited island. Yes, it's indeed an island. Uninhabited island. When Loretta spread her arms out and shouted excitedly, Pleen also imitated her and shouted. I doubt she knew what uninhabited island meant. I mean, just what was that sun? I knew the dungeon was full of mysterious things, but this was. To think I would come to the resting place of angels do you know why this place is called that? Tell me. Because people staying here can relax without a worry in the world, like angels. The ocean, the sandy beach, the fruit trees with all sorts of different fruits, and this villa. I can't help but think it has everything a resort should have. There's even an hot spring deeper into the island. That's not all. It even has dense forests, valleys, and springs. Hot spring. I want to go to the hot spring. I like hot springs. I didn't know how this island could have so many different areas, but I understood that this resting place of angels was an amazing place. I also didn't know how Pleen could like hot springs. So. 
why did I need to bring Pleen here? If it's here, there are no humans who would be affected by the siren singing. Shall have an audience as well. Audience? La la la. Pleen suddenly began to sing. Her voice was truly beautiful, and as I had tamed her, it didn't seem to have any effect on me. I glanced at Loretta. She had closed her eyes and was enjoying Pleen's voice. Soon, the audience Loretta talked about began to appear. Large birds from the sky, dolphins and fish from the ocean, and animals from the inner area of the island. They were gathering here slowly. No way. La 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 la. As Pleen sang, the animals approached slowly, responding to her singing with quiet cries. Their eyes were clear and their minds did not look like they were affected by Pleen's singing. Loretta opened her eyes, and seeing my surprised expression, smiled lightly. It's a good thing. No one has been here for a long time, so everyone has been lonely. Shin Nim luckily found a siren who is extremely good at singing. Her singing will be an excellent gift for them. Who's them? I felt a hint of sadness from Loretta's words and patted the small and cute wolf that walked up to me. Loretta then smiled sweetly and replied. Of course, they're the emergency food supply for when we're hungry. They all look delicious, right? I wanted her to let my dream stay a dream. How mean. Pleen really liked the resting place of angels and decided to stay here unless I needed her. Here, she would be able to play and sing to her heart's content. There were also no monsters which she hated. It was the ideal place she hoped for. However, there seemed to be one thing she didn't like. It was that I wouldn't be there. You have to come visit me often. Otherwise, they'll go find you. I'll visit often, so don't worry. Okay. I'll wait with the new friends I made. After promising Pleen multiple times, she nodded her head as if she finally believed me. She then walked up to me and kissed my cheek. I was startled, but I thought back to the kisses Yua gave me and tried to calm myself down. Of course, it wasn't so easy. Next to me, Loretta was shaking with her fists clenched. Obliterating third. Loretta. In any case, with that, I took care of the matter with Pleen. After saying my goodbye to her, Loretta and I returned to Fairy Garden. Opening the door to her log cabin, Loretta made an offer. Shin Nim, stay for a cup of tea. Sure. There's something I have to ask Loretta too. Hoo-hoo, come in. The tea Loretta brewed looked normal, but was incredibly tasty and fragrant. However, I couldn't be drunk on the taste of tea today. The reason I took care of Pleen's matter was for this moment. Today, I couldn't just enjoy my time with Loretta. I took a sip of tea, then slowly placed the teacup down and asked her. Loretta. Yes, Shin Nim. With a small sigh, I asked her straightforwardly. What is a hero? Loretta's smile became stiff. However, that only lasted for a moment, as she continued with a warm smile. Shin Nim already knows, right? There is only one such being in a world. They're amazing, and everyone respects them. I called her name with a low voice. She flinched then froze, but I continued without paying it any attention. When I met Pleen for the first time, she said she was ordered to kill the hero and my someone that must die. I it's the opposite. You're someone who isn't allowed to die. Never. Don't even say something so horrible. No. I if you die, I. Thanks for worrying about me, but that's not what I'm talking about. Am I someone that must die to the monsters that are invading Earth? A cold silence flowed, and Loretta dodged my glance with her mouth shut. Just that was enough of an answer for me. An empty laugh came out. What was this? I had to die because I was a hero. The monsters that appeared on Earth, or rather, its high-ranking monsters, were trying to kill me. I was their first priority. It was just that no one knew about it because it hadn't been long since monsters began to appear on Earth. If more time passed, monsters that actively sought me out might appear. But how had I acted until now, hearing that I was the hero? I became conceited, thinking everyone was just raising me up. Even while I told them not to call me a hero, I enjoyed it inwardly. I even named the skill I liked the most after it. 
Even while I looked down on the explorers who credited my strength to being a hero, I was relieved that I was one. I might have even thought I was glad to have been born as the hero. But what? Heroes are the first targets that monsters aim for. They had to kill me. There was no comedy like it. How much did the other explorers sneer seeing me? Praising me on the outside, while thinking how clueless I was. To calm down my beating heart, I began to circulate per Yuta circuit. Trying to stay calm, I asked Loretta again. Loretta, just what am I? What exactly is a hero? Loretta didn't say anything. Trying to stop myself from getting impatient, I asked again. Please, Loretta, I want to know. I should know. Or, do you also plan on leaving me to be clueless? You've shown me respect and did your best for me. I at least thought I had a special relationship with Loretta. Was I wrong? Did you just... Stop. She spoke with a trembling voice. She raised her teacup and gulped down the hot tea all at once. As she had moist eyes that seemed ready to burst into tears at any time, I was startled. Shin Nim, do you have to hear it now? Loretta? As you might already know, I don't really want to tell you right now. Once you hear the answer, you'll change without a doubt, and if you do, I will change as well. I don't like that. I want us to stay the way we are. For even a little while longer, I want to enjoy my carefree daily life with you. Am I being too greedy? Shin Nim, can you give me a little more time? You still have time to spare. The time hasn't come yet. So please, until then. Loretta. The words didn't come out. I felt like I had been punched in the most unexpected spot. Although my mouth was open, I couldn't say anything. Then, with a slightly cracking voice, I replied barely. Ill wait. So when the time comes, you have to tell me. Thank you, Shin Nim. Loretta wiped the tears around her eyes, and made a clumsy smile. I almost lost myself in her feminine and extremely beautiful appearance, but I held on, thinking about what she just said. Then like a fool, I asked. If I change Loretta will change too. Hoo-hoo, it's not like you don't understand, right? I, no, well, that's. I didn't think I would say something so stupid. Seeing me stutter without knowing what to say, Loretta made a small smile and said in a voice that just barely reached my ears. Coward. UK. I became silent, unable to make any excuses. I felt dizzy. As it seemed so absurd, I thought I was dreaming, but when I pinched my thigh in secret, the pain was vivid. No, she even found out I pinched myself. I wanted to die. I really wanted to die. Loretta again spoke in a whispering voice. It'll also give you time. Thanks. You have to give me a proper reply, okay? Of course, they'll only acknowledge one answer. With that, she once again smiled. Even while I was in a daze from her fragrance and beauty, her smile was ingrained in my head clearly. I had to accept it. To a certain extent, my heart was already stolen by her. The little bit of the secret of the hero has been revealed. Some people have already guessed, but not saying any more will be our promise. Also, the relationship between Loretta and Shin has taken a step forward. What will Shin do? Will he forget about Yiyun and choose Loretta? Not even the author me knows. Look forward to the future development. Chapter, 104 I decided to return to Korea once Waya had already left Windermere for Korea. Of course, it only took me an instant. I called Walker from the dungeon, grabbed him, and shouted return. That was it. H hm. What was that? What did you do? That's a secret of course. Just like that, I was home with Walker. Because I appeared in the living room with a foreigner, my family, who were gathered at the living room, suddenly froze. Appa. Hey, Appa's back. Yua quickly jumped into my embrace. I patted her and gave Walker the glance, you're going to be guarding her. I'm back. Yeah, you were on TV, so I thought you'd come back soon. Father pointed at the TV. On the screen was a platinum blonde, red-eyed man wearing a mask having an interview with the Windermere Lake as the background. 
They wanted me to do a quick interview as someone who had a major hand in clearing the field dungeon, but I didn't think the interview would even air in Korea. Appa looked really cool. Thanks, although it's not my real appearance. On TV, people were speculating from Thunder Knight's appearance that he was a mix between Western and Eastern. Seeing the newscaster clearly speaking about how I could even be Korean from my relationship with Waya, I felt slightly irritated. So who's that young man? Walker, this is my family. Introduce yourself, but keep it short. As Walker didn't know how to speak Korean, he introduced himself in English. However, as my family knew English to a certain extent like most Koreans, they didn't have too much trouble understanding him. In fact, since father had traveled often around the globe for training, he knew basic conversation level words in many languages. It's dangerous these days, so I hired him to be you as bodyguard. Ah, he won't be living with us or anything like that. There's no bodyguard for your mother. Mother doesn't go out that much. If you're in danger, you can always call father or me. Hugh, dear, look at our son ignoring his mother and only taking care of his sister. When you go out, you can just take me along. Anyways, bodyguard, ha how did Walker, who is a dungeon explorer, end up being a bodyguard? I winked at father and told him that I'd explain it later over private dungeon explorer message. Then, I patted Yua, who had calmed down a lot by now, two more times and separated myself from her. Then, I returned Ghostface back to Walker. Let's go Walker. We have to get you an identity and a place to live. It sure became easy. Just by being an awakened, countries will give you an identity. It's something unthinkable in the past. I still clearly remember people being deported as illegal aliens. It just goes to show you how dangerous the world is now. Having one more ability user to fight against monsters is more important than petty things like that. When I was about to leave the house, Yua stopped me. With a radiant smile, she offered a hand to Walker. To be honest, I don't think I need a bodyguard, but take good care of me. Im Kong Yua. H.M., right, Im Edward Walker. They shook hands lightly. After their short greeting, Walker and I left the house. Walker then equipped Ghostface, changing his appearance into a man I had not seen before. By the way, boss. Boss? Aren't you? We're equal in the contract, so just call me by my name. You clearly have a collar on my neck, but fine. Kong Shin. Yeah. Your sister is innocent and kind, unlike you whose insides are black and violent. Are you guys from different parents? If you fall for her, it'll kill you. His answer shocked me. Please, she's half my age it's not like I'm a pedophile. Half. How old are you? I'm 36 this year. How does he look so young? Brightman was 37, right? Right. That's why I've been his toy since he was young. Just thinking about it makes me mad. Brightman also only looked like he was in his late 20s, but you're even worse. I thought you were in early to mid-twenties for sure. Your stare is making me uncomfortable. Why aren't you married? Did Brightman not allow you to? I just didn't have the opportunity. Ah, uh, I see. You just didn't have the opportunity. That way of talking is extremely unpleasant. What? Why? You just didn't have the opportunity. Ku I want to kill you, but just thinking about it makes my head hurt. Walker half-assed the ability assessment and got AB rank. If he made good use of his equipment and stealth ability, I thought he could even be a rank. Of course, there was no reason for him to reveal his true ability in the assessment. After obtaining the ability user license, the rest went smoothly. For now, I got a hotel room for him to stay in and paid to rent a house near mine. In truth, I even thought about leaving the house and becoming independent. Since monsters would target me just because I was the hero, my family would be the first ones in danger, as they were close to me. However, I thought back to what Loretta said. That I should wait a little while longer. That I should maintain my daily life until the day comes. I knew what the daily life she was talking about meant. It wasn't just the peace Loretta and I could enjoy together, but also my life on earth. As such, it was fine for now. When the time came, she would tell me. 
I knew she was doing what was best for me. Of course I would have to answer her too. You you, it was a rather embarrassing, happy, and strange feeling. Now that I thought about it, there was the problem with Yiyun too. My head was twice as confused. Even while I was contemplating these things, I took care of Walker's hotel room and house rent. Walker suddenly asked. You must have a lot of money. I can exchange gold for it, so I have more than enough for something like this. Even though I'm on the 44th floor, I only get 100 gold for about every three monsters I kill. With that, I don't have much left over once I spend it on potions and buying and fixing equipment. At least, I don't have enough left over to spend it on something like this. Is it different for you? You're on the 44th floor and only 100 gold drops at a time. Ha, huh, so that's what the third dungeon is like. You really have talent for making people mad. You. Quiak. I enjoyed watching Walker get angry and suffer by himself. Just like that, Walker became my neighbor and Yua got herself a trustworthy bodyguard. Only after I took care of these things could I finally return to the dungeon. Though, the dungeon's one week period had only ended today. I thought about challenging the Grim Reaper by myself again, but remembered Lin's words from a long time ago about many explorers being stuck on the 40th floor. As such, I thought I should try partying with them. The party I entered with that in mind was someone who looked to be at least 50 years old. Explorers didn't age as quickly as ordinary people, so it was likely that he was even older. Hmm. I haven't seen you before. It's been a while since a new bee came to the 40th floor. After the party leader, other fairly old people greeted me. A few of them looked extremely worried. We're going to get wiped out quicker than usual. Shouldn't we kick him out? Don't say that. Newbies have to get experience too. Since we're going to fail anyways, let's at least give him some experience. We won't ever succeed anyways. Well just rot away here on the 40th floor. What was this helplessness? An overwhelming sense of defeat permeated the atmosphere. Even if we break through, there isn't much meaning to raising my level anyways. In that case, we might as well help the newbie out a bit. Cheer up everyone. The newbie's going to be dispirited if you keep it up. No, I want to punch your face out first I held myself back from saying many things, and gave a short introduction. Im Kong Shin, an explorer from Earth. Explorer from Earth? Kong Shin. Wait Kong Shin. A few of our comrades who were stuck on the 40th floor broke through recently after partying with an explorer from Earth called Kong Yanggong. I was there too. I died, but it seems they succeeded in the raid after that. That's not what's important. I heard recently in the residential area. Kong Shin is the crown prince from the rumors. Crown prince is on the 40th floor. Even they knew the name Crown Prince. With a bitter smile, I continued. I already broke through the 40th floor, so I can say this seriously. If you want to advance past this floor, just do your best to survive. I can't be responsible for your safety. Crown Prince. Understood. I also got it. I want to climb higher. I still have my world. Perhaps a miracle will also come to me. Although I left my world, I might be allowed to continue climbing. Spirit returned to a few members. Good, this was enough. If I could light their cooled passion even a little bit, that was enough. I raised my crimson gluttony spear into the air and shouted. The goal is for everyone to break through the 40th floor. Let's go. Ooh. However, the Reaper was the worst opponent to take on in groups. He mostly used huge area of effect attacks, and when he teleported behind a target he randomly chose, warriors received fatal injuries, and magicians and priests were killed in one hit. His blade waves, scythes being thrown out from his stomach, and black hands shooting out from the entire field were all fatal. It was hard to deal with just the reaper, but there were 500 apparitions to worry about. From the start, I told the party members to focus on killing the apparitions, but they still died one by one in the process. By the time all the apparitions were killed, only three other party members remained alive. Kook, today we lasted a long time. To think we'd actually kill all the apparitions. 
Watch out behind you. Die. The moment the three of them heard my shouting, they rolled on the ground. The reapers sighed the swung above their bodies. Immediately afterwards, I stopped the reapers' movements with Ryu's ability. Because of the reapers' magical defense, Ryu Ea could only hold him for an instant, but it was still enough time for me to approach and stab him. Eat this. Divine speed followed by white lightning consecutive strikes. From the consecutive spear attacks, a huge hole was pierced in the reaper's chest. He then escaped Ryu's shackles and summoned the black hands while he flew up. However, I already knew how to deal with the black hands. I infused Ryu e in my armor, and the black hands froze and shattered the moment they touched me. The others were huddled inside a holy barrier one of the surviving priests created. Confirming that they were safe, I shouted. Priest Nim, can you drop him from the sky? Oh Iloinu, bring down that evil being. Divine Hammer. Qua. You insignificant bugs are annoying me. I've been waiting for you. After dropping to the floor from the Divine Hammer, the Reaper disappeared and appeared behind my back. I instantly turned around and stabbed his head with my spear. The lightning spirit aura from Pika rose up and drew his scream. Although he summoned a black scythe and dropped it on my head, if I was dumb enough to be hit by something like that, I wouldn't even be alive at the moment. With my spear still in my hands, I used his body as a pivot and spun, dodging the scythe. I then shook the spear more violently and shouted. Thunder bomb. Critical hit. Even though my attack succeeded, I instantly backed off. A small scythe popped out of his body and flew through the air. His entire body was a weapon. I couldn't let my guard down for even a moment. I had to employ the hit and run method. Plus, even as I ran, I had to be careful as he had long ranged attacks. He was truly an irritating boss. He'll kill you, hero. You think so much like me. I want to kill you too. I gave the Reaper a cold smile and strengthened the grip on my spear. Then, without a shred of hesitation, I charged towards him. Like I did die a second time from that guy. Taste the wrath of the weak old grudge. You obtain 37,500 gold. Rewards will be distributed in order of contribution. Kong Shin Nim's contribution is the highest. Choose your reward. 1. Grim Reaper's Death Scythe. 2. Soul Strengthening Elixir. 3. Upper Mana Potion. 4. Reinforced Battle's Word. In the end, I managed to kill the Reaper without anyone else dying. However, the others were from different parties, and only looked at the Reaper with half-happy, half-baffled expressions. I didn't really care about what they were feeling, so I simply looked at the reward list. Good, it was here. I immediately chose the Soul Strengthening Elixir and swallowed it. You consumed the Soul Strengthening Elixir. Your refined soul becomes strengthened. Your magic and charm increase by one. A smile bloomed on my face. Good, I was getting stronger. I was advancing slowly, but surely. Being confident in my growth, I clenched my fists. I would continue hunting the reaper, grow stronger, advance onward in the dungeon, and continue growing stronger. I would raise my elementals, collect skills, and change my equipment if needed. Like that, I would become stronger. In order to not kneel in front of the despair these bastards always talked about. Chapter 105. I succeeded in evolving my crown prince title to the crown prince of 40F. The rumor that the crown prince had appeared on the 40th floor began to spread among other continents explorers, and my party instantly filled up whenever I created a party. As I hunted the reaper three times every day, I was allowing up to 27 explorers to advance to the 41st floor every day. Of course, this was only in the case that everyone did their jobs and managed to survive. In reality, the number of people that advanced was less than half of that number. From what I saw, there were about 1,500 people that were stuck on the 40th floor without being able to advance. In other words, after about a hundred days, most of the explorers would have advanced. However, after two weeks, my party stopped being filled up completely. They're content as it is. An old magician who left his party behind to join mine told me after the raid ended. 
they've stayed like this for dozens of years. Imagine if you were in their shoes and you were suddenly given the opportunity to grow. Some will be happy, of course. Some might even tear up and thank you but there will also be a considerable amount of people that become scared. Why? Because the weight on their shoulders would get heavier. The stronger you get, the more responsibility you have to bear. Plus, if you become stronger not by your own strength, but by borrowing someone else's, you will hit another wall. They don't want to see others looking at them with expectations, then becoming disappointed. Swallowing the soul-strengthening elixir, I listened to the old man silently. Since I never had to bear the heavy weights they were carrying, I didn't have the right to say anything. Getting stuck, breaking through, getting stuck, stuck, stuck. After repeating it for dozens of years, how much did they suffer? As first dungeon explorers, which only the most talented people were chosen to become, they undoubtedly received countless looks of envy, jealousy, and expectations. Near the end of their lives, when they realized they would only remain as mediocre warriors, how much shame would they have felt? Not to mention, for dozens of years, they would have only survived without improving would any passion or courage remain in their hearts. Would they be willing to challenge themselves again? Would they, who understood failure and defeat, be able to endure the expectations they would receive? I asked the old man. Then what's the reason you came to defeat the reaper with me? Is that even a question? The old magician answered with a grin. It's because I'm an explorer. Ha! <laughs> I've failed a countless number of times, and countless numbers of people, who placed their expectations on me, turned their backs and left. I also just spent my days like the others. I've already climbed forty floors, I've done well. Telling myself such excuses, I continued to lie to myself. But then you came. It was then that I snapped out of it. If I didn't take on the challenge now, I realized I might never get another opportunity. Even if I might end up kneeling somewhere, I want to see what lies beyond this place. I want to let the blood in this old body boil. The old magician shouted. I've already experienced it for dozens of years. Even if I fail again, I wouldn't be losing anything. I'm happy, I'm extremely happy that I can finally get out of this floor. Even if I can't advance beyond the 41st floor. Even if it might only be an old man's bravado. I will go on. Because this heart is the only thing that proves that I am an explorer of the first dungeon. So. Did that answer your question? Of course. I smiled brightly as I answered. His words pierced deep into my heart, and I couldn't help but smile. You can definitely climb higher. I guarantee it. Ha! If Crown Prince is saying that, I will believe it. Ha ha ha! He laughed wholeheartedly, then he left my party and disappeared. I had taken a jab when I had least expected it. But I wasn't displeased in the slightest. In fact, he had fanned my burning heart. Talking with the old magician, I was once again able to think about what a dungeon explorer was. However, when I left the floor master room, I saw Lin with his usual unenthused expression. But, eh. Something about him seemed. What's wrong, Lin? Are you evolving? I'm not evolving, but I'm being promoted. Lin did not have his usual cigarette as he spoke. Damn it, and it's as guild master's substitute, what a headache. This is all your fault. Guild master's substitute? What about Loretta? When I said that, Lin shot me a glare. His fiery eyes were really burning. How cool. I wondered if I could get a skill like that. Do you know what a huge mess has happened? Of course I don't. Explain please. Ku, for the first time in several hundreds of years, Nunim made a request to the Lord personally. To take down the 4,187 puppets in charge of the floor shops and to replace them with Fairy Garden and other administrative guilds members. Wow. I didn't know Loretta was in charge of 4,187 floor shops with her puppets. It must have been tough. While I was trying to digest what I just heard, Lin was continuing his talk. Lord has to listen to Nunim's request. She's done an incredible amount of work for the first dungeon's explorers, and she contributed a lot of other administrative duties. Loretta did, huh? She also put in several additional clauses, 
but what she wants is obvious she wants to focus on supporting you. Eh. Me. Right. Not with a puppet, but with her real body. She wants to exclusively be your supporter. Even though she's Fairy Garden's guild master well, you are a hero and the most famous rookie in the dungeon. Plus, since humans have short lifespans, Lord had to accept at least this much. The problem is, I'm the one who has to work more because of you. I was wondering why Lin was complimenting me, but he was lashing out instead. Hearing what Lin said about Loretta wanting to support me with her real body, I thought back to her recent confession. To spend her daily life with me, she had made such a move. I couldn't help but be amazed. Hey, let me ask something. Lin spoke as he stared at me fixedly. Did you do it? D do what? No, I didn't do anything. So something did happen. I doubt you made the first move, so it was Nunim. Ha, how bold of her. She must have gotten impatient so. What happened? Lin, this was what you wanted to ask from the start, right? Hurry up and answer. What happened? Did you do it? I didn't do anything. I it's on hold. Lin looked at me with a dumbfounded expression, then spat on the ground. You hopeless bastard do you even have it? I do. When I answered with a serious expression, Lin simply sighed. Then, he finally took out a cigarette and asked with a more serious voice. Don't make Nunim cry. She's more frail and pure than you'd think. I warned you, alright? I got it. I got it, so stop glaring at me like that. Humph, I said what I wanted to, so I'm leaving. Good luck further on. Don't die and don't fall. From what I can see, you're one of the few with potential in this entire dungeon, so don't lose your spirit no matter who you're up against. Got it? Thanks, Lin. Good luck too, being the guild master substitute. Arg yeah. I'm off. Lin faded away. I stared fixedly at the place he was standing, then turned away. I could still hunt the reaper one more time. The grind wasn't over yet. However, someone interrupted me. It was Yiyun. I broke through the twentieth floor. You're getting faster and faster. Did you do it solo? Yeah. This guy tries to act cool, but he's super weak. After being beaten up, he used something called dragon skin and kept slamming the ground with his spear, but he couldn't do anything when I just stayed glued to the ceiling. So you could do that. No, ordinary explorers wouldn't be able to stay on the ceiling on for that long. As I thought, Yi Yoon had a natural talent as an assassin. Thinking that she might actually catch up to me, I asked. Have you tried using deific manifestation? Why yeah? Why is your voice shaking? Scary. Deific manifestation is scary. Why? What's scary? It hurts. Training is too hard. She was talking in short phrases like a kid. It must have been really difficult even while I was feeling troubled, I tried to act calm. You must have met a good teacher. She's a vicious woman. Shin, save me. I want to see you so much. We can see each other soon. Once you clear up to the 25th floor, we can go out for a drink. Really? Okay, I'll try my best. I'll hurry. Yeah. Good luck. Ah, uh, what magic did you get on the tenth floor? Did you also get spirit mastery? Although I thought spirit mastery was prepared for my elementalist abilities, the solo clear reward seemed to be fixed. From the rewards Ren told me about and with Yi Yun also getting deific manifestation on the fifth floor, I was pretty sure of it. However, what Yi Yun said next surprised me. Ah, uh, I got something called Shadow's Word Mastery. It's super fun. If I hold my dagger and attack, my shadow attacks one more time. Or I can add my shadow's power to me directly and hit harder. It's super good. What, that's so cool. So the tenth floor reward was different. It was the perfect skill for Yi Yun who was focused on attacking. Even while I was writhing in jealousy, I tried to act cool and congratulated her. Shin, what floor are you in now? I'm grinding on the fortieth floor. Then he'll catch up soon. Well see. 
If you look down on the dungeon, you'll regret it. Be careful. I, I don't look down on it. I really don't. UK, they'll get scolded again. Master will scold me. Just who did you summon? Even I felt slight fear at Yi Yun's master that I had not met yet. Chapter, 106 When I went to the floor shop the next day, I saw a beautiful elf. Long, black hair that flowed down, and golden pupils that shone brilliantly. Voluptuous chest and contrasting slender arms, legs, and waist. Without a doubt, it was Loretta, the real Loretta. The moment she saw me, she flapped her long ears excitedly. I wondered if elves could fly using their ears. My, what a coincidence seeing you here, Shin Nim. How shameless, Loretta. Lin already told me everything. Loretta narrowed her eyes and glared at me. Even if it's the same meaning, can't you use the expression cute? If I say cute, you'll get startled and be noticeably happy, so I won't. TSK. Loretta clicked her tongue and turned away. It was much cuter than her shameless words from before, but I didn't say it out loud. If I did, she would be happy and blush, and I would be even more flustered. Loretta let out a dry cough and continued. 40th Floor, The Grim Reaper Since you got the first achievement, are you in the middle of completely conquering him? Yep. I memorized all of his patterns, so killing him is pretty easy now. This is the first time I heard anyone say that it's easy to kill the Reaper. You could have done it after hitting level 45. No, I won't do that anymore. At Loretta's words, I answered her with such speed that even I was surprised. I want to grow my abilities. Not just my stats, but the overall abilities. Because I want to get stronger. If that's what you want, I will, of course, support you from behind. From now, I will be directly supporting you, so do your best, Shin Nim. With Loretta helping me, I feel assured. He'll be sure not to let Loretta down. At my words, Loretta puffed out her chest and grinned. Then, I waved my hand at Loretta wishing me victory, and walked to hunt the Reaper again. Of course, I wasn't afraid of him anymore. Three weeks later, I finished consuming soul-strengthening elixirs and finished collecting the Grim Reaper set. The Grim Reaper's death scythe was given to the Gluttony Spear, raising its growth by 1%. With that, it was now at 3%. Since I've been told the spear would not grow from eating the same weapon more than once, I did not give it another one. Your soul becomes clear and strengthened to the peak. Your magic and charm increase by 3. Additionally, your luck increases by 5. You equip the Grim Reaper set. Your strength and magic increase by 20. When the Grim Reaper set is equipped, you can use Shadow Blink once per day. Shadow Blink teleports you behind a target and delivers a sudden strike. This attack will always be a critical hit. The Grim Reaper set was made out of tattered cloth resembling the one the Grim Reaper was wearing. In fact, I looked so much like the Grim Reaper, I almost took my weapon out. However, its defense was incredibly sad compared to Crimson Dragon's scale armor and even the Dullahan set, so I extracted the skill and stored it in the 8 o'clock position, then stored the Grim Reaper set for next year's Halloween party. While I was grinding on the 40th floor, Ren had begun grinding on the 35th floor. Surprisingly, Paludia's party joined Elo's party, and had reached the 33rd floor in a short period of time. They both didn't want to party with explorers from other continents, so I wondered what had gotten into them. However, I somewhat suspected that I had an influence on their alliance. What was more surprising was that Sheena had contacted me. Appa, I broke through the 30th floor. Ooh, that's was fast. Congratulations. I already heard from Uni that Appa broke through the 40th floor. Uni. Oh, right, Paludia. You should have told me when we first met. But I wanted to surprise Appa by telling Appa later. But I didn't think Uni would charge forward so quickly. I can hear you. Of course, I was trying to let you hear. It was a roundabout declaration of war. I don't have a residence yet, but my breasts are a lot bigger than Uni's. I have the competitive edge. Not to mention, I'm honest unlike Uni. So. Charming, right? I already knew you were charming. But you're not a good match for me. 
I can I cry, Appa. If I'm not charming to Appa, there's no point in being charming at all. I made a bitter smile and replied. There are many better men than me. Something must have been wrong with your eyes. I trust my eyes' ability, but I like Appa regardless. Just like Paludia said, Sheena was claiming that she liked me. Although Paludia told me not to believe Sheena, as I couldn't look into Sheena's heart, I couldn't make a judgment thoughtlessly. As such, this was what I said. Yeah, then do your best to catch up to where I am. We have to be face to face if we want to talk. You didn't forget how I looked like, right? I didn't. I think about you every night, really. Prepare yourself, the party member I recruited this time is extremely strong, so we'll catch up to you quickly. Party member. I suddenly felt uneasy again. Hoo hoo, Appa might know her already. An explorer from Earth has been famous in the lower floors lately. She's called the Shadow Witch. She got her fame by helping beginner explorers advance to the sixth floor for about two weeks, but she appeared in the residential area just a few days ago. I've never heard of an explorer with such quick growth. I didn't miss this opportunity and recruited her into my party. You see, this person is really, really strong. She might not even need party members. She's that strong. We challenged the 30th floor master together, but while we barely held the skeletons back, she practically toyed with the skeleton knight. She then said it was slightly easier than when she defeated it alone. If she's that strong, why did she enter your party? I don't know. She said she's going to enter the party of the guy she likes, and said she'd party with us as practice. Ah, uh, I see. Good luck together. Yiyun, she already broke through the 30th floor. If I didn't hurry, she might really catch up to me. I was burning with fighting spirit. I cheered her on a bit, then walked to the staircase to the 41st floor, thinking I was going to have to take Yiyun out for fries soon. After all, she had already passed the 25th floor. Father had also passed level 50 and was bragging about becoming gold rank, but I didn't care. From the 41st floor, I was free from the undead. Zombies, ghouls, skeletons, and ghosts. I was happy to be finally freed from the rotting smell of flesh, but this happiness did not last long. The 41st floor's monsters were wolves. They emitted the smell of wild animals and pounced at me from all directions. I was almost starting to miss the zombies. Plus, the 41st through 45th floor were all filled with wolves, just with different fur color and species. There were the dire wolves, large wolves that easily passed two. Three meters in size. Then, there were the werewolves, which were wolves standing on their hind legs. Other than the werewolves, all of the wolves were bigger and stronger than the materialized Ryue. However, she was still faster, making them a good match. Although Ryue fought well, I wasn't used to fighting beast-type monsters, so it took a while for me to get used to them. In the end, it wasn't so different in that I had to dodge their attacks and attack when they had openings. As a result, I reached the 45th floor master in just four days. K.R.R. Loretta said that 45th and 50th floor master battles will be a pure fight of strength against strength. I believed her, but I didn't think that strength was referring to size. He's over 10 meters long. Although the giant iron boar I met in Guangzhou was much bigger in comparison, I could still barely look at its face when I tilted my head up to the limit. In terms of spirit, the black furred wolf well overwhelmed the giant iron boar. The 45th field was a wasteland. The black wolf was sitting in the middle of the wasteland with his legs folded and his eyes closed. When I approached him and raised my gluttony spear, his eyes shot open. The presence emanating out from him at that moment was incredibly overwhelming, making me burst into smiles. Good, they'll have to fight large monsters like this often on Earth. They'll train myself using you. K.R. The wolf moved its front leg forward and lowered its body. He seemed to be preparing to charge at me. With his weight and speed, the force of impact would be enormous. I also lowered my body on Ryu's back and prepared to charge forward. I whispered to Ryu, I'm trusting you, Ryu. Let's do this. Auu. At that moment, Ryu charged forward before the giant wolf. Gruang. 
the giant wolf also charged towards us. When he stepped forward, a sandstorm brewed in the wasteland, blocking my sight. I left Ryue in charge of our movement and focused on pinpointing his location and his method of attack. Ryue, jumped diagonally. Auu. I held my gluttony spear horizontally and activated elemental blade. I held the spear with both my hands like a baseball bat, and when Ryue had leapt past giant wolf's thigh, I swung the spear with full force. Critical hit. Kwang. A stream of blood shot out into the air and the giant wolf screamed. What I didn't expect was that it would somehow detect where we were and swing his tail at us like a whip. Ryue hastily poured out her ice breath and threw her body to the side. However, his tail, which seemed like it would get stuck at Ryu's ice breath, became bigger and swept over us. It had made its already huge tail even bigger. I gritted my teeth and shouted. Shadow blink. Ryue and I were instantly teleported behind the giant wolf's neck. KRR. The giant wolf made a stupefied sound and turned its head to face us. In the process, his body turned to the other direction, and he turned his head again. His body then turned the other direction again. He slowly began to spin in circles. Thankfully, it seemed he still had the intelligence of a beast. Meanwhile, I was focusing my energy on the spear tip for the critical damage that Shadow Blink guaranteed. Just like always, I raised my spear that had turned into a white bolt of lightning from Pika's power and my white-colored aura, striking down at the giant wolf's neck. Kia. Blood spurted out from the area the spear struck, splashing onto me and Ryue. It seemed to have felt immense pain from the attack, as it began to jump wildly to shake me off of him. With my face half covered in blood, I gritted my teeth and raised my spear again, shouting, Ryue, hold on. Okay. Ryue stretched out her claws and stuck onto the giant wolf, and I wrapped my legs around Ryue. Now that we were in a favorable position, I had no intention of getting off. Auu. Ruyue, hold on just a little bit longer. Auu. Something seemed to be wrong with Ruyue, so I decided to take care of the giant wolf swiftly. White lightning consecutive strike. A barrage of spear attacks struck the hole created by my heroic strike, expanding it. Red blood continued to splash onto me, but it wasn't enough to interrupt my concentration. The only thing in my sight was the hole I had to dig deeper. Although I would have liked to attack him like this until he died, it was, of course, not so easy. Before my white lightning consecutive strike could even end, the giant wolf let out a loud howl, then began to roll to the side. Shoot! I quickly cancelled the skill and stuck to Ryue. Ryue, let's jump off. Before Ryue and I became crushed paste, Ryue leapt off his back and landed on the ground. Noticing that Ryue and I had left, the giant wolf stopped rolling and raised its body. Then, it gave me a deathly glare. Kruang. Giant wolf uses blood howling. All of giant wolf's defense is converted to attack power. It was actually called giant wolf. No, now was not the time. Its fur dyed red. At the same time, its front paws expanded to an unnatural size. Right, a fight of pure strength against strength I was glad that it was so simple. I curled the corners of my mouth up and strengthened the grip on my gluttony spear. Fight me, you fat wolf bastard. Goo. Chapter, 107. Goo. With an earth-shaking roar, he charged forward. He was far faster than he had been previously, and taking his enlarged front paws into account, I could only barely dodge his attacks. Ruyue, Focus on evading him. It'll do the attacking. Auu. Other than floor master skills, elemental blade was the only way for me to attack without taking any recoil damage. Being glad that I managed to obtain this skill, I called elementals into my spear blade again. Drinking mana potions as I used skills was now as natural as breathing. Kaya, Prince Nim's serious face. So cool. When is the roller coaster taking off? Where's the seat belt? Do I grab the spear blade? UEE -E -E, I got on again, am going to throw up again. Ignoring the elemental's voices, I swung my 10 meter long spear as I glanced past the giant wolf. 
Its colossal front paw was cut and blood spurted out like a fountain. The moment Ryue landed on the ground, she ran. Immediately afterwards, the wolf's hind leg stomped the area we landed. Ao. It really is just like fighting a monstrous beast. I fixed my grip on Gluttony Spear and called the elementals again. With his size, it was impossible to take care of him quickly. I had already expected that the battle would drag out. Ryue changed her direction and continued running. My target had not changed. It was still Wolf's giant front paws that had become easy targets. Gua! Front paw is coming. Looking at the giant wolf's eyes burning with rage from the corner of my eyes, I raised my spear again. His giant front paw cut through the air and flew toward me. As I was sure just one hit would be enough to pierce my tough armor and deal a fatal blow, I laughed even louder. With just that you can't catch me. Ryue jumped, and I jumped from Ryu's back. Unable to predict my movement, the giant wolf's front paw only swung past my feet. At that moment, I struck my spear down with all the strength I could muster. The elemental spear blade easily pierced its leather, which had lost its defensive power. Digging deep into the front paw, the elemental blade then exploded. Critical hit. Cool. Ruyue. After recovering my spear, I landed on the back of Ruyue, who was waiting for me on the ground. However, I didn't have the time to leisurely check the result of my attack. The giant wolf raised all the hair on its body with rage and was running toward me. I couldn't let him hit me even once. I couldn't waste a week because of something so stupid. Raising my spear and striking down on the ground, I shouted. Outburst. Crack. The wasteland fissured and rock shards rose, flying toward the giant wolf, who was running towards me with vigor. Although it couldn't be compared to when Dullahan used it, Hundreds of flying rock shards hurtling towards the giant wolf was a sight to behold. With the area I struck my spear down on as the center, the ground rumbled and large rock shards shot up, flying toward the giant wolf. They were fast, numerous, and strong. It was the second attack skill among floor master skills, and I had great expectations for it. Its strength was better than what I had imagined. As the giant wolf was charging forward with great speed, it could not dodge the numerous rock shards and receive them with his body. With his defensive power lacking from the skill he used, blood spurted out wherever the rock shard struck him. Now that I thought about it, as long as I wasn't hit by him, there was no reason to fear his skill. Gua! Its dark red blood splashed on his already red fur, and dyed it in a darker red. However, it did not falter and continued charging. With how big it was, it had a frightening amount of life force. Any other floor master would have been in dire straits from the loss of blood, but he only looked slightly weaker. What was important in fighting a massive monster was continued concentration and patience to continue attacking him until he died. I learned something important. Ryue, let's go, cut off his front paw entirely. Auu. Thirty minutes after that, the moment I was waiting for had finally arrived. As a result of focusing my attacks on it, its enlarged front paw had finally been severed from his body. He let out a heaven-shattering scream and rolled on the ground. At the same time, his front paw disappeared into particles of light. With a grin, I fixed my grip on my spear. Having lost one of its front paws, he had lost both speed and strength. He could no longer even give a moment of thrill. Ryue, let's hurry up and finish this. Auu. Ryue charged forward. As Ryue and I already shared our thoughts, Ryue brought me to the destination I desired without me having to tell her. I raised my spear and collected my energy. I woke up my sleeping muscles and squeezed out strength from them. The giant wolf was still struggling to raise its body. Using the white lightning that formed in my hand, I aimed at the giant wolf's neck, the place I had drilled a hole in with shadow blink. Then, I thrust forward. You became level 46. You obtained the qualification to advance to the 46th floor. You obtained 5 bonus stats. You became silver rank 2. Amazing. You are the first in first dungeon's history to succeed in soloing the giant wolf on the first try. The dungeon will remember you as a great explorer. You obtained 2 skill point as reward. 
Gods that love battles and wars begin to become interested in you. Remaining Skill Points, 18. You obtain the title, Giant Wolf Master. All stats increase by 2. This effect will apply even if the title is not equipped. You defeated the Giant Wolf alone. You obtain the special reward, Giant Wolf's Blood Hat. You obtain 200,000 gold. You receive the only reward left hidden for the first explorer. Congratulations. Your luck stat increases by 1. Secret. Giant Wolf's Tattoo. Really, compared to the Grim Reaper, the Giant Wolf was laughably easy. The Grim Reaper had several attacks that could hit me in ways I least expected, but for the Giant Wolf, there was nothing I had to be afraid of other than this body enlarging skill and skill that turned his defense into offense. I would remember him as the easiest boss along with the Wraith Queen. As always, I asked Message Nuna to open the message log and read the list of messages. There were two noteworthy things. First was that gods who liked battles and wars began to grow interested in me. Did this mean I was close to getting another god's true name? Hermes Telaria was already very useful. No, did I even have the capacity to accept the power of another god's true name? I thought seriously for a while, but realized there was no need to worry about something that would happen in the future. In fact, I might be completely mistaken. I decided to consider the matter later, and moved on to the next matter. The secret reward, Giant Wolf's Tattoo. It was clearly not a magic or a skill. Since experiencing it would be faster, I reached forward toward the reward. At that moment, Something emanating a blue light flowed into my arm and traveled down to my legs. I hurriedly took my armor off and checked my legs. Runic patterns were engraved from my thighs to my calves, glowing with a blue light. You obtain giant wolf's tattoo. You speed increases by 15% and increases the attack power of all charge type skills by 50%. Wow! Although I didn't even have any rush type skills, I would have a 110% attack power increase with Crimson Dragon Scale Armor's 60% increase. Now that things had come to this, I would really need to look around to see if I can get myself a charge type skill. Plus, there was the 15% speed increase. It was equivalent to the effect of my god's true name. Of course, 15% speed increase wasn't the only effect Hermes had, but I was surprised nonetheless. But damn, I would not be living in a world 30% faster than everyone else. Just the first 15% was hard to get used to, but I had gotten another 15% it would be troublesome to get used to it. I complained in complete happiness and left the floor master room. Behind the floor shop counter, Loretta, who was lying on the bed she prepared and reading a book, got up slowly after seeing me, and greeted me. Oh, you're already here. Loretta does things I can't even imagine so easily. It makes me tremble, though, not in respect. I'm thinking about building a portable house. By the way Shin Nim, your bodice balance seems a little off. When I told her the effects of giant wolf's tattoo, she stared at my legs, as if to see through my armor, then nodded her head. I can't see it, so take it off and show me. I won't show you. What are you asking for so naturally? TSK, he almost fell for it. Loretta clicked her tongue as if she was close. Then, after a dry cough, she advised me. If you want to obtain a charge type skill, why don't you try looking for it at the residential area? Not all skills are automatically acquired like the floor master solo rewards. The skill books that event dungeon bosses drop or given from quest rewards are exchangeable. Shin Nim, you're overflowing with gold anyways, right? You don't buy anything from the floor shop other than potions, battle vouchers, and party member scarecrows I came all the way here to support Shin Nim, but you don't use me very often. I'm sad. Potions, battle vouchers, and party member scarecrows, that's a lot. I'm using tens of thousands of gold per day anyways, it'll be off. Take me with you. I'm bored. Loretta flapped her ears and jumped out from the bed, locking her arms with mine. I tried to ignore Loretta's fragrance and the shocking sensation in my arm, but it wasn't easy. It's hot, so get off. I know you're not hot, so let's go like this. Come on. This person, there's no sense of distance these days. Now that Loretta had stuck onto me, 
there was no way to get her off. I resigned and went to the residential area. When I arrived at the entrance of my mansion, I saw the corpse of the giant iron boar, which was still left neglected on the garden. I'm sorry, giant iron boar. I want to eat you, but I'm busy finishing the melting tunas in my inventory. While I was silent in looking at the giant iron boar, Loretta let out an exclamation of surprise and knocked on the giant iron boar's metallic legs. It's the type that got stronger after death. Do you have a necromancer friend, Shinnim? Ha. Huh. What? You're fermenting it, right? It was originally weak, but a strong lightning energy was imbued into it the moment it died. Not to mention, this place is where the entrance to Fairy Garden is, meaning it's full of elementals. Lightning energy is building up in its body, compressing its body and amplifying its energy. If you leave him like this, he'll become a great undead for sure. One that's much stronger than he was when he was alive. No, it said it wouldn't rot, so I was just storing my food supply here not that I could tell her that. Now that I looked at it, its 70 meter long body length was now about 60 meters long. Its hair that was burnt black also seemed to be flickering with sparks. I smiled nonchalantly. Ha ha ha, let's go out, Loretta. So it was a coincidence. Maybe you'll learn necromancy later. I passed it off as something trivial for now and dragged Loretta outside the mansion to the residential area. Left behind in the garden was the giant iron boar's corpse, admirably fermenting itself. Author's note. All right, let's go. With this spirit, well quickly clear the fiftieth floor. Chapter, 108 As we strolled through the residential area, Loretta received countless gazes from others. Of course, I knew why. At first glance, they would be surprised at Loretta's appearance at their second glance, they would be awed by her otherworldly beauty and at their third glance, she would look even prettier than when they looked at her the first time. That is, as long as she didn't open her mouth. Loretta ruined her goddess-like appearance by talking like an idiot. Though, that was her charm as well. Was there an elf like that in the first dungeon? I thought the most beautiful explorer was the Luca Continent's crown princess. No, on the higher floors, there's another famous beauty. From that ruined continent. But it's been dozens of years since she made an appearance. Hey, that elf isn't an explorer. I know who she is. She's the master of one of the administrative guilds. She was so pretty that I remembered it. I didn't think she was dating a rookie. I'm jealous, damn it. There were some that realized who Loretta was from her appearance. Most of them looked strong. With a bitter smile, Loretta explained to me. There are times when I have to make my appearance as the guild master. So you actually do your guild master work. Ow. Loretta got angry and smacked my arm. I'm a proper guild master. Though it's Lin's job now. Lin said he was a substitute, though. Well, that's how everyone becomes the master. Hoo hoo, Lin is actually very suited to be a leader. Lin's special ability was the only reason why a human like himself could enter Fairy Garden. Lin isn't a human, but a draconian well, it's fine. By the way, Loretta, what are you going to do if you stop being a guild master? You see, my dream was always to become a housewife. So he'll become employed to Shin Nim. I'd like my partner to be able. As should I continue being a guild master. Loretta should do what Loretta wants, but I want to marry a woman who actively improves her life. WW work I have to work kook, but I want to play. The way Loretta's ears trembled like she was in deep agony was too cute. However, while I was preoccupied with making fun of Loretta, I accidentally bumped my shoulder into someone. Although my shoulder hurt, I apologized since I was the one at fault for not watching where I was going. Sorry, are you okay? Of course. I'm more surprised that you're okay after bumping into me. I haven't seen you before, so you must be a new bee. It was the low, silvery voice of a woman. I raised my head. In front of me was a young beauty my height, with most of her figure hidden by a black armor. She was looking at me with eyes of interest. Inside her beautiful amber eyes, a pair of unusually sharp and long, vertical pupils left a deep impression on me. They were not the eyes of a human, but those of a beast. 
as if to wipe away any hint of doubt, two triangular ears were on her head. Beast man. Oh, so you know. Right, I'm a beast man. Leb, let's go. Sor already ordered our drinks. Shin Nim, you're walking with me, but you're looking at other women. Someone who seemed to be her companion called her while Loretta pulled me with her arms linked to mine. The woman replied to her companion that she'd be there in a moment. You even have an elf girlfriend. You're doing pretty well, rookie. Let's hear your name, they'll remember it. Im Kong Shin, an explorer from Earth. Im Le Beak from the Guild, Demonic Girls. Good luck climbing to the higher floors. He'll take you out for a drink the next time we meet. With that, she waved her hand and turned away. The clunking of her fancy, black armor proved that she was a skilled explorer from a higher floor than mine. Plus, on her back, there was a stupidly large and thick, black claymore, which even I might have trouble carrying. Looking at it, I was sure. It wasn't the time to be shocked about her being a woman. So you weren't dead. Who said I was dead? Bring me the guy who had the audacity to say that. Shin Nim. Right, he must have had the possibility in mind when he asked me. It might have even gone past the point of being a possibility, and he might have even been sure. After all, he wasn't a complete idiot. If I told him, what would he? I spoke, there's an explorer who got famous on the 35th floor. They call him the Golden Lion. Golden Lion? What's that? Tisk, can anyone be called Golden Lion these days? There's only one true Golden Lion, the Pan Incontinence you, never mind. Rookie, what is it that you want to say? The Golden Lion you're talking about is rushing through the first dungeon with his own strength. Ren Nim is? I was surprised that she addressed him as Ren Nim. While I was imagining what status Ren had, the woman jumped at me. No, she jumped at me but was instantly pushed away. I saw Loretta stepping forward angrily. Do you want to get beaten, customer? Do you? You can't touch other customers that don't belong to you. Understand? Do you want to know what last bullet tastes like? Do you want to try it? Kohuk what kind of an elf? Labik got up, holding her stomach in pain. There was a crack in her armor. Seeing her ears folded down, she looked especially pitiful. You, who are you? In the floor shops Loretta. Regardless, if you want to ask Shin Nim a question, can you do it without making contact with him? Floor shop. The administrative guild. Ku, that hurt. Seeing this strong explorer in pain didn't feel like someone else's problem, so I asked her with worrying eyes. Are you okay? Ah, uh, yeah, I'm fine. Anyways, if you know about Ren Nim, can you tell me more about him? I assume Ren Nim is still noble and beautiful. I had just heard two words that didn't fit Ren the most. In the end, I ended up staying with Labik, who was about to head to the bar, a bit longer. Labik had two companions, one was a human woman who had called out to her, Zevina Shield Warrior. The other was a dwarf woman who had already ordered drinks at the bar, Sor Axe Warrior. I wondered if all of her guild members were warriors, but I was told that one of the five members was a priestess. The remaining guild member was a claw warrior. With everyone's classes being so macho, I was surprised that everyone was female. So, w what about Ren Nim? The moment I received a glass, Labik asked me impatiently. Her cheeks were bright red. As she didn't drink anything yet, she was undoubtedly flushed. Feeling a murderous intent toward Ren boiling inside me, I replied. I first met him on the twentieth floor. He couldn't control his temper then and almost died. Hoo-hoo, he does have that cute side to him. After that, he stayed with me for a while and fixed his bad habits. In the end, he succeeded in defeating the Lizard Knight alone. A alone. The Lizard Knight. Kook, I should have seen it ah, he must have looked so cool. After that, he continued to climb the dungeon alone and succeeded in defeating all the floor masters alone. In the process, he gained some fame from helping other explorers defeat the floor masters. He should still be on the 35th floor to get strengthening elixirs from the floor master. Strengthening elixirs. The thing that only drops occasionally. 
Wow, I can't believe he's grown so much he must look incredibly handsome now like a real man. Lebwick's cat ears twisted and revealed her confused emotion. Meanwhile, Loretta was confirming information about Ren through my whispers. Shin Nim, the Ren you're talking about is that messy-haired customer, who makes people even looking at him feel hot, right? Are you sure that customer isn't talking about someone else? Loretta, to be honest, I was confused about the same thing. I'm surprised. I didn't think this man named Ren was real. Leb always talks about him when she's drunk. Exactly. Once she starts talking about Ren, she won't talk about anyone else for the day, so today's already over. In front of me was the cute dwarf girl sore. No matter how I looked at her, she looked like an elementary school kid. Seeing her holding a beer mug and hitting it against Zevina, I felt overwhelmed, but I managed to pass it off as I had already gotten used to dwarves from Fairy Gardens Latan. Meanwhile, Lebwick's madness was still continuing. He was cute ever since he was little when I was sparring with him with wooden swords, he fell down and scraped his knees. He then ran to me with teary eyes hack, hack. I felt disgusted. Both by Ren's crying face that I imagined and by that woman who was letting out weird breathing noises as she imagined the same crying face. W when I licked his wound, he tried to smile bravely with tears still in his eyes, saying I'm fine now, Sir Lebeek. Ha, ha. Leb, you have a nosebleed. After enjoying herself for a while, thinking about Ren's younger self, Lebwick's ears and tail suddenly drooped in sadness. But, I leaving Ren Nim by himself in Pan and Continent UK, uck. How much did that person drink? One glass. Just one glass of beer. I, I should have been with him. I, I shouldn't have thrown it away but still, I wanted to live. Ren thinks you're dead. That's a lie. The knights that were with me on the battlefield must have lied after all, I ran away right in front of them. In front of everyone's eyes, I opened the door to the dungeon, to survive by myself leaving behind the honor and pride of beast men. The light atmosphere had suddenly turned sour. Sor and Zevina, who were clashing their glasses in a good mood, suddenly looked grim. I suspected that they had similar experiences. As explorers of the first dungeon, they must have abandoned the country and world they were from, into the dungeon. I opened my mouth to say something, but I realized I only had unqualified criticisms to say. I stayed silent. That would only be the grumbling of an immature child, who had never experienced the unfairness of cruel reality. In this safe space, they would be vulnerable to my words lacking self-awareness. As such, I said the best thing I could say in this situation. Ren wanted to see you. He was looking for you if you're alive, he will be happy with just that. B but I don't have the qualification to see him. In the hopeless pan and continent, he is the only remaining explorer. He has a truly great and noble soul. Just by meeting him, his soul will be hurt. I'm scared. The fact that I can still affect him no, I can't meet him I don't have the qualification to stand next to him, much less talk to him. They'll just think about him alone, like this hick. She started crying. There's no choice now. Stop bothering Leb now. We wanted to stop too. Sorry, even though we're the ones who invited you. Zevina and Sor felt uncomfortable with us as well. I exchanged bitter smiles with Loretta and got up. I didn't think our conversation would end in the worst way possible. If Ren came to the residential area and heard about Lebeek or even met her. Sir Lebeek. Don't call me that. I'm no longer a knight. If Ren will change just because of meeting you, he wouldn't have survived on his own until now. So don't worry and try meeting him your wound will have to be ripped open one day. That is, before it festers and becomes bigger from being left alone. She seemed to have understood my meaning as her ears twitched slightly. She then murmured in a barely audible voice. Can I add you to my friend list? Of course. Just like that, I met with Ren's master, Labique, and parted. Although Labique had abandoned her world, she was still climbing the dungeon as an explorer. Just what was it that she was hoping for in the end? Perhaps as long as she had the desire to continue challenging, as long as her world didn't collapse completely, would she still have the chance to go back? Although Labique was worried that she'd change Ren, my thoughts were different. 
Ren was a warrior, one that walked forward without ever looking back. If it's him, he might rekindle the fire in that runaway knight's heart. If it's him, he might change her. Hoping and worrying for that to be the case, I surprisingly realized that I was thinking a lot about Ren. For the record, I couldn't buy any charge type skills from the auction house. Damn, nothing in this world was easy. Chapter, 109 I was right in trying to use the giant wolf to develop a battle strategy against giant monsters. Although the giant wolf's movement patterns were almost too simple, he certainly had disaster level speed and strength. With its size, it had boundless life force, and I had to train my patience in holding my focus for dozens of minutes to fight against it. Although fighting the giant wolf could not give me a heart-pounding thrill, I shouldn't just be seeking thrill in fights for my growth. I considered it a chance to steadily grow my abilities. Another ability I have to improve was my communication with Ryue. I had to strengthen my bond with her by being more intimate. Although Pika complained that I only materialized Ryue and was more intimate with her, I couldn't help it as Pika was much stronger when she was infused into my spear with spirit aura than when she was materialized. To make it up to her, when I was training and not having a real battle, I had Pika materialized. Calling the elementals, materializing them, and making contact with them more often to increase our closeness were the easiest way of letting them grow. Shin. I love Shin. That's enough. You're always sticking close to master. You need to learn to share from time to time. Ryue stuck to me excessively, and although Pika tried to stop Ryue, Pika wasn't too different from Ryue. Since how much the elementals liked me would only help their growth, I simply made a bitter smile and hugged them both, but I did find it a bit strange. They liked me more than what my elementalist skill levels would suggest though, I knew emotions couldn't be reflected by skill levels. I also couldn't understand why Ryue, who I only met recently, seemed to like me more than Pika. Perhaps it was because of the circumstances of how we met. Coming back to the subject of the giant wolf, his unexpected partial gigantification attack was undoubtedly dangerous. Although I didn't feel threatened due to my excellent senses, ordinary explorers without sufficient detection abilities would find the attack fatal. Even in the boss fight I had with explorers who were stuck on the 45th floor, two explorers died from the gigantification attack even though they were on their guard. The other explorers who survived also thought it was strange how I could dodge the giant wolf's attack so perfectly. Because it was frustrating, I tried to explain simply. There are signs. You can see how his muscles move, right? When muscles that have nothing to do with his current movement suddenly expand, you know that part will gigantify. Easy, right? Crown Prince sucks. Damn it, I want to kill him. I had gotten haters for the first time. Damn, they hated me even though I explained so simply. In truth, I wasn't really looking forward to the strengthening elixir that the giant wolf would drop. Strengthening elixirs raised two stats up to ten times, totaling twelve points into each stat, equivalent to about five levels worth of stat points. Skin strengthening elixirs and soul strengthening elixirs both increased my charm stat, which didn't have much impact in direct fights. However, I recently found out that the charm stat played an important role, so I wasn't that dissatisfied about it increasing. I suspected that the giant wolf's strengthening elixir would be something similar. However, I was surprised by a completely unexpected outcome. Even the elixir's name was different. 1. Wolf's Tattoo Invigoration Elixir The moment I saw it, I smacked my knees. Tattoo Invigoration Elixir It wasn't worth anything to people who couldn't defeat the giant wolf alone. It was absurd. I felt strongly that the dungeon was changing the higher I went. The dungeon was expecting something from the explorers and encouraged them to perform certain actions. Was I meeting its expectations? I felt happy every time I was assured that the path I was walking on was the correct one, but I also felt bad that I was playing in the hands of someone I didn't know. If I could attach a name to that someone, it would be the lord that members of the fairy garden talked about. Would he know everything about this dungeon? Will I be able to meet him one day? Of course, I didn't have any answers now. In any case, since the secret reward was the giant wolf's tattoo, it seemed the normal solo reward was just the wolf's tattoo. I felt a sense of pride, 
then shame from doing so as I ate the elixir. Your giant wolf's tattoo becomes more invigorated. Your speed increases by 0. 0.5% and dexterity increases by 1. Additionally, since you have the giant wolf's tattoo, your speed increases by 0. 0.5% and dexterity by 1. I wish it didn't use another sentence to say the same thing. It could have just said my speed increased by 1% and dexterity by 2. It seemed the ordinary wolf's tattoo only increased speed 0. 5% and dexterity by 1. Thus tattoo invigoration elixir could only have its full effect on me. I despaired slightly at the fact that my speed increased by another 1%, when I had just gotten used to the 15% boost. Feeling that I would be fighting myself for a while, I sighed. My premonition came true, as every time I got used to the speed increase the tattoo invigoration elixir gave me, eating dozens of tattoo invigoration elixirs in the process, the elixir gave another 1% increase. Not to mention, the light the tattoo gave off increased every time to the point it stuck out like a sore thumb if I didn't cover it with my pants. Although it was fine during the winter, it seemed I wouldn't be able to wear shorts during the summer. Though, my bodice temperature no longer fluctuated because of the length of my pants. One month had passed since then. March was right around the corner, and I had to go back to school for the second semester. As I made the extreme decision of taking four online classes, I only had to go to school for four days. Heh, yeah, being a college student was really only to disguise my real identity. What was important to me was not at the college. Yeun, I chose to abandon my grades. During that time, the field dungeons were taken care of one by one, and only America and Japan were having trouble with theirs. Japan seemed to have made some progress, but Antelope Valley's field dungeon, Wyvern's Nest, was expanding its territory, just like people feared. The U. Government gave up several benefits and requested every country for help. As ability users were now the greatest resources a country could possess, it was doubtful that any of them would accept their request so easily. Of course, a country didn't function with only ability users, and some countries had negotiated to send their SS rankers with the condition that they escaped when a dangerous situation occurred. If the matter with Brightman had not happened, Britain with their two SS rankers would have been able to trade with America more easily. But because they covered for Brightman's indiscretions, they had completely lost Waya's trust and were most likely panicking, trying to regain her assistance. It served them right. That aside, I did want to try hunting wyverns since I had several escape tools in my arsenal, I thought about going there someday. In any case, no matter how much everyone was having trouble with the field dungeons, I was focusing on the 45th floor master, Giant Wolf. Today was the day the grind would end. Kruan. Crown Prince Nim, be careful. This much is nothing. The Giant Wolf could gigantify any part of his body. When it gigantified just a single claw and sent it flying, I was almost shocked to death. Today, it even gigantified its head and tried to swallow me whole. As Ryue had leapt right in front of him, she couldn't evade the attack unless she could freely fly. Without a shred of hesitation, I leapt up on Ryu's back and dematerialized Ryue. The giant wolf's mouth chomped down on the area Ryue and I had been in, and I landed on the giant wolf's nose bridge. After gigantification, its eyes were bigger than my own body. Being stared down by his eyes sent a chill down my back, but I used Ryu's power to fix my feet onto the nose bridge and grinned. Ryu's power froze my boots completely and prevented me from falling off the giant wolf no matter how much he shook his head. That said, staying like this would get dizzy, so I had to end it fast. It's time for firework. Wake. You used Crimson Roar. Everything blazes as flames. In an instant, everything within my sight became flames and burned violently. Even knowing that the flames would not hurt me, I could not help but close my eyes shut. Naturally, attacked by the large flames directly, the giant wolf's two eyes also received irrecoverable damage, burning completely. Yua, I heard about it already, but it really is a vicious skill. The barrier is going to get broken through. Reinforce it. As I had already warned them, my party members had dug a hole for themselves in the distance and were hiding under a barrier. Even so, the flames were affecting them. Wasn't that the army's gas chamber training? With the rather useless thought, 
I raised my spear and aimed it at the giant wolf, who was in pain from having lost his eyes. All right, let's end this. Kruang. You can cry all you want. I won't stop hitting you because of it. You consumed wolf's tattoo invigoration elixir to the limit. The giant wolf's tattoo has been invigorated to its peak. Your speed increases by 6%. Your dexterity increases by 6. You learned the skill, Gale Track, from invigorating the giant wolf's tattoo to its peak. It is a charge type skill, using extreme speed and seeking only destruction. When used, you will become super armored for the duration, pushing away every in your path. Every time an enemy is pushed away, your attack power increases by 5% up to 100%. The skill's power will increase with speed. If you have a riding skill, you can use it while riding. When attacking the enemy at your destination, wind attribute will be imbued to your weapon, amplifying its power. The charging speed and power will increase with skill level. Oh. I was wondering where the charge skill was hiding, but to think it was in my tattoo. Plus, it even dealt a final blow after the reckless charge. It was just my taste. I waved my hand and sent my party members off, then went to report what happened to Loretta. Really? Well, Shin Nim is the first one to obtain the giant wolf tattoo, and I haven't seen anyone other than Shin Nim consume tattoo invigoration elixir to the limit so, what was the skill that the giant wolf set had? That's. At Loretta's question, I could only make a strange smile. I was secretly hoping for Blood Howl, which converted all defense to attack power, but. You equip the giant wolf set. Your dexterity and magic increase by 20. When the giant wolf set is equipped, you can use gigantic once per day. Gigantic is a strong skill that enables you to enlarge and wield a body part, or weapon, or equipment connected to your body. However, without the strength to wield the enlarged target, this skill may be catastrophic to you. You don't have to make that face, Loretta. I already know. Aha, well not all floor master skill can be to your liking. Um, do your best. Who knows, maybe a day will come when I will use this skill. For reference, I tested it out by gigantifying my spear, but as it became dozens of meters long, I couldn't even grab and swing it. Although my strength was enhanced by the elixirs I had eaten, I would need at least twice my current strength to wield it properly. Since I had received an unexpected gift from the tattoo, I would have to deal with the lackluster set equipment skill. Then are you going to the 46th floor now? Before you go, play with me for a bit. Please. Loretta should be cheering on the warrior, not being spoiled by him is what I want to say, but. When I lengthened my words, Loretta's eyes sparkled and she held my hands tightly. You'll play with me. School starts today. TSK. Loretta's eyes quickly lost their light. She clicked her tongue and let go of my hands. I laughed helplessly and left the dungeon. Since it was only the first lecture, I probably didn't need to go, but I felt it was wrong to miss even a single day of lessons. But when I went down to the first floor, an unexpected sight entered my eyes. Mother was serving tea to Walker, who had his real face showing. Yua was also eating a toast with jam, getting ready to go to school. Walker, why are you here? Your mother invited me. Your family really knows what manner is. That sounds like you're saying I don't have any manners. There's a letter for you. I didn't think you had any overseas friend other than Masterford. Huh? What? I tilted my head and accepted the letter from Walker. It was from America, and the sender's name was also in English. Sierra Kinex. On the other hand, the receiver's name, Kong Shin, was properly written in Korean. I ripped open the envelope, and read the small, pink letter. This was the first line. Dear Earth's Hero. Chapter, 110. After reading the first line, I folded the letter as naturally as I could and put it in my pocket. Then, I casually asked Walker. Walker, have you read the letter? No, so don't kill me. To think he saw through my poker face, it seemed Walker had gone through much training. I smiled at him, signaling him to not say anything, then patted Yua, who was eating her toast. Yua, Appa's off. Okay. 
make sure to tell me if something happens. Since Walker noticed, there was no way that Yua didn't. With a bitter smile, I patted her head again. Of course. It's nothing, so don't worry about it. Ehe. That tickles. See you later, son. Yes, mother. Yua smiled innocently and mother saw me off as if nothing was wrong. The women in my family were all really thoughtful. Although I didn't want to admit it, they were much more refined than father or me, who were the same on the inside as the outside. Though, I was sometimes scared from being unable to read their thoughts. Dear Earth's Hero You must be surprised by the sudden letter, but electronic forms of communication can be intercepted, and I was afraid to send you a telepathic message out of the blue, so I've decided to send you this letter using my acquaintance in Korea. I am Sierra Kinex, S rank awakened residing in America. It is not that I am strong. The reason I became S rank, though it's a bit embarrassing to say myself, is because I have a special ability. Hero Nim, the reason I know about Hero Nim is also because of my ability. It has already been a year since the world changed. I know, I know that you are slowly becoming complete. It is also why I chose to contact you now. I want to meet you. I know about the dungeons that have invaded this world and wish to prepare for it with Hironim. If it's okay with Hironim, can you visit America's S rank field dungeon as Thunder Knight, under the pretense of helping out? In that case, I will be there and visit Hironim. I apologize if it sounds like I am trying to use Hironim's strength. Since I am not in a position to do anything with my body, there, unfortunately, isn't a way for me to visit Hironim myself. I only barely got the permission to visit the field dungeon this time. Usually am. Please. I want to meet you. The second wave will arrive soon. Before it becomes difficult to move again, I want to meet with you. I know you are already busy with something. You can come after you have taken care of it. If you contact the address in this letter, I will make the preparations for you to secretly enter America. Of course, be careful not to reveal too much information. If you do not wish to enter the S rank field dungeon after meeting me, I will take measures for you to go back immediately. So please, trust me and come. With respect and love, Sierra Kinex. Sierra Kinex. I searched her name immediately, but there wasn't any information about her. An S ranker should be well known globally. As there was less than 200 S rankers on Earth, it was only obvious that information about them was widespread. However, there was no info on Sierra Kinex. Almost as if she didn't exist. Almost as if someone had erased any information about her. No one from Earth should know that I'm Earth's hero. Then how did she know? Was she related to the dungeon? No, there were still only six dungeon explorers, and I was fourth in the rankings, behind Waya, Father, and Walker. Below me should be Japan's Minami Violet Sumire, and my friend, Su Yiun. This ranking system didn't care which dungeon we were in, and only estimated our ranking based on the floor we had reached. It was why I was in fourth place. Waya was clearly highest, Father had recently broken through the 50th floor, and Walker was on the 48th floor. Walker seemed to be climbing fast, as he focused his entire afternoon on climbing the dungeon. In any case, this Sierra Kinex wasn't connected to the dungeon. According to her, she knew I was the hero because of her ability. Then should I meet her? It's a bit iffy, but... I didn't know how much she knew about me. Not to mention, she knew about my house address and could deliver a letter through an acquaintance in Korea. I couldn't just say, oh, you know I'm the hero. Let's meet. However, if she found my identity and my house address through her ability, she would undoubtedly appear again unless I went and killed her. After thinking about it for a bit, I concluded that it wasn't something I should be afraid of or back away from. Not to mention, I wanted to visit Wyvern's nest eventually. Did this woman know about that too and was trying to bait me with it? Shin, class is over. Ah, uh, yeah, you're right. Unless the professor was incredibly strict or the class was incredibly difficult, the first class usually ended early after a short orientation. When my head was full with the name Sierra Kinex, Yiun pulled on me. Let's go eat. Alright, but not Korean food. But that's cheaper. 
even if I have to pay ten times more, he'll eat something else. Exchanging small talk, we left the lecture room. When the massacre happened at the business department's MT, everyone was incredibly shocked, but it seemed it was slightly better now after winter break had passed. As a hundred people had died, many people were undoubtedly friends with the deceased students. Of course, that wasn't the case for me. Though I shouldn't be happy about it, I was truthfully happy that I did not have to mourn the death of someone I knew. We had to get used to the world we were living in. Pushing away cancer, heart disease, and other causes of death, monster encounter has become the number one cause of death. We were living in a world where it wasn't weird to hear that a friend had been killed by a monster after waking up in the morning. No matter how active Guardian and Freedom Wing were, they couldn't take care of monsters immediately after they appeared. Hey, do you want to enter a student group? I'd rather focus on the dungeon. Shin, don't you think you should enjoy life a little more? In my life, there's only been training in dungeon. Though, other things are beginning to fill up my life, but college life just isn't for me. Ehu, really, I'm saying the two of us should spend more time together. I'm going to have to refuse. I hate you. Student groups are just people with similar hobbies hanging out and going for drinks. Every break, they'd go to an MT and drink together. If that was all, I was already doing something similar. I fought the floor master with people of similar levels, and drank potions when my HP or MP fell low. When event dungeons happened on earth, I'd go there with my allies and drink potions. It was the same thing. Cool, it'll catch up to you soon, just you wait. I'm almost on the 40th floor. You're defeating all the bosses solo, right? Yeah. Although I'm in a party these days, I temporarily leave it and do it alone first. Yeun complained about Dullahan being tricky to deal with. Listening to her, I estimated her strength, and was sure she reached S rank by now. Even so, the 40th floor master was different than the previous floor masters. 40th floor is especially tricky so be careful. Even if you're hiding, Hell suddenly appear behind you and slash down with his scythe. ITLL be fine if Shin teaches me everything. So, how about tonight, the two of us, Al? You can come back if you die once. Since you can't get the first achievement anyways, it's fine if you die once. Chet, can't you just nicely teach me? You know, this and that. Seeing Yiyun pouting like a duck, I grinned. I felt stupid for worrying about the matter with Sierra Keenex. These days, whenever I talked, I kept finding darkness lurking everywhere and turned gloomy, but I liked Yiyun because it wasn't like that with her. She didn't hide anything, and was simple, honest, and straightforward. Moreover, she genuinely liked me. Maybe meeting Yiyun was the best thing that happened to me from coming to college. Yiyun's murmuring monologue was continuing. We can drink together deep into the night. Do this and that. And ITLL be the next morning. With a smile, I pinched Yiyun's cheeks and pulled on them. Hey, confess your criminal plan now. The severity of your punishment will change depending on your answer. I it's not a criminal plan. It's a family plan. That's even more dangerous. She was also dangerous. Forget darkness, she's pitch black. Dinner time that night, I received a message from Yiyun. It's weird. My party members aren't coming in. Unlike our world, their continent might be busy with something. They might have been called to battle or something so don't worry too much. Okay, but they aren't responding to my messages, so I can't help but worry. I told Yiyun that she didn't need to worry that much. The moment we ended our conversation, I realized I was anxious myself. Damn, it seemed Sheena was already inside my fencing. Ha, huh, I wonder if that princess is okay. I should probably send her a message. I immediately messaged Sheena, but there was no answer. If it was the usual Sheena, she would have replied regardless of whether she was sleeping or in the shower, so this was definitely strange. I was currently in the dungeon's 47th floor. Starting from the 46th floor, the dungeon had become similar to a snowy field. Thanks to my contract with Ryue, I broke through the 46th floor without much difficulty, and was currently breaking through the 47th floor, while fighting ice worms and frozen penguins. 
However, once I started being concerned about Sheena, the spirit in my spear had lessened. Why did I feel so uneasy? I already knew the answer. It was because I remembered the dream I had. No, it can't be. A dream is only a dream. Sheena's fine. She has to be. When I calmed myself and arrived at the 48th floor, a friend had sent me a message. It wasn't long, but it was enough to change my heart for the worse. Luke Continent's hero. Died. The demon lord. Took Sheena. Shin. What do I do? The moment I read the message, I had a hunch. That my peaceful life would soon come to an end. That the unpreventable change was not only happening on earth. Phew, did I succeed in pretending today was about Shin's everyday life and surprising the readers. Who is Sierra Kinex and what will Shin do? Look forward to the development, everyone. Chapter, 111 What? What about you? D Dungeon I ran away to the dungeon. Most of the explorers in the battlefield died, and only Shuna and I managed to escape to the dungeon. I'm scared, I can't go back. E even though I'm the crown princess. Even though I have to be at the battlefield. And the demon lord? He got heavily injured from fighting the hero before squeezing out the last of his strength and turning everyone into stone. Sheena was there. I ran away. While watching everything happen. So Sheena isn't the only one that got captured. Yeah. S. Shin. I, I'm scared. I can't go back to my world. Even over the dungeon's messages, her trembling voice reached me perfectly. I bit my lips, not knowing what to do. After a bit of pondering, I thought that I needed to see her. Where are you? In my house at the residential area. Let's meet first. Okay. I wouldn't be able to focus on breaking through the dungeon in this situation anyways. I immediately headed to the residential area and received her invitation to go to her house. The moment I arrived, Lydia bumped into my chest. No, she had run into my embrace. Thankfully, I wasn't wearing my armor. Lydia. Hick. Hick. Without bursting out into tears, she eked out whimpers as she stayed in my embrace. I could feel my shirt getting wet from her tears. Flustered, I didn't know what to do and could only pat her back as she cried. Lydia stayed like that for a few minutes before she calmed down and got off. Sorry. Lydia's eyes were bloodshot from crying. She then sat on the chair without any strength. Her usual self resembled a cat ready to fight with its hair raised, but she currently looked completely powerless. She must have had no one to turn to if she contacted me. For an instant the absurd thought crossed my mind, but I erased it immediately. I shook my head as if to shake away my delusion and asked her. What about Miss Shuna? Is she also in her house? Shuna's the princess of a small kingdom. She doesn't have the money. She's sleeping here for now, but... Because she isn't a family member, I can't register her. If her vitality hits zero in the dungeon. She'll go back to the Luca continent. Oot. When I said that, Lydia bit her lips. She then covered her face with her hands, and a hot sigh came out between them. The hero died. W what do I do? The continent's hope has disappeared. Although the demon lord got weakened, it won't stay weak forever. What about Sheena? What about father and mother? Our empire's people. They're only looking at me. What about the other explorers? Anyone who survived ran away. The hero was the strongest, but he died. The demon lord's army will finish getting ready soon and attack. Now is the only time to save Sheena. But I can't do it. Lydia, calm down a little. Just because the hero died, it doesn't mean your world is ending. It's ending, Shin. If you die, your world will end too. At her words, I became unable to breathe for an instant. What? Do you mean? I don't know the exact reason, but that's what everyone says. That if the hero dies, his world will fall to ruin without doubt. The hero is the world itself. He is its center and core. As long as the hero is alive, 
the world can continue to endure, but it's over when he dies. There's no chance of survival. My continent will no longer. I couldn't hear Lydia's words very well. The world will end if the hero dies. It sounded like a cruel joke. Can't there be another hero? Can't someone else accept his legacy? Is that why the monsters targeted the hero? To destroy the world. Then if I die, Earth will end. That's why heroes bear such heavy weights. That's why they're strong. That's why you're so charming. Because you need to attract others to you in order to protect yourself. In order to protect the world. I finally understood why my charm stat increased on its own. I didn't want to know, but it was already too late. I felt like something heavy was pressing down on my shoulders. Was I possessed by a ghost? I tried to make a joke, but it wasn't funny at all. I began to realize. The daily life Loretta wanted was getting farther away. I was taken aback by the absurdity, and the strength in my body disappeared. I wanted to flop down onto the ground, but I couldn't because of Lydia, who seemed to lack even more energy. I gritted my teeth and put strength into my body. Lydia was looking at me. She was asking me. Should I go back? Shin, tell me. Can't be the one to tell you. What do you want to do, Lydia? I don't know. Don't ask me such a cruel question. I really don't know. No, in truth, I want to run away. There wasn't much I could do to calm down Lydia in her state of panic. However, because the appearance of lifeless dungeon explorers I've been seeing overlapped with the current Lydia, it was hard for me to leave her alone. Lydia, I can't give you an answer. But I don't want to see you die. Do. You. Lydia looked at me with a surprised expression. I nodded my head seriously. Right. You're a precious friend, so it's only normal that I de worry. Lydia's face turned red. Because of the state of her emotions, I wasn't sure how much it changed. I continued. But I know words can't match actions. Lydia, think carefully. Take the entire day if you need to, and act on it. Are you leaving? Do you want me to stay? She seemed to be deep in thought, then mumbled with her mouth closed. Stay for one night. No, two hours. Okay. Closer. When I approached her, Lydia grabbed onto my sleeve without a word. I pulled a chair and sat down next to her. I was also confused. I needed time to organize my thoughts. Lydia seemed to have relaxed after holding onto my sleeve, as she fell asleep with her head down. Her sleeping appearance was extremely lovely, but it didn't enter my eyes. I contemplated. About me, about the hero, and about Earth. Starting from how I became the hero to if the world would really end when the hero died. I really pondered until my head felt like it would explode. After two hours, I barely managed to arrive at a conclusion. The answer was quite simple. I wouldn't care. I never asked anyone to let me be the hero. I'd just been called hero before I noticed. People might say, you're only strong because you're the hero. But to me, it was a load of bull. Plus, just because I was told that my world would end on the event of my death, it didn't mean that I needed to act any differently. The world will end if I die. What, should I go hide somewhere? Should I just climb the dungeon without risking myself in event raids or field dungeons? No, not even over my dead body. I will do what I want, and no one will stop me. I won't let them. I decided how to live my life. I won't waver because of some nonsense like the world ending if I die. Even if that were true, the world was over for me once I died anyway. Ah, but I still needed to ensure Yua and Mother's safety. As for Father, he would be fine on his own. I had worried for nothing. Now that I thought about it, it was simple. In fact, I felt much better now that I had organized my thoughts, and I felt like I knew what to do from now. First, break through the 48th floor. Then, find out if there's anything I can do for Sheena. I had a strong feeling that there was something I could do. Was this also the hero's ability? Shit, no, I needed to stop thinking about heroes. When I got up, 
Lydia opened her eyes, still half-closed. She looked at me and slowly asked, Are you leaving? Don't. Leave me alone. Stay with me. You have Miss Shuna, Lydia. You're not alone. If you call me later, they'll come running for you. But for now, there's something I need to do. I imbued mana into my bracelet and equipped my armor. In front of Lydia, whose eyes opened wide, I closed the visor of my helmet and grinned. Though, she wouldn't be able to see it. There has to be a way I can help. Don't. You can't. You need to protect your own world. Don't involve yourself with other worlds, stupid. Don't misunderstand. It's not just to help you. Sheen is also my friend, and I don't like seeing you the way you are. I hate seeing people so helpless. So we'll find a way to help you. I'm not doing this to get you to help me. What I want is something else. It was just your warmth. I don't want to drag you to hell because of me. I know. I also know. That people that aren't seeking help from others are the ones who want help most desperately. No. You're wrong. Because she thought it was a hopeless situation, she couldn't so unashamedly reach out for help. However, no matter how hopeless the situation seemed, it might actually be solved easily and simply with the help of others. That had to be why they existed. I ignored Lydia's shouts and left her house. I thought to myself. To look into dimensional mercenaries. After breaking through the 48th floor, I arrived at the floor shop. Was she surprised that I arrived earlier than she expected? While Loretta was frozen for a moment, I asked what I need to. It was about dimensional mercenaries. Loretta became silent at my question. Then, she asked me with a quiet voice. Shin Nim now somewhat knows what kind of an existence the hero is, right? Yes, to a certain extent. Even so, you're trying to become a dimensional mercenary, whose lives can't be guaranteed. Yes. The possibility that you'll die in a dimension other than your own. You've considered it, right? No. I won't die, Loretta. So I haven't considered it. Really. Nobody can stop you. Loretta smiled at my words, then pinched my cheek with a sulking expression. I won't forgive you if you die. They'll follow you to the ends of hell and bother you, okay? Like I said, I won't die. So hurry up and tell me about dimensional mercenaries. There are many requirements to become a dimensional mercenary. First, level. Explorers that aren't gold ranked or level 51 do not have the qualification to become a dimensional mercenary. Second, magic. You need the dimensional travel magic, which serves as the basis of a dimensional mercenary, and the return magic, which acts as the safety device to let dimensional mercenaries return to their home in any situation. Without any of these magic, you cannot become a dimensional mercenary. Third, league. Without having made at least ten achievements and being at least the incarnation of a god, you cannot become a dimensional mercenary. However, Shin Nim has Hermes' true name and have made many achievements, so you already passed this requirement. It'll become gold ranked soon, so all I need is the dimensional travel magic. She grinned and shook her head. There are a few ways you can obtain the dimensional travel magic. But there is one simplest, yet most difficult, method. It's to defeat the 50th floor master alone. Why is that the most difficult? That seems to be the easiest. Shin Nim is the only one who would think that. At Loretta's brusque words, I replied with a vague smile. However, my heart was burning. Dimensional mercenary. I was only a step away from becoming one. Feeling like fate was guiding me. I felt dirty. However, there was no choice for now. I'd make use of anything I could. First with the 50th floor. The day I would become first dungeon's gold rank explorer was approaching. Few were going back to battles. Look forward to the 50th floor master. Chapter 112 The 50th floor master is weaker than the Grim Reaper, so I'm sure you can defeat him easily. 49th floor shop I narrowed my eyes at Loretta's words. I just gave you 50,000 gold for the information on the boss, right? And I told you that you can easily step on that weakling. 
who's the one that said it was the simplest, yet most difficult, method? I meant for the other explorers. There's no way Shin Nim would lose to that fur ball. Loretta spoke as if it was obvious, and lay on the bed she prepared behind the floor shop's counter. Even though she was clearly lying down, a certain part of her was shooting up. I quickly turned my gaze. Thankfully, it seemed Loretta didn't notice me. So hurry up. If your vitality hits zero, you should you won't be able to save your friend, right? That only adds pressure without helping. However, if Loretta said it was easy, it truly was easy. I doubted whether her words were worth 50,000 gold, but considering that she usually gave me huge discounts, I only complained a little before climbing to the 50th floor. The earlier I could become a dimensional mercenary and head to Luka continent, the better it was. The key to victory was to attack the enemy when their forces were weak. When I arrived at the 50th floor, I immediately materialized Ryua and put a mana potion in my mouth. Uhuhu, what a wonderful human. Come play with me. On the 50th floor, a strange monster other than ice worms, frozen pangs, and frozen bears appeared. It was the snow woman from Japanese folk tale. As I observed them, I wondered if a monster like Korea's Dakibi would appear on higher floors. They were all wearing white dresses, had long hair, and were showing off their beautiful appearances. You defend against the charm status effect. Even though I didn't do anything, loud alerts were ringing in my ear. I was wondering why they were just standing there, but they were using status effect attacks. For a second, I questioned how father got through this floor and thought I may need to tell mother about it. Then, I pierced the frozen pangs and frozen bears that approached me with my spear. That man is strong. Kook, he didn't fall for my charm. How humiliating. But I, I like that man. The skill, succubus pupils, reflects the status effect back. The snow woman has been charmed. Child, why don't you play with me? Come. Hey, you guys, stop trying to get in my way. Kayak, she's gone crazy. She's attacking us. Her eyes are completely gone. Defend. While the snow women were dealing with each other, I leisurely cut down the other monsters, then pierced the snow women afterward. Kook, you killed us without hesitation. Sorry, but appearances don't shake me anymore. Although the snow woman was charmed, it was a status effect. As she wasn't tamed or anything, the status effect would eventually run out. As such, I killed all the snow women and advanced forward. Although I felt dirty as it felt like I was cutting human beings, I had long since passed the stage where something like that bothered me greatly. The 46th through 50th floors were made of snowy fields. As such, explorers had to care for the environment along with the monsters they had to fight. However, because of my contract with Ryue, the environment caused little issue for me. However, the 50th floor was strange. It became colder the further I walked. Shin, are you okay? It'll try harder. No, Ryue. I don't think it's your fault. Was it because of the battle room where the floor master was waiting? Or was it some other reason? I tightened my grip on Gluttony Spear. For an instant, a chill swept over us. If I, who contracted Ryue, could feel chill, it only made one thing. The blood on your spear. It comes from us snow women. Are you the snow woman captain? I raised my spear and aimed it in the sky. Thousands and thousands of black hair filled the sky, like the night had just arrived on the snowy field. Floating in the center was an incredibly gorgeous woman. Conceited human who dreams of land beyond this place, I will collect my fellow snow women's cost of blood. Kook. Sorry, but I don't have time to be listening to you monsters. Using divine speed, I ran forward and drilled my spear into the snow woman's chest with heroic strike. Divine speed, which multiplied my speed, had greater effect the faster I was. As my speed had increased 45% by now, I moved like I was teleporting when I used divine speed. A mere 50th floor named monster could not block my attack. Kook. S. Strong. You, her. Sorry, I don't have time to listen to your last words either. I slashed her neck without a shred of hesitation. A small fanfare rang out, 
indicating that I had killed a named monster. Before that, however, a message that alerted the increase of my skill level rang out. Divine speed became level 6. By using 15% of your mana, your speed is multiplied by 700% for one second. Divine speeds become level 6 now. 700% for one second. With my basic 45% speed increase, I could move for 1015% of my speed when I activated divine speed. Perhaps I should focus more on my divine speed skill. In any case, I had received something in my inventory. You obtained Snow Woman's Breath Imbued Ice Crystal Unique. Snow Woman's Breath Imbued Ice Crystal Unique. Consumable item. Activatable by hitting the target with it. Completely ignores the target's resistance and freezes the target. After 5 seconds, the target may become unfrozen, depending on the resistance. As it seemed like a complete cheat item, I enshrined it in my inventory and count out to it. Then, I walked to the floor master battle room with vigor. The temperature had also gone back to normal, so I was able to arrive at my destination in just a few hours without much trouble. The door was made out of ice. I could feel a large, ferocious aura leaking out from it. It seemed to be giving a warning, as if I shouldn't think about challenging it alone. I slammed open the door without any hesitation. Fight me. Goo. The floor master room did not betray theme of 46th through 50th floor, as it was also a snowy field. I saw trees and boulders covered in snow, and even the ceiling was missing, as snow was falling from the wide open sky. Most importantly, I saw the large creature roaring from beyond the hill in the distance. It was a giant that was at least 7 meters in size. It had desiccated skin pulled tightly over its bones, pale ash gray skin, and a large head that did not match its body. Its eyes were pushed back deep into their sockets. Looking at its bloody lips, I realized what it was. Wendigo. It was a creature of legends from Canadian and American Indians folklore. It was known for its cannibalistic nature. Was there a well-known method of fighting him? No. Goo. The Wendigo charged at me with an incredible speed. Although it was gaunt, its large size was enough to shake the earth and cause snow to fall from the snowy mountain. I fixed my grip on my spear and glanced at him from top to bottom. Where was the most effective place for me to attack? What kind of special abilities would it have? What were its weapons? Who, first, let's fight. Thunder Spear. Pika, who was getting stronger by the day, created a spear of lighting in the air, sending it flying toward the Wendigo. Surprisingly, the lightning spear struck its forehead. The Wendigo's evasive ability was crap. Only its running speed was fast. Goo. Come. I also rushed forward on Ryue. I had first met Ryue in a snowy field. She could bring out her ability to the fullest in this environment. Her speed became faster and faster, and when we neared the Wendigo, she had long passed the Wendigo speed. The surrounding mana began to shake when I neared him. At the same time, Frost appeared on my armor. In other words, it had an absurd ability of freezing anyone that approached it. Auu. However, it had met the wrong opponent. Ruyue was an ice elemental. As the Wendigo poured out more freezing energy, Ruyue became bigger and her energy became stronger. The frost that bloomed on my armor had also disappeared before I noticed it. I feel full of strength. Why are you giving me strength? The Wendigo seemed to be flustered when we weren't frozen, as it raised its large arms and swung them down toward us. However, it was my turn to attack him. Ruyue, can you focus on defense? Pika, we're going full strength. Okay. Understood, master. I decreased the amount of mana I gave to Ryue, and poured more into my spear, which Pika was infused in. Wendigo's large face was glaring at me. Its arms missed me and hit the ground, creating a small snowstorm around us, but I calmly stared back at its face. Goo. Sorry, but I don't have the time to play with you slowly. I'm in a hurry, you see. I smiled. The spear I held became a white bolt of lightning and radiated dazzling light in the completely white snowy area. It pierced the Wendigo's eye and became even bigger. So let's wrap this up. 
Dark thunder explosion. Before it could see the white aura in my spear and say, what, this guy was the hero. I went all out. Enjoy this festival of lighting strengthened by the power of a lightning elemental. B b b b boom. Qua. Admiring the Wendigo scream, I continued with white lightning consecutive strike. My goal was its right arm. The best way to deal with large monsters was to disable their limbs one by one. With that, not only would they be unable to attack me, their HP and resistance would also decrease, making it easy for me to cut their heads off. It was something I learned from fighting the giant wolf. Gua. Won't. Stop. Hitting. Until. You. Die. White lightning consecutive strike. In exactly 26 minutes since I entered the floor master battle room, the Wendigo fell helplessly without even using all of its abilities. It had ended so quickly that it did not even use even one of Floor Master specific skills. This guy was just too weak. You became level 51. You obtained the qualification to advance to the 51st floor. You obtained 5 bonus stats. You became Gold Rank 9. You became a Gold Ranked Explorer. You can now appoint an additional person to be an Explorer. You can strengthen your current class and you can obtain another subclass. Amazing. You are the first in first dungeon's history to succeed in soloing the Wendigo on the first try. The dungeon will remember you as a great explorer. You obtain two skill point as reward. You can choose God's true name that matches your league. Current skill points, 20. Your league of existence became higher, strengthening Hermes authority. Talaria's duration increases to 30 minutes per day. You obtained a new authority of Hermes, Caduceus. You obtained the title, Wendigo Master. All stats increase by 2. This effect will apply even if the title is not equipped. You defeated the Wendigo alone. You obtained the special reward, Wendigo's fur hat. You obtained 250,000 gold. You received the only reward left hidden for the first explorer. Congratulations. Your luck stat increases by 1. Secret. Dimensional Travel Magic Book. You can choose one of two gods' true names. Choose the desired true name, the god of thunder, Thor, or the sky god Zeus. Once chosen, you cannot obtain the other's true name, so choose carefully. Eh. What was that? A new god's true name. Chapter, 113. The two gods are very prideful. Hesitation is not allowed with their true names on the line. If you don't make your decision in the next 10 seconds, you will miss your opportunity to obtain either name. W.O. Let me get out of here first. No, no matter how fast I was, there wasn't enough time to ask Loretta. Damn it. Should I choose Thor, known for his strength? Or should I choose Zeus, known as the king of the gods? Damn, without any knowledge of the dungeon, I didn't know which was better in the long run. No choice, you'll flip a coin. Heads will be Thor, and tails with B. It's tails. Zeus. You obtained the true name of Sky God Zeus. As you've already adapted to the true name of Hermes, you can adapt to Zeus' power more quickly. The God of Thunder, Thor, is shocked that you did not choose his true name. Gods close to him have begun to observe you. Your strength and charm increase by 15%. All stats increase by 5. Affinity to all elements increases. Additionally, your affinity to the lightning element increases greatly. Your body seethes with magic. Your magic increases by 20. Once per day, you can use Sky God's play. While Sky God's play is active, you can freely transform into anything you have seen with your eyes and will absolutely not be discovered. You will still maintain your abilities, but equipment effects cannot be used if they are unequipped. The skill will last for one hour. Once per month, you can use Sky God's Rage. You can manifest Zeus' lightning bolt of punishment, forged by Hephaestus and the Cyclopes, into your weapon. Its power is absolute and may even slay a god but when the lightning bolt is used against an unsuitable opponent, you will have to pay the price of your actions. I became dizzy and couldn't help but kneel in place. 
My body was unbearably hot. PZZT. A spark flickered from my body. Kook, it was painful. It was incomparable to the feeling of leveling up. It felt like someone was forcefully pulling on me. I, who was confined in a small and narrow body, was being spread out into a bigger and wider realm. All my energies were going wild in all directions. Although I couldn't perceive it before, because Hermes' power had gotten stronger, it was even worse. I see, so this is what Loretta meant. In the past, when I obtained Hermes' power, she was relieved that it wasn't the true name of a god related to battle, war, or violence. She said I wouldn't have been able to handle it. Now, I fully understood what she meant. If it was the past me, my vitality would have hit zero the moment I received Zeus' true name and I would have been kicked out of the dungeon. I might have even received heavy injuries after returning to Earth. Zeus' power was that fierce, large, and violent. For the next few dozens of minutes, I circulated per Yuta circuit with my hands on the ground, trying to adapt to Zeus' power. Although the wild energies around me raved without yielding to per Yuta circuit, the more I circulated per Yuta circuit, the more they began to listen to me. I felt relieved and finally became stable enough to read the messages I had gotten. First, Zeus' transformation ability in lightning. The transformation ability seemed to have countless uses. As for the lightning, although it had a tricky condition and could be used only once per month, its power was undoubtedly something I could look forward to. Not to mention, since it was a lightning attribute attack, it could be amplified with Pika's power. It suited me perfectly. Next were the effects of Zeus' true name. The increase to all stats was the same as Hermes' effect, but the 15% strength increase was astounding. Just like the Hermes title increased the speed of my body by 15%, the Zeus title increased the strength in all my movements by 15%. It was incomparable to my strength stat increasing by some amount. With this and the other abilities I received. Couldn't I call myself an SS ranker? When the thought crossed my mind, my heart began to pound. It was possible. With Zeus' true name, the amount of mana I had shot up and my affinity to lightning increased to the point that my elementalist powers could not keep up with it. Fighting with Ryue previously, I felt that my connection with Ryue was deeper than my connection with Pika, but it seemed it was instantly reversed. I could feel with my body that Pika's destructive power had increased significantly. As I was now, I felt like I could deal a critical blow to Brightman, that lovable bastard. No, first, I have to save Sheena. Don't rush it. I didn't have to hurry to beat up Brightman. Not to mention, I wasn't completely sure I could win against him. Plus, I wasn't sure if Brightman was evil enough that Sky God's lightning would work on him. No, since he tried to kill me, he had attempted murder. Maybe it would work on him. I cooled my vengeful mind and focused on Pryuta circuit. While reading the rest of the messages, I found something strange. Charm. Why did my charm increase? A thought then flashed in my mind. Zeus was known for cheating on his wife Hera and having children with other women. Was that why my charm increased? Doubtful, I held my spear blade up and looked at my reflection. Thankfully, I didn't look or feel any different. I found it absurd that I was even considering it, but I would be troubled if any more girls said they liked me. My head was already a mess from Loretta and Yiyun. Next is. Dimensional Travel. The reward for Wendigo's first achievement, Dimensional Travel Magic Book. Its name clearly revealed its identity. I picked up the magic book without much thought, and in that instant, I felt a new power being vested in me, along with a tingling sensation. If obtaining Zeus' power felt like standing on a hill where lightning fell like rain, the feeling from just now was like dunking my feet into icy water. You learn Dimensional Travel Magic. Once every three months, you can travel to the dimension of someone on your friend list. Once used, you cannot use this magic again during the cooldown period no matter what. It is recommended that you prepare a precautionary measure. The number of people you can bring with you increases and the cooldown time decreases with skill level. You can become a dimensional mercenary. Ask the residential area administrators for more info. Yes. I clenched my fists. I obtained the qualifications to become a dimensional mercenary too easily. 
Plus, I had even received unexpected powers. Although I told myself not to get overconfident, I couldn't calm down. It was dangerous. Was it because Hermes' power and Zeus' power were going wild? This damned sense of omnipotence wasn't disappearing, even though it wasn't my real self that got stronger. Now that I thought about it, I had not even checked Hermes' new power, Caduceus. I checked the description for Caduceus and my eyes opened wide. This was. A cheat. I left the floor master room. I wanted to report to Loretta about obtaining a new god's true name, about the class upgrade for becoming gold ranked and also about the additional subclass I could obtain. However, when Loretta saw me, she acted strangely. The moment she looked at me, she slowly got up from her bed, then let out a short sigh. Then, she approached me. Hugh. Loretta. Shin Nim, tell me straight out. What happened to you? El Loretta. I should be asking what happened to you. Why are you approaching me? Tell me quickly. My self-control as the elf queen is being disrupted. Keep in mind that this is not normal. As she directly said her self-control was being disrupted, Loretta was approaching me with the eyes of a beast following its prey. Come on, tell me. We're both going to be too busy to listen in a bit, so I want to at least hear what happened before I completely lose my reason. No. You sound like you're more than capable of maintaining your reason. What do you mean well be too busy to listen? What are you trying to do? This woman, she lost it. For a moment, I considered using Orc Lord's war cry. Thankfully, after Loretta had forcefully taken off my armor, I managed to bring her back to reality with a full force whack on her head. Hook. What did I just do? Don't hold on to my collar as you say that. Let go. No, since we've already come this far. Do you need me to hit you again? TSK, you coward. Loretta, that's enough. It's really scary. So. How are you emitting so much charm that you can even pierce my mental defense? It's even continuous and not a one-shot. I told Loretta everything that happened. Her expression when I told her I got a second god's true name was quite a sight. When I told her I chose Zeus between Thor and Zeus, she let out a long sigh. That's good. I'm relieved. Is Thor that bad? Yes. Objectively speaking, he falls a step behind Zeus. If you obtain Thor's true name, you might have gotten stronger in the short term, but that would be it. In the long run, Zeus' true name will be several times stronger. Olympian gods are generally above Asgardian gods. It's because they are immortal. Ah. Right. Gods from Greek mythology were immortal. However, gods from Norse mythology were fated to die from Ragnarok, and only a small number of gods survived Ragnarok. So the fates of the gods from mythologies affected their power. You did well. You just have to continue like that. Hey race a question. If Shin Nim had the opportunity to choose between Odin and Ares' true name, who should you choose? Ares, right? No, it's Odin. Why? Because the kings of gods are different. How can you compare Ares and Odin? Shin Nim already has Hermes and Zeus' true name. If you get another chance to choose between two gods' true names, you need to thoroughly compare their abilities and affinity to you. Ah, this doesn't mean Shin Nim can obtain Odin's true name. There's already an explorer who has Odin's true name. Loretta? Loretta's complexion turned dark for a moment, so I couldn't help but call out her name. At my worried call, Loretta raised her head and smiled. Alright, next was. Your class. Yes. My main class as an elementalist could be strengthened. I thought it was like the second class advancement in games. However, just like how there were requirements for one to get their second class advancement in games, there were requirements I had to fulfill to advance my elementalist class. The biggest requirement was my skills. Regarding this, Loretta said I didn't need to be impatient, as my ability would automatically improve when the requirements were met. More important was the subclass. According to Loretta, explorers did not get many chances to obtain subclasses. As such, we had to try to get them when we could. As such, 
I chose Tamer as my second subclass. You obtained the Tamer subclass. Your charm and luck increase by 10 through the class advancement bonus. You obtain the class active skill, Taming. Taming is based on your charm. The higher the skill level, the higher your charm, the more weakened your target is and the greater the disparity between you and your target strength, the higher your chance of success will be. The chance of success also increases if your target is the opposite sex. When taming succeeds, you can command your target as a subordinate, and you can completely turn your target into your follower by deepening the bond and giving the target a name. You obtain the class passive skill, Spirit of the Tamer. It becomes easier to alleviate your target's hostility and to increase their disposition towards you. The potency and number of tameable targets increase with skill levels. Current tameable targets, 2. Your tamed subordinates can accompany you in event dungeons and the normal dungeon. However, your subordinates cannot come back to life once they die, so be careful. Feeling the tamer's power being vested in me, I opened my eyes. I had made all the preparations that I could. I took care of the matter with the floor master, the god's true name, and my new subclass. All that was left to do was to become a dimensional mercenary. When I was about to head to the residential area, Loretta grabbed my shoulders. Her eyes were flashing fearfully. Where are you going in that state? Huh? Why? You need to do something about that charming aura. If you go out like this, you'll bring about a total calamity. That's probably not right. Because Loretta liked me. Though it was a bit embarrassing to say, it was because Loretta saw me favorably that she went crazy. However, no matter what I said, Loretta would not let go. In the end, I gave up. Okay. Fine, he'll do it. Just like that, I had to take 30 minutes out of my busy schedule to learn how to conceal my charm. Like the old saying went, good news always came with bad news. Shin flipped a coin. A lot of people chipped in their opinions, and many made great points. Although Thor seemed to be better in terms of brute strength, Zeus' immortality and his main weapon lightning suited Shin well. In truth, I thought Thor and Zeus were both a good match, but an overwhelming number of people wanted Zeus. Cough. It has nothing to do with the fact that he's a womanizer. Shin will become a dimensional mercenary in the... Wait, Sheena. For the record, Thor's true name's effects were, 25% strength increase, 10% intelligence decrease, summoning Mjolnir, etc. Chapter, 114 Thirty minutes later, I headed to the residential area's trading center with Loretta, who was too worried to send me alone. At the trading center, I saw a hobgoblin looking over documents as always. Explorers moved busily, trying to sell their items directly or through auctions and also registering themselves on the notice board. Feeling the numerous gazes that fell on us the moment we appeared, I walked toward the trading center's administrator. Oh if it isn't Kong Shin. And Guildmaster. The one in charge of the trading center today wasn't Meladel, but a ladle. Although I couldn't really tell them apart, Loretta was there to whisper to me. She's linking arms with Kong Shin. Who, right? I remember. Hello, the ladle. I'm sorry but there's something I'd like to ask. As he was grinning while looking at Loretta, I turned his attention toward me. Are you two getting married? Yeah, we're doing it now. No, we're not. At the word married, Loretta became overly excited and pulled on my arm. I flicked her head lightly and calmed her down. I want to become a dimensional mercenary. You, aren't you a hero? Yes. I know what a hero is too. I want to become a dimensional mercenary. That's something I can't recommend. A hero working as a dimensional mercenary. I've never heard of it before. Although dimensional mercenaries work in a certain degree of safety, if you, a hero of a world, dies in another world. I want die. Plus, imagining myself with a collar on my neck just because I'm a hero gives me goosebumps. If you say no, they'll give up being a hero. If it's something you can give up so easily, heroes wouldn't have agonized for such a long time. Iladil, do as he says. Shin Nim has the right to do as he wishes, and you don't have the right to stop him. 
Loretta bluntly spoke to Eladil who seemed to be hesitating. Perhaps Loretta followed me because she knew Eladil would be troubled at my request. Guildmaster. Is that what you think? Yes. It's not like Shin Nim asked to be the hero. Plus, Shin Nim said he would be a dimensional mercenary. Dimensional mercenaries are existences that both the dungeon and worlds need. As dangerous as it is, the reward is also big. We should respect Shin Nim's courage. Even if you say that, being a dimensional mercenary is dangerous. I can only see his courage as foolish. You, are you not projecting someone else onto him? Do you want to die, Eladil? Startled, I unlinked Loretta's arms from mine. I felt that Loretta had said something that didn't suit her in the slightest. The Loretta just now did not seem like the Loretta I knew. I couldn't stay still, as she seemed too unfamiliar. I could tell that Eladil's body also froze when he heard her. When I was about to instinctively distance myself from Loretta, she had gone back to her smiling face. It was the Loretta that I knew. Don't say such a cruel joke. There's no way I can compare Shin Nim with anyone. I it was my bad, guild master. Don't say that from now on, okay? Yes. As Aladdle answered, still trembling from before, Loretta linked her arm back onto mine tightly, as if to prevent me from running away. I hesitated a little, then softly stroked her arm. Loretta was Loretta. She had things she didn't want to tell me and appearances she didn't want to show me. Without a doubt, some of them would provoke a certain degree of repulsion from me. However, the Loretta that didn't know what to do because I had discovered it was the Loretta I knew. I won't run away, so you don't have to grab onto me so strongly. Really? Loretta turned toward me and asked with worrying eyes. I lightly smiled and nodded my head. Of course. Then do you want to go to the wedding hall like this? No. After confirming that I had met the requirements to become a dimensional mercenary, becoming one was easy. I just had to submit an application. You became a dimensional mercenary. You can now accept requests and receive rewards as a dimensional mercenary. When I was blankly listening to the message that I had become a dimensional mercenary, Eladil gave me an additional explanation. In the first dungeon, there are currently 57 active dimensional mercenaries. You will, of course, become the youngest of them. Dimensional mercenaries can accept requests from the residential area's request notice board. Where do requests come from? Most of the time, an explorer in need of dimensional mercenaries submits a request application to the administrative guild, and if the guild see that it is appropriate, the request will appear on the notice board. Then, any dimensional mercenary can accept the request. In some cases, the requests come from the dungeon. In this case, the job will be extremely difficult, so you'll have to prudent when accepting such requests. What about the rewards? Isn't it obvious? Depending on the results and the level of one's contribution, the dungeon will provide gold, stat points, skill points, skills, or magic. You can even obtain special equipment. There are also cases where the requester gives additional rewards as thanks. The rewards were indeed attractive, especially the stat points and skill points. I could see why others worked as dimensional mercenaries. I then asked. What happens if you give up and return? Simple. You won't be able to accept another request for half a year. It's the duration of dimensional travel's cooldown time. Dimensional travel's cooldown time was half a year. Mine was undoubtedly half of that, three months. Plus, the cooldown time would decrease when the skill level went up. It was then that I remembered that I was the first explorer to defeat Wendigo alone on my first try. That was probably where the difference came from. That said, didn't that mean there was practically no penalty? That's it. Remember this, Kong Shin. Dimensional mercenaries are in a dominant position over the requesters. They're only working to get the skills and stats the dungeon will provide. Unless the requester provides an extremely attractive reward, they will do as they want. Feeling my image of dimensional mercenaries as superheroes shattering, I continued. One last thing. How do I check the requests? As long as you're within the residential area, you can call the request notice board at any time and check it there. That's also a special right given to dimensional mercenaries. 
With that, I had heard everything I wanted to. I nodded my head, thanking him, then immediately opened the request notice board. Lydia most likely did not put in a request. However, Lydia and Shuna couldn't be the only survivors of Luca Continent. As I thought, there was a recent request by a Luca Continent explorer. After reading it, I nodded my head. The contents matched what I hoped to do. To save the Luca Continent's kidnapped princess. If you accept the request, you will arrive at the Awer Empire. Upon completing the request, you can take any item from the Imperial Palace's treasure vault. I, Awer Empire's Kiro's Knight Commander bellowed, promise. The Demon Lord has been gravely injured by the hero, so I can guarantee that you will not need to fight the Demon Lord. However, you may need to fight high-ranking demons, so only those confident in their abilities should come. On the day of Polia, six in the afternoon, we will depart together. Reading the request, I took a deep breath, then accepted it. You accepted Bellowed Irao's request. Including you, twelve-dimensional mercenaries have accepted the request so far. I was relieved. Perhaps it was because they did not need to fight the Demon Lord, but quite a few dimensional mercenaries had accepted the request. Of course, if the situation became dangerous, they would leave Luca Continent, but I was relieved that there were still so many of them. With a cheery voice, I messaged Lydia. Lydia, I became a dimensional mercenary. I'm going to your continent to save Sheena. Stupid, it's dangerous. Don't come. Don't come. Don't tell me, you. Lydia answered after a bit of silence. Right. I return to the Luca continent. You. Even if my world will collapse, I can't just stay still when my sister's been kidnapped. If I run, I won't be able to live a proper life. So I'm going to go save Sheena. It seemed she had already made up her mind. Although she was trembling after the hero fell, she was now burning, as if she was prepared to die. Not looking after her own safety was foolish, yet it was incredibly beautiful and worthy of respect. Rather than being touched, however, my sense of unease was greater. It was becoming more and more like the situation from my dream. I asked. Are your parents fine? Yeah, they're both armed, fighting against the invading demons with the Empire's knights and magicians. After all, they're both first dungeon explorers. That's the first time I heard about that, but that's good to hear. It seemed not everything was like my dream. A dream was a dream. Not everything from it could be the truth. After all, the Ludia from my dream had big breasts. T they're going to get bigger. I'm still growing. Plus, the size of my breasts has nothing to do with you. And nothing at all. Not even a little. Ah, uh, I accidentally sent that as a message. But Lydia, I don't think there's any chance that your breasts will get any bigger. In any case, I raised my voice to cover my mistake. Anyways, I'm going. Let me help you. Don't come. If it's doable with just you, then it's fine even if you're not here. And if we're going to fail. You being there won't make it a success. No, I'm coming. I can't leave you alone. It seemed Lydia was still underestimating me. I had many trump cards in my arsenal. I doubted I could do anything against the Demon Lord, but I at least had ways to turn the battlefield around completely. However, Lydia didn't respond. Lydia? UK? You stupid. I'm Awer Empire's crown princess. No one's going to leave me alone. Why you're self-conscious? Her voice was shaking slightly as she responded. I may have made her angry. Even so, I had no intention of backing down. It'll be there soon, wait for me. You can come if you want to come so much. It's not my problem if you die though. I don't care about your world at all. After shouting, Lydia hung up. I grinned and checked my equipment. Next to me, Loretta was standing there with worried eyes. If it gets dangerous, you have to use return without hesitation, okay? Do you have enough potions? You might have to sleep outside, so should I let you borrow my bed? You want me to sleep outside on a bed? It's fine. I have a sleeping bag and tent in my inventory. Are you missing anything? You should check one more time. Ah, 
now that you mention it. There was something I decided to do before I left. Since I didn't know what would happen, I wanted to make myself as strong as possible. There was one thing I could do now. It was to raise my skill levels. The one evidence no one expected, showing Shin's dream wasn't absolute. Damn, I at least wanted that part to be true. Chapter, 115 Using skill points, I could raise the level of a skill by one. According to Loretta, however, every time you used skill points to increase the level of a skill, you would need double the amount of skill points the next time you wanted to raise its level. It may not seem like a big deal, but it was. The first time it would be one skill point, but it would then be two, four, eight, and so on. To raise a single skill by five levels, you would need 31 skill points. As such, I had decided to save them for when I felt my growth was stunted. Of course, now was an exception. I currently had 20 skill points. Even if I needed to exhaust them, I needed to make myself stronger. First, one into spear technique. My spear technique recently became high rank level 6. With one point, it would become high rank level 7. Spear technique skill became high rank level 7. External mana will naturally flow into your attacks without the use of your own mana. The chance of critical hits increases greatly when stabbing with your spear. As you forcefully raise your level of attainment with a skill point, it may take some time for your body to adapt to the skill level. I felt like my body was being pressed strongly, like someone was trying to forcefully stuff me with the concept of getting stronger. To be honest, it wasn't a good feeling. If possible, I wanted to rely on my own strength to increase my spear technique levels. No, I just need to completely learn it with my body. Perhaps it was the flaw of using skill points. I got the feeling that I couldn't fully utilize the power of my high rank level 7 spear technique. Like it said, it seemed I needed some time to adapt I fell deep into thought. I originally wanted to master my spear technique, but if it was like this, there was no meaning to mastering my spear technique with skill points. This sense of unfamiliarity and distance would only increase if I raised my spear technique level more. And it would take even longer for me to adapt to the level of attainment a true spear technique master should have I would at least be unable to fully utilize the power of a spear technique master during the request. In that case, it was probably better to raise other skill levels. Otherwise, the results might be worse than throwing away the skill points. I wanted to raise my elemental contract skill to contract another elemental, but my elemental contract skill was currently mid-rank level 4. Even if I used all my skill points, I could not bring it up to level 9. As such, this was not the best idea. I had to think of another method. A skill that could have immediate effects with increased skill level, something that I did not need to adapt to. A thought then flashed in my mind like lightning. Divine speed. Alright, one for now. Divine speed became level 7. When used, it uses 14% of your mana to multiply your speed by 750% for 1. 5 seconds. Hook. No way. At level 6, in multiplied by speed by 700% for 1 second. The increase was just too big. Plus, just like I thought, this skill didn't take time for me to adapt to it. This was it. As if I was possessed by something, I continued to use my skill points. Divine Speed became level 8. When used, it uses 13% of your mana to multiply your speed by 800% for 2 seconds. Divine Speed became level 9. When used, it uses 12% of your mana to multiply your speed by 900% for 2. 5 seconds. With the point I used to raise my spear technique level, I had used 8 skill points so far. I still had 12 left. I only needed 8 skill points to master divine speed. There was no need to hesitate. I could clearly see the shocking increase every time the skill level went up. I then used 8 skill points on divine speed. You mastered divine speed. When used, it uses 10% of your mana to multiply your speed by 1000% for 3 seconds. Your affinity to the wind element increases greatly. I let out a long sigh. Using 10% of my mana to multiply my speed by 1000% for 3 seconds. 
It was worth, no, more than worth the skill points I had spent. Plus, mastering it also raised my affinity to the wind element greatly. This. This might even be stronger than all of my other abilities combined. I had a 145% base speed increase, which became 1450% when multiplied by 10. With divine speed, the destructive power of my attacks would not be as simple as my speed increasing. Of course, it would be difficult for me to adapt to the speed that was 14. 5 times faster. My opponent might have a defense skill or a skill that increased their own speed, so I couldn't say this skill would be invincible. Even so, it was clear that this skill would become one of my main skills. It would let me output an overwhelming destructive force, and if it only used 10% of my mana, I would be able to use it without much burden. Alright, now I had 4 points left. First, I put a point into Peruta circuit. I suspected that it was similar to spear technique in that putting another point in was discouraged. Pryuta circuit became level 6. You can more easily maintain Pryuta circuit during battle. Your circulation speed increases and draws in more mana. While Pryuta circuit is active, rotational force will be added to all your movements, greatly increasing their destructive power. As expected, it was hard to say Pryuta circuit had grown completely. I had the feeling I was wearing armor that didn't fit me. That said, there was a clear difference between level 5 and level 6 Pryuta circuit. It became easier to gather mana during combat and rotational force would be added to all movements. I realized why Pryuta was so proud of this technique. It even made me consider raising its skill level again. However, I held myself back. Whether Pryuta circuit or my spear technique, any more would make it hard for me to handle their change. I was afraid that it might even harm my techniques. Most importantly, there was a skill I wanted to raise with the remaining skill points. Soul Guard became level 4. Your soul's lead grows higher, making you unfazed by standard mental attacks. Soul Guard became level 5. Your soul's lead grows higher, making you overwhelm others naturally and giving you a small resistance against mental and even magical attacks. The chance of receiving critical hits decreases. Hoo-hoo, it really is an amazing skill. I still wasn't confident in my mental defenses. What I had to watch out for the most in Luka Continent weren't things I could not handle with my physical ability, but mental attacks. Of course, if I could completely adapt to Spear Technique or Peruta Circuit, I would have chosen one to put all my skill points into, but that wasn't the case. As such, I decided to increase my Soul Guard skill. The result was more than satisfactory. I didn't think I would even get resistance against magical attacks. As expected of a secret reward. Confirming that my choice hadn't been wrong, I checked my stats with all the changes. Name, Kong Shin Race, Human Sex, Male. Class, Elementalist Sub Skill Collector, Tamer Title, Zeus Rank, Gold 9. Level, 51. HP 27, 65027, 650 MP 21, 86021, 860. Strength 14981, Dexterity 14049, Constitution 12951. Intelligence 3244, Magic 13169, Charm 8784, Luck 3934. Normal Skills High Rank Martial Arts LV4, High Rank Spear Technique LV7, Low Rank Crossbow Marksmanship LV9, Low Rank Gale Track LV2, Mid Rank White Lightning Consecutive Strike LV3, Mid Rank Heroic Strike LV8. Midrank Provoke LV6, Divine Speed Master, Return LV4, Heavy Armor Mastery LV3, Midrank Dash LV4, Pryuta Circuit LV6, Soul Guard LV5, Dimensional Travel LV1, Deific Manifestation, Death Counter, Riding. Class Skills Midrank Spirit Mastery LV7, Midrank Spirit Aura LV4, Midrank Elemental Control LV4, Midrank Elemental Contract LV4, Midrank Elemental Blade LV2, Midrank Elemental Tempest LV4, Thunder Beast LV2. Subclass Skill Endow Skill, Taming LV1, Spirit of the Collector, Spirit of the Tamer LV1. Equipment Golden Teardrop Intelligence 5, Magic 5, Charm 15. Can use Succubus Pupils. Blood Succubus Earring Magic 15, Intelligence 5, Charm 20. 
emits a scent that easily attracts members of the opposite sex. Flesh Golem Second Finger Strength 7, Constitution 7. Can use regeneration. Crimson Dragon Scale Armor All Stats 10, Strength 10, Dexterity 10. Effect of Charge Type Skills 60%. Can use Crimson Roar. Red Dragon Felix's Cape Dexterity 15, Magic 15, Charm 15. Immune to temperature-based status effects. Three times a day, it protects its master from unforeseen attacks. Crimson Gluttony Spear Strength 30, Fire Damage added to all basic attacks, can inflict burn status effect. Tattoo. Giant Wolf's Tattoo Speed 30%, Attack Power of Charge Type Skills 50%. Collector's Pocket Watch. 1 o'clock, Orc Lord's War Cry. 2 o'clock, Vengeful Spirit's Wail. 3 o'clock, Dark Thunder Explosion. 4 o'clock, Dragon Skin. 5 o'clock, Die Hard. 6 o'clock, Undead Roar. 7 o'clock, Outburst. 8 o'clock, Shadow Blink. 9 o'clock, Gigantic. 3 Event Dungeon Clears, 2 Event Raid Clear, Accumulated Bonus Stats. 7. Current skill points, 0. 13 title effects, Orc Lord Slayer, Wraith Queen Slayer, Dark Ratman Slayer, Giant Ghoul Slayer, Skeleton Knight Slayer, Dullahan Slayer, Lizard Knight Master, Grim Reaper Master, Giant Wolf Master, Wendigo Master, Hermes, Zeus. Accumulated effects, all stats 24, speed 15%, Strength 15%, Charm 15%, Critical Hit Rate X2 against Skeleton Type Monsters, Critical Damage 50% against Opponents with Bones, Increased Affinity to All Elements X2. Affinity to the Wind Element Greatly Increased, Affinity to the Lightning Elemental Greatly Increased, Can Summon Teleria Once Per Day, Can Summon Caduceus Once Per Month, Can Use Sky God's Play Once Per Day, Can Use Sky God's Range Once Per Month. Contracted Elementals 1. Pika Lightning Elemental. 2. Ruyue Ice Elemental. Tamed Subordinates. 1. Plain Siren. Looking at the long list, I felt strange. The fruits of my five years of work were shown on my status. However, they were most likely lacking compared to other dimensional mercenaries, who must have spent a long time collecting skills points and stats. Let's get stronger so that I don't have to worry about my lack of ability when I'm trying to go save a friend. I wanted strength that would allow me to freely do as I wished. I wanted strength that would allow me to send anyone flying that tried to kill me just because I was a hero. Then, when I was about to use dimensional travel, Loretta grabbed me. Shin Nim, don't tell me you're going right away. I am. I'm leaving Pleen behind too. I don't think her mental attacks would be good enough against the demons anyways, and I can't let her die. That's not what I mean. You might not be able to come back for a few days, so shouldn't you say something to your parents? Ah. I hadn't even thought about it, as my head was filled with thoughts about Lydia and Sheena. But now that I thought about it, there was class today too. After being contacted yesterday by Lydia, I broke through the 50th floor without even getting a wink of sleep, and even became a dimensional mercenary. Whoa, Mother and Yua had called me several times and sent me countless messages. Ill. Go say goodbye. Yes, you should. Also, remember to put in a good word about me to your mother. No, I won't. Why? I immediately went home and told my family what was going on. Mother and Yua immediately looked at me with doubtful eyes and Walker bluntly said I was lying. However, I didn't say anything more. Since I couldn't let them worry about me for nothing, I had just told them that I had something important to take care of for a few days. Then, I told only father the truth. I heard about it too. That Luca continent was in trouble. Yes, father. I became something called a dimensional mercenary. I'm going to go help my friends. Father was silent for a moment, then reached out and patted my head. Yeah, go help your friends. I'm proud of you. Yes, father. I will be back. Don't come back all beaten up. Of course. Im father's son. Should I tell Yiyun and Waya too? No, there was no need to tell everyone about it. 
I only sent them messages saying I would be busy with the dungeon for a few days, then went back to the dungeon. Loretta, who had gone back to the floor shop, blinked her large golden eyes and asked. Oh. You came back. I thought you'd go straight to Luca Continent. Yeah, I thought I should say goodbye to Loretta too. How rare of you to say something so praiseworthy. Ite, he'll go for it. Loretta flew herself over the counter and dove at me. As expected of an elf, she was incredibly fast. Even while I was flustered, I caught her so that she wouldn't get hurt. When I let out a sigh of relief, Loretta's face was right in front of mine. Surprised? Yes. Up. The next moment, I was even more surprised. Loretta had suddenly kissed me. Looking at Loretta's eyes in front of me, I blinked. I couldn't understand what just happened. Well, Loretta's lips and my lips touched. Yeah. You received the Queen Elf's high blessing. The effect will last for four days. You are protected against all low rank and mid rank status effects. You can maintain your consciousness for five minutes after falling into a half dead state. Your luck increases by 100. All members of the fairy race will see you favorably. Your vitality and magic recovery rate increases greatly, and you will not get tired easily. Your attacks have an increased chance to land critical hits. A message rang in my ears, but I wasn't in a state of mind to listen to it calmly. While I was standing there blankly, Loretta brought her head back and made a mm noise. Her face was red like it would explode at any time. Thinking about the touch of her lips left on my lips, I was unable to say or do anything. Loretta then said in a quiet voice. Don't misunderstand, Shin Nim. W what? I didn't kiss Shin Nim because I wanted to give you a blessing. I did it because I love you. Got it? There were many things I wanted to say. I didn't know we had this kind of relationship, I don't remember accepting you, that was my first kiss, etc., etc. However, this was what I chose to say. Okay. Good. Then you can go now. For some reason, I felt like I was being tamed by Loretta. No, it couldn't be. However, because I didn't initially get mad, talking about it now would be awkward. In the end, I could only use dimensional travel while still thinking about her warmth left on my lips. I was the opposite of calm. My destination was the Luca continent. We would rendezvous at Awer Empire's Imperial Palace. The moment I used dimensional travel, I felt a pain like my body was being squeezed dry. The surrounding scenery melted, as did my body. The entire world became black, then turned bright again. My body was torn to shreds, glued back together, then torn to shreds again. Mm. -hmm. Eh. It's a new face. Don't tell me, there's a new dimensional mercenary. Ha, huh, I didn't even notice. He's handsome. After losing my consciousness, I half opened my eyes from the sounds I heard around me. There were about a dozen people staring at me. I realized I was lying on the ground and picked myself up. There were knights and magicians lined up in the wide hall I was in. I even saw Lydia who was half frowning. There was no doubt. This was the Luca continent. My first request as a dimensional mercenary had started. 8,000 characters. Toika, you fool. Didn't I tell you to control the quantity? My apologies, Your Excellency, but the status window took up 1,000 characters. I was afraid of the reader's wrath so I increased the amount. The math in the speed increase might be wrong for my lack of knowledge, so forgive me. Do tell me if it's wrong. Everyone, they'll just say it again. Shin can appoint a new explorer for becoming a gold rank explorer this is on top of getting another subclass. P.S. I get the feeling we've already gone into Loretta route. P.S. 2 today was the first time Loretta used high blessing. What could this mean? Toika at least make your author's note small. I looked at the number of pages for this chapter and almost fell out of my chair. Chapter, 116. In Kong Shin, an explorer from Earth. It's nice to meet you. Earth? Never heard of it before. Same. Damn, just how did he become a dimensional mercenary? From a world without any foundation. 
most of the dimensional mercenaries gave me cold glances. Unlike the treatment I had been getting as the crown prince, they ignored me after just hearing where I was from. Had they never heard about me before? Did they all have their dungeon explorer communication channels off? What level do you think he is? His equipment looks pretty good. Are you stupid? You're asking for his level as a dimensional mercenary. You're a newbie too, right? There were 13 dimensional mercenaries other than me. Two additional people had accepted the request after me. There were only 57 dimensional mercenaries in the first dungeon, and 14 of them had taken this request. Everyone seemed to be very active. A young knight with long black hair approached me. Embellowed eyebrows. As the request said, I am the commander of the Kiro's Knights and a gold rank explorer of the first dungeon. Thank you for coming, Kong Shin Nim. The first princess has told me a lot about you. If you do your best to save the second princess, you won't be disappointed by the rewards. Thank you for having me. The knight named Bellowed gave a very good first impression. He looked kind and stout-hearted. Perhaps because of the pressure to save Sheena, however, he had a cloudy expression. After greeting the knight, I turned to the other dimensional mercenaries to greet them, but they avoided my eyes. It meant they found it bothersome, even though they talked with each other as if to judge me when I arrived. They seemed to be saying that they didn't want to waste their energy on useless exchange of greetings. I found it absurd. Bellowed made a bitter smile, looking at me making a stupefied expression, and said in a quiet voice that only I could hear. Please understand. I hear dimensional mercenaries become sensitive before missions. With the danger that came with the job, I wasn't surprised. Plus, I was new. If I spoke out of line, it was easy for them criticize me as a rookie who didn't know what he was saying. I sighed and turned my head. Bello then led us to a large table in the hall. Lydia was also nearby. When our eyes met, she humphed and purposely turned her head the other way. At her somewhat expected reaction, I made a bitter smile. On the table, there was a large map with the Imperial Palace in its center. Bello took a short baton and pointed it on the map. With Kong Shin Nim here, all the dimensional mercenaries have arrived. We will do a briefing before we set off. Well take the shortest path to lead us to the demon lord's garrison. As he is injured, the demon army is hastily pulling their army back, but if we move quickly with our elite forces, we will be able to catch up to them before they arrive at the demon lord's territory. Demon lord's territory, you say? I hear all the peak rank demons are staying there. That is true. Until they ascertain their superior position, peak rank demons prefer not come out of their territory. Since the hero died they might just wait until the world starts to collapse before they appear. HM, but still, the demon lord is. The demon lord received a critical injury. Everyone on the spot saw it. Although we would be unable to take his life, he won't be able to hinder our rescue mission. If you'd like, I can even bet my soul. I silently listened to the conversation between Bellowed and the dimensional mercenaries, and memorized the path Bellowed showed us. In case everyone left, I would have to go save Sheena alone. Suddenly, someone tapped on my shoulder from behind. When I turned around, I saw Lydia whose face was completely red. What? F father and mother want to see you. The emperor and empress. Follow me. I left the hall with Lydia. I could feel the stinging gazes of the mercenaries behind me. These guys, why were they emitting so much killing intent? Now that I think about it, I heard that beautiful princess has a boyfriend. Right, I heard it was some damned rookie. I didn't think Head become a dimensional mercenary. I wish Head die here. You guys are all single, aren't you? And you, why are you glaring at me when you're a girl? The Emperor and Empress were both waiting for me together. Plus, the Emperor was wearing golden armor and the Empress was wearing a golden silk robe for priestesses. They were undoubtedly wearing such eye-catching clothes on purpose. They wanted the enemy to focus on them. Oh, Lydia. Is that young man the one you mentioned? The moment the Emperor caught sight of us, he exclaimed. I was surprised. He looked to be in his late twenties at most. 
It felt weird that someone who looked so young was the emperor. Not to mention, he was strong. So he was an explorer before he was the emperor. Ludia's cheeks turned red at the emperor's words and she shouted. I, I didn't say anything. Sheena was the one who blabbered about everything. But every time she brought it up, you became excited and raised your voice. Can you show me your face? That calm and beautiful voice came from the empress. Just like her husband, she looked like she was only in her late twenties. She seemed to be a priestess of Mataris just like Ludia, as her robe had similar design as hers. The emperor was also handsome, but the empress was a real picturesque beauty. She and Ludia looked alike so much that I would believe that she was Ludia in ten years. If there was one difference, it was her empress-like voluptuous. Ludia, there's a chance for you too. You idiot. Ho ho, the two of you get along very well. I'm relieved. I snapped out of my daze at the empress laughter. Ah, sorry. In Kong Shin, an explorer from Earth. I heard you came for Ludia and Sheena even though you're a hero. As an emperor who rules a country and is now in charge of this world, I can only say that it's foolish. But. The emperor grinned and hammered my shoulders. That's what a man should do. Your ambition, I like it. So. Who do you want? Will you take both? I doubt Sheena or Ludia will refuse. What? D dad. I said that's not it. I don't know about Sheena, but not me. You should learn to lie better, my daughter. But I see, you don't want to share your husband with Sheena. Then you'll just have to leave it to my son-in-law. Do you like Ludia more? Um, both Sheena and Ludia are my precious friends. That was all I could say for now. The Empress then spoke with a light smile. I was also friends with my husband. With my eye, I saw a future with him and said it would never happen, but here I am. I'd like to hold a ceremony for you too but as you can see, we aren't in a situation where that is possible. I apologize, my son-in-law. Before I noticed, he was addressing me as son-in-law. Lost for words, I looked to Ludia, but she was too busy covering her reddened face with her hands. While the two of us were in panic, the emperor gestured at me to come closer. I approached him. I'm going to have to ask you for a favor if the situation becomes dangerous, please run away with Ludia. Sheena is my precious daughter and I'd like to save her if possible but I can't lose Ludia too. I understand. Although I wanted to say I'd save Sheena no matter what, I couldn't say something I couldn't guarantee in front of the emperor who had such a serious look. The emperor then said with an even more serious expression. Also don't trust anyone other than Ludia and Bellode. What do you mean? Do you think the demon lord has only been trying to conquer the world with brute force? You mean? Everyone on this expedition are elites of the elites, but there might be some who might have been coaxed by the demon lord. Other than my daughter, Ludia, Bellode is the only one I can trust. Do not forget this. Now that I had heard about it, it was obvious. The demon lord defeated the hero. Although he was heavily injured, he was still the winner. In such a situation, it would be strange if no one fell to the demon lord's enticement. I couldn't help but feel bitter at the sudden truth I was made to realize. When I backed away after hearing the emperor's words, he spoke to Ludia and me. The hero died and the world's power has been stolen. New life can no longer be born in this world. This world will slowly but surely wilt. Even so, I don't want to give up. There is just too much on my shoulders for me to throw everything down and Neil Sheena, my precious daughter, is included. I beseech you, my son-in-law and my daughter. Please save Sheena. Yes, Dad. I will save Sheena. The world's power has been stolen and new life could no longer be born I see. That's why the hero was the core of a world. I finally understood everything about the heroes. If new life couldn't be born, it was equivalent to the end of a world. I bit down on my lips and tried to shake off the image of a grim future. The moment the emperor's words ended, the empress gestured at me. When I approached her, she took out a five-colored object from her inventory and handed it to me. After receiving them, I realized it was half of a sword blade along with the rest of the broken sword. 
surprisingly, the sword was still emitting a five-colored light. Although I didn't know what the gem on the sword's hilt was, I got the feeling I wouldn't be able to buy it even if I sold my mansion. Although broken, this sword's value was unquestionable. Mitaris Broken Holy Sword God Durability 0560 Attack 15,000 Equipment Requirement Level 90, Hero Options All Stats 100, Damage Against All Demons Including the Demon Lord X3 Can Acquire All Skills Strength 20%, Speed 20% Special Skill Judgment of Light, Collects All Light in the World healing all allies in the battlefield and dealing a great amount of light attribute damage to all enemies in the battlefield or dealing a critical blow to a select target. Description A holy sword for the hero, crafted using Luca Continent's most precious metal, Luca Dion and imbued with the power of Mataris. It lost its power and broke in the battle against the demon lord, and cannot be repaired. The world's strongest weapon suddenly appeared. My hands were shaking just holding this weapon. I apologize. It's broken, so it can't be used again. However, I believe it can be used in some other way, so I'll give it to you, a hero of another world. Will you accept it? Can I really accept it? Hoo-hoo, who else other than you would take it, son-in-law? Kook. Mom. I heard of the saying lucky to have a good friend, but I didn't think I would get a weapon like this for having one. Plus, when I saw the holy sword, I immediately thought of a use for it. After unexpectedly receiving an amazing gift, I bowed to the emperor and empress and left the palace. With her face still red, Lydia followed me like a puppy. D don't mind what mom and dad said. It was just that I've shown no interest in men, so they're saying that because I brought you up once or twice. Yeah, of course. I doubt you even see me as a man, anyways. Crack. Hmm. Did I just hear something break? I looked around but everything looked fine. Lydia was only clenching her fists tightly. After confirming that no one was around, I took out the gluttony spear. Hmm. What are you doing? The holy sword your mother gave me, I can't just hold on to it. Here, watch. I took the broken holy sword pieces and brought it against the gluttony spear without any hesitation. The gluttony spear then emitted a crazed red aura and swallowed the holy sword. Crimson gluttony spear absorbed Mataris holy sword. Growth, 47%. Kayak. T the holy sword disappeared. Don't be stupid, Ludia. The holy sword is dead. But in my spear. In my heart. It lives on as one. This crazy spear's growth only went up by 44% after absorbing a god-ranked holy sword, but I felt like I caught a glimpse of this spear's future. I let out a satisfactory sigh, and declared to Lydia. Remember, Lydia. Avarice swallows everything. Don't act cool and say stupid things. This was the conversation we had before our departure. Chapter, 117 there was a total of fifty soldiers, consisting of forty knights and ten magicians. They were all dungeon explorers and experts who were at least level seventy. Amongst them, there were even twenty-first dungeon explorers. In truth, I was surprised so many of them were still alive, given the fierce battle they must have been having with the demon army. If the fifty of them fought with Earth's rankers, they would win without doubt. Was Earth weak? Or was Luca Continent strong? If they lost even with such strong forces, just how strong was the demon army? In addition to the fifty soldiers, there were fourteen dimensional mercenaries. Everyone other than me seemed to at least be level sixty, and as they were first dungeon explorers and passed the tricky requirements to become dimensional mercenaries, they were all formidable in their own regard. Then, there was Ludia and Bellode, making the number of people going on this expedition sixty-six. Bellode, who was in charge of leading the expedition, was also in charge of protecting Lydia. As she was a priestess, she was valuable even though she was relatively low-leveled. By the way, are there no dimensional mercenaries in the second dungeon? There are. I heard there aren't any in the third and fourth dungeons, but I know dimensional mercenaries can come from the second dungeon. It just looks like no one accepted the request this time. Lydia answered my question, then bellowed added to her explanation. 
Second Dungeon Explorers, especially ones strong enough to be dimensional mercenaries, have extremely cautious nature. There are rumors that they never accept requests from worlds that have lost their heroes. I see. Although I thought they were cowards, I didn't voice my thought out loud. We will move by specially trained horses. They listen to people well, so you can be rest assured and ride on them. Thirty knights rode on the horses alone, while ten knights rode with magicians behind them. The dimensional mercenaries, who were watching them, seemed to get on the horses too, but two of them didn't. My subclass is summoner, so I don't need it. Come, wyvern. A middle-aged Ajushi who looked to be in his forties reached out and summoned a house-sized dragon. Although I didn't want to admit it, it was damn cool. Damn it, how did he obtain the summoner subclass? I'm jealous. I really am. While I was watching him blankly, one other dimensional mercenary reached into her inventory and took something out. It was a wide, metallic board big enough for a person to lie on. Was that a hoverboard? That was a hoverboard. It'll ride this, so don't worry. Mm, how is its speed compared to the battle horses? Of course it's faster. I have to be the one to slow myself down for you, so don't worry about the speed. It was the voice of a woman. She was a violet-haired beauty who looked to be in her twenties, but because her hair was pushed together to one side, half of her face was covered. From the visible half, however, I could tell that she was a beauty. It was then that her green eyes met mine. She was glaring at me frighteningly. It was then that I remembered, she was the woman who glared at me before. I continued to stare at her, not knowing why she was glaring at me. Then, one of the knights not going on the expedition approached me with the rein of a cool white horse in hand. For some reason, I felt that the white horse was cooler than the horses other people got. Not to mention, it looked incredibly similar to the white horse Ludia was on. Plus, the knight had an overly respectful attitude. Kong Shin Nim, this is the horse assigned to you. Ah, uh, I'm fine too. Sorry for saying it late. It was clearly prepared for me, so I felt a bit sorry to decline, but I already had an excellent ride. In front of the knight looking puzzled, I materialized Ryue, who I had already summoned beforehand. When a huge silver wolf appeared, a few people flinched, but I ignored their gazes and scratched her neck. With breath mixed with freezing energy, she asked. Do I kill them all? No, Ryue. We're going to run for a while. An elemental. A materialized elemental. It's been a while. This is the first time I've seen an elementalist. They're still being passed down. He might have been born as one. The elemental seems pretty weak too. Yep, weak. Still a rookie, I see. Of course, Ryue might seem weak in their eyes, but that was because I couldn't draw out all of her strength. When my skills grew, Ryue and Pika would get stronger as well. We'll be setting off now. May the fortune of goddess Mataris be with us. When everyone got on their rides, a knight in charge of leading the way set off. The other knights on their horses followed him, and the dimensional mercenaries followed suit. The wyvern riding middle-aged explorer flew a bit higher than everyone, and the woman on the hoverboard floated at the same height I was in, lying comfortably on the hoverboard. As for me, I asked Ryue to run at the same speed as the battle horse. Bellowed SSI, before we catch up to the retreating demon army, will we not run into other monsters or demons? Yes. We're taking the fastest route with the least amount of enemies, and we will continue adjusting our route by scouting with magical familiars. For a moment, I thought of Earth's GPS system. PFT. What's up with that shocked face? This much is standard. In your world, maybe. Though, there's something similar in my nevermind. Perhaps it was because she rode horses often, but Lydia skillfully rode her white horse and kept up with Bellode, laughing cheerfully as she made fun of me. While we were in the Imperial Palace, she looked down the entire time, but she seemed happier now that we were on the move. I smiled in relief. You're prettier when you're smiling. I couldn't bear to see you the way you were before. Humph. You only just realized I was pretty. Stupid. While we were joking around with each other, Bellowed smiled lightly and spoke. You two suit each other well. 
Bellowed, I already told you. We're still just friends. Hoo-hoo, still, I see. No. I said it wrong, we're just friends. Bellowed also seemed to be skilled in teasing Lydia. While the three of us were chatting, someone approached my side. When I turned my head, the hoverboard was flying next to me. The violet-haired woman lying on the hoverboard glared at me and spoke. You, they'll kill you. Why? I called dibs on her if you steal her away, I won't forgive you. You, don't get near Lydia. Run, Lydia. An unexpected person is aiming for you. Although I didn't think the rescue mission would be a walk in the park, we ran for the whole day and got ambushed when we stopped to take a rest and eat. Goo. It's the monster unit under the demon's command. Kook, I couldn't even detect them with familiars. Magicians, take your distance and prepare your magic. Knights, protect the magicians. Squad 1, to the front. Space out and cover the area. While the knights were moving busily, the mercenaries each took out their weapons and confirmed the monsters. Strangely enough, none of them stood near each other. Come on, nobody trusted each other. How did you climb the dungeon until now? Gua. Kook, someone help out in the sky. These damned chimeras. All of the monsters were peculiar. They had black bodies and looked like several monsters mixed together. The one closest to me was at least three meters tall, had scaly skin, and had four arms of different thickness. The arms looked like they were taken from four different creatures. Plus, it had two heads, one that looked like a Komodo dragon's and one that looked like a human's. It's the demon army's trait. They create chimeras from mixing multiple lives together, without their consent, of course. They're evil and cruel. Bellowed explained to me while gritting his teeth. Before taking on the monsters, I looked at the others fighting the chimeras. The knights and magicians were working together to push back the chimeras, and the dimensional mercenaries each took on a chimera, weaving in and out of fights. The most eye-catching among them was the hoverboard and the wyvern. They were both fighting the flying monsters. The wyvern breathed out strong flames, and the woman on the hoverboard swung a strange weapon filled with her aura that seemed to be made of clumps of steel linked together. Although they were strong, I didn't think they were much stronger than me. I thought anyone who could be dimensional mercenaries would have grinded elixirs like me, but was I wrong? Ah, uh, I see. If they were like me, the moment they cleared the fiftieth floor. The moment they became a gold-ranked explorer, they would have become dimensional mercenaries. However, they became dimensional mercenaries past level 60 or 70. They had taken a different route than me. Up until now, I felt that I was lacking compared to them, but I decided to let that thought go. I held my spear and aimed at the chimeras that had appeared in groups. I didn't know where they were coming from, but they were popping out from all directions of the forest we were walking through. Everyone was currently busy fighting them, but the mercenaries were clearly not trying their best. Shouldn't they hurry up and take care of them, so we could get our rest? All right, Ryue, let's go. Gale track. Auu. Ryue exerted her presence with a howl filled with freezing energy. At the same time, I poured an abundant amount of mana into Pika. With Zeus' power, my bond with Pika had gotten deeper. Just by activating Spirit Aura, Gluttony's spear lost its original color and transformed to a golden lightning bolt. Immediately afterwards, Ryue ran forward. Hap. Fight me. You use provoke. Enemies from all sides attack you with hostility. Kayak. A lightning elemental. An elementalist. A new sacrifice. Chimeras of all sizes and shapes pounced towards me. Each and every one of them were strong. Some had poisonous claws, some had eyes that charmed, and some spit out acidic saliva. Auu. However, they could not match Ryu's ice breath. Immediately afterwards, they were sent flying by Ryu's body and my lightning spear. Ryue was in charge of defense and Pika was in charge of offense. Gale Track In its path, Pika and Ryu's effects became one, displaying the greatest synergistic effect. It didn't matter how strong the chimeras were. My destructive power increased by 110% during charge-type skills. 
I had confidence that even floor masters couldn't withstand my charge. Chimeras were made of other creatures. As they weren't invertebrates, they had bones. With Skullbreaker's tidal effect, once a critical hit was dealt, parts of the chimeras blew up no matter how big they were. My charge continued without stopping. If there was one thing I wasn't happy about, it was that my enemies were too few in number. In the blink of an eye, I reached the rearmost chimera, which was over three meters tall and was riding on a large lizard. It was easy to tell that it was a chimera. It had four arms, each carrying a large weapon. From the aura it was emitting, it seemed to be the chimera squad's captain. Kogagaga. You are truly fast and strong. You'll take your legs and make them mine. Like I care. In addition to charging, Gale Track also let me deal a final blow imbued with wind. I pulled my spear in front of my chest. Above the lightning spear, a gust of wind appeared, rotating at an astonishing speed. Originally, it would end with a simple addition of wind, but Hermes and mastering divine speed let my affinity to the wind elemental reach the peak, making the wind more formidable. It didn't seem like a low rank skill at all. Kugaga, take this. Giants. You dare to interrupt my skill. The moment the chimera moved its four arms to use a skill, I activated divine speed. Its movements immediately slowed down, almost as if it stopped completely. On the other hand, I had become incredibly fast, as if I had grown wings. Although divine speed itself protected my body to a certain degree, it was still hard to handle 1000% of my speed. However, there was no problem with one specific motion. It was the motion I made the most since I was born, and the motion that first made me get called a hero. Die. The wind lightning spear shot out, aimed at a single point in the giant's chest. The attack that contained my bodice concentrated energy easily broke through the giant's chest, and the power that was imbued in the spear then exploded. Low rank gale track became level 3. Your acceleration during charging increases, and the power imbued in the final blow becomes stronger. Divine speed's duration also ended. Feeling the slightly creaking body, I pulled out my spear from the giant's chest. At that moment, green blood spurted out toward me, which I dodged frightened. After hitting the ground, the blood melted the ground. So it really was acidic. I froze the blood continuing to spurt out with Ryu's ability, then checked the state of the chimera. Its chest was caved in, like a bomb had struck it. Its internal organs, bones, and muscles had all blown up, and it was clearly in an irrecoverable state. If it could move after this, it wouldn't be a chimera, but a gamera. As expected, the chimera had stopped breathing without even letting out death throes. Confirming that there was no sign of life, I put the corpse in my inventory. Then, I turned around and checked the state of the battlefield. Most of the knights were looking at me surprised, and a few of the dimensional mercenaries were nodding their heads. He's quite good. Ha, we can't fall behind. The newbie took the head. You guys better try harder. Who, it seemed I had successfully raised everyone's fighting spirit. I nodded my head in satisfaction, and looked for my next opponent. Although I didn't realize, this was the moment I engraved the name, Kong Shin, in the entire dungeon. Chapter, 118 Among the members of the expedition, Ludia had the lowest level, and everyone else including me were explorers that were at least level 50. Other than the magicians, who had a low constitution stat, we had no problem going without sleep for a few days. As such, even though we stopped to rest and eat, we did not set aside time to sleep. Taking care of the chimeras that the demons had left behind, chasing them, resting, and chasing them again after two days, Ludia didn't look so well. Ludia, are you okay? We were currently taking a two-hour rest. We were told that we would catch up to the demon army in just a day, so the dimensional mercenaries were relieving their fatigue in their own ways and preparing themselves for battle. As I wasn't fatigued in the slightest, I worried about Ludia instead, who looked to be in a serious state. I'm okay. It's nothing compared to what Sheena must be experiencing right now. Ludia drank a health potion and replied with a frown. Who knows what Sheena is going through right now I can't complain with just this much. Let me see that. Ah. I snatched the potion Ludia was holding, and her eyebrows shot up. 
she really was fierce when angry. However, Lydia soon made a curious expression watching what I was doing. What are you doing? In making a potion slushy. Slushy. I froze the potion with Ryu's freezing energy, then shook it. With just that, I made a slushy in just a few seconds. When I gave it to Lydia, she tilted her head. After eating it, she exclaimed in surprise. It's cool and crunchy. It's good. Right? Yeah. While I was happy watching Lydia whose expression had gotten brighter, I heard a voice that I had grown familiar to in the past few days. It'll kill you. This stalker. The violet-haired woman on her hoverboard glared at me like I had killed her parents. With a sigh, I spoke. I told you not to come near Lydia. Ah, she's one of the mercenaries. Lydia noticed her too, bowing her head slightly to greet her. The woman started breathing roughly just from that. It was truly disgusting. T the disheveled priestess robe is kook, unbearable. If it's unbearable, please go back to your planet and stop giving me goosebumps. I need to greet her too. Just go. While I was arguing with her, Lydia's voice became low for some reason. Do you know her? Are you close? Are you guys in a man-woman relationship? I've never seen her until I came here. Don't say something so horrible. No. Why would I, with a man? The woman exclaimed in a loud voice, then sat upright on the hoverboard and beat her chest. Im Sirmia Bamertuno. Im Xenon Realm's first class warrior. And she's homosexual. I added to her introduction, and Lydia instantly moved back. Sirmia Bamertuno gave me a deathly glare. I wanted to slowly let her know. Sorry, but I have no plans to give you my friend. I am normal. I, I have a fiancé too. Fiancé. Who's that? It'll kill him. At her words, Lydia's cheeks reddened as she pointed at me. You're using me as a shield. You coward. Pretending to be shy won't work. Then, Sermia Bamertuno quietly took out a steel whip. I flinched for a second and took out my gluttony spear as well. Eshin. Are you really fighting? Lydia, duck. Duck. The next moment, I embraced her and rolled on the ground. Boom. Above us, Bamertuno's whip had collided with something. It's an ambush. Everyone prepare for battle. Ho, oh, you blocked that. You aren't so bad. Along with bellowed a ringing voice, an unpleasant screeching voice also rang out. Holding Lydia with one arm, I retreated to where others were and raised my head. We had noticed their presence too late. We were already surrounded by demons. Not to mention, these guys they were extremely strong. Warm this isn't fair. Lydia, did you say something? No, nothing. I'm okay, so you can let me go now. Not yet. Even if you hate it, wait just a bit more. Stupid, I don't hate it, so. Protect her, newbie. If she gets even a scratch, it'll kill you. Don't look this way and fight, Bamertuno. There were sixteen demons, but four times as many chimeras. While I was retreating with Lydia, a few of the magician's heads had already been severed. A few of the mercenaries had also used return or ran to the dungeon. Damn it, they really cared for their safety the most. Wyvern, burn them. Gua. Fight. Magicians, calm down and chant your spells. Although they're demons, we can kill them. You want to use magic in front of us? How cute. The fight had become chaotic quickly. I sent the chimeras attacking us flying with tempest and tried to ensure Lydia's safety. Meanwhile, Bamertuno was fighting the demon that had attacked us. The demon had a human-like appearance, dark blue skin, and a single horn shooting out of his forehead. His completely black eyes made me feel a natural aversion to him. However, this demon was strong, stronger than any of the ones that had attacked us. You, you're aiming for the princess. Was I? She's the princess. Kook. He was using a whip like Bamertuno, but his long and thin whip was clearly stronger than Bamertuno's steel whip. Bamertuno shouted with tendons showing on her forehead. 
Iron Rain. Her whip disassembled and the lumps of steel shot toward the demon. The demon raised his whip, striking them down quickly, and laughed. Ha ha ha, not bad. You didn't learn whip technique, but were born with the power to wield steel. You should have realized that earlier by seeing her hoverboard. I couldn't watch their battle any longer. Although I was retreating deeper into our camp, more and more chimeras were approaching us. The target is there. It's not the man, but the woman he's holding. Take her. If not, kill her. Kook. These damned bastards. With Ludia in my arm, I couldn't fight freely. Ludia, run to the dungeon for a bit. They're aiming for you. I can't run by myself while everyone is fighting. They'll call you when the fight is over, so go to the dungeon. You're in the way. The target is trying to run to the dungeon. Stop her. Sever her limbs. Ugh, these goddamned bastards. You want to cut off her limbs to stop her from going to the dungeon. Even I only broke them. Ruyue. Kuang. In an instant, everything in sight became dyed in white. Ruyue made an ice wall completely protecting Ludia and me. It won't last long. Hurry and go to the dungeon. Yuut. I told you, they'll call you when the fight is over, so please. You. Also, Ludia. When you're back, only trust my words. What? Hearing cracking sounds from the chimeras trying to break in, I let Ludia go. Then, I gripped my spear tightly and told her. I've been thinking that it was strange that they're specifically picking our rest periods to attack. Something doesn't feel right. They know about us too well. There's most likely a spy. Oh okay don't let me wait too long don't die. If you think you will, you have to run. Lydia raised her arms and opened the door to the dungeon. With a smile, I nodded my head, watching her leave. Immediately afterwards, the ice wall shattered. The target escaped. Take hostages. That man is in a relationship with the target. Hey, you guys have something wrong. Confirming the sheer number of chimeras charging toward me, I hurriedly materialized Ryue and jumped on her back. Then, I put a highest grade mana potion 30,000 gold each in my mouth. Come at me. You use provoke. Enemies from all sides attack you with hostility. Where are all the mercenaries? You guys need work harder. We don't have time to deal with small fries like the chimeras, rookie. These damned demons. They're so strong. I realized that the mercenaries were fighting the demons. The knights had finally arranged themselves in a formation. As for the magicians, half of them had already died. Damn, they really should have put some points into their constitution. Gale track. Dodge. Don't get it by that, run. Like ID let you. Get over here. Now that they were affected by the provoke skill, only the tip of my spear awaited them. I stabbed and slashed the chimeras without hesitation. After sending several chimeras flying with the final blow, I could finally secure a clear view. Low-ranked Gale Track became level 7. The AoE area of effect of the skill has increased, letting you damage enemies not in your path. This is. Many demons were dead, as were most of the chimeras. Only half of the knights remained. If the ones that ambushed us were elites within the demon army, then after winning this battle, it wouldn't be impossible to complete the request successfully. However, most of the dimensional mercenaries had already run away. In other words, they had decided that the mission would not be successful. Of course, they must have realized that there was a spy in our midst. If there were enemies on the inside, the difficulty would shoot up. Even so, it might be possible if the dimensional mercenaries work together. But to think they'd give up so easily although there were around six mercenaries still fighting the demons, looking at their ugly complexions, it seemed they would give up soon. Then, something rolled toward my feet. Looking at it, my eyes opened wide. It was Sermia Bamertuno's head. That was a fun fight. So, will you let me enjoy more, Earth's hero? When I raised my head, I caught sight of the demon that was fighting Bamertuno. The blood on his whip was extremely clear and fresh. Probably not. 
I'm strong, you see hot. Heroic strike together with divine speed. The heroic strike I was using for the first time since I came here was blocked by the demon. Although it busted his hand, it healed up in an instant. What was that regeneration? Don't tell me he could continue regenerating forever. Hero, is this the first time you've seen rapid regeneration? What's with that surprised face? I quietly thrust my spear at him. Although I used divine speed again, he blocked it. This time, his entire arm blew up, but he easily regenerated it. But seeing him protect his heart, it meant his regenerative ability would not work easily if his heart was blown up. That said, it didn't mean anything if I could not pierce his heart even with divine speed. I can see your trajectory. If you're just stabbing in a straight line, I can block your attack the moment I grasp your trajectory, regardless of your speed. Hero, you're quite weak, aren't you? Even weaker than that steel bitch. He threw Bamertuno's body at me. Startled, I received her body and fell back, setting it down carefully. Then, I asked. I didn't show any evidence of being a hero after I arrived here. How did you know? Is that so? Didn't all the knights know? So it's as I thought. Although I already knew, I was now certain. Who was it? Who was the spy? I didn't know. What was important now was to survive. Who are you? How nice of you to ask. Im His Highness Demon Lord's right arm, the Demon Army's Commander Shutuno. So you mean you're currently the strongest in the Demon Army? Indeed. Although I couldn't trust him, it was probably true. There was no reason for him to lie, and it made sense for the strongest demons to attack us if they wanted to prevent us from reaching the Demon Lord. It also made sense why the strong dimensional mercenaries couldn't defeat the demons so easily. In that case. I wanted to save it but there's no other choice. Hmm. Deific manifestation. If I wasn't strong enough, I would leave it to Master to teach me. Chapter, 119. The change was dramatic. I felt someone else's presence in my head and my body felt like it was floating up slowly. In the next moment, I gave the right to control my body to someone else and entered spectator mode. Unfortunately, Peryuta did not have the ability to wield elementals, so they were unsummoned. Peryuta couldn't use my class or subclass specific skills, nor could he use heroic strike. He could use skills other than them. All of your MP has been used. Half of your HP has been used. Using 18,790 MP and 12,545 HP, you manifest the mythological heroic spirit, Peryuta Relo Vatafoa, for 26 minutes and 57 seconds. It hasn't been 29 days. Plus, this environment. Peryuta, I'll leave it to you. I can't handle them with my strength. Peryuta looked around. He confirmed the single horned demon and the bladed whip in his hand. Then, he examined his body and grinned. This isn't Earth. Plus, you've grown a lot in such a short amount of time. That's good. Shatuno seemed to have realized something had changed from Peruta's murmuring, as he pointed his whip at him. The smell of your mana is different. Who are you? Demon. There were once demons in Edias, too. Words aren't important in a life or death battle. Are you ready? Without using divine speed, Peruta charged at Shatuno with an incredible speed. His whip hastily blocked Peruta's spear, but it could not withstand the impact and flew back. You're different from before. He will soon become as strong as me. Peruta thrust the gluttony spear quickly. The blue maelstrom spiraling around his spear was undoubtedly from the Peruta circuit that was circulating inside of him. So this is the unique spear technique that lies beyond the high rank spear technique. Even knowing that now wasn't the appropriate situation, I became immersed in the overwhelming prestige that Peruta's movements created. Not to mention, I even thought his Peruta circuit was completely different than the one I had been using. Kohat, right. Now I feel like I'm fighting. Snake touch. A weak attack like that won't be enough. Shatuno's whip transformed in an instant, flying toward Peruta's neck to bite it like a living snake. However, Peruta instantly pulled his feet back and vertically struck his spear down, hitting the whip away. 
The blue whirlwind endlessly spiraling around his spear shattered the snake's head into pieces. Dead steam. That was what Chituno was aiming for. The shards of the whip inflated and exploded. The whip had been a one-time use weapon from the start. I felt bad about Bamertuno who had lost her life from such a weapon. No matter how strong Peryuta was, he was using my body. As such, he instantly imbued mana into his feet, then jumped back, creating a storm in his path. The explosion was undoubtedly grand and powerful, but it was easily erased by the storm Peryuta created. At the same time, I was busy trying to understand the manifestation and transformation of mana. His attainment in spearmanship was undoubtedly higher than mine, but what was even more shocking was the way he wielded mana. I was confident that I could catch up to his spearmanship, but the natural application of mana on his spear techniques was something far beyond what I could see. From the use that did not match its level of attainment, I felt my Peryuta circuit creaking, but Peryuta naturally softened it with his rotational power. It was truly shocking. In the next moment, he held Gluttony's spear up again. Peryuta Circuit's strong current was gathering mana, not just from the body, but from the world itself. A dazzling blue light enveloped the spear. It was as if I was looking at the completed version of Tempest, which only took 300 MP for me to use. Try this. Hoo-hoo, as if. Despite Peruta's quick charge and spear attack, Shituno took out a shield out of thin air and defended. However, after colliding and grinding against each other for a moment, the shield quickly gave in, being crushed and sent flying away. With a crack, Shituno's arm was also severed from his body. It was the perfect attack while Shituno's guard was down. Kahak. You're surprisingly weak. What military rank do you have? A private? Private? Ha! It'll show you the power of a private. Shituno's arm that had fallen to the ground flew up. In an instant, it inflated, becoming large and black, and its tip became hard. It had transformed to a strange weapon similar to a club. Shituno grabbed the weapon with his remaining hand. Why wasn't he regenerating it? Was there a limit to his regenerative ability? Wounds from Peruta's attacks could not be regenerated. Rather than his attainment in spearmanship, I had the feeling that there was a secret behind the power created from combining Peruta circuit and his spearmanship. The desire to learn his techniques drove me crazy. Devil Buster. Cool, did you think of that name? How childish. Perhaps because he had turned his arm into a weapon, it was moving on its own and it was powerful. After blocking his attack once with the gluttony spear, Peruta dodged his attack. His weapon struck down on the ground, and a part of the earth turned into metallic sludge and shot up. The metallic sludge let out a black miasma and attacked me. Peruta kicked the ground again and created another storm. He seemed quite surprised by the attack. That weapon is dangerous. It will be fine for this weapon enveloped with my aura, but your body won't be so lucky. If it hit you, you'll turn into that metallic sludge. Can't my armor block it? It can, but once or twice only. Peruta looked nonchalant as he exchanged blows with Shituno's weapon, but he whispered in a worried voice that only I could hear. If Peruta allowed himself to get hit, I would receive an irrecoverable injury. Even though Peruta was hiding it, Shituno seemed to have realized his hesitation, as he attacked more boldly and aggressively. Stop running away. Shituno dodged the spear left and right and attacked my body with his weapon. Peruta read the trajectories of his attacks and struck them away with his spear imbued with his Manas rotational power. While their exchange continued, Shituno's aura continued to grow bigger. The ground became like a furnace of metallic sludge, and the sludge occasionally attacked Peruta and annoyed him. Although Peruta was striking them down without much difficulty, it was hard to say that it would continue forever. If this continued, Peruta would be at a disadvantage. What happened to your confidence? Try harder, hero. The hero is my disciple, not me. He'll express my respect for your strength, but I don't want to deal with such dirty attacks much longer. As I had the regeneration skill on Flesh Golem's second finger, I wasn't so worried about losing parts of my body. Even so, I advised Peruta so he could utilize my body more easily. Peruta, 
you can use Heavy Armor Mastery, Divine Speed, Dash, and Gale Track. I don't care about the armor skill, but can you explain what the other skills do? I gave an as detailed an explanation as possible for the skills. Shooting out a tempest, Priyuta distanced himself from Shituno and nodded. Then, he boldly looked around the battlefield. Most of the demons were on the brinks of death, and the remaining mercenaries were working together. It was the same for the surviving knights and magicians. Priyuta restarted the fight. Here I go. Gale track. You. Priyuta, who had been on the defense, charged at Shituno. Dash, which let me run faster, was a passive skill and automatically applied to Gale track. As Priyuta also received my tattoo and equipment's effects, Gluttony Spear was enveloped with a strong rotational force shook off the wave of metallic sludge shooting toward him and struck Shituno upward. Quayak. Shituno flew dozens of meters into the air. Although charge type skills were strengthened, sending a demon army commander flying with a spear showed how powerful Priyuta was. At the same time, a tornado connecting the earth and sky appeared, binding Shituno completely. Of course, he wouldn't stay bound for long. Hey, Wyvern. Hold him back for a bit. Ha, how arrogant, newbie. Priyuta ignored the Wyvern riding mercenary's answer and shot toward the other demons. Gale track did not have to be used in a straight line. Of course, it would be stronger and faster if it was used in a straight line, but using Priyuta circuit, Priyuta changed the trajectory of Gale track so naturally. In fact, Priyuta Circuit's rotational force was increasing Gale Track's destructive force. Kook, it's an ambush. Block him. Ek, what's that? The demons that were fighting the mercenaries became flustered at Peruta's charge and tried to block him. However, Gale Track was slightly different than when I used it. Priyuta Circuit's rotational force swallowed Gale Track, and the boundless current of destruction gathered on the tip of Gluttony Spear, exploding out continuously. Simply put, the demons could not block Peruta's power, which had even devoured Shituna's abilities. Since I was confident in beating them without Peruta's help, it was easy for Peruta to do the same. The surviving demons thus began to float into the air one by one, each trapped in a tornado similar to the one Shituno was in. Interestingly, they flew toward Shituno, who was trying to break out of his own tornado, and smashed into him. Shituno was ignoring the wyvern's flames and was close to escaping the tornado. But when he collided with his allies, the tornadoes binding them combined into one, pushing them up even further into the air. As more and more demons collided, they were pushed further up into the air. It was like watching tornadoes combining to form a greater disaster. What, is he really a newbie? Stupid, can't you see the difference in the destructive force? It looks like he manifested someone into him. Was there a skill that could do that? That bastard. He took my prey. Don't lie. I know you were contemplating about running away with return. Lads, attack him while they're grouped up. After shooting all the enemies into the air, he encouraged the mercenaries, knights, and magicians with an expression like he just made a game-winning home run. Then, he bent his knees. Feeling the powerful current of wind gathering around Priyuta, I trembled. This guy's. He turned Gale Track into a completely different skill. Whatever. Let's attack. Rising fire. Die demon bastards. Dozens of auras and magic shot up from the ground. At their levels, even melee range explorers had at least one long-ranged attack. The wyvern's owner seemed to have strengthened the wyvern with his power as it breathed out white flames like wyas. Consecutive explosions rang out in the air like fireworks. It was then that Priyuta jumped. Divine speed. Using 10% of your mana, your speed is multiplied by 1000% for 3 seconds. I didn't know how, but Priyuta transferred the power of wind from Gale Track's final blow underneath his feet, and used Priyuta Circuit's strong rotational force to let it explode. Immediately afterwards, he used divine speed to make himself faster, and the result was hard to describe with words. Hua. My body shot up so quickly that I was surprised it was breaking from the shock. I felt like fainting from the sensation, but Priyuta seemed fine and he even pulled his spear back. Kook, I thought I wouldn't lose to anyone in willpower, 
but to think I was about to faint from this much shock. Even while I was self-reflecting and gathering my focus, Peruta continued to shoot up and up. At the end of Peruta's path were the demons that were gathered up helplessly. Shituno, whose feet were tied from though the demon stuck to him, saw Peruta approaching him. Flashing his eyes, he swung his weapon. The other demons were in its trajectory. Quack! Sacrifice yourselves for the demon army's future. To think had sacrifice his subordinates in this situation. While Peruta opened his eyes widely, one of the demons turned to wet tar and swept over Peruta from the sky. This time, I was ready to lose one of my limbs. While I was preparing myself to use regeneration, Peruta revealed his final move. Sacrificing your own subordinates. In front of the war god, there is no greater disrespect. With a thunderous roar, Peruta shot his spear. The power that had pushed Peruta to the current height directly flowed to the tip of this spear and caused an explosion. Like shooting a shotgun, the explosion that happened on the spear tip annihilated the tar instantly and continued to the grouped up demons. Although the demons tried to squeeze out their magic and create barriers, they were unable to block Peruta's power. A great explosion erupted. Demons should have bones right? Probably. Exchanging rather stupid conversation with Peruta, we began to fall. Did Peruta know we would fall? He must have, right? Peruta then let me down with his murmur. Shoot, I forgot how to get down. Peruta. When I focus too much on battle, my blood rises. It's been a while since I've had a real fight, so I can't help having a side effect like this. But thanks to you, I enjoyed fighting. Now, I have no regrets. Don't say it like I'm going to die. Peruta. I'm kidding, of course. Dying now would be troublesome. Don't worry, we'll land with only a single broken limb. So one limb is going to be broken for sure. When I sighed, someone caught me from the air. The middle-aged mercenary's wyvern had grabbed my head with its claws. Newbie, I don't know who possessed you, but well done. To be honest, that demon commander was the most dangerous. Well, thanks. The wyvern descended quickly and safely put me down on the ground. The mercenaries and knights were gathered, healing their injuries. Well done, new bee. That skill won't continue forever, right? The feeling is already a bit different than before. It looks like he's maintaining it with mana. Hey, if you have time to analyze newbie's skill, heal my damned leg. Stop complaining. Oi, the paladin over there. The mercenaries talked loudly, showing themselves off. As we could take care of the demons with their help, I could look at them happily. As the knights were all paladins under the order of Mataris, they were healing each other and the mercenaries. We'll have to call Lydia again. I don't know who Lydia is, but you shouldn't. Why? Isn't it obvious? It's not over yet. Just when the battle seemed to be over, the atmosphere froze. Immediately afterwards, as if to prove that Peruta was right, a disturbing wish rang out from the sky. Cool. To think I'd need to show my real body. I looked down on humans too much. We all turned to the direction of the voice. In the sky, we saw a winged, large-bodied, single-armed monster. It'll swallow you all. Be glad, you can become the blood and flesh of I, Commander Shituno. It was the start of the second battle. I wanted to end it in this chapter, but I couldn't. As you can see, this chapter is 160% of the normal chapter length, so I really tried hard. But it wasn't possible. I had to show the strength of a demon lord commander and Peruta fight against him. Hope you enjoyed it. Well wrap it up in the and go attack the demon army. 160%. The is the same length as this one. Kill me. Chapter 120. Earlier, he only had one horn. But now, there were two long, thick horns protruding out from his forehead. I didn't know whether the number of horns was important, but the aura he was emanating was twice as powerful as before. In addition, his skin was now deep red, like an explosive volcano, when he had had dark blue skin before. His veins bulged out on his skin, adding to his already creepy appearance. He grew to over two meters tall and his body looked like the Hulk's. 
With his two bat-like wings and thick scaled tail protruding from his butt, he truly looked like a devil that appeared in myths. Surprisingly, even though he had changed so much, he had not regenerated his arm. I didn't know if that was the reason, but the club he was holding looked stronger and more repugnant. It was red, black, long, thick, and its tip was split into two parts, which swam through the air like water snakes. Patting his wyvern, the middle-aged mercenary made a short comment. He's big. Hugh you should be honored to see this appearance. It's my true body that's rarely shown even in the demon realm. I don't think just one of us can do it. All right, let's go. Focus on defense. Besides me, no one here can catch up to his speed. Pryuta replied to one of the mercenary's words. As if to prove that Pryuta was right, Shituno instantly disappeared from the place he was in and appeared behind a mercenary, swinging his whip down. The mercenary, who possessed a defensive equipment, threw the ring that broke from blocking Shituno's attack and shouted. At least 300 dexterity. If you're not confident in dodging his attacks, run. FCK, he's not even the demon lord. How is an army commander so strong? Ha, at least he's the only one left. The reward for this mission will be no joke. At the summoner mercenaries shout, the mercenaries that were about to open the dungeon gate flinched. If the request's difficulty was high, the dungeon would naturally give better rewards. No matter how much the dimensional mercenaries prioritized their safety, if they weren't willing to take risk, they wouldn't have become dimensional mercenaries in the first place. They were here because they were willing to throw themselves in danger and take challenges. Thanks to the mercenaries' timely shout, other mercenaries that could block Shituno's attacks got their fighting spirit back. Then, Priyuta took a step forward and spoke. Sorry, but he's mine. What? Are you saying that you want to fight him alone, newbie? Wait, hero. He'll deal with you after I take care of everyone else. Like I.D. Wait, demon soldier. You become stronger the more you absorb, so I need to deal with you before that happens. At Peruta words, all the mercenaries' complexions became pale. Everyone, including me, realized. He hadn't changed from being angered. He had changed from absorbing the energies of the demons that accompanied him. But how did Peruta know? The summoner mercenary then said with a curious expression. Wait, newbie. Doesn't that mean you gathered up the demons so he could get stronger? Of course not. It's the opposite. I made him weaker. What? Despite the contradiction in his words, Priyuta had a commanding attitude. Shituno, who was listening to him, also looked at him with interest. Quite funny, hero. Me? Weaker? See with your own body how weaker I got. I will. Shituno's body once again disappeared from the sky. He appeared in front of me in an instant, and at the same time that his two-part whip flew toward me, his sharp tail drew a diagonal line from below. Damn, I could barely see it. How could he get so fast? However, Priyuta was able to see his movements. In truth, if Priyuta wasn't controlling my body, I would not have been able to see his attack at all. He lightly swung the gluttony spear, pushing the whip aside and blocking the tail coming from below. Then, with a smile, he kicked the tail with his left foot enveloped in a whirlwind. His tail exploded. Quiak. Demon, I'm already aware of all your patterns. Just from your appearance, I can see through your class, choice of weapon, method of attack, potential, and personality. Peruta's attack did not stop. His spear, feet, or empty hand. With each of his attacks, Shituno's body exploded strangely. It even felt like Shituno's fake body was stronger. Peruta's blue whirlwind was enveloping my entire body. I realized. Peruta hadn't used his full power when he fought Shituno before. The reason he used my skills to take him on was to save his own ability to fight Shituno's real body. Unending Whirlpool The ancients called me War God and Heavenly Calamity, because the whirlpool connecting the earth and the heaven was strong enough to destroy the world. Every time whirlpools erupted from parts of his body, Shituno had to grit his teeth and fall back. Eventually, with a scream, he cut off his own tail, which had been half torn to shreds by Peruta's attacks. The tail was then absorbed into his whip, 
making the whip transform into a club. What did you do to me? You think you can kill me, the demon's army commander, Shituno Gluttony. Ha! Priyuta snorted. He held the gluttony spear in one hand and aimed it at Shituno's neck, ignoring his club. Come here, demon soldier. Qua! He appeared. Damn, even though I was confident in my senses, I couldn't completely grasp his movements. I could only see that he had appeared to my left and swung his club. I couldn't read the exact timing or the trajectory. However, Pryuta easily dodged his attack and sent a blue whirlwind forward, destroying his body. When I saw Shituno's exploding flesh, I finally understood. Dear God when you used Gale Track, you already. As expected of my disciple. 99 points. I took a point off since you didn't realize it at the time that I used the skill. Pryuta retorted in a voice only I could hear, and leisurely continued to destroy Shituno's body. He took a step back and stomped the ground strongly. His simple movements had a massive impact. In a ten-meter radius around him, the earth transformed into lava and shot up. To the mercenaries watching Pryuta and Shituno's battle, it was like a bolt of lightning from the clear sky, and they scrambled to dodge the lava. However, Shituno was no longer concerned with anyone else. He was solely focused on Pryuta. It'll show you the power of the demon army commander. The lava took the form of a giant serpent. Shituno lightly waved his hand, and the serpent dropped lava in its surrounding as it charged toward us. Plus, it wasn't any slower than Shituno himself. At the same time, Shituno stomped the ground again, and the ground that Pryuta was standing on collapsed. I realized that Shituno had been hiding his ability to transform Earth. However, I had full confidence in Peruta's victory. Pryuta was right. He had weakened Shituno. During his initial fight, he had realized Shituno's special power. The moment he used Gale Track, Shituno had no chance of victory. Kuhak. As expected, after jumping back to avoid the ground that had become lava, Pryuta lightly sent a tempest forward, blowing Shituno's remaining arm away. Shituno's weapon fell on the ground, turning the ground it touched into lava. Of course, the lava serpent that had been flying in the sky lost its power and fell, turning the ground more into a mess. When others saw the battlefield later, they would really wonder what the hell happened. Shituno seemed to have noticed something was wrong with his body too, as he glared at us with trembling eyes. Why you what did you do to my body? When I hit the demons up with Gale Track, I did a little trick. Pryuta answered with a grin. Right. When Shituno used his strange melting power, Pryuta realized he could use that power to absorb others. I didn't know until he told me, but Pryuta had ample experience in fighting against demons and was able to recognize his special power with just that. As such, after learning about Gale Track from me, he immediately went into action. He used his mana to put some sort of device into the demons before sending them flying. He then forced Shituno into a situation where he had to absorb them. This was the result. Shituno devoured his subordinates on his own accord, becoming Peruta's toy. You might be sensitive to any changes to your body, but you probably didn't expect that bombs would have been planted in your food. Can you feel it now? You think such a crude game can kill me? Shituno shouted in rage and did something completely unexpected. He began to detonate the mana bombs planted in the demons he absorbed. Explosions erupted from his body. I am the demon army's commander Shituno Gluttony. I can regenerate as long as I have more to eat. I am invincible. Under his highness, the demon lord, I rule above all. The moment you're under someone, you can't call yourself a ruler, demon soldier. Pryuta responded coldly. Then, he thrust his spear. Shituno's wing, which was trying to avoid Pryuta and attack other mercenaries, was torn to shreds. As long as there's even a single being above you, you are only an underling. Shituno didn't stop. He believed he could turn the tide of battle as long as he devoured someone. Disregarding Peruta's words, he continued. When Peruta's spear was pointed the other way, one of Shituno's horns was torn off, falling on the ground. Shituno screamed. Foolish. You cannot aim for the position of God that way. 
A true ruler has none above him and walks a path that no one can block. Don't underestimate the power of an army commander. When you can stand on this land alone and hold up the heavens. That's when you can call yourself a ruler. Shituno had somehow turned himself even redder and bigger, but the moment Pryuta thrust out his spear, his body blew up without much resistance. Shituno coughed out deep blue blood and collapsed. It happened quickly and overwhelmingly. Who? Pryuta twisted the corner of his mouth and threw the gluttony spear. The spear struck Shituno's forehead, splitting his head in half and penetrating the ground. Even if he was the army's commander, he could not survive with his heart in pieces and brain cut in half. Without even letting out death throes, Shituno died. It is the path I once walked, and the path my disciple will walk. Remember it. I don't think he can hear you anymore. Ha, huh, you're right. Pryuta waved his hand lightly, and the gluttony spear flew back to his hand. Shituno's corpse also flew toward him slowly. His arm, weapon, severed wing, and horn. Pryuta was collecting them carefully. Watching the scene, the other mercenaries swallowed their saliva. Oi, newbie. Are you going to eat that by yourself? There are portions for you guys too. The severed wing that was flying toward Pryuta changed its direction and landed in front of the mercenaries. Looking at the mercenaries' blank expressions, Pryuta spoke with a wink. The rest is for my disciple. Young kids have to eat a lot to grow. Since you guys are the seniors, you should yield. Disciple, you say. Did you call your master, newbie? TSK. Since I can complete the mission thanks to you, he'll listen. Right, without him, we would have either died or failed the request alright, gather up. Let's split this thing. While the mercenaries were dividing the wing equally, Pryuta learned how to operate the inventory for me and stored Shituno's corpse in it. Then, it was the turn to store its arm, tail, and weapon, which probably ate many of his subordinates. Mm, would this count as an actual weapon? Since he used it as a one, it should, right? Pryuta, can you touch that weapon with my spear? Hmm. Like this? Although Pryuta was a bit surprised at my sudden request, he immediately did so. Then, the gluttony spear radiated a brilliant red light and absorbed the clout. Crimson gluttony spear absorbed symbol of gluttony epic. Growth, 54%. Ooh, so this weapon can grow by absorbing other weapons. There are still blacksmiths left that can craft such weapons. Kook, only 7% from eating an epic grade weapon what kind of a weapon is this thing trying to become? Huh, it probably won't meet your expectations. Growth type weapons have rather poor efficiency. But when it reaches its peak one day, it will become a divine artifact that most god grade can't even compare. I don't know who made it, but this person must be your close friend. Treat him well. At Pryuta words, the image of Lin appeared in my mind. Although handsome, he was frowning and smoking a cigarette. He was also cursing at the fact that I already became a dimensional mercenary. No, that's. Pryuta, it seems all the danger is gone now. Right. Besides the bountiful miasma in an area a day long away from here, there's no danger. With Peruta's words, I felt assured. While I was at it, I asked him. Peruta, can you find out if there's a spy among them? Ha ha ha, I'm not omnipotent. But since you have to worry about a spy, this must be quite a difficult mission. To tell you the truth, we have to go into that area with bountiful miasma and rescue someone. Hmm. You want to save someone from that pit? Ho be careful. Yes. With your temperament, I probably don't need to worry much but still, be careful. Don't believe anyone. Huh, so that's the conclusion. After giving me tips on Pryuta circuit, Pryuta left. I quickly drank a potion worth 50,000 gold that restored both mana and health. Hey, newbie. Is. Yeah, he's not here now. Hugh good. I was slightly scared. Damn, where did you find a skill like that? Ah, that idiot's at it again. Why are you digging at others' business secrets? Are you a newbie? The summoner mercenary smacked the man asking for my deific manifestation skill. 
As he was the strongest mercenary out of the eight that remained, the man didn't say anything after being hit. With a smirk, I called the only person I could trust, Lydia. Then, I sighed and fell to the ground. When I got back up, thinking I sat on something, it was the headless corpse of Sermia Bamertuno. TSK, right. She undoubtedly could have run away during battle. However, she seemed to have really liked Lydia, as she continued to fight the army commander until the end. Although I couldn't encourage her love, it was true that Lydia could survive thanks to her. Out of respect for her, I decided to put her corpse together. As for the other mercenaries, they were gathering up the dead mercenaries, knights and magicians and burning them. They seemed to be taking their equipped items, but since the mission was more important than the people that were already dead, I didn't say anything. Then, after five minutes of searching, I found her head. Putting it together with her body, I called Pika. Pika, leave the equipment and burn her body. Sorry, Bamertuno SSI, but I'm an explorer too after Pika cleanly burned Bamertuno's body with her elemental power, her equipment shone. Oh, the hoverboard was there too, but... The hoverboard began to greedily devour Bamertuno's equipment. Pika, am I seeing things? No, that child must have been hungry because she was just born. Child. Born. While Pika was answering nonchalantly, the hoverboard continued to devour Bamertuno's weapon. I mean, if it was eating something, shouldn't it be getting bigger? Why is it getting smaller instead? Its silvery gray color became darker. After devouring all the equipment Bamertuno left behind, it became a black, metallic elliptical ball. Just in case, I took out an arrow from my inventory and tried poking it, but it did not budge in the slightest. Instead, I felt a strange sensation. It was incredibly familiar, and touched the deepest part of my soul. This. Is this an elemental? Plus, this feeling it feels like it's connected to me. Yep. I think this child was influenced and created by my elemental power. In the process, Master obviously got connected but because it's still a child and it became full, it felt into deep slumber. Master should sing a lullaby. Pika, if I sing a lullaby, it will only fall deeper into sleep. To wake it, we'll at least need a bugle horn. No. It was just born, so it needs time to grow. Master has to sing a lullaby, so it can sleep well. Ah, so that's what you meant. For the next few minutes, I hugged the metallic egg and sang a lullaby, making Lydia who came back stare at me with strange eyes. I didn't know how to feel as a few of the mercenaries listening to me also fell asleep. I didn't sing so you guys could sleep. I'm crazy, really. How the hell did this become 9000 characters it's hard to control who? Chapter, 121 After fighting the demon army's elites, we had lost many people. Including me, there were nine dimensional mercenaries left, but twenty-one knights had died and seven of the surviving ones had received grave injuries preventing them from continuing. There were also only four magicians left. With twelve knights, four magicians, Bellowed, and Ludia, there were twenty-seven people left. If there was anything to be relieved about, it was that most of the knights and magicians were first dungeon explorers. That said, we still had a chance. In fact, with the army commander defeated, we would be able to rescue Sheena before the demon army could reorganize themselves. As such, there was still some fighting spirit left in everyone. However, the fact that the demon lord couldn't move got on my mind. Could he really not move? In that case, couldn't we kill him with our strength? Was the demon lord really heavily injured from the hero? There's no choice but to go on. Lydia nodded her head at my words. Right, we had no other choice but to go on. Even though we knew there was a spy within the knights or the magicians, we couldn't say we would separate, as that would only split up our strengths. As I could at least trust the dimensional mercenaries, I wanted to complete the mission with their cooperation. However, it wouldn't be so easy. Something had to be done. I couldn't ignore Peruta's words. But Lydia, we can't just keep going like this. What do you mean? Didn't you just say it was okay? I just want to get an insurance. Will you hear me out? Yeah. Around dinner time, Bellowda words made us tense up. We'll arrive soon. 
They must be planning on staying here for the night. They set up a temporary camp and are resting. Tonight's our chance. We won't be able to stop clashing. We will make a faint operation. That sounds interesting. One team to sneak into their camp and save Sheena and the explorers that turned into stone. One team to attack from the front and draw attention to themselves. There was also a team to pretend to be sneaky to disperse the demon's suspicions. Bellowed, me, the summoner, and a magician from Sheena's team, who had the ability to detect her party members' locations, joined the rescue team. Three knights, two magicians, and two mercenaries joined the secondary covert team, and the rest joined the frontal assault team. Demon bastards, we've come to take your heads. Demon soldiers, stop running away like cowards and come fight. Burning the monsters on guard magnificently, we set our plan into motion. The magician first casts stealth magic on all of the covert teams. Be careful. Although the magic erases your presence, smell, and appearance, if demons and monsters lay their eyes on you, they will soon discover you. So you mean we have to kill them quickly? I pushed back my hair and nodded. For the record, the metallic egg was in Fairy Garden with Ryue. For some reason, it wouldn't go into my inventory. It could be because it was alive, but at first, when it didn't go into the inventory, I was afraid I might need to hold on to it the entire time. Thankfully, Ryue was able to take it to Fairy Garden. Although Pika said it was better for me to hold on to it, I couldn't do so in the middle of such a dangerous operation, so I left it to Ryu's care. Well be starting now. The secondary covert team went in a bit earlier than us, the main covert team. Soon, we also sneaked in. Dozens of tents and monsters passed by us. Putting our trust in the magician's ability, we walked forward. The magician in question was on Bellow to back. She was continuously detecting Sheena's location and whispering her position to Bellode. However, her cheeks were red. Was she flirting in the middle of the operation? Can you feel the demon lord's presence? He's in the centermost area. He's tightly guarded too, but even in all the ruckus, he's not moving. What about Sheena? It seems that the explorers that turned to stone didn't need to be placed near the demon lord. Although there are quite a lot of personnel on guard, we should be able to save them without much trouble. When we're escaping, we can let them ride on my wyvern. But there's still one problem. The summoner spoke. Is there a way to turn them back from stone? We can think about that later. We have to save them first. Bellowed save with a stiff voice. The summoner seemed to be convinced by the urgency in his voice as he shrugged. Although I had a plan in mind, I didn't say anything. If things didn't work out, I would feel bad. After finishing our discussion, we quickly walked forward. Although my clothes were uncomfortable, I endured it and followed behind Bellowed. Kaya. Human. Smell. When is the army commander Nim coming back? More and more monsters and demons were in the pathway. My body shook from the tension during battle. Although we could kill these guys as we advanced. For now, I had to hold myself back as saving Sheena was our priority. Of course, fights did break out from time to time. Eh, here. Die. When we met demons or monsters in Nero's pathways, we had to hastily take care of them and move on. The summoner was of great help, as his main class was Archer. He consecutively shot out arrows with bountiful aura, which killed the demons quickly. It seemed to be a skill of his. It was truly quick and precise. Looks like the other teams are doing well. We heard explosions and screams from parts of the military camp. Hoping for the other team's safety, we hastened our steps. Soon, we reached the tent where Sheena and the other explorers were imprisoned. As expected, there were dozens of demons guarding the place. It seemed they planned to use them as hostages in their fight against the Empire. What do we do? As we planned, ill go. Keikuhum. Gladly. I walked up confidently. My appearance changed with each step. My white skin turned into black, tough and muscled skin, while horns shot out from my head and my hair was dyed black. Seeing me walk up so confidently, the demons became flustered. Army Commander Nim. Army Commander Nim, do you need something? 
We haven't received any word that you'd be visiting. What? I definitely sent a message. But. We haven't heard that you've come back yet. Did you bring the crown princess back? That bitch hid. We'll need to use the hostages more aggressively. Army Commander Nim, that's. I reached out and grabbed the head of the demon that talked back to me. Do you want to taste the honor of becoming my blood and flesh? And no, sir. I, Chituno, am the absolute ruler under his highness, the demon lord. You dare to talk back to me? You've gotten bolder. No, sir. You must have heard that we have intruders. I will take care of the hostages from now. You guys focus on guarding his highness. Yes, sir. The demons all bowed and disappeared beyond the pathway. I snorted and thought. This skill, it can even alter my way of talking. It said I would absolutely not get discovered, but to think it would have such effect. I thought I could call my plan a success if I could just trick them for this one moment, but I didn't think it would work so well. God bless Zeus. Amazing. I thought that damned demon came back to life. After confirming that the demon's presence disappeared completely, I returned to my allies. Giving them a grin, I went back to the appearance I had before. Right. I had been using Sky God's play. But, the next part worries me a bit. Why? At my question, Bellowed couldn't continue and shut his mouth. However, his eyes clearly showed unhappiness. As it was none of my business, I ignored it and entered the tent with them. She was there. Sheena, who had been petrified, was there. Happily yelling inwardly, I urged everyone on. We don't have a lot of time. We're going to confirm that everyone's here and escape. Right. Eight people, including Sheena Nim. They're all here. They will notice us leaving, right? Let's just keep going. It won't be possible to secretly leave with them anyways. Hurry up and put them on. Although we tricked the demons away, it won't be long until they found out. The summoner summoned his wyvern and fixed the petrified explorers on. As they were alive, they wouldn't enter the inventory. As such, we had to sweat to get them out of here. It would be nice if I could just use return and bring them to earth with me, but as they belonged to the Luca continent, that wasn't possible. It was quite irritating. But. In my dream, I remembered that I returned to Earth with Lydia. How did my dream self do that? While we were putting the petrified explorers on the wyvern, the magician calmly shot up a flare. It tore the tent and rose up high into the sky, signifying that we had successfully rescued the explorers. Get on. You too, newbie. I'm coming even if you don't urge me. I held Sheena in my embrace and got on the wyvern last. The wyvern breathed out fire, burning everything in its path as it flapped its huge wings. Viren. A wyvern appeared inside the camp. Damn it, there were intruders here too. Uproar began to ring out from all sides. We could see demons running toward US, holding their weapons or tails. Kook, they took the hostages. Shoot them down. Fools, be careful when you shoot. The wyvern soared into the sky. However, the wyvern was hit by two of the demon's magic attacks, causing it to scream. Those sons of bitches. Crown Princess. The Crown Princess is on it. It seemed they were focusing on us more than we thought. In an instant, dozens of demons flocked toward us, confusing us. The summoner took out his bow, while the magician shot magic and bellowed shot aura blades with his sword. Even so, it was not enough to deal with all the demons. Wyvern, quicker. Damn, they put up a barrier of mana. It's going to take time to break through it. We need to buy time. The summoner could not help, as he was busy putting in mana into his wyvern to break through the barrier. The magician was also focused on breaking the barrier. Damn, a magical device like this wasn't there when we sneaked in. It looks like a barrier that you can activate once you know there are intruders. It's not that it's out of our expectations, but. It's too strong. Demons usually don't cast barriers like this. At this rate, we'll be shot down. Hugh, damned spies. I have to take care of this too. 
I sighed and took out Gluttony Spear from my inventory. Then, I looked at Sheena in my embrace and spoke. Summon Caduceus. Sky God's Rage. You summon Caduceus. All physical abilities have been enhanced. Two snakes have opened their eyes. You may only use the power of one of them. Sky God's rage has been imbued into the weapon in your hand. You can deliver a single powerful blow, or distribute the power in multiple attacks. In my hand not holding the spear, particles of light began to gather. Like a snake crawling up a tree, two rays of light crawled up my arm in a spiral and a pair of wings grew on my back. At the same time, the gluttony spear let out a radiant light and transformed to a golden lightning bolt. My allies looking at me opened their eyes widely. Newbie, you. If you tell anyone, it'll kill you. With words that even I found arrogant, I tightened my grip on the lightning bolt and thrust it towards the barrier blocking us. Boom. Again. Crack. With just two hits, an explosive crack rang out. With a satisfied smile, I shot out the lightning bolt again. The sound I was expecting was released. The sound of hundreds of windows shattering rang out. Seeing the demon's shocked faces below satisfied me even more. Viren, go. Gua. Eh, why is he listening to her? Him. Don't let them escape. Someone report to the demon lord Nim. Capture the other intruders. While still sending magic toward us, demons were scattering. I shot my lightning bolt, which still had some power remaining, at them. Although I wanted to throw the spear, retrieving it would be difficult, so I simply sent the lightning energy in my spear flying. A few of the demons turned into ash and disappeared. At the same time, the energy imbued by Sky God's rage had completely disappeared from the spear. Feeling refreshed, I put the spear back into my inventory. All right, let's run now. You sure are scary. The wyvern soared through the sky. Although many of the demon army's monsters flew in the sky, the others were more than capable of dealing with them. After all, they were all first dungeon explorers that were at least level 70. What about the other teams? Have you tried messaging them? Two of the dimensional mercenaries escaped to the dungeon. Four knights and two magicians died. The rest managed to escape the camp. The summoner replied, looking more relaxed as he controlled his wyvern. The wyvern continued to breathe out fire at the flying monsters. No matter how I thought about it, his wyvern was unusually strong. Meanwhile, I stretched my neck. The petrified people are all tied well, right? Other than the princess in your hand, then yeah. Good. Then should we do it now? Do what? You'll see. With that, I stretched my neck again. Then, I shouted. You whack. You used Orc Lord's war cry. All party members are cleansed of negative status effects. All party members' attack power increases by 50% for the duration. All party members become super armored, unfazed by enemy attacks. Startled by my shouting, the wyvern screamed and flapped its wings violently. The others were also surprised by my shouting and turned my way to say something, only to get shocked. Mm. Mm. Sheena, who was in my arms, regained her normal complexion. Not only her, but all the petrified explorers tied to the wyvern snapped out of their status effects. W what did you? No, never mind. Excuse me. Hoo hoo hoo. Even if I told you guys, there's nothing you can do. I murmured inwardly. The petrification was a type of status effect. It could be cancelled with Orc Lord's war cry. I was now fully ready to agree that Orc Lord's war cry was the world's most cheaty skill. Smiling brightly, I checked Sheena's state. She was still wearing the armor she wore during the battle. With her eyes open, she was looking at me with surprised eyes. Sheena, are you okay? Uni. You came to save me. Really? Yeah. Sheena's eyes opened widely. Then, looking at me, who was taking Lydia's appearance, she laughed. So Uni really? Ho ho. Thanks, Uni. I was lost for words at her incredibly beautiful smile. Drawn by her smile, I also smiled. 
Sheena's next action was like flowing water. And. Goodbye. She took out a sword. The sword's body, the sword's guard, and the sword's pommel were all emanating an eerie black aura. Then, she stabbed it in my stomach. 1. I wonder if there are any readers who didn't realize that Shin was disguising himself as Lydia. Probably not, right? With all the hints I gave. 2. It seems like not a lot of people thought Sheena was a traitor. Someone actually guessed it from what Pryuta said in the last chapter. I got frightened and replied mysteriously. I don't know if it worked. By the way, there were many hints. Like the Emperor telling him not to trust anyone besides Lydia and bellowed the fact that Sheena, who should have been faster than Lydia, stood still and got petrified while Lydia escaped though Lydia thought that it was because she was just faster T. T or as the last chapter said, Pryuta telling Shin not to trust anyone. Stupid Sheena, you got tricked. Does she still look like your sister? Now, why was Shin taking Lydia's appearance? Why did he hold Sheena in his embrace, fully knowing that something was wrong with Sheena? Did he want to embrace a girl even if it cost him his life? The answer will come out in the P.S. Shin's cape has the effect of blocking ambush attacks three times per day. It will be explained in the beginning of, but he cannot use his equipment skills when he's using Sky God's play, so that's why he couldn't block her attack. Of course, even if he could use the effect, the difference in the equipment's power wouldn't make that possible. Sure, give me longer chapters Toika, I love it. Tears. On the other hand, if Shin's changed to Lydia, can he feel the... You know. Chapter, 122. My cape's effect, ambush defense, could not be used in Lydia's appearance. Although I retained all my abilities, it did not include my equipment's effects. As such, I could only let the sword stab into me helplessly. You have been stabbed with the legendary weapon, Soul Sucker, crafted with the Demon Lord's power. If you do not receive peak grade treatment, you will soon be killed. All party members fall in shameful obedience status effect. Orc Lord's war cry attempts to resist it. Without enough resistance left, it fails. So Orc Lord's war cry could fail too. The reason it didn't have enough resistance had to be because it cancelled all the petrification. Since the petrification was a status effect casted by the Demon Lord, it was understandable. In fact, it would have been more surprising if Orc Lord's war cry could have resisted the status effect again. I didn't think you would grit your teeth and come save me but I'm happy I got to use this sword, Uni. Cough. But still, I'm surprised. I thought you'd get caught before it became my turn. We planted quite a lot of spies among the knights, you see. Ah, uh, by now, the demon army should have invaded the imperial palace too. The demons that usually only stay in the demon lord's territory have been sent out, knowing that this is the best opportunity. Elite forces sent to save me. Without them, what would have happened to the imperial palace to father and mother? I don't think the ruler of an empire would run away to the dungeon, so do you think he got captured? I coughed up blood. Excruciating pain swept over me. It was as if my soul was being sucked in by the sword. The party members tried to approach me, but I shook my head once and gave them a glance. It was the signal to execute the plan we made for the what if we talked about. Bellowed shook his head in pain, but the magician and the summoner were different. They immediately sprung into action. Although they seemed to be in pain from the status effect, the order I gave them was extremely simple. Thinking that victory was in her grasp, Sheena continued. What don't you say something, Uni? Like since when or why I went to the Demon Lord's side? Or if the Demon Lord brainwashed me? Don't you have a lot to say? What is it that you want? Sheena seemed to be surprised by my straightforward question. She curled one corner of her mouth up and responded. It's the seat next to the Demon Lord, Uni. A seat where I can obtain everything in the world he allowed me to be beside him. Of course, with one additional condition. The power of Kong Shin, the other world's hero. You know how greedy I am, right, Uni? The demon lord took my offer of the power of another world's hero. He also saw me in high regard. You see, we suit each other rather well. 
So because of your avarice, you cooperated with him in destroying the Awer Empire, killing me, and offering Shin to the Demon Lord? Leaving his own world to end? Yep. What, are you trying to contact him? Give up, Uni. This sword's power is amazing. The only thing Uni is allowed to do is to curse at me to make the short time you have left worth it. You probably can't open your inventory either. It really didn't open. I let her know that there were others with my eyes, but Sheena was still full of leisure. Didn't I tell you, Uni? This is a weapon imbued with the Demon Lord's power. Everyone here is no longer allowed any freedom. At the very least, everything they could do as explorers has been sealed. Plus, the ones Uni saved are also. Sheena talked as she turned her head, and was shocked. Other than Bellowed, who was gritting his teeth and closing his eyes, the summoner and the magician's actions had shocked her. Seven explorers, who were tied so well that they couldn't even open the door to the dungeon, had fallen from the wyvern's back. Currently in free fall, they were screaming. Quiak. Why your highness? Since both their hands and feet were tied, they were fated to hit the ground without doing anything. Of course, they couldn't escape to the dungeon. The moment I realized Sheena was hit by the Demon Lord's magic on purpose, the chances that other petrified explorers were also traitors became extremely high. The moment Sheena's words confirmed it, the party members had thrown them off the wyvern. Having to kill the people we came to save it was a truly unpleasant feeling. You guys. They'll probably die. At my short words, Sheena gave a flustered look, but soon swept aside her bangs and sighed who I don't care what happens to them. They were only there to make it more believable that I was captured by the Demon Lord. What's important is that you and the others can't do anything to me. She seemed to be telling the truth. Even after dropping the seven explorers, the summoner and the magician couldn't approach me. It seemed like the sword in my stomach was preventing them somehow. If they forced themselves, they might be the ones to fall off the wyvern instead. It must be the shameful obedience status effect they got when the sword stabbed through me. Just by attacking one person, the whole party was suppressed. I knew it was imbued with the demon lord's power, but what was this weapon? At that moment, while I was feeling my vitality reaching its limit, a message rang out an ear, surprising me. Die Heart activates. All injuries have been restored and your vitality is restored to 50% of its maximum. Soul Sucker's power prevents healing. If you do not receive peak grade holy recovery in the next two minutes, you will die. Without even knowing that Die Hard had activated, Sheena smiled confidently and spoke. Huhu, this sword is also the proof of contract between us. It is the power that he bestowed upon me. Be glad, Uni. Uni loves Kong Shin, right? He will be stabbed with the same sword. With this sword, I will rob the world of its power. How is it? Are you happy that you will die in the same way as your lover? Kuu, this hurts there's one thing I want to say. With this, I probably heard everything I could with Lydia's appearance. I immediately cancelled Sky God's play. In an instant, my height grew taller, my hair got shorter, and my voice became thicker. My two arms, which were still holding on to Sheena, changed from the slender arms of a frail girl to healthy, muscled arms. Likely because of Soul Sucker, I wasn't wearing my equipment and was only wearing my underwear. Because of the sword stuck in my stomach, my underwear got dyed in red. Without joking, it was an intense pain. I'm not your uni, Sheena. Sheena's eyes opened widely. Appa. Bellowed, the request has been complete. Do you accept it? Cook, the request sorry, but even so, I can't do it. Really? But I don't think it's up to you anymore. The moment I said that, a fanfare rang in my ear. Request complete. Although the requester did not lie, the target of the request has become the world's enemy. As of this moment, all dimensional mercenaries that have carried out the request will be treated as if the request has been completed. It is recommended that you return to your dimension as soon as possible. You obtained 8 stats points as the request's reward. 8 points. It was quite a lot. However, I couldn't open my status window at the moment, so I couldn't use the points that I had obtained with difficulty. 
Sheena was visibly surprised by the fact that I had changed from Lydia's appearance, but after realizing that the sword was still stuck in my stomach, she regained her composure. Appa, you already became a dimensional mercenary. I never even imagined it. Plus, you were disguising yourself as Uni too it's quite unfortunate that I couldn't kill Uni here, but at least you made it easy for me. I can fulfill my side of the contract with the demon lord now. As I thought, I wasn't your fated partner. Jeez, Appa. My fated partner isn't a childish rookie like you. It's the demon lord. Didn't Lydia say her clan's eyes allowed them to find partners that would let the empire flourish? It seemed there was a mistake. For example, instead of a flourishing empire, it could be flourishing descendants. With her fated partner being the demon lord, it was understandable that she'd be excited. Especially since she even suppressed me with such a powerful weapon. At this point, I was completely certain. I wanted to believe that the demon lord had brainwashed her, but all the negative status effects on her should have disappeared when I used Orc Lord's war cry. Since she lied about her fated partner being me she must have been conspiring with the demon lord for a long time. So Sheena, do you hate me so much that you want to kill me? HM to be honest, I thought you'd be a good boyfriend. You're handsome, strong, and kind. Thanks for the compliment. By the way, Sheena, I came here to save you. Although I was in Lydia's appearance, I hoped that you were fine. This was the truth. If possible, I wanted to save Sheena and go back. I wanted to complete my first mission without much problem, and I didn't want to see Sheena rebelling against Lydia and the Imperial family. I didn't want to see Lydia's crying face, and I didn't want her to hate me. But. But Appa is a hero, right? Setting aside whether you like it or not, you have to sacrifice yourself for my future. Please just take this as your fate. I see, so everything is fate and truth, Sheena, our conversation until now has been insignificant. Sorry, Lydia. But I have no intention of letting someone who tried to kill me live. Caduceus. The snake spiraling around my arm opened its eyes. It was scorched black, then it scattered into pieces. As your target has a lower level than you, you reflect all injuries inflicted by the target. Kohak. Sheena grabbed her stomach and groaned. I touched my stomach, and confirmed that the sword was no longer stuck in it. My health was back to normal as well. The state of my body was so perfect that even I found it strange. Putting mana into my bracelet, I put on my armor. Then, I checked how my allies were doing. As expected, they had escaped the status effect and were making confused expressions. Seeing Sheena state, Bellowed ran toward me, but the summoner smacked his head first with his bow imbued with aura. This guy really is stupid. Even with what she did to him. Kook. Kahak. Sheena coughed out black blood and raised her head to look at me. The sword stuck to her stomach was giving off a black aura. Just watching it made me shiver in fear, especially when I thought that it was inside of me until just now. This, what did you? Sheena. In my country, we call it the retribution of karma. I explained to her coldly. I simply returned what you did to me. How? The demon lord's power and uni. You justified murder for your avarice, right? As for me, I will kill you for my justice. Kohak Oapa, save me. Plea. It went without saying that I had never killed a human being. I had killed monsters like eating rice. I had even killed demons after coming here. Right, I had even killed chimeras, who were made using humans. However, I had never killed a human being. Set aside the question of whether humans and other lives have different values. It wasn't a matter of value. There was an inherent resistance to murdering humans, who were the same existences as me. It was the resistance that humans naturally had. However, I surprisingly accepted myself trying to kill Sheena naturally. She tried to kill her older sister. She wanted to betray her continent and embrace the demon lord. She agreed to the plan of killing her own parents. No, that wasn't the reason. I wasn't trying to kill her for such a complicated reason. It was simpler. It was because she was my enemy and she tried to kill me. To kill her, I didn't need any other reason. 
Kuk Kohak. Hugh. Once I had organized my thoughts, I was quick to move. I took my spear out of my inventory and brought it to the demonic sword stuck in her stomach. Although the demonic sword must have belonged to Sheena, that was no longer the case as it had dealt critical damage to Sheena. In fact, it was likely that it was now mine. As expected, my spear easily absorbed the demonic sword, which was happily sucking away her soul. Crimson Gluttony Spear Absorbed Soul Sucker Growth, 87% It had a lower grade than the Holy Sword. How amazing was the Holy Sword when it was at its full strength? While pondering, I stared at Sheena, who was gasping for breath. Oh Appa! You're trying to open the dungeon. The moment I felt her resistance, I summoned my elementals. Pika and Ryue appeared on my shoulders the moment I called them. With a grunt, Ryue was holding up the egg with her small body, but I pretended not to see it and order her. Tie her. In an instant, Sheena's hands and feet were frozen. With the demonic sword gone, she was no longer my opponent. Having lost her way to resist and escape, she only looked at me with blank eyes. Oh Appa. W what did you do with the sword? Without answering her, I held my spear up. Pika and I also didn't need to exchange words. She naturally infused herself into the gluttony spear, giving it golden flickers of lightning. Sheena put on an urgent expression. Appa, you took away the sword to save me, right? Wrong. Without even a shred of hesitation, I struck down with my spear. I got rid of the sword, so I won't make disgraceful excuses later that I didn't personally kill you. I will bear the weight of my crimes. I won't make excuses that I only returned the injury she gave me. I labeled her as my enemy, and thus I cut her. I will continue to do so. My spear cut Sheena in half and the lightning energy in my spear burned the two halves of her corpse to crisp. I destroyed Sheena completely, so that she cannot be revived as undead. With my own hands, I killed Ludia's sister. The fact that it felt the same as killing a monster was sad and scary. You can't effectively deal with the demon lord with floor master's powers. Then use God's powers. By taking on Ludia's appearance, Shin was able to hear everything from Sheena. If he was in his own appearance, it would have been hard. Things would have gotten much more complicated. This is the highlight of this arc. Shin has killed a person for the first time. I thought a lot to write this part, but there was no reason for Shin, who was resolute and clear on distinguishing between friend and foe, to let Sheena live. Sheena was his acquaintance and Shin had even come for her. Because of the effort he put in, he couldn't forgive her for what she did to him. Chapter, 123 The wyvern did not return to the palace, but stopped halfway and dropped us off. It was the rendezvous point we set beforehand. Ludia, who had gone to hide in the dungeon at my request, returned and was already waiting there. Others who had safely escaped the demon's camp were also gathered. As my team was escaping, the ruckus we caused by breaking the barrier had drawn much attention away from the others, letting them escape more easily. What was that message about world's enemy? Didn't you go rescue them? Why are you alone? The dimensional mercenaries approached me and asked questions. However, I raised my hand and stopped them. Ludia, first, get away from the knights. What? Kayak. The moment I said so, the knights made their move. It wasn't to protect Ludia, but to capture her. Come on. All the surviving knights were traitors. Even the magicians. They're all traitors. I shouted sharply and used divine speed. I stabbed my spear into the night trying to restrain Ludia and held her in one arm. Then I jumped back, all of which only happened in three seconds. What just happened? Newbie, you're really fast. Kook. They were quick to understand the situation. The moment I rescued Ludia, they tried to escape to the dungeon. When I tried to capture them with Ryu's power. Explorers that betrayed their world and joined the world's enemy have been kicked out of the dungeon. Their abilities as explorers have been recollected. What? I narrowed my eyes. What was this message saying? Why was the dungeon doing this now? The knights and magicians, who were trying to open the dungeon, suddenly collapsed. 
It was likely because they had lost their strength. The dimensional mercenaries didn't miss this opportunity. Without a shred of hesitation, they attacked the traders' vital points and killed them. Why did the dungeon figure out they were the world's enemies now? The dungeon system automatically provides experience calculation, inventory, and item drops to all explorers, but it cannot focus on specific explorers all the time. Moreover, finding explorers that join the world's enemy in a world where their forces are strong is close to impossible. As such, dimensional mercenaries serve as eyes of the dungeon to find explorers that betrayed their own worlds. You're smart, message Nuna. Message Nuna who satisfied my curiosity did not reply to my words of astonishment. It seemed the other dimensional mercenaries already knew about this. Since they killed the traitors so resolutely, there must be rewards for killing the traitors too. All traitors have been killed. Rewards will be distributed appropriately. The lover of the demon lord was killed. You obtained five stat points and two skill points as reward. Stats point gained, 13. Skill points gained, 2. TSK, I didn't want such a bittersweet reward. Seeing my complexion turn dark at the message, Ludia, who was watching me, became startled and separated from me. She then asked. Sheena, where's Sheena? Ludia. Shin, where's Sheena? I pointed at the wyvern. On its back was the burnt-up corpse of Sheena. When Ludia saw the corpse, she didn't say anything. We confirmed it. Sheena was an enemy. That's a lie. Newbie's telling the truth. If it wasn't for him, we would have all died. Damn, that demonic sword still makes me shiver. Sheena had a demonic sword. I nodded my head. Ludia slowly approached the wyvern and pulled the corpse down. Seeing the corpse cut into two halves, she became speechless. I couldn't help but talk to her. Who who killed her? I did. I told her the truth. She shut her eyes tightly then opened them. Don't lie and tell me the truth. I killed her. Sheena tried to kill me, who had transformed into you. Please don't lie. Sorry, but I'm not lying to you. I killed her, Ludia. Ludia's lips trembled. She opened her mouth then closed it again, as if to say something. Then, she glared at me. What is this? Ludia. What is this? Ludia shouted louder than I had ever heard her before. Is this what you wanted? Making me escape to the dungeon because it was dangerous, taking my appearance, almost dying to Sheena, then killing her. I was waiting for you in the dungeon without knowing anything. Like a clueless idiot. What am I supposed to do after hearing this? What is this? I didn't want this either. I didn't want it to be true. I should have gone with you. Like I first thought, I should have gone with you. Even if Sheena killed me, I should have gone. I had to see it with my own eyes and experience it for myself. You would have died. I'd rather die. Because you protected me, I became the world's biggest idiot, fool, and blockhead. Is this what you wanted? Did you want me to obediently stay in the dungeon because you said it was dangerous, then crawl out when everything was over, see my sister's corpse, and nod my head and say it couldn't be helped since she was a traitor? I did. I also shouted. It's better than you dying. I didn't want to lose my friend. Is that bad? Because you tried to protect me, I lost my authority as a member of the Imperial family, my pride as an explorer, and even my qualification to be your friend. Because I was afraid of my sister being a traitor, I became a coward, who left my friend to go save my sister and hid in the dungeon. And what's wrong with that? You don't understand your priorities. You're the one who can't understand. Look at me. Both mother and father were killed, but hiding in that small house in the dungeon, I couldn't even see Sheena die with my own eyes. And I had to hear that my sister's killer was none other than you. I don't have anything anymore. I have nothing at all. There's nothing to protect, there's no reason to live. I would have rather died to Sheena. I would have rather protected you and died. That way, I could have at least protected my friend. The Emperor and the Empress died. I wanted to say something, but I was lost for words. 
I remembered what Sheena said, that the highest ranking demons had gone to attack the imperial palace. Did the emperor and empress leave behind a will for her? Did they meet an honorable end? I didn't know whether to be sad or happy at the fact that they at least didn't experience torture without being able to die like in my dreams. Leaving my speechless self behind, Lydia fell on the ground helplessly. Then, with a barely audible voice, she murmured. Sorry, Shin. Sorry sorry for only sending you in the one that made you kill Sheena with your hands, in the one. Seeing her suddenly change from condemning me, I became flustered. She wasn't mentally stable at the moment. After thinking about what to say, I replied in a quiet voice. It's what I wanted. I'm the worst. I'm worthless. I'm a clueless fool, who gets scared at the most critical moments and can only let others do my job. I don't have the qualification to be royalty, to be an explorer, or even to live. Lydia, don't say that. I hate you. I can't help but hate you. I hate myself. I hate myself for hating you. Lydia, you need rest. I beg you, don't think about anything and just rest. If you hate me, I can disappear. I understand why you would hate me, so it'll go away so that you won't see me anymore. No. Lydia suddenly shouted. Her eyes were full of fear. You stole my sister from me, and you even want to take away what I have left. Lydia. Was Lydia talking about me? Startled by her words, I stood still without knowing what to say. She staggered up and approached me. Holding on to my arms, she looked up. Her blue eyes were glistening with tears. No, Shin. Don't. Please you're the only one I have left. I lost mother, father, and Sheena. I don't want to lose you too sorry. I won't hate you, so please don't leave please. Lydia had gotten weak. That's what I thought. She was mentally pushed to the point she would cling to me, who had killed her sister. Since the day Sheena was captured by the demon lord, or at least thought to be captured, she was broken. The wound she had patched under the goal of rescuing Sheena had burst, leaving her helpless. No, don't go. Don't leave me alone. She's having a mental panic attack. Thinking that the world would collapse leaving her alone or that she is now worthless it's common among explorers that lost their worlds. At least, she still has you newbie, you better think carefully before you act. The summoner mercenary spoke bitterly. Then, he disappeared using return. The other mercenaries disappeared one by one. I couldn't blame them. Once the demons occupied the imperial palace, they would be coming for us next. It was the correct choice to go back as quickly as possible. In the end, only Lydia and I were left in the field. Our surrounding was strangely quiet, almost as if something would suddenly pop out. All right in that case, they'll stay by your side. Even if you hate me, they'll stay with you. I won't hate you. I hate you, but thank you Hick. Lydia held me and cried silently. I patted her back, feeling a sense of unease. What would happen to the two of us? Would we be able to stay as friends? This dangerous relationship, will it be able to hold on without crumbling down? Embracing her, that was all I could think about as she cried. Sheena's corpse. Burn it. Once she stopped crying, that was the first thing Lydia said. She was still clinging to my arm. I couldn't joke around like I usually would. Please, get rid of the traces of Sheena. It'll do it. When I was about to burn her corpse, a voice rang out behind me. Now that I thought about it, there was someone here. It was bellowed. I was wondering where he was, but he had been collapsed on the ground the entire time after being hit by the summoner. Did he just wake up and realize what happened? I suddenly felt sorry for him. I want to send her off please, your highness. Bellowed fine. You can do as you'd like. Lydia made a surprised expression, but soon nodded her head with a bitter expression. Bellowed nodded respectfully, then slowly took out his sword. Fire then enveloped his sword. Just like how Peruta circuit manifested whirlwinds, he could turn his mana into flames that burned everything. Your Highness may you rest well. The flame he sent flying landed on Sheena's split corpse. As her corpse was burning, 
We silently watched, while Bellowed cried. Once Sheena's corpse had burned to ashes, Bellowed turned around and respectfully bowed to us no, he bowed to Lydia. I'm glad you're safe, your highness. I should have asked for your safety first. I apologize for stepping out of line. I forgive you, Bellowed and I'm no longer the crown princess. I will throw away my status as royalty. Your Highness. Bellowed, there's no time you should abandon the Luca continent. She was concise. There's no hope left here. If you don't want to die with Sheena, immediately run away to the dungeon. You're in a guild. But, Your Highness. Bellowed, go. Next time you see me, don't call me Your Highness. This continent is over. Party member Paludia Gren Awer has been changed to an independent explorer. With her consent, you can return to Earth with her. With trembling eyes, Bellowed looked at Ludia, then turned to look at Sheena's ashes, which began to scatter into the wind. He bit his lips, turning back around and bowing deeply to Ludia. Then, he disappeared. He had gone to the dungeon. Seeing him disappear, Ludia leaned in my embrace without strength. I'm tired I want to rest. I could feel the weight of her entire body leaning on me, making me realize to my bones how weak she had gotten. I couldn't let her leave to the residential area like this. Lydia, do you want to come to Earth? At my question, Lydia opened her eyes widely in shock. Then, she nodded her head. Her complexion was brighter than before. I was worried that she might not like it, but I felt relieved. Even if she returned to the residential area now, it would be bad for her. However, Luca Continent would not let us leave so easily. Savior, hero. For what reason have you arrived at this fallen world? I knew instinctively. This showy voice belonged to the Demon Lord. Just by hearing the voice, Lydia shook uncontrollably and clung to me. As I turned around, I also trembled from the presence I could feel with my entire body. In the sky, there was a bat. Do forgive me for being rude and not seeing a guest with my real body. But my real body is currently in deep sleep to accept the world's power. You're talking about the power you obtained by killing this world's hero? That's right, hero. Did you enjoy the game? My concubine should have entertained you. It was distasteful. You aren't very good at greeting your guests, demon lord. Huhuhu you say rather interesting things, other world's hero. The bat continued. Last surviving princess, come to me. You were the one I wanted from the beginning. If you become mine, everything you ever wanted will be yours. In the name of Mitaris, go kill yourself. Lydia spat. Looking at the demon lord's familiar, her eyes were burning with fear and rage. I decided that it would be the best to stop Lydia from seeing the demon lord. Oh, how unfortunate. But even the hero holding you so reliably will soon die. In the end, heroes are only scapegoats. With a few petty blessings, they are forced to fight against us. Return. I used return. Immediately, the surrounding scenery became distorted and melted down. Before we realized, Lydia and I were in my house on earth. As Lydia was staring at me blankly, I smiled softly and spoke. Demon Lord that son of a bitch, do you think we made him mad by leaving in the middle of him talking? Still with blank eyes, Lydia nodded. Suddenly, she laughed. Looking at her, I also bursted out into laughter. Demon Lord Zero, Kong Shin won. I had gotten my first victory over him. Shin, Demon Lord, I don't want any information from the likes of you. Stay in Luka Continent. Lydia. Living together I accepted it without much thinking, but we're living together. Shuna, who just woke up from the second floor of Lydia's house, eh? Why do I feel like everyone forgot about me? Lydia, hurry up and come back T. Chapter, 124 After coming to Earth with me, the first situation Lydia had to deal with was meeting my family. Oh. I, am back. The moment Lydia and I left my room, we ran into mother who was climbing the stairs with a vacuum cleaner. Her eyes became incredibly big the moment she saw us, and she frozen. Soon, with a calm expression, she put the vacuum cleaner down, cleaned her hand on her apron, and walked up to me. 
putting her hand on my shoulder, she whispered. Is that my daughter-in-law? She's my friend. Thankfully, her question was within my expectations so I could give an instant reply. However, Lydia tilted her head and spoke. What did she say? Ah. Now that I thought about it, Lydia was from Luca Continent. She could talk to me since we were both dungeon explorers, but she couldn't understand Mother, who wasn't a dungeon explorer. What happened next surprised me. With her hand not holding on to me, she reached into the air and took something out. That is, she had taken something out from her inventory. It was a black leather choker. She put it on and spoke. Hello. It was Korean. W what? What did you just equip? Why didn't Loretta and Lynn tell me about such an item? I could have easily solved my poor English problem at Britain. While I was feeling a slight rage at Fairy Garden's guildmaster and vice guildmaster, Mother approached Lydia curiously. Is she a foreigner? As you can see, yes. Lydia's a foreigner. Where is she from? With her Western appearance, is it America? Britain? France? She doesn't look Italian. Im a we're empire's prin ordinary citizen. If you're going to throw away your status, can you talk with honorifics? One eye gazed at Lydia strongly, but she turned her head the other way with a snort. For the record, she put more strength into holding on to me. Hearing the word Awer Empire, Mother tilted her head. Awer. Mom, she's a friend I made in the dungeon. I want to let her stay here for a while, is that okay? I'll tell Father and you a too. I changed the subject and asked Mother. She immediately stopped thinking about where Awer Empire was, as she put her hands on Lydia's shoulders. Of course. You can live here forever. God, I didn't think my son would bring such a pretty girl home. So. How far have you gone? Mom, she's really just my friend, so don't misunderstand. If you're going to make excuses that she's just a friend, at least stop linking your arms together. When Lydia heard what mother said, she suddenly became pale, pulling on my arm harder and throwing herself into my embrace. Feeling that something was wrong, mother's expression became stiff. With a bitter smile, I asked. Mom, please. All right. Since Shin brought a friend home, they'll have to show off. I have to appease Yua too. Appease Yua? Is she mad that I wasn't home for a while? You'll know once you see her. With that, mother smiled. I tilted my head and looked at Lydia, but she's still shaking lightly in my embrace. In any case, Yua really seemed mad, just like Mother said. And no. Why you can't live together Appa. Especially with someone so pretty. She's just a friend, Yua. There's a complicated circumstance, so I hope you can understand. I looked at Mother and Father as I tried to convince Yua, but they were both more concerned with Lydia. Mother asked Lydia what her hobbies were and Father seemed interested by the fact that Lydia was an explorer. In any case, they were telling me to convince Yua on my own. Appa, to be honest, I'm mad. It hasn't been long since you came back from Britain, but you left home for four days. You even brought back someone so pretty. Sorry, but there's a circumstance I can't tell you about. It's hard to explain. Why is it hard to explain? As it had been a long time since I saw Yua be so unreasonable, I didn't know what to do. Then, Lydia sighed and pulled on my sleeve. Holding on to chopstick strangely, she asked. Shin, can you explain how I use this tool? I told you to use a fork instead of chopsticks. I don't want to. No matter what country you go to, diplomacy starts from your table manners. So you teach me. You didn't come here as a diplomat. I'm a person of this world now, so it has to be perfect. You have to teach me everything. You. Appa. Hook. While I was paying attention to Lydia, Yua got up from her seat, shaking. I'm really angry. Appa can do whatever you want, I don't know anymore. Yua. After putting her empty dish in the sink, she left. Why Yua was finally going through puberty. Shin, can you show me how to use this? I can't figure out how. 
I'm surprised you can ignore others so well. Even as I sighed, I spent a long time to teach Lydia how to use chopsticks. Since I didn't know how or why I had to appease Yua, I could only sigh. When I told Loretta what happened, even she got mad. You're saying a customer named Poludia is staying in Shin Nim's house? The one you gave the headband to? Im Jiel no, send her back to the residential area. You're saying this too, Loretta? Im worried about Ludia. I want to watch over her for a while. T that's I know Shin Nim doesn't have any ulterior motive, but... Loretta looked like she wanted to say something, but in the end, she simply sighed. Then, she spoke as if there was no other choice. Fine. I'll allow it. Thanks. Strange. Why did I get Loretta's approval? What approval did I even get? My head was filled with questions. Meanwhile, Loretta continued. Then, I'll first teach you how to appease your sister. Tell me quickly. The questions immediately disappeared. When I returned from the dungeon, it was midnight. As I only went to the dungeon after Lydia fell asleep and set me free, talking to Loretta for a bit didn't pass the night. Yua, are you sleeping? Yes, I'm sleeping. Can I go in? After shouting angrily that she was sleeping, she easily crumbled at my request. I entered the door with a grin. Yua seemed to have been studying, as she was looking at her notebook and using the internet. She turned her rotating chair around and faced me. Her cheeks were puffed up. I thought you were with Poludia SSI. She went to sleep a while ago. Appa just came back from the dungeon. Yu Yu, so she was clinging so closely to Appa before going to bed. Yua, you also realized that something was wrong, right? When I asked her calmly, Yua made a difficult expression then nodded her head. How did you meet her? I met her in the dungeon, and we became friends. You see, I went to help Lydia this time. She's really just a friend. You guys aren't dating. Of course not. Then why is she sticking to Appa so closely? It's hard to explain in detail, just that she went through some difficulties. She lost her place in her country too. I couldn't leave her alone, so I brought her here. The details are what I want to hear. Yua murmured weakly and drooped her shoulders. Then, she said something I never would have imagined. I want to help Appa too. Eh. Appa looks like you're having a hard time lately. Plus, you're always busy. The incident that made Appa's friend like that Appa must have been there too. So I'm worried about Appa. Um. While I was panicking as Yua's response was different than what Loretta said, Yua continued with her head down. When Appa first became a dungeon explorer, I was happy. You were always smiling, full of confidence, and even lost muscles and became handsome Ah, uh, Appa was always handsome, but Appa became even more handsome. T thanks. But after the second moon rose and monsters began to appear Appa began to change. I was happy that I could be proud of Appa, but lately, I've been restless. I'm worried that Appa might suddenly leave me and disappear. A day would come where people without abilities would have trouble being near the hero. It was when I would have to leave my family. Because Yua's words were so accurate, I couldn't argue against her. Then, Yua looked up, staring at my eyes. If I become a dungeon explorer can I help Appa, too? No. Although I was surprised from Yua's words, I could answer her question immediately. Yua doesn't have to fight. Fighting can be done by people like Father and Appa, who only knows how to fight. Yua can help Appa by staying safe and being healthy. I know how to fight too. No, Yua. You're more suited to things other than fighting. Yua didn't have talent for physical activities like fighting. I was certain. Since I couldn't tell her that outright, I tried to say it in a roundabout way, but it didn't seem to work, as Yua's eyes became sharp. I hate Appa. Appa sucks. Leave. Yua talked to me without honorifics. Too when Yua pushed me with her hands, I became worried that my tough body would hurt her and quickly left her room. Immediately afterwards, the door closed with a boom. Left alone outside the room, I found a word to objectively describe this situation, and murmured as my heart crumbled. Sibling quarrel. Loretta, 
this is all your fault. Even though I didn't get to say what you taught me or use the present you gave me. I found a target to lash out on. It was the Wendigo. However, the Wendigo had a critical weakness to serve as my stress reliever. Choose your reward. 1. Wendigo's fur pants. 2. Frozen crystal. Damn, this guy is too weak. He's so weak, I don't even feel like fighting him. I kicked the snow on the ground in anger, and swallowed the frozen crystal. By consuming the frozen crystal, your resistance and affinity to freezing energy increases. Your magic increases by one. I love Shin. It became colder. I think my affinity with Ryue is already at its peak, but Ryue, I like Ryue too. Ehe. Ryue rubbed her head in my chest, and I patted her while thinking about what to do next. First, I had to appease you a no, that's probably not possible right now. Since Yua rarely got mad, I didn't even know when she would calm down. I had an idea why she got mad, but it wasn't possible for me to do anything about it. I guess it's the wyvern's nest. America, Arizona State, Pages Antelope Canyon. It's Field Dungeon, Wyvern's Nest. If I went there, I could meet Sierra Keenex, the woman who addressed me as Hero. I would know once I met her. Why she called me Hero and who she was. If she refused to speak, I would have to squeeze the info out of her. I was more than capable now. All right, I decided. Once I finished grinding Wendigo and Ryu's ability grew, I would go to Wyvern's nest. Wash your neck and wait, Sierra Kinex. It's the start of a new arc. I lightly portrayed Ludia assimilating to Earth's culture. It's now time for dungeon, dungeon, dungeon. Then, well focus on Sierra Kinex, that suspicious woman. ICDS rom-com edition. Wait, what about when Ludia takes showers? 1. Kind of hard to convey in English, but you have to use honorifics when talking to older people in Korean, which she didn't do. 2. Again, hard to portray in English. Chapter, 125. Hunting the Wendigo by myself was extremely easy, but I could still get frozen crystals even if I added a few more people to my party. As such, I decided to hunt the Wendigo in parties. When the explorers stuck on 50th floor saw me, they immediately recognized me as Crown Prince. Crown Prince is already on the 50th floor. A miracle. 50th floor already. But even Crown Prince should have hard time breaking through the 50th floor. Hell be stuck here too. If you're done talking nonsense, we're going in. In the fight against Wendigo, everyone else had only one job to do. It was to stay as far away from Wendigo as possible. I didn't know because Ryu's power was protecting me, but the freezing energy that the Wendigo emitted was no joke. Even if priests casted protection magic with all their strength, veteran warriors, who had climbed all the way to the 50th floor, still had difficulties. Shin, that's a cold attack. Yeah, yeah. Of course, the 50th floor master Wendigo also had a special attack skill. With its hand dyed white, it drew a large trace. If one even glazed it, he would be frozen for a moment regardless of his resistance. I did not experience it in my first raid, so I ended up being caught by surprise in my second raid. Thankfully, Ryue protected me with a barrier while I was frozen. Moreover, because of my high resistance, I became unfrozen in five seconds. It seemed the Wendigo could not use it consecutively. With a bewildered face, it tried to kick me, which simply led me to beating it up. In truth, this was the first time I wasn't looking forward to the floor master skill. However, there were three slots left in the pocket watch to store skills in. Since I felt that the subclass would transform once the skills were filled, I planned to take whatever skills I could get. If getting to the 60th floor would take longer than I expected, I considered putting Crimson Scale Armor's Crimson Roar into the pocket watch too. Hot. When the Wendigo tried to swipe at me with its whitened arm, I created a plate of ice in the air with Ryu's power and leapt up. As the Wendigo looked up in vain, I grinned and shouted, Thunder Spear. Choose your reward. 1. Wendigo's fur coat. 2. High grade health potion. 3. Frozen crystal. 4. 
frozen dart. Eh. Didn't I come in with six people? When I turned around while swallowing the frozen crystal, I saw three explorers hugging each other while shaking. CC Crown Prince, HHH how are you completely fine? HHH he said H he had an ELE elemental. I it's so cold. I am going T to die. The other two. F froze to D death. My Wendigo party raids generally ended like this. In truth, I wanted to screw grinding and just get it over with. Lydia was completely fine when she was next to me. But when I tried to separate from her, she showed signs of mental instability. Thinking that she had gone back to her normal self was only my wishful thinking. Whether we were eating, reading books, listening to music, knitting, drinking tea, or whatnot, the moment I tried to go out of her sight, she tried to scream in protest. Of course, I considered it my punishment for killing her sister and accepted it. I was just glad that I could serve as her emotional pillar. However, I couldn't let it stay like this. Right now, it was fine since I had a lot of free time with only hunting the Wendigo three times a day. But once I finished grinding, I planned to go to America. I couldn't bring Lydia along. When I told her, her reaction was extremely concerning. Why you're abandoning me? No, in coming back. Liar. Are you the only one living here? My parents and Yua are here too. Liar, liar. When I wake up one day, everything will be gone. It'll be the only one left in this world. Lydia. Ah, it's that. You're going to leave me and go fight someone again. The D Demon Lord chased after us. No, that's not it. T take me with you. Take me with you, please. I don't want to be left by myself like a fool again. She didn't look like she'd listen no matter what I said so I shut my mouth and held Lydia's hands. Lydia took the opportunity to throw herself into my embrace and didn't let go. When I raised my head, not knowing what to do, mother opened the door in the perfect time with a plate full of fruits. Then, she smiled kindly and closed the door. Damn it, I didn't like that needlessly kind consideration. Don't go. If you're going, take me with you. Please. It's dangerous if you come. Shin, take me with you. Let me go too. She really didn't listen. It seemed she wouldn't let go until I agreed to take her. In the end, I sighed and replied. There are two conditions. Un. First, you have to hide your identity. This is easy since you can buy an item called Otta's Secret from the floor shop. Second, you have to get stronger. I can't take you if you don't break through the 40th floor at least. 40th floor. Lydia's eyes trembled slightly. I'm only in the entrance of the 36th floor. There are still three weeks until I finish grinding the 50th floor. I'm sure you can do it. T then I D have to be away from you. Right, since I can't go back to the 36th floor. I, I can't. No. I don't want to. Then I'm going to leave you behind. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Lydia looked at me like the world just crumbled down. The next moment, she suddenly looked brighter as she spoke. I don't have anyone to party with me now. Shuna still can't take a foot out of the residential area. I had forgotten about Shuna until now. Lydia had known about Shuna, but didn't go back to the dungeon even once, and was only now using her as an excuse. I thought for a moment which of us were worse, but I didn't say anything, concluding that we were both bad. But Elo's party is waiting for you. Kekasina is. Lydia retorted as if she'd never imagined it. So she's not that close to Elo's thinking to myself, I nodded. Elo's had actually messaged me recently. Yeah. He's waiting for your return on the 36th floor. And no. I can't anymore. I lost my confidence. But if you can't clear the 40th floor, I won't take you with me. I'm not lying. And no all right, I can't go back to them alone. Miss Shuna will be there too. Shuna can't climb the dungeon anymore. Shuna had no house nor guild. It was unlikely that other guilds would take her in. That's what Lydia said. Since it came to this, I decided to tell Lydia the truth. Lydia, you see. 
looking around my special mansion, Lydia made a blank expression. She saw more than 100 rooms, swimming pool and grand bath, basement training room and personal training room, grand dining hall and basement storage room, and finally the giant iron boar ruining the garden's look. Speaking of the giant iron boar, it was now reduced to 20 meters from 60 meters in size. Lydia shouted. I'm going to live here with you. I'm going to found a guild. Lydia made an expression like she just stepped on dung, and spoke. Can't we just make it our home? No, we can't. Weren't you Miss Shuna's best friend? What about Miss Shuna? I'll give my house to Shuna. It's easy to transfer ownership. That way, Shuna can become an independent explorer too. What about you? W.L., I'm of course. Lydia's face turned red, as she looked down and pulled on my sleeve. I lightly pulled my sleeve back and spoke. See, out of words, right? I'm going to make a guild. I hate you. I hate you so much. Yeah, you can hate me as much as you want. Though, I won't hate you. You big insensitive idiot. I really want to kill you. Making a guild was easier than I thought. I just had to visit the residential area's administrator and submit the necessary documents. But when I went to see Melodel, he opened his mouth after seeing Lydia linking her arms with me. Why you? Who is that lady? A friend. Oh, dear lord. Is this the fate of a hero? My poor master. Stop speaking nonsense and take my guild creation application. As Melodel accepted my application, he continued to say incomprehensible things like, Do you like boats? Or I suggest you wear an abdominal belt. Then, messages popped up in front of my eyes. You created a guild. You became the guild master of the F rank guild, Revival. Guild member, Kong Shin Guild Master, Gold, Paludia Gren Awer Guild Member, Silver. Total, 2. You can raise the guild rank by increasing the number of guild members or by making achievements by clearing event dungeons or event raids. With higher guild rank, your guild will become more well-known in the dungeon, giving you better rewards in event raids and giving you more freedom in the dungeon. It wasn't much. It didn't increase my strength. As I didn't expect anything, I didn't feel disappointed either. You can request a guild emblem when you become D rank. People from famous guilds usually wear brooches or capes engraved with their guild emblem to show their status. Like a uniform. More like empty show. Even while I was talking with Melodel, Lydia stayed still. She must have heard the messages too. Then, she murmured silently. Revival. Um it's a word from Earth's language called English. It means resurrection, recovery, or resurgence. I wanted to use the Korean word for it, but it said there's already a guild by that name. Buol won. It means toy in Cerner Continent's language. Why would they make a guild with that meaning? Are the guild members the guild master's toy? Ek. Suddenly, I felt weight on my back. I turned around and saw Lydia who had her face buried in my back. I couldn't see her face. Flustered, I talked to her. El Lydia. Lydia Lydia. I'll try. Lydia said in a small voice. You. I'll try climbing the dungeon. I'll contact Shuna and Cassina too. I'll try. I didn't know why she was suddenly so willing. Perhaps, she felt a sense of security at the fact that she belonged to a guild with me. Perhaps, she had been strengthening her determination this entire time. Perhaps. I could think of many possibilities, but I didn't ask her. It was fine the way it was now. Yeah. Thanks for taking a step forward, Lydia. Un un. I had a dream. The sky burned and dark smoke shot up. Morning didn't wake and night didn't sleep. Fairies that remained in fantasies were chased out to reality. Holding their torn wings, they cursed humans. XX, I always think why I always go through such hardships when I involve myself with you. X, that's wrong. Those that can say they went through hardships after involving themselves with X are those that survive. It's usually hard to survive after involving oneself with X. 
Under a bloodstained sunset, a giant and a handsome young man were exchanging jokes. One held an enormous claymore and the other held a longsword, which were both suitably big for their master's size. You're all noisy. Go out and kill the monsters. Be careful so blood doesn't splatter onto me. Also, if you curse X, it'll kill you. Which, shut up and prepare your flames. Because of your laid-back attitude, I thought I'd see the afterlife today. Guys too, I just thought up an extremely funny joke. Don't fight and calm down. Lizard King is the king of the lizard men, right? But if you look, there are five lizard kings running at us. What do you think this is? The small kingdoms have joined. A red witch, black assassin, cheerful gunner, and several others. Although there weren't many, each of them were incredibly strong allies. Xa, are you ready? Xx, your armor is really cool. Ha, huh, it really is. At least itll garner full attention. I praise thy courage. Someone wearing an armor radiating five colored brilliance stepped forward, setting them all aside. Even though it was my first time seeing him, my heart dropped a beat. I had the same reaction every time. From the first time I saw him to even now. I have the strongest body here anyways. Really, there are probably no other guilds where the guild master is treated like a punching bag. Alright Revival, we're going. Ah, right. XX can I leave it to you? Standing tall in a world of sunset alone, he turned and smiled at me. I held myself back from mixing up business and private affairs, and shouted confidently, of course. Along with a prayer in my heart, hoping to be of help to the one I love. O oh power, O oh blessing vested in the earth. We will fight to protect thee, let us borrow thy power. O oh Mataris, bless and sublimate this power. Just because I kept the narration in first-person POV, it doesn't mean it will always be that way. It's hard to show it in English, but each of the XS is one syllable. XAUA, I think just mentioning that one because X is English, making XA look weird. You guys can do the detective work for the other ones if you'd like. There are enough clues to figure out all the names and whose POV the dream was in. 1. Bullwall Revival in Korean. 2. Guys was in English. Chapter, 126. The next morning, I woke up in the temporary bed I installed next to my bed. Because Lydia wanted to be with me even while sleeping, I had no choice but to install this temporary bed. Plus, because I only needed to sleep two to three hours, I gave Lydia my bed and slept in the temporary bed. In any case, because I wanted to sleep for a while longer, I closed my eyes again, but soon reopened my eyes from the slight tingle I felt in my hand. At the same time, I realized what had woke me up. I was holding hands with Lydia, who had stretched her hand out of the bed. Lydia, you're up. Un. Okay, you can change first. He'll turn around and. Hmm. Lydia peeked her head out of the blanket. When her eyes met mine, her face suddenly reddened as she went back into the blanket. Even so, she didn't let go of my hand. What was happening? What's wrong, Lydia? Noth. Nothing. Tell me. I'm worried. Come on. It's nothing. I only just realized that I was the worst piece of human trash. What the hell happened last night? That's not nothing. Eloave I can't think straight if I'm with you right now. Okay, I'll leave. But you have to let go of me. I took my hand out forcefully from Lydia's grasp. This girl, when did she get so strong? But after grasping empty air, Lydia's hand once again took hold of mine. Instead of letting go, she even pulled strongly, and I almost fell into the blanket with her. I held on since I was stronger than a priestess, but I pulled the blanket down and looked at Lydia's reddened face. Hey. Sorry, stay with me. I'm sorry. Please stay. Okay. In the end, I had to stay within an arm's reach of Lydia. With my head turned the other direction, Lydia changed. I thought I'd die from embarrassment. Lydia was wearing a white dress. Although the ribbon decoration or the dress material changed from time to time, she always wore white dresses when she was in my house. 
Drawing my attention with her white and smooth legs showing under her dress, she casually said something completely shocking. I think I just awakened. What? Was awakening something that only happened to people from Earth? People from other worlds could do it too. While I was staring at her blankly in shock, Lydia stared at me with a pleased smile. How ugly. It's none of your business. Hoo-hoo, you're really ugly. Come closer. How ugly I am doesn't matter. What matters is your abili. Oh Earth. I stayed still, but the floor wriggled and I was moved in front of her. I was shocked once again. What Earth? This was the second floor. Shocking things were happening ever since I woke up. Lydia reached out and caressed my face. With her hand feeling my defenseless face, I felt quite strange. I tried my best to not bite her fingers and opened my mouth. Lydia, is that your awakened ability? Un. I can control the earth and utilize its power. It's an ability based on animism. Perhaps it's better to say it's based on belief of nature. She wasn't lying. Even though I wasn't on guard, I didn't notice her moving me at all. Perhaps, her awakened ability was stronger than her healing ability as a priestess. Un. If I had this power when I was in Luca Continent. No, there's no use in thinking that. Yeah, I didn't think you'd awaken an ability in Earth either. By the way, are you going to continue touching me? In my dream. I met many people I didn't know. When are you going to stop too? Dream? Un. Lydia easily ignored my question and said in a slightly sleepy voice. Dream? Ah, the premonition dream. The dream that acted as the trigger to awakening abilities and showing one's future possibilities. Of course, with what happened in Luca Continent, I confirmed that it wasn't absolute, but it was true that something similar would happen. I became curious as to what dream she had. Was I in that dream too? Un, you were. That's why it's hard to control myself. What does me being in your dream and you controlling yourself have to? Wait, you said control. Un. Can you? Bend down a bit more. Lydia, your breathing is a bit rough. Are you sick? Feeling a sense of unease, I put my hand up to take Lydia's hand off. At that moment, the door opened. Mother, who was standing there, spoke with a bright smile. Son, it's great to be so healthy early in the morning, but can you wait until the night for reproductive acts? What? What reproductive act? New daughter, they'll actively create the right mood at night, so do your best then. All right, come down and eat breakfast. Yes, mother. New daughter. Why is mom calling Lydia new daughter? Lydia, do you even know what that means? Hmm. I, Kong Shin, a man among men, almost became a married man at the age of 21. Then, see you later. Crown Prince Nim, see you later. Yeah, Lydia. Miss Shuna too, see you both later. I said, see you later. But. In Marianas Garden, which had become a guild house, I saw Lydia and Shuna off. Lydia found it hard to separate from me, as she would come clinging after taking a few steps away from me and being startled. After she repeated it a few times, I couldn't just let it continue. I took Lydia off and gave her to Shuna. Miss Shuna, take care of her. Why yes. Crown Prince Nim, by the way. Are you dating Lydia? No, we're just friends. Ow. Surprisingly, Lydia succeeded in getting away from me. Unfortunately, I didn't know exactly why she succeeded. Shuna put on a bitter smile while watching us, but clenched her fists and spoke happily. So I still have a chance. Shuna, let's go. Forever. Kayak. El Lydia. No, sorry, I'm sorry. Watching them talking loudly, I saw them off to the dungeon. It looked like Lydia was beating Shuna, but trusting that it was simply an expression of affection, I also headed to the dungeon. Time passed slowly when you were bored. After sending Lydia off to the dungeon, all I had to do was to hunt Wendigo three times and train my techniques. Although I knew how important it was, with how boring and unthrilling it was, 
I felt like I was forcing myself to do so. If there was one positive side, it was that I was confident that I had caught up to the spear technique and Puyuta circuit that I had forcefully leveled up. I considered using skill points to level them up again, but since I couldn't be sure that I could always get more skill points, I decided to save them for when the two skills were higher leveled. Climbing the dungeon alone is getting boring. Oh. That's unexpected. I didn't think that you'd like being in a party so much. Running across Wendigo's arm, I replied to the message I received. I want to quickly party with Shin. Plus, you don't come to school nowadays. Sorry, but I prioritize solo play. The reason I didn't go to school nowadays was because it was hard to separate from Lydia. I know it's because you're embarrassed. No, it isn't. Replying sincerely, I stabbed Wendigo's eye and released a lightning attack. I leapt up, avoiding the screaming Wendigo's hand. What floor are you on now? Fortieth floor. The Reaper killed me twice. Well, I didn't think you'd pass that easily. Ugh, the first time, it suddenly appeared behind my back and killed me. The second time, I was doing my best to memorize its movement patterns, but it suddenly shot aside from its stomach and killed me. When Master finds out I died, he'll get scolded. Didn't I tell you how the strategy for defeating the Reaper? I'm not a monster like Shin. It seems the 40th floor Master couldn't be defeated easily with just her natural talent and magic. It made sense as the Grim Reaper was one of the strongest bosses. Once she defeated him, she should have no problem until the 50th floor. Plus, she could get even stronger from the 50th floor. Of course, that was given that Yi Yun could somehow deal with the freezing energy. While pondering about it, I dodged Wendigo's whitened hands and landed on his head. Some of my friends are about to reach the 40th floor. Why don't you try hunting the Reaper with them? Friends? Sure. Shin's friends must all be nice, right? Um, mm, well, yeah. It was good timing. Even though Lydia got stronger with her newly awakened ability, adding a powerful damage dealer like Yi Yun to her party would be like adding flowers to embroidery. Hee hee, I want to meet them soon. D don't worry. I just mean I'm looking forward to seeing them as comrades. I don't mean I'm looking forward to meeting other men. One of them is the older sister of your old party leader. She's called Poludia. If possible, try not to bring up her younger sister. A girl? Well, yeah, that's what sister means. I delivered a heroic strike to Wendigo's forehead. Ignoring the Wendigo trying to shake me off, I used white lightning consecutive strike. A friend. But a girl? A girlfriend? She's just a friend. Like you and me. I hate you, Shin. In any case, treat her well, okay? She lost her younger sister not too long ago. Yeah, okay. After talking with Yi Yun, I finished up my fight with Wendigo. Lost her younger sister, huh? Coming from the one who killed her, I felt nauseous. Even though Sheena tried to kill me first, even though she betrayed her world to join the Demon Lord, she was once my friend and was Lydia's younger sister. It didn't change the fact that I killed her. Choose your reward. 1. Wendigo's fur boots. 2. Frozen crystal. Damn it, I need to let it go too. Crunch. You consumed frozen crystal to its limit, greatly increasing your resistance and affinity to freezing energy. Your magic increases by 6. Consuming more of this item will likely have no effect. Eh. I suddenly realized that a month had passed since I started grinding the Wendigo. P.S. I'm a person of this world now is the hint from two chapters ago. That's. A weak hint. Edit, he's 21, not 26. I don't know how I misread that. It's been fixed. Chapter, 127. You equip the Wendigo set. Your magic and dexterity increase by 25. When the Wendigo set is equipped, you can use Ice Touch once per day. With Ice Touch, you can gather extreme freezing energy on your hands. When you attack your enemies, it ignores the enemy's resistance and freezes them, but they can break out after 5 seconds depending on their resistance. Um, I see. I nodded my head imposingly as a response to message Nuna, 
then took off the fur coat as it was irritatingly hot. Then, as I stored ice touch on the ten o'clock position, I pondered, how was I supposed to use this skill? Wait. If I use divine speed and beat up the enemy for three seconds, then use ice touch before divine speed ends, I can beat up the enemy for five more seconds. Together, I would have eight seconds to beat the enemy up freely. Plus, I didn't need to use this freezing energy in close range only. There must be a way to use it somehow with Ryue. After all, all Floor Master's skills were useful. Alright it's time to contact her. I took out the letter I always carried with me. Sierra Kinex. I didn't know what she wanted from me, even after reading the letter thrice. It would be faster to ask her in person. After making my decision, I put it to action. Once I set my mind to do something, I wouldn't hesitate. That was my personal philosophy. The next day, I gathered my family, including Yua who still wouldn't talk to me, and told them I had to go to America. Yua's expression was quite a sight. Again. You're really busy lately, son. You're going to lose weight. I'm fine. I did get slimmer, but I got a lot stronger as well. HM, America are you going to that canyon where wyverns appear? Father, do you want to come with me? Father surprisingly thought about it seriously, then shook his head. No. I would have gone if it was any other time, but I'm almost about to make a breakthrough in my spearmanship I heard that wyverns are strong. Be careful and don't get hurt. Ludia has a healing ability. Since we'll be together, there's no need to worry. Paludia SSI is going too. Yua's anger seemed to have soared to the heavens. She then shouted, I'm going to start going to church. Yua. I want to be a priestess too. Yua, even if you become a nun, I don't think you can become a priestess that uses holy magic. Thinking that in my head, I placed my hand on Yua's head. She tried to take my hand off in anger, but before she could do so, I said, thanks for worrying about me, Yua. UK. If Yua becomes an awakened, then Appa won't leave Yua alone at home. What about being a dungeon explorer? You can't climb the dungeon without a combat ability. If Yua becomes an awakened, we can talk then. Yu Yu. Yua seemed to have acquiesced, as she nodded with a frown. Thank God. Good. Appa will bring back presents from America for Yua, okay? I'm not a child, don't try to appease me with presents. I hate Appa. Kook. It seemed I needed more time before Yua's anger could be appeased. I'm going too. Waya. You came to help me before, so I'll go with you to Arizona. When I told Waya I'd be in America for a while, she said she would come with me, making me flustered. As her reason made sense, I was even more flustered. No, that's different than this. I know I'm going to an S-rank field dungeon, but it's not like you'll be in a dangerous situation. You don't need to trouble yourself. But wouldn't it be easier if I was there? That's true, but you're Britain's ability user. If you come, they might take it as Britain's assistance. No, they'll make it clear that I'm participating as Thunder Knight's friend. You mean you're not going to make it a trade between America and Britain? Yeah. Britain won't understand my worth unless I show them. Coming from someone as patriotic as Waya, it was a surprise. Brightman really must have made her angry. I continued, still half surprised from what she said. To be honest, you'll be in my way. That's too honest. I've gotten stronger too. Plus, I got a legend-grade defensive equipment, so I've perfectly covered my weakness. Don't be surprised when you see me. They'll prepare a plane for us in two days, so be ready. With that, Waya hung up. At least she was eager to go with that, I sighed. I had no choice but to acknowledge that she was coming. Thankfully, Yiyun safely defeated the Grim Reaper with Ludia and Elo's party. Since Ludia has broke through to the 41st floor and even awakened an ability, I decided to take her with me to America like I promised. The day of promise then came. Shin, hi. Eh. There was one uninvited guest waiting for me in front of my house. I turned around to Ludia and demanded an explanation. Ludia buried her face in my back and dodged my eyes as she replied. As she said she would come. 
I couldn't do anything about it. I didn't want to tell her either. Shin, you're so mean. You should have called me if you were going somewhere so dangerous. But you're weaker than me. I got stronger by climbing the dungeon, so I wanted to try hunting wyverns too. By the way Paludia, can you get off of Shin now? I heard that the two of you are just friends. Humph. Ludia returned Yiyun's burning gaze with her special cold gaze. At the same time, I sent Yiyun a message only she could hear. I told you, Ludia has a special circumstance. But it's annoying watching her like that in front of me. Do you want to go home? Yiyun finally seemed to have understood. I felt sorry in a way, so I decided to get her a gift to make up for it. With that, I headed to the airport with both Ludia and Yiyun. I had already turned down Sierra Kinex's offer to prepare a method of transportation. Waya and I promised to meet here, and her private plane would be waiting here. As expected, when I arrived at the airport, Waya was already waiting at the airport. It was obvious she had used some kind of magic to prevent herself from being noticed by people other than me. It's been a while, Shino. Yeah, it really has, Waya. Sorry, I forgot to tell you about my friends. They're both ability users and dungeon explorers. The moment Waya saw Ludia and Yiyun, she opened her eyes widely in surprise. However, it was Ludia and Yiyun who were more surprised, as they noticed Waya only after I spoke with her. The two of them rudely pointed their fingers at Waya and shouted. T that's Yi Waya, right? Yi Waya. I saw her on TV. That's my Korean name. Even though I'm staying in Korea for now, I'm British. Waya Masterford. I'm a second dungeon explorer and a friend of Shin. Waya seemed to be accustomed to such reactions, as she introduced herself with a sigh. Ludia and Yiyun's response differed. Shin, you, when did you become friends with someone like her? UK, no, I'm lacking in all aspects. Paludia. I have a family name, but I'm not using it right now. Shin is my friend. For now. At Waya's introduction, Yiyun wrapped her head with her hands and crouched down in agony, while Ludia made a light smile and puffed out her non-existent chest to introduce herself. Eh. Ludia, she eh. When did she eh? I see. Friend for now hmm, okay. Nice to meet you. Waya smiled lightly at Ludia and knocked on the air stairs next to her plane. Shin, no one else is coming, right? Uh, yeah. Then, let's go. The skunk plane is going to depart soon. We can continue talking once we take off. We'll have to fly for at least seven hours anyways. While I was bewildered from Ludia's inexplicable change, Waya urged us to get on board. Yiyun also looked slightly out of touch with reality as she staggered up the stairs. I, am on Yiwaya's personal plane. Shin, let's go. Ludia linked her arms with mine and pulled me along. Now that I realized the change in Ludia, I shivered at the sensation I could feel with my arm. Dear God, there was no way this was artificial it had to be natural. When I walked up the stairs as shocked as Yiyun and entered the plane, Waya, who walked by me, asked me in a whisper. So, there should only be six explorers on Earth. How do you explain bringing two explorers? I can explain later. Yeah, you'll be sure to hear it when we're alone, so prepare yourself. Shin. When I was standing still listening to Waya, Ludia called my name and pulled on my arm. I made a bitter smile, and Waya laughed with her eyes narrowed. Shin won't run away. You don't have to shout his name. Don't be so nervous. Waya and Ludia exchanged glances for a short moment. Was it a power struggle? Could this be the women's fight, which I only ever heard about? One that determines who's superior in their first meeting? Now that I thought about it, neither Ludia or Waya should have lost to anyone in appearance. Waya was famous on earth for her beauty, and Ludia was regarded as one of the top beauties in the dungeon. It was almost impossible to objectively judge a person's appearance, but it would be hard for me to find anyone more beautiful than Waya and Ludia purely in appearance. Since the two of them met, it was probably normal for them to have their own thoughts about the matter. I flinched seeing them exchange glances, but I soon urged Ludia to keep going. 
Lydia, let's sit. On, wait Masterford. I don't like you. I feel the same way, Polydia. They both smiled. It was the kind of smile that emanated chills. Because their smiles were almost exactly the same, I almost got goosebumps. However, this atmosphere, which was as if Wendigo had used ice touch, was soon melted by a voice. Shin, there's a drinking bar here. Do you think there are fries too? Yiyun, I really like your never-changing self with a sigh, I replied. You know, you didn't even introduce yourself to Waya yet. Ah, right. Im Su Yiyun. Nice to meet you. Hoo, nice to meet you too. I think I can get along with you. I it's an honor. You you, but I feel conflicted. Just like that, the four of us set off to Arizona. Sierra Kinex would be waiting for me at Antelope Canyon. Would she know that I'd bring them along? Perhaps, she might with her special ability. With a grin, I leaned my head against the seat. Would I be at Arizona once I woke up? How did Sierra Kinex know I was the hero? Does she know more about heroes than me? Perhaps, she knew why and how I became the hero. Thinking about questions that I had no way of answering for now, I slowly closed my eyes. I heard the rumble of the skunk plane taking off. Chapter, 128 My first impression of Antelope Canyon was as such. Isn't this the Grand Canyon? Shin, think about Windermere Lake. They say higher-ranked dungeons go through greater terraforming. It's majestic. Hmm. Aren't all canyons this big? The Antelope Canyon was known for its narrow passageways, formed by the erosion of sandstone, and the beam of light that shined down from above. However, the current Antelope Canyon was wide enough to play a game of soccer, and its beautiful passageway had taken a strange formation. It wouldn't be weird if a golem popped out of it. Furthermore, it was incredibly large. I couldn't tell where the canyon ended. Though, perhaps the fact that it was currently night had something to do with it. Oh, who are they? Why a Mastafor and Thunder Knight? They're famous. They're the ones who cleared Britain's field dungeon. Not even America can ignore them. I didn't think they'd come here though. A few ability users were grouped in front of a car at the entrance of the canyon. I could clearly hear their whispers. It was the power of 300,000 gold. There are two more girls though. They're both wearing masks. Thunder Knight's wearing a mask too. They're probably his friends. He's not alone. I'm getting more curious as to who he is. They could be Flame Witch's subordinate. There is a rumor that Thunder Knight only appeared at Windermere because he was the Flame Witch's subordinate. Shin, they'll go burn those idiots. Just let them talk. We don't need to care about weaklings like them. Unhappy with the ability users whispering to themselves, Waya created flames on her palm, but I calmed her down. I was looking for something else. A few months had passed since the field dungeon had been created. Just like at Graveyard over the lake, there were several buildings above the canyon, ruining its natural scenery. I suspected that the person waiting for me was in one of those buildings. As expected, not long after we arrived, a voice rang out in my head. You came. I'm happy. If it's okay, can we meet right away? It was the voice of a young and frail girl. I remembered from her letter that she could use telepathy. However, I didn't know how to respond to her. If it's okay, nod your head once. I nodded my head. She answered immediately. Come inside your lodging. Room 1301, they'll be waiting there. With that, the telepathy cut off. I led my companions looking at me curiously to the lodging, while I gave them an explanation. I've been contacted by a telepathy. You guys didn't hear anything? No, not at all. Is it like the messaging system between dungeon explorers? It's a bit different. The messages ring in my ear, but this one rings in my head. UK, that doesn't sound comfortable. There was no elevator in the building. In other words, we had to climb the stairs to the 13th floor. Since Lydia refused to unlink our arms, it was a bit uncomfortable, but Waya, who was wearing a long dress unsuitable for climbing stairs, seemed more irritated. 
Kook, I don't like this girl. Telling my friend to come and go as she wants, and even making me climb these stairs. Lydia, can you let go? It's hard to walk up the stairs like this. For blind spots, 17 points. If I install traps here. When I realized, Yi Yoon was analyzing the building and murmuring like some bomb expert. Damn, I want to pretend not to know these people. Feeling the people's gazes piercing me every floor we went to, I blamed the heavens. When we arrived on the thirteenth floor, it was extremely quiet, unlike the floors we passed through. There was no one walking around, and the hallway even looked different. Waya tilted her head and looked back at the stairs to the twelfth floor. Then, she clapped once with a bright expression. This is a barrier. Anti-recognition barrier. A kind of conditional barrier. Sorry, but can you explain it in a language I can understand? It's a barrier that prevents people that don't know about the 13th floor from reaching the 13th floor. It was truly a simple, yet extraordinary, barrier. Yi Yoon and I were only slightly surprised, but Lydia looked shocked as she asked why. Such a high rank magic is being used like this? High rank? It's not that hard in the modern magic system. Ugh. Without my knowledge, Lydia's losses were increasing. With a bitter smile, I knocked on room 1301 with them. It's open, Hironim. Come in. Why was she using telepathy when we were within audible range? I opened the door. A large living room and, beyond the window, the Antelope Canyon transformed into a large canyon caught our eyes. We also saw several wyverns flying through the night sky and the ability users fighting against them. At the same time, we saw a little girl sitting on a chair. Nice to meet you, Hironim and Hironim's companions. The girl got up and bowed respectfully. I am Sierra Kinex. You can call me Sierra. With her introduction, I could immediately tell why she couldn't move her body easily. I shouted. You're a kid. I'm twelve years old this year. I'm just a bit of a late bloomer. A twelve-year-old is still a kid, you know. Yi Yoon murmured in shock. Lydia and Waya also had surprised expressions. As for me, I noticed something else the moment I saw her. Can you not see? I was born blind. At first, I couldn't hear or talk, but thankfully, my ears opened up as I grew. Even as she greeted us, she had her eyes closed. I asked because of it, but I didn't think I would actually be correct. Was that why she was talking to us in telepathy? Thankfully, we could all hear her through telepathy. She could likely see us through an ability similar to her telepathy. As for her appearance, she was quite cute. It was a bit different than Korean's black hair, but her charming black hair reached her waist in curls. With her small frame and white skin, she really looked like a doll. Waya made a look of pity at Sierra's words, but soon erased it. She likely thought it was rude. As if to erase the thought from her mind, Waya asked quickly. All right, since you called Shin here, can you tell us why Shin is the hero? I'm quite curious too. I already explained to Waya and Yi Yoon in the plane. Although they made fun of me at first, Lydia got mad and told them about her continent. After that, Waya and Yi Yoon were more worried than me. I knew how annoying and dangerous being a hero was, but it seemed like someone else's problem until they began to make a big deal about it. As a result, even I felt a bit odd. Hero Nim, are they? Yeah, you can trust them. Also, don't call me Hero Nim. Call me Shin. Understood, Shin Nim. Then, it'll start from the beginning. From the moment I first awakened. It was three years ago. Wait. Waya immediately interrupted her. Two moon only happened a year and two months ago. Three years. That's impossible. But I awakened three years ago. What? Yi Yoon and I, who understood what she meant a bit late, were also shocked. What was she saying? She awakened before two moon. Two years at that. Although Waya wanted to say something, I reached out and stopped her. I believed Sierra would explain. She also said she awakened from a premonition-like dream. She had come of age, and was standing next to me. 
there were also countless other people and giant enemies. In her dream, she taught people when and in what size monsters would appear, and how strong they would be. Resistance against the monsters were centered around her. Perhaps because my ability is still lacking, but its range is only wide enough to cover a city. That's an amazing ability, especially in this day and age, where even satellites are being shot down by monsters' attacks. If your ability can really grow to how it was in your dream. Hironim was the strongest and most radiant among them. You don't need to flatter me. After that dream, I became more sensitive to human presence. I could feel their hostility towards me, how strong they were, how much potential they had. Of course, before Two Moon, there were no monsters in this world and no ability users, so it wasn't that useful. That wasn't it. The day after she awakened her ability, she once again dreamt several hundred dreams. Wait. Several hundred? Yes. In my dreams, I saw countless particles of light. There were countless number of oddities. Countless oddities. The dream continued. For two years, I saw and experienced hundreds of thousands of abilities. Worlds and environments other than Earth. They fought each other, demons, invaders, alien insects, bugs that lived in the mind, monsters that lived in electromagnetic waves, orcs with countless mutations, fallen group of dragons that lost their intelligence and others. I don't understand. No, I think I understood. The problem was that I understood. If she was telling the truth, it would be truly absurd. One day, around early evening, I fell asleep. I had a dream, and I met someone who gave me a portion of power. The world's power. I said blankly. Damn, I felt like I understood. Although it sucked, I think I knew. Our world's power is especially large. He kept saying inexplicable things like the world of origin or the world of end. Who is he? I don't know. He could be the embodiment of the worlds, or perhaps just Earth. All I know is that he was worried about the monsters stealing this world's power and worried that people of Earth wouldn't have the power to resist them. So he separated the world's power into two. The smaller power, which was still necessary to maintain this world, was given to Hironim. The bigger power, which was more pure, was given to me. Of course, it was too big for me to bear it alone. After hearing until there, I asked. You. Created the ability users? She answered. Yes, Hironim. Hugh, one secret has been revealed. Right, Sierra was young. Bang. I'm kidding, of course. I'm sure everyone understands that the secret I mentioned wasn't about that. In any case, with this, I hope no one asks if Sierra is a heroine. It's the start of a new chapter. Once the talk with Sierra is over, you'll see Shin and his companions shining within wyverns and new ability users. I got a lot of criticisms about the girls' relationships last chapter and also a lot of encouragements. I think everyone said it because they're fond of the story and its characters. As I said before, not everyone can be happy. There were good advices here and there, of course. Regardless. The story will take the direction I think is best. If there's anything you don't like, that's unfortunate, but I hope you can continue to enjoy this novel. If there's one thing I can promise you, it's that I will be happy if you can continue with this lacking author. Then, see you tomorrow. Chapter, 129 Everyone was lost for words. However, I organized my thoughts and asked her a question. How did you choose them? I didn't choose them. They were already chosen. I simply picked the right dreams to send to the chosen ones. Though, I did have to use my precognitive power to read their future. So it's you that decides whether someone awakens a D rank ability or an SS rank ability? No. Like I said before, it's important how well an ability suits its master. Plus, people have their own talents and limits. If they are given abilities that aren't suitable for them, it might end in tragedy. That's why it's important to choose which abilities go to who. If I give abilities to those who meet all the conditions, I'm not left with many choices. In other words, she wasn't as omnipotent as I thought. A sense of distance I felt from her had been reduced somewhat. However. 
why didn't this being do this task himself? I'm not sure. It could have something to do with the world's power. That was the most important part, but it seemed Sierra did not have the answer to it. While I was thinking over the things I heard, Lydia asked. So you're saying, you're the one who gave me the power of the earth? Yes. I was surprised because someone who had to receive an ability suddenly appeared. But since I was certain, I gave you a suitable ability. It should be S rank. Lydia became speechless. I understood where she was coming from. I asked Sierra once again. Why were you chosen? I mean, why was such a great authority and mission given to a young child like you? Hero Nim, that is the same as asking, why am I the hero? You mean? I don't know either. The moment I heard that, I felt strength leaving my body. Did I expect too much? My motivation plummeted. I wanted to go back home. When I staggered, Lydia silently held me. Sorry. I don't know why Hironim and I were chosen. I told you, call me Shin. Also, don't tie yourself together with Shin. It's unpleasant. I retorted, and Waya added a completely irrelevant comment. Listening to her, I suddenly remembered that we had not talked about the most important thing. What was the reason you called me here? Was it to tell me your ability? To tell me how people awakened their abilities? That's part of the reason. I wanted to let Hiro Shin-Nim know about my existence. You are the world's core, entrusted with the world's power. You are someone who will lead all the awakened and someone I should support from the side. And what does this support include? She was most likely waiting for this question. Her face seemed to brighten. As she answered, I felt a hint of eagerness from her voice. I have both funds and manpower prepared. I'm ready to do anything for Hiro Nim. Since Hiro Nim has the qualification to lead all the awakened, a new group will be created for that purpose. A group that is not tied to the government like Guardian, nor tied to money like Freedom Wing. A group solely to save the world. Um, I see. I nodded and said, go find someone else. Hironim. I was wondering what you were going to say. Because it was more boring than I thought, I lost all interest. With a snort, I turned around. Let's go, guys. Shin, I'm hungry. I'm tired I want to sleep. Where's the person in charge? I hope he can get each of us our own room. Shin, want to drink before sleep? Wait, Hironim. You're going to go back. Sierra stopped me. Without turning around, I replied. No, I'm going to party here. I'm curious how wyverns look like. In that case, can we meet tomorrow to talk? We have to discuss things in more detail. I have a lot of data organized. Sorry, but I heard everything I needed to. Like I said, you should go find someone else. Hero Nim. My name is Shin. Plus I don't need something like that. I hate only bothersome things. Leading all awakened. Like you said there are two organizations that move with money or government orders, so you should ask them instead. But this is something Hero Nim needs. Soon, dungeons will be mass created, and the monsters' threats will become greater. Hero Nim will be the first one they will aim for. To protect Hero Nim. Dungeons will be mass created soon. Now that she mentioned in, she did say something about the second wave in her letter. It seemed she was talking about event dungeons. Telling myself to take note, I replied. In any case, they'll protect my own body. You want me to gather ability users to protect myself and play hero? I'm not interested. Don't make me come and go for something like this again. I'll let it slide this time since I wanted to visit the wyvern's nest anyways. I have a lot to say, but since you have a lot to learn, I won't say anything. See you. Ah, uh, one more thing. Yes, Hironim. I turned around. Even though she couldn't see with her eyes, she must have realized I turned around with her ability as she fixed her posture on the chair and raised her head. What do you think about the dungeon? 1. If they aren't taken care of quickly, they will cause harm to this world. If Hironim leads the dungeon subjugation, you will be able to quickly gather support and. That's fine. With that, 
I left the room. Waya, Ludia, and Yiyun read the atmosphere and also left without saying anything. I could hear Sierra trying to contact me with her telepathy, but it was cut off when I raised my mana. In the end, her telepathy was an ability that interfered with its target. If I wanted, I could easily defend myself from it. While walking down to the twelfth floor, I quietly said, as I thought, she doesn't know about it. Yeah, I thought she would. But if you think about it, she never appeared in our dreams either. Maybe she can't see the dungeon with her ability. Even though she could see other worlds. I asked inwardly. When we were about halfway down the stairs, Waya, who was walking down on my right, said with worry. Shin, the Keenex family is one of the most powerful families in America. It's probably true that she has the funds and manpower. I don't know how much her family will support her, but this could be an important opportunity. After all, what she said wasn't wrong plus, she has information about you. This might be more dangerous than you being the hero. She's not that type of person. She won't tell others the secrets she knows. I was certain. It was a special privilege to know that I'm the hero. She said that she was chosen, while equating herself with me. It could have been to instill the idea that we were natural allies, but she was incredibly proud about it. It sounded like she was putting herself and me in a special position compared to others. It was the exactly something kids her age would think of. As such, she would never tell someone about me. She won't give others a chance to intervene. Of course, even if she did. I hate doing things according to others' plans. Just thinking about it gives me goosebumps. Create an organization because the manpower was there. It was something elementary school kids would say. Though, I couldn't say anything since she really was an elementary school kid. Although I had forgotten about it because of her mature way of talking, Sierra was a kid. It was obvious from how she reacted when I didn't respond the way she thought that I would. I was never thankful of the fact that I became a hero. I didn't know who made me a hero or why, but I didn't like that he left this heavy burden on me without saying a thing, and it was extremely irritating that he did so without my consent. If we ever met, I would punch him in the face. I had no intention of feeling responsible as a hero since I never asked for it. Additionally, I didn't like Sierra's idea that I had to lead everyone and protect myself because I became an existence that was not allowed to die. In the end, it meant I should sacrifice others to protect myself. It was exactly the kind of thing I hated. I will get strong. So that no matter who comes after me to obtain this power inside me, I can send them flying with my own strength. Since the world ended when the hero died, everyone should cooperate with me. That was why the heroes had high charm. Fuck that. Damn, because I met an irritating person and talked about irritating things, I ended up getting irritated. There was only one way to relieve my stress. It was to go wild. You guys should go look for our housing. I need to stop by somewhere. Where? Yiyun tilted her head and asked. On the other hand, Waya looked like she knew what I meant. You at this time of day? Stupid, don't you know night fishing is the best? With that, I left them. Seeing Yiyun block Ludia, who was trying to chase after me, I gave her a thumbs up. Then, I headed straight to the canyon. Obviously, wyverns were flying monsters. They had scales stronger than steel with wingspan that easily reached 20 meters. Their claws were strong enough to break diamonds. They could be thought of as miniature versions of dragons that appeared in Western fantasies. They were strong and tough enough to be called dragons. They even breathed fire. Plus, they quickly soared through the sky and snatched up their prey. Even experienced martial artists had difficulty responding to their crafty movements. It was hard to shoot them down with magic, and it took forever to take them down with melee weapons. It was understandable that the field dungeon stayed uncleared even though several months had passed since the graveyard over the lake was cleared. Even in the dead of night, the wyvern's hunting continued. Ability users were also running around frantically, trying to protect their own lodging and ordinary citizens living in a city not far from here. Since they were likely all S ranked or higher, I couldn't fathom just what percentage of the world's rankers were here. Equipping my armor, putting on my cape, and putting down my helmet's visor, 
I completely concealed my appearance. Then, I joined the ability users. Hey, this is AS rank field dungeon. Entering alone is strictly prohibited. Wait, I saw that red armor somewhere. He he's Thunder Knight. Thunder Knight. Why is he alone? I heard the flame which came with him. People who noticed me opened a path as they tilted their heads. With a grin, I stepped into the canyon. The canyon, which was only wide enough for a few people to walk side by side, had been widened so much that the entire business department could walk side by side. There were already several surveillance devices and large headlights to light up the darkness. I could also see numerous ability users ready to fight wyverns whenever they appeared. I had Telaria. With it, I could freely fly for 30 minutes per day. However, since I wasn't planning on hunting wyverns for 30 minutes only, I couldn't solely rely on Telaria. Looking at the wyverns flying in the sky far away, I called my elementals. Ruyue, you should leave the egg there. Okay. Ryue went to return the egg in Fairy Garden with a sad expression. Meanwhile, I infused Pika into my gauntlet. My affinity with Pika grew day by day ever since I obtained Zeus' true name. Now, just by having Pika infuse into my gauntlet, it radiated golden brilliance and flickered with threatening sparks. People watching me flinched and took several steps back. I left it. Now, hug me. Ryue, come inside my boots. I'm not materializing. You can't fly. Kukuku, serves you right. Ryue infused herself into my boots with a sad expression, while Pika sneered at her. Thinking how friendly they were, I looked up at the sky again. At that moment, a red-scaled wyvern that was flying through the sky suddenly began to descend swiftly. By the flash in its eyes, it seemed it discovered me. People nearby began to scatter, and some of them contacted others with their radio. Alpha Area 3-7, a wyvern descended. Again, Alpha Area 3-7, a wyvern descended. It's alone, and is aiming for Thunder Knight. Requesting immediate reinforcement. You guys are so nice. I was pleasantly surprised. Technically, I was only a fool that walked into a restricted area and drew a wyvern's aggro. Thinking rather useless things, I bent my knees. The wyvern was extremely fast. It seemed it would reach me in about two seconds. However, it was no match for me. Divine Speed The moment I activated Divine Speed, I jumped with full force. With how long I spent my time grinding through the dungeon, I could easily leap dozens of meters into the air. With the addition of Divine Speed, I was in front of the wyvern in less than zero. Five seconds. Glaring at the wyvern blinking its eyes extremely slowly, I pulled my fist back. I don't even need a second to kill you. Tempest. Centered around my fist containing formidable lightning energy, a small yet powerful whirlpool raged. As per Yuta circuit's level increased, the power of the whirlpool increased. I shot out my fist without a shred of hesitation. Under the effect of divine speed, my fist struck the wyvern's head faster than a typhoon. With a lucky critical hit, the wyvern's head exploded. I burned the splashing brain with lightning energy and smiled. Feeling the pent-up irritation disappearing, I shouted so that my voice could reach the entire canyon. Come at me, you damned flying lizards. The night hunt was only now starting. 1. In Korean, singular and plural nouns aren't distinguished frequently which is also why it's tricky to translate sometimes. In this case, Shin is asking about the dungeon as in first, second, etc. Dungeons. Sierra is understanding it to be the dungeons that will be created on Earth. Chapter, 130. I've been thinking about something for a while, and I realized it was possible during my fights against the Wendigo. It was that I could stay in the air using Ryu's power. Of course, it would be best if Ryue could fly, but she was a wolf. She did not have wings, so she could not fly. Even so, I wanted to freely move in the sky. Teleria's duration was too short. I needed a more consistent and long-lasting method. What I thought of was to infuse Ryue into my boots. With my proficiency in spirit aura and affinity with Ryue, I could freeze anything my boots touched. 
It might only seem useful when I attacked with my feet, but there was another purpose. With it, I would be able to walk on air. Using spirit aura, I would freeze a portion of the air below my feet, creating a temporary step out of ice. Once I stepped off, would take away the elemental power and the temporary step would disappear. That way, I wouldn't use much mana, and once I got used to it, I would be able to stay in midair for a long time. I considered making a hoverboard out of ice and controlling it with Ryu's power, but I gave up since that would consume too much mana. At first, I wasn't sure if it would work well, but there was no problem when I tested it. With Spirit Aura, I could accurately create circular steps where my feet touched. By leaping from off of them and retrieving the mana from the steps I already created, the ice would lose the power to maintain itself and disappear. I realized it was quite simple and convenient. Plus, it felt really good. I could fly in the sky without any restraints. Though, in order to not waste mana, I couldn't walk, only jump to cover more distance. In any case, thanks to this realization, I could freely go wild at the wyvern's nest. Th Thunder Knight is. He's walking on air. Is that his ability, to? Look under his feet. He's stepping on something. It's hard to see because it's night, but it shines when you expose it to light. Spotting a wyvern flying through the sky, I once again kicked off the ice step. It also saw me and flew toward me while breathing fire. I quickly created an ice step and jumped. Gua! The wyvern cut off its fire and looked up. Then, it started breathing fire again. I charged into it. Although I roused Ryu's power and created a barrier using her freezing energy, I couldn't completely block the wyvern's flames. I could feel my armor getting hot. If I was in the dungeon, I could probably see my HP falling. Without paying it much attention, I sent my fist inside its mouth. Kuhak. The wyvern made a strange cry and tried to spit out my fist, but I wrapped my other arm around its neck and concentrated my mana in my fist. Pika. Thunder Bomb. Qua. The shock of the lightning explosion caused the wyvern's flames to cease. Thanks to Ryue, my armor, which had gotten hot enough to cook eggs, cooled down. Meanwhile, I pushed my fist deeper into its mouth. Die. Tempest. Tempest and Thunder Bomb were mixed together. The mana whirlpool, which had reached a certain level of attainment, took in Thunder Bomb and transformed into a violent lightning storm. Immediately afterwards, the wyvern's head exploded into pieces. Ha, huh, what was this incredibly refreshing feeling? You created the skill, Thunder Tempest. By adding strong lightning's explosive force to the whirlpool created by Peruta Circuit, you can deliver a deadly blow to your target. Unlike Elemental Tempest, which strengthened the whirlpool with nearby elementals, Thunder Tempest is powered by lightning elemental power and focuses its destructive force in a small area. By using at least 5% of your mana, it deals a powerful lightning attribute explosion damage to your target. By adding more mana, you can increase its destructive force. As the skill's creator, the skill level is adjusted to mid-rank level 2. You created a skill. Thunder Tempest is a variation of Elemental Tempest. While it's more suited for one-on-one -on -one battles, it maintains an overwhelming destructive force. This skill, which shows its creator's high level of attainment in Peruta Circuit in Elemental Magic, contains a destructive force that no one can ignore. You obtained one skill point as reward. Current skill points, 3. I knew it. I had really created a new skill. I didn't know mixing Tempest and Thunder Bomb would create such a powerful skill. Wait, I could probably use this with a spear too. My excitement grew from the unexpected skill and the skill point I obtained. Alright, let's continue. I grinned inside my helmet. If I could relieve my frustration, I didn't care what came my way. As I was now, I felt like I could destroy everything. Get over here, you damned lizards. You used provoke. Nearby enemies' hostility becomes fixed onto you. My shout, which rang out through the entire canyon, even caused other people to react. Eh. Was Thunder Knight French? What are you talking about? He just spoke in German. Don't lie, that was Japanese. Well, as long as I had the choker on, I would get found out anyways. 
you guys can think however you want. I grinned on the ice step I was standing on. Creating whirlpools mixed with lightning on both hands, I slammed them together. The wyverns were getting closer. Tomorrow, I would have an enjoyable wyvern meat party. Until 6a. I was completely absorbed with hunting wyverns. In the end, I managed to hunt almost 70 wyverns by myself. When I landed after killing the last wyvern, people began to murmur. He wasn't that strong when he was in Britain. He was strong, but not as strong as them. But now. He's an SS ranker. On the other hand, there were some who came to talk to me directly. It was a Caucasian man, who seemed to be part of America's Guardian. He was wearing an armor engraved with Guardian's emblem. I'm America's S ranker, John Smith. John Smith. It's my real name. That was the fake name I wanted. How unfortunate. I wanted to be called John Smith instead of something strange like T. John Smith, who had become the target of my envy, pointed at the wyvern I just fell and asked. If you'd like, we can collect the wyverns you hunted for you. Of course, we won't do anything else. Why? That seems too good of an offer. I had planned on letting Waya collect them later with her usual extra-dimensional storage excuse, but I tilted my head at the unexpected offer. It the least we can do. You came to America from a foreign country and reduced the number of Vyrns greatly in a single night. Taking care of the monster corpses should be the least we can do to thank you for your work. Ah, I see. Now that I thought about it, it made sense. In any case, I was happy that there was less work for me to do. Collecting all seventy Wyverns would have been tedious, but since they should be able to monitor the entire canyon, they should be able to do it quicker. HM, then you guys can have ten of them. No, we didn't make the offer to get any benefits. It's fine. ITLLB to thank you for your work. Will ten be enough? It's more than enough. Wyverns are rare monsters, so we hunt however many we can. If you'd like to sell the other sixty, well pay a generous amount for them. For the record, he said each wyverns were over two. Three million dollars. In Korean one, that was two. Five billion one. Geez, they were a billion one more expensive than the melting tunas. Wait, doesn't that mean I just made over 180 billion one? No matter how much money I made, I never used it, so I didn't realize just how much it was. For a moment, I thought, was giving ten away too much? I should have asked for the price first. However, as a ranker, it was unsightly to ask for them back. I asked while trying to calm myself. Then he'll sell twenty of them for now. Understood. We can talk about the details in the afternoon after getting some rest. Of course, well collect all the wyvern corpses until then. Sure. I return to the lodging. Even though I cleansed myself of the wyvern's blood and flesh with Ryu's power, it was impossible to dodge them completely. The guardian employee at the lobby became startled when he saw me, and led me to the shower room. As expected of a place for rankers, there were private shower rooms for each. I could finally take my mask off. Hugh. Even though I relieved my stress using the wyverns, I was reminded of what happened last night under the hot shower water. The shocked Sierra, and Waya who looked at me with worry. Lydia wasn't in a state to talk about heroes and Yiyun was worried about me, but Waya was different. She considered Sierra's offer realistically and asked if I was okay with refusing her. She knew how dangerous being a hero was, and thought it was better for the world and for my safety to accept her offer. Organization, huh? It would be a lie if I said I never considered it. It would be a lie if I said I never considered myself in the shoes of other continents' heroes, who fought against their world's enemies as their world's cores. It was irritating and uncomfortable in that it was an unavoidable future, but it was also something exciting, cool, and mystical that every boy dreamed of. A man fighting with the world's fate on the line. It was quite cliché. Plus, it wasn't that I didn't like being safer. I wasn't that stupid. I didn't want to die. I was worried about my family, friends, Lydia who was relying on me, and Loretta, who would be hurt. There were many things I had to protect. Many people I loved and many that loved me back. 
That was why I was even more afraid. That ID used countless number of people just because the world's fate was on the line. That many people would die to protect me. I was afraid of the blood that would flow under the name of Hero. I was afraid. It was disgusting and fearful. As such. I have to get strong. I had to get stronger. Strong enough to crush everything with my own strength. I remembered Luca Continent. In face of the world's ruin, I remembered the people who joined hands with the demons to save themselves. In face of the world's ruin, I remembered the emperor, who sacrificed his life for those who had not enjoyed their life to their fullest. If the hero didn't die, such things wouldn't have happened. Traitors wouldn't have had to join hands with the demons to save themselves, and the emperor could have put his life on the line for the future, not the present. However, the hero died, and the world fell. My friend despaired and her parents died a dog's death. As such, Earth's hero will not die. He was not allowed to. To not die, he had to get stronger. Overwhelming so, as to not create meaningless deaths. I turned off the shower head. I wiped my body with a towel and pondered. I thought about a way to solve this problem. I couldn't think of anything. As always. Shin is not perfect as a main character, both physically and mentally. You could say he's still inexperienced, but it won't stay that way forever. He thought the dungeon only as a place where he could get stronger. In face of reality, that will slowly change. What awaits him, what decisions he will make, please wait and see. You will not be disappointed. Chapter, 131 After taking a shower, I got dressed and went to the lobby, where I saw Waya sitting by herself on a table and drinking. It was whiskey. Because I felt like my hair wasn't dry yet, I thought about taking off my mask to dry my hair, but I was then surprised when I saw her. What are you doing here so early in the morning? Someone stood me up last night, so I'm here drinking in the morning to make up for it. What, I already told you that I was going to be out hunting. I didn't think you'd stay there the whole night. Do you know how hard it was to make that girl sleep? I was with Yiyun too. I really didn't think you'd hunt wyverns the entire night. Waya pouted. With a shrug, I apologized and sat across the table. Waya, who was staring at me fixedly, then asked. I want to see your face. I want to know what expression you're making. With how strong you are, you can probably show yourself. Are you still afraid? At Waya's provocative smile, I snorted and took a sip from the bottle of whiskey. My strengthened body barely reacted to the alcohol. Putting the bottle down, I responded. I won't fall for provocations. How rude. You stole my drink. Plus, you're a coward. So, what's the reason you're drinking whiskey alone where everyone can see you? At my question, Waya grinned and messaged me. I didn't think I could say it when I was with the others. I wanted to say it last night, but you stood me up. Yeah, yeah. I already apologized. So, what is it? Sierra Kinex. No, Paludia. UK. Waya's eyes were shining strangely. That girl is weird. You didn't explain yesterday. What's her problem? Why is she so obsessed with you? I haven't seen a girl like her in a while. So there are people like her. That's another story. Did something happen in the world you went to as a dimensional mercenary? Did she become like that because her world fell? What happened? Um, sorry. It's a secret. Hey. Sorry, but I don't think I should tell you, or anyone else for that matter. Who? Why I let out a sigh. She raised her cup to take a drink, but she realized that it was empty. She reached towards the bottle of whiskey, but I took it away before she could get it. Your constitution isn't that strong. Stop before you get drunk. Do you even want to drink something I drank with my mouth? You're pretty good. Why aside again and took her hand off her glass. Fine, let's stop drinking. Sorry. I shouldn't have asked you so suddenly. I was just feeling impatient, unlike my usual self. It was just completely unexpected, so I was surprised. There's a reason for it, so try to understand. Yeah, 
they'll try, though I probably won't succeed. How honest. I smiled. Waya also smiled and continued. That's enough, right? Sierra Kinex too. Yeah. Waya stared at me for a while, but soon got up while smiling. All right, they'll trust you. I was hesitating too, since it would get complicated if the Kinex family intervened. Plus, if there's an enemy you can't handle, I doubt anyone from the Kinex family could help. This is what you really wanted to talk about, right? It's both. They're both important to me. Anyways, let's go wake them up and go out for breakfast. I'm hungry. Waya answered nonchalantly and left. Looking at her back as she walked away, I thought that it was a miracle that I got to know her. The moment Lydia opened her eyes, she jumped on my arm, but since she had to get changed, I got her off with Waya and Yiyun's help. As this continued, I hoped her symptoms would slowly disappear. Once she changed, she clung to my arm again, making me somewhat doubtful. After we had breakfast, we went straight to the field dungeon. I wasn't particularly tired and neither were my companions. Shin, I can't fly in the air like you, so what should I do? You'll see once we get there. Also, make sure not to call me by my name. If you need to, use the dungeon's message system. I could hunt the wyverns alone, but most melee range fighters could not do so. Most of the awakened scattered around the field dungeon were members of the American Guardian. They watched over and reported the slightest changes in the dungeon. When wyverns descended, they called nearby parties and hunted them together. Those that hunted wyverns more actively always had long-ranged attackers with close-ranged attackers. They first drew the wyverns toward them with long-ranged attacks and had the close-ranged attackers fight them. However, since the wyverns here seemed capable of communicating with each other, they would have to fight two wyverns at once if they were unlucky. As such, most parties didn't hunt by themselves and cooperated with the other country's ability users. Some ability users, however, gave up the ground to fight the wyverns in the sky. They rode in helicopters to fight them. Isn't that more dangerous? It's called an attack helicopter, but yeah, that sounds more dangerous. Once hit by the wyvern's flames, a helicopter would just become a chunk of scrap metal. Even attack helicopters, made from monster materials for the purpose of hunting monsters, could not withstand the wyvern's flames for long. If wyvern's headbutt, clawed, or bit the helicopter, it would go down sooner. As such, when fighting a wyvern on a helicopter, the party had to consist of ideal members. One long-ranged attacker, one defense magic user to protect the helicopter from the wyvern's attacks, and one close-ranged attack who had the maneuverability to jump on the wyvern to take its life and jump back to safety. As that would take time, it was better to have two close-range attackers. Are there teams like that? One or two from what I could tell. Most of the others fight on the ground with the method I told you about. Seeing is believing, or so the saying went. In the field dungeon sky, we could clearly see two helicopters flying around and fighting the wyverns. I couldn't say they were fast, but they were at least faster than the parties on the ground, who could only wait for wyverns to come near them. Of course, they were incomparably slower than I was last night. Plus, the moment they made a mistake, the helicopter would fall. I heard helicopters made with monster materials cost over 150 billion won, so one of those things had to kill at least 60 wyverns to make up for its cost. Though, that wasn't exactly true since they could get lucky and find mana stones in the wyverns. After all, a mana stone from wyverns were about 10 billion won. Since even S rankers had such difficulty fighting them, it was no wonder that the wyverns nest was taking so long to get cleared. At first, they employed many methods to hunt the wyverns more easily, but mechanical devices were destroyed and magical devices were broken from the wyverns high mana resistance. In the end, only ability users were left to toil. Although I had not experienced it myself, when I thought about all the proud rankers having difficulty hunting wyverns, I couldn't help but feel bad for them. There should be other people who can use ice steps. Or wind steps, maybe. Most ice or wind ability users that are S-ranked or above are long-ranged types. There's no way they would fly in the sky and put themselves in danger. Can't they fly together with close-range attackers? They'll end up falling to death after running out of mana. 
Waya shouted and stopped my rude imagination. Then, after looking at how people were hunting the wyverns for a bit, she asked. Can we rent a helicopter? It's not a bicycle, you know. It's possible. A huck. When I turned around, John Smith was there. With an amiable smile, he answered. I came to talk about the average cost of wyverns and the ones you've chosen to sell. Since you were asking something I could answer, I did so. T thanks. Let's start with the wyverns. Yes. In truth, wyverns are different in sizes and quality of the skin. Most of their skin were in perfect shape, though I can't say the same for their heads. You are truly amazing. Since the size of the wyverns changed their cost, Thunder Nightman will have to choose which wyverns to sell. We then went to the area where the wyverns I hunted last night were gathered. Large wyverns over 20 meters long were piled up on top of each other. It was quite the sight. Because of the mountain of wyvern corpses, sunlight couldn't even reach us. You hunted all this by yourself. I expected as much, but... Yiyun exclaimed in surprise and Waya spoke with a dumbfounded expression. We chose the cheapest wyverns for the ten you have chosen to give us. If you're curious, we could bring them back and show you. Is that okay? No, it's fine. You don't need to move them again. Plus, most of their heads were blown up. If you obtained any mana stones, we would love to buy them too. Sorry, but I have my own uses for them. I would get more than enough money from selling the wyvern's corpses anyways. If they were willing to pay so much for the wyvern's corpses and mana stones, it meant they had appropriate uses for them. In that case, they would be highly valued in the dungeon as well. I wanted to first secure the mana stones and the wyvern's corpses. I might have to visit Lin soon. I sold 20 wyverns on the spot for over 60 billion won. Since I didn't have an account for ability users other than the one for Yun Wawu, they created an account for me with the 60 billion won. That said, I didn't know where to spend all this money. Maybe I should fill the swimming pool in Marianas Garden with shrimp crackers. Plus, we could rent an attack helicopter for free. After hearing it was $130 million, I felt a bit hesitant. Well, if there's any problem, I could just buy it. Don't underestimate by barrier. With Waya and Ludia's double attack, I got on the helicopter. Yiyun, who considered 100 million won to be an enormous sum, trembled and got on with a frown. Now that she was a high-ranking ability user, I knew her sense of money would change eventually. In a way, it was sad. We should make a team name too. Once the helicopter took off, Yiyun made an excited suggestion. Ludia seemed to agree as well. It seemed she was obsessed with making connections with people. Surprisingly, Waya supported it as well. Right, it's good for fostering a sense of camaraderie and for letting other knows who we are. Are there other famous parties? Of course. Guardians team names often come up on mass media, and it's the same from Freedom Wing. Rogue teams get paid according to how famous they are, not the ranking of their team members. Shin, you should really show more interest in other people. You're right, but that's because I only care about people who are important to me. I acknowledged what Yiyun messaged. Then, Waya swung the staff she was holding at my forehead. I, of course, blocked it with my hands. You shouldn't be proud, idiot. If you keep living like a child, you'll be dead before you even realize. I know it's a problem. But I don't have much free time. Climbing the dungeon every day, going to university, and training. I was especially busy lately. I had my excuses, but I should really expand my horizon like Waya said. When I showed signs of self-reflection, Waya took back her staff. Revival. Ludia announced. It has to be revival. Revival? That's unexpected. Why? That's the guild he made. Guild. Shin, you made a guild. Don't you need a mansion? Ah, uh, yeah. I do have one, so I took the opportunity to make a guild. I want in. Let me in Shin's guild. I thought you'd say that. Go ahead. You'll probably cry if I refuse. Yay! Yiyun bounced in joy inside the helicopter. 
Since the pilot couldn't hear our messages, he was probably weirded out by the strange flow of our conversation. On the other hand, Wyatt didn't look happy. If it's First Dungeons Guild, I can't enter it. No, wait, I should have been the one to create a guild. But I don't have a mansion. Mm. Right, sorry, Waya. No, they'll become a first dungeon explorer for sure. Cook, since I don't have a mansion, they'll have to enter your guild. Cook. Then let's go with Revival for the team name. Waya looked unhappy that she couldn't be the leader, but she still agreed on the team name. You learn to swallow your pride. You matured, Waya. We can make you the team's leader, Waya. No, it's fine. It would look weird if I'm the leader. Besides, you gathered the members, so you should be the leader. But if you ever give me the position of the guild leader, they'll become the team leader too. I don't think that's going to happen. I thought about it, then realized it was Waya's way of acknowledging me as the leader. In a way, she got embarrassed easily. Just like that, we became Team Revival. When we yelled hurrah with a sense of camaraderie, the helicopter pilot suddenly shouted. There's a wyvern coming straight toward us. Tell us earlier. Oh Mitaris. Oh Earth. Lydia quickly created a barrier around the helicopter. The wyvern that appeared in front of the helicopter began to breath out fire. However, it could not penetrate Lydia's barrier. In anger, it tried to use physical attacks, as it folded its wings and flew toward the helicopter. Although Lydia said it would be fine, I was slightly worried whether her barrier could withstand the wyvern's attack. I immediately prepared myself to jump out of the helicopter. However, before the wyvern could reach the helicopter, the sound of a machine gun rang out like the one I heard in movies. Along with it, the wyvern became a beehive. Without even screaming, the wyvern fell to the ground. I was astonished. A gun. Against a monster. I heard about it before. It should be. When Waya looked up, murmuring in a surprised voice, we saw a helicopter approaching us. It was a helicopter just like ours, but it was letting out a black luster. Plus, the machine gun attached under the helicopter was smoking as if it just fired. I was certain that it was that machine gun that killed the wyvern. But how? Guns shouldn't be able to kill wyverns, or most monsters with mana for that matter. While I was trying to figure out how it was possible, the black helicopter's window opened and a young man peeked his head out. He had black skin color and black hair with white teeth that shone under the sunlight. His smile was especially charming. Hey, guys one. This was in English. Don't forget to buy me a drink when you land. It was my first meeting with America's SS ranker, Leon Pepper. America's SS ranker, Leon Pepper, has appeared. If you say, hey, you said you can't kill monsters with guns. I can only say, he's the exception. Look forward to finding out his ability and finding out what happens. P.S. Hey, guys. Was in English. Why? To add character. That's it. Hey guys, I identify as an attack helicopter. Please no flame. Chapter, 132. Thanks for the help but we could have killed it too. Waya responded with a snort, and the young man made an exclamation of surprise. Waya Mastiford, Britain's SS ranker. I didn't think you'd be here. Nice to meet you. I'm America's SS ranker, Leon Pepper. Waya. Waya became flustered at his overly high-tension greeting and nodded her head. I messaged her. Do you know about America's SS ranker? I've heard rumors. I know America's SS ranker is African American. After answering me, Waya greeted Leon Pepper. Let's continue on the ground later. We're in the middle of our enemy's territory right now. Ha ha ha. Alright, then we'll have to take care of them quickly. See you in a bit. It seemed he was piloting the helicopter himself. The helicopter turned around and flew away. It met a wyvern not long after and promptly obliterated it with its machine gun. It was truly mesmerizing. What is that? That's his ability. Object control, I think it was. As long as his ability could reach it, he could freely control any object. 
the SS Ranker we met truly had a powerful ability. Unfortunately, as the range of his ability was for now limited to small vehicles, guns, and things like bazookas. Even so, it was an incredible ability. The most important thing was that he could empower objects under his control with mana, giving them destructive force that could pierce through usually impenetrable barriers. A cheat, so to say. Damn, that's cool. Don't worry, Shin's cooler. Yeah, his weapon is too simple and not sophisticated at all. Two of them comforted me, but it only made my sense of competition rise. Alright, let's do this. Let's starting hunting the wyverns. Let's show them Team Revival will not lose to anyone. Ooh. Jeez, men are all kids. Unlike Yiyun and Lydia's eager response, Waya's cold gaze made me a bit embarrassed. In any case, we then started our wyvern hunt. To be honest, our party was very, very outstanding. Even without me, who could hunt wyverns alone by flying, Waya was a long-range attacker with great firepower. Lydia had an overwhelming defensive and healing capability after obtaining the Earth's power to strengthen her holy magic, and Yiyun was a powerful close-range attacker. Yiyun could easily jump on approaching wyverns, take its neck, and jump back to the helicopter. Her agile movements almost resembled a spider's. Until lunchtime, we continued hunting wyverns on the helicopter. The pilot phoned at my order to charge at any wyverns he saw, but after the first couple times, he seemed to have liked the taste of it, as he ran to any wyverns he saw without even asking us. In the end, we ended up hunting about a hundred wyverns in a few hours. Amazing! When we got down for a lunch break, Leon Pepper was waiting for us. Truly amazing! Is everyone a SS ranker? Of course, not. Not officially, at least. I retorted mischievously with a smile. Pepper smiled back. With you guys, this tedious subjugation mission might finally end. I got a report that wyverns that left Antelope Canyon are returning too. Because we killed so many of them. Yes. After all, you guys are killing ten wyverns for every wyvern other people kill. Thanks for coming to America, Thunder Knight, Flame Witch, and... Kayak. Lydia dodged Pepper's eyes and hid behind my back. It was the same for Yiyun. With a bitter smile, I told Pepper, they're shy. Hoo-hoo, two girls. How talented, Thunder Knight. All right, I can always greet them later. I told you before, but we should go out for a drink tonight. How about it? When he asked, Waya immediately messaged me. It's okay, right? It's our chance to become friends with a foreign country's SS ranker. Of course, it's okay. When I answered, Waya looked at Leon Pepper and responded as she nodded her head. Sure. We can leave behind the kids who can't drink, and go out with just us three. I'm not a kid. I can drink too. Rather than denying Waya's words, you should realize you guys look like kids before Waya gets hooked on it at least. I sighed and calmed them down. I didn't know how other ability users would react when they heard this, but I thought hunting the wyverns at the Antelope Canyon was enjoyable. No wyverns could even touch our party, and the money we got from selling them was enormous even if it were split among the four of us. Competing with Leon Pepper was fun too. Other than the gazes of envy and jealousy we were getting, there was no problem. However, like Leon Pepper said when we first met, the number of wyverns in the canyon was increasing day by day. Wyverns that had escaped from their nest were all returning. Perhaps because they knew they would be in danger if this place was subjugated, they were attacking more actively. This is a good sign. Spinning the pistol he always carried around with his finger, Pepper muttered. It means we'll run into their boss soon. Boss I'm looking forward to it. Want to bet who's going to kill it, T. I told you, don't call me T. K but sure, let's bet. It's the boss of A.S. Rank Field Dungeon. Graveyard over the lake was dangerous, so be more careful this time. When Pepper and I half-jokingly discussed on betting, Waya commented with a tired voice. Of course, I didn't forget about what happened at Windermere. Waya was especially surprised at the time and had worried about me. I didn't think Pepper would punch me to the boss mouth, but it seemed Waya was worried about the boss fight in general. 
However, my companions and I were all too strong to be afraid of A.S. Rank Field Dungeon Boss. Although I shouldn't let my guard down, it wouldn't be good to be too conservative. Don't worry, Waya. We have reliable companions this time. Are you implying I wasn't reliable? You're included, obviously, but you couldn't intervene last time. You've only gotten good at speaking. Waya pouted and tilted her glass of alcohol. Ever since the first time we drank with Pepper, Waya and I often sneaked out after Lydia and Yiyun fell asleep to drink with Pepper. Though, it was more that Pepper joined in when we were drinking with just the two of us. Are you guys dating? Pepper asked out of the blue. While I opened my eyes widely in surprise, he added. I thought you were dating that blonde lady, but you looked rather uninterested. In that case, the flame witch was the next best candidate. First, I'm friends with that blonde lady you're talking about. She's just overly reliant on me. I'd have to make her stop clinging to me one day. Though, that would be hard now. After my retort, Waya added. And I are friends for now too. I don't know what the future has in store for us though. Ha ha ha. Pepper burst into laughter, and I stared at Waya's strange response. However, Waya simply shrugged and continued. Isn't that how man and woman relationships are? You're a good guy, and you're not dating anyone right now. I just happen to be an extremely good girl, and am also single. So if I suddenly jump at you out of the blue, you can't say anything. I think something's wrong with your logic, but I'll try to avoid being alone with you for now. I'm planning on enjoying my dates with monsters for a while more, so I have no plans on getting a girlfriend. Ha ha ha. You guys are too funny. Pepper clapped his hands as he laughed. However, I couldn't laugh along with him. It didn't look like Waya was joking at all. For now, I refused her jokingly. I would have thought, why would Waya like me? But I had already precedent with Loretta and Yiyun. Ack, damn, this was all because I was a hero. Definitely. Maybe, monsters running rampant, global warming getting worse, wars continuing to rage across the globe, and lands cracking from droughts were all because I was a hero. A week after we came to Arizona, the wyverns had suddenly gotten stronger. Ah, I've seen this phenomenon before. Oh, what a coincidence. Same here. After returning to the helicopter using ice steps, I thought about the wyverns I just killed. Wyverns used to die from a single thunder tempest, but now it took two or three of them to barely kill a wyvern. I murmured after drawing my breath. But still, they got too strong. They used to not be able to withstand your fire for long, Waya. I heard that the stronger monsters get, the stronger the boss is. Yiyun, maybe. I can't fight the boss. Maybe. Yiyun was exactly at the level of wyverns. Although she could manage to kill the strengthened wyverns, if the boss was stronger than we thought, we would need to pull her back from battle for her safety. We were here to hunt wyverns safely, not to risk our lives. But I want to help Shin. Thank you for the sentiment. T then will you give me a kiss? That was too fast. The tension was high in the entire Antelope Canyon. Then, one ability user fought against a wyvern without properly assessing its strength, and died. Of course, as there was no one below S rank in this canyon, the one who died was also an S ranker. The canyon's atmosphere became darker. Pepper couldn't just laugh and enjoy either. Two days after the casualty appeared, a heavy rain poured down. As we couldn't stop just because of a rain, we got on our attack helicopter, which was completely fine under rain, and set out to hunt wyverns. Lydia had been feeling uneasy the entire day, and after the helicopter took off, she pulled on my sleeve and murmured. Shin, I'm feeling strangely uneasy. In truth, it was the perfect atmosphere to feel uneasy. Someone had died, wyverns had gotten stronger, and a heavy rain was pouring down today, so much so that it was hard to see in front of us. I responded. Don't worry, the boss is going to appear for sure. What does that mean? What do you mean what does that mean? Can't you see the powerful mana raging in the distance? Not long after I said that, the pilot screamed. From deep inside the canyon, a dragon-like wyvern twice as large as other wyverns came out. As I thought, 
it appeared today. Then, Yi Yun, who was likely also sensing the boss, suddenly raised her head. Shin, it's strange. What's strange? I don't know how to describe it but there's something more. I frowned at her words. It was then that a giant dragon suddenly appeared in the air. An event raid has broken out. SS rank 100 man, Flame Drake. Because you were at the location of the raid boss, you will be forced to participate. Chapter, 133. Your party holds the priority for the event raid. Unless you want to reveal its existence, other dungeon explorers will not be notified until one hour later. What? How can an event raid appear in a field dungeon? Event raids don't only appear when event dungeons are cleared. We must have met some sort of a condition. In the heavy rain, Waya's voice reached me clearly. However, it wasn't the answer I wanted to hear, since it meant there was nothing wrong with that monster being here. Of the explorers on Earth, the only one that wasn't here who could be of help was Father. However, we were facing the boss monster of a SS rank 100 man raid. Should I prioritize running away? Or should I call Father? Shin, make it public immediately. Some ire will come help. Some ire. She's not Stro. She's gold ranked. Gold. She couldn't climb 20 floors in two years, but she managed to climb over 30 floors in half a year. That's like me. What happened to her? I hesitated for a moment, but soon made the event raid public. Now that I thought about it, father would rather come and die than do nothing when his son was in such a dangerous situation. Meanwhile, the drake landed on the ground, causing a tremor. It didn't have wings like wyverns, and its body was similar to the giant iron boar that appeared in Guangzhou. It had beefy legs, and its front paws had razor-sharp claws. In addition, its front paws looked like they could reach dozens of meters in the air. The dense mana it emitted made it hard to breathe. It seemed stronger than most demons I met in the Luka continent. Turn the helicopter around. I shouted. We can't fight that guy on a helicopter. The pilot immediately turned the helicopter around. However, the drake seemed to have locked onto us already, as it opened its mouth and breathed fire directly at us. Although the heavy downpour made it hard to see, its giant orange flame wasn't weakened in the slightest and flew toward the helicopter like a laser. Tisk, it'll go on ahead. Then, Waya clicked her tongue and jumped out of the helicopter. As she could fly with her ability, she could fight against the drake in the air. Although it might be okay if the drake focused on using magical attacks, if it used physical attacks, it would be hard for Waya to deal with it alone. It was why she stayed in the helicopter until now, safely shooting magic at wyverns. As such, I prepared myself to also jump out. Looking back at Yiyun and Ludia, I spoke. That guy's extremely strong. We can always run away to the dungeon if it gets dangerous, but there's still a chance something might go wrong. I'm not going to force you, but... That's enough. I'm confident I can run away if it gets dangerous. That's what I thought they'd say. There was no way Ludia would leave me behind and escape, and Yiyun was almost addicted to hunting monsters after she got rid of her monster phobia. The problem was that she was too careless with her life. I'll say it clearly. You guys don't need to risk your lives here. If it gets dangerous, I'm going to take you in my arms and use return, got it? Un. Got it. Their eyes were sparkling for some reason. I hoped it wasn't because I said I'd take them in my arms. It wasn't the time to be so relaxed. Who, okay. I'm going to go ahead, so come back after you return the helicopter. Talaria. I summoned Talaria and leaped into the air. Waya was blocking the drake's attack with her ability. On the tip of the fingers, a circular ring of fire rose up and absorbed all the fire the drake breathed out. It went without saying that it was thanks to her that our helicopter was still safe. Fight me, you lizard. You won't be able to even touch me with your flames. Standing confidently in midair, Waya shouted. Looking at her, I was reminded of the video on TV where she killed the wyvern that appeared in Busan. I thought she looked cool back then and envied her, but now I was fighting with her shoulder to shoulder. I couldn't be more deeply moved. 
Waya ran out to fight the drake without hesitation, even after hearing it was SS ranked. She wasn't being reckless. It was because of her strong mentality, which did not let her fall back in the face of her enemy. It was possible because she believed in herself to be one of the strongest on earth, who did not allow defeat. Thinking how cool she was, I also thought I should take after her spirit. To do that, there was something I needed to do. Get over here you goddamned lizards. All of you come. You mastered mid-rank provoke. Your provocation seeps into your soul. You can now provoke death monsters. You learned high rank provoke. Existence is in the same area as you cannot escape your provocation. Weak monsters might die from having their spirits suppressed by your provocation. My provocation spread through the entire field dungeon without being hindered by the torrential rain. It even caught the attention of the ability users who were panicking from the sudden appearance of the flame drake and the wyvern boss. It had even calmed their confusion temporarily. However, the ones I really wanted to call were the ordinary wyverns. Kayak. Kaya. Countless wyverns as numerous as the raindrops falling down flew toward me. Seeing them, I was delighted. Damn, the world sure chose the wrong guy as the hero. Why do I smile in such dangerous situations? Regardless, there was one important thing. For the first time since the demon's army commander, I was facing a formidable enemy. I couldn't worry about hiding my abilities. I had to go all out. Although I couldn't defeat the army commander without Peruta's help, I didn't think the enemy in front of me would make me do the same. If I could do it with my own strength, I would do so. I could always call Peruta, but that was only as a last resort. If I continued to rely on my master, how could I surpass him? I took out Gluttony Spear from my inventory. The moment I firmly gripped the spear shaft, I felt myself becoming more excited. I shouted. Pika, let's go full power. Leave it to me, master. I'm the strongest now. Strongest? The moment I knitted my brows, Gluttony Spear began to shine with a golden light. It was undoubtedly spirit aura, but it was much stronger than ever before. Why? The moment I asked in my head, a bolt of lightning fell from the sky. Hook. M.O. More. I was surprised for a second, thinking the lightning struck me, but that wasn't it. The lightning was completely absorbed by my spear and was clearly strengthening it. Not to mention, with all the storm clouds in the sky, I wouldn't be surprised if another. Boom. BB boom. My ear deafened. Lightning struck my spear continuously. A few of them even missed their target and struck down incoming wyverns. I finally understood. Elementals were born from nature. They were existences always in line with nature and were greatly affected by nature. In this severe thunderstorm, Pika was at her strongest since the day we met. Pika, let's go. Send them flying. The incoming wyverns stopped and flinched at the lightning. Meanwhile, I put them in my spear's trajectory. To be exact, it was just that they were in the way to the flame drake. It was why I gathered them in the first place. Kicking off the air, I used gale track. Yo! Using the power of lightning, Pika's spirit aura had enlarged the spear like I was using Sky God's rage. The moment my spear even touched the wyverns, they all exploded and my spear grew stronger each time they died. It was because Gale Track increased my attack power by 5% each time I sent an enemy flying. Kugya. Hero, I came for you. I'm not into bestiality. If you want me, at least try to polymorph to a beautiful girl. 17th. 18th, 19th. I was approaching the drake. Since I was under super-armored state, nothing could stop me. 20th. 100% fully charged. Then, I flew past Waya. Seeing her widely opened eyes looking at me, I couldn't help but think she was cute. The drake opened its mouth after seeing me draw closer. Was he planning on swallowing me? I shouted. Ask me anything. Help me so that guy will obediently let me attack him. If it's now, anything you want. Then, I suddenly heard the sound of a machine gun. Pepper, who was controlling his helicopter from nearby, had fired at the drake. 
Imbued with his mana, the bullets seemed to be effective against the drake. Freezing. Ryue took about 30% of my mana and cast it an elemental magic. Although it was for a brief instant, I thought the world would freeze. In fact, our surrounding became completely frozen. The beams of light shining down became arrows of ice, the fire breathed out by the drake froze, and its entire body also frozen. The world is on my side now. So that was it. Usually, she created water from the water vapor in the air, but now, there was water everywhere around us. Even our enemy was completely soaked with water. Even if he was an SS ranked boss monster and had fire attribute, Ryue could freeze it. Both of my elementals could show their greatest strengths in this environment. I felt at least 50% stronger than my normal self. The moment I realized it, I charged towards its mouth and pierced my spear through it. Kwang. Its frozen body instantly defrosted, while blood burst out from the top of its mouth like a fountain. Although the heavy rain would wash away the blood in time, the blood that splashed onto me made me feel uncomfortable. Thankfully, it wasn't poisonous. Hiru. It'll eat you. I already told you, no. I was now as free as a bird. After landing my attack perfectly, I flew back up. I didn't need to use divine speed, and as soon as I backed off, Wyatt quickly blocked the drake's flames. She was on fire today. Pun intended. Guys. Let me join in too. Pepper flew toward us, shooting down nearby wyverns with his helicopter. At the same time, the ground lightened up and a few people appeared. The Dungeon Explorer communication channel became noisy. Son, I came to help. Uni, Wawanim. Minami Violet Sumire, reporting for duty. Shit him going to really die if him not careful. Besides one, the reinforcing explorers couldn't be more reliable. I instantly thought, Walker might die if he's not careful. According to our contract, he had to come help us if we called him for event raids or event dungeons, but he came without Waya or me asking him. Because we thought this battle would be hard for Walker, we hadn't planned on calling him at all. Perhaps, father had caught him and brought him along, but he could have escaped if he wanted to. I was happy that he came on his own accord. If possible, I hoped this raid would end without Walker getting hurt. Ho <laughs> ho. All the dungeon explorers on earth are here. Waya remarked as she flew next to me. I wasn't sure if she absorbed the drake's power, but she was emitting strong flames from her body. Since Ludia and Yiyun would soon return, she was right. Looking at the drake still bleeding from its mouth, I snorted. It could be dangerous to think this way, but I didn't think I could lose to anyone now. The moment after I thought that, a giant wyvern twice as big as normal wyverns appeared in front of us. Because of the drake, we had forgotten about it. It was the dungeon boss of the wyvern's nest. In case it wasn't clear, the flame drake is the boss of the event raid, and the giant wyvern is the field dungeon's boss. Chapter 134 Hero So you can talk too. I was surprised, but I instinctively tightened my grip on the gluttony spear and aimed it towards it. To be honest, in the heavy thunderstorm, I thought even the boss of Wyvern's Nest couldn't be a match for me. Good. Thanks for coming, but sorry. I want to end it quickly. However, what it said next shocked me greatly. I know you have the ability of a tamer, hero. I want to become hero's subordinate. You, what? I doubted my ears for an instant. What did this wyvern with the avian flu just say? After the drake appeared, I thought only death awaited me. Aren't you two on the same side? Are you stupid, hero? Between monsters, you either eat, share, or get eaten. Well, that's nice to know. Share probably refers to monsters from the same family or from the same kind. Although wyverns and the flame drake were seen to both be species of dragons, it seemed they weren't allies. I've come to admire you after seeing you destroy dozens of wyverns with a single attack. Be happy. You forced the queen of the wyverns, Darkwing Zert, to surrender. I obtained two more useful information. The first was that this wyvern felt admiration at me killing dozens of her kind, and the second was that this wyvern was female. 
I was wondering why her voice was slightly high. Darkwing Zert then continued. Of course, what I want the most is to kill Hero and to obtain Hero's light, but I know that is impossible. As such, I chose the second best option. Since you can't kill me, you will serve under me. And I will kill the drake. For a monster, she sure acted like a bully well, it didn't matter, since it was good for me. The wyvern looked into my eyes. Meanwhile, Waya shouted. I don't know what's going on, but hurry up. That guy's charging toward us. Okay. Alright, good. You'll probably be faster than Teleria. From now on, I am Heroes. Now, grant me a new name. I can't just call you Zert. I need a new name to tie myself to Hero. Then let's go with Latte. Good. My name is now Latte. As the hero's partner, I will take after his brilliance. Immediately afterwards, several messages rang in my ear, as if they had been prepared beforehand. You made an achievement of taming the S-rank boss monster, Darkwing Wyvern. You obtained one skill point. Current skill points, 4. Taming became level 3. You can tame your target more easily, and even the targets you placated temporarily will remain so for a longer time. Spirit of the Tamer became level 3. You will win good first impressions, and the hostility and wariness against you decreases. Current Tameable Targets, 22. Although Wyvern's Nest was a S-ranked dungeon, Latte was S-ranked. I wondered why, and suspected it was because she originally possessed a name. Pleen, for example, didn't have a name until I gave her one. On the other hand, Latte had the name, Zert. Just by looking at her wings and black skin, I could tell she was different than the other wyverns. She was called the Queen of the Wyverns and Darkwing, both emphasizing that she was special. That said, their goal should have been to kill me and take the world's power. It felt a bit weird that they gave up and joined my side because they weren't strong enough. I thought the command they received was absolute, something they had to prioritize over their own lives, but it seemed that wasn't the case. After all, Pleen came over to my side rather easily, and it was the same for Latte. Was it because I was a tamer? Or was it just because I showed how domineering I was like Latte said? Were their own lives more important than the command? Or was there something special about Pleen and Latte? For now, I had no way of knowing. Get on, hero. Right. Excuse me. Mm. Can I let my comrades ride too? That's unpleasant. The only one I acknowledge is Hero, my master. She called herself my partner and taming definitely worked, but it looked like it didn't mean she would be completely obedient. With a bitter smile, I nodded. All right, it can't be helped then. Let's go. Don't fall. Grya. Latte opened her jaws and let out a scream. Then, she charged straight towards the drake. I raised my spear, and the constant lightning strikes from the sky strengthened spirit aura. Where did you get that? If you want, you can try to entice one of the nearby wyverns. After replying to father's message, I looked ahead. Although the connection between Latte and me wasn't as deep as my connection with Ryue, as expected of Queen of the Wyverns, Latte aptly dodged the drake's flames and flew past its front paw. In that instant, I used elemental blade and slashed its front paw. A strong explosion of lightning occurred upon impact, bursting the drake's scales and scorching its flesh. Qua! You bitch, you dare betray us. It's better than becoming your dinner. The drake became enraged and stomped, causing the entire canyon to crack. Because of the falling boulders, people on the bottom of the canyon were busy running for their lives. Hoping that my companions were safe, I aimed my spear at it again. I will have you. The drake flashed its eyes and glared at me. At that moment, however, a flurry of bullets pierced through the top of its jaws. I was surprised from how accurate the shots were. From his helicopter, Pepper had accurately attacked the spot I struck earlier with my spear. I couldn't help but be amazed by his skill. You got yourself a cool mount. That spear too, how cool. Pepper flew next to Latte shouting with a loud voice that did not lose to the roaring monsters. With a grin, I retorted. Good shots, Pepper. It wasn't much. 
We wished each other luck and immediately separated. The Drake's flame laser shot through the air between us. Meanwhile, all the rankers resting at their lodging and the rankers that were scattered throughout the field dungeon were gathering. There were about seventy of them. However, even if more than one third of the world's S rankers were here, I couldn't confidently say they could defeat the Drake. Come down, he'll give you a blessing. Ludia sent me a message. It seemed he had returned after landing the helicopter in the landing zone. I hesitated, but seeing Pepper's helicopter move like a living creature and drawing the Drake's attention, I nodded. Ludia's blessing could not be ignored. It would be best to quickly go get it while Pepper was holding back the Drake. Latte landed in the quagmire created by the heavy rain. Looking at Lottie's large body, both Ludia and Yiyun were startled. I it's twice as big as a wyvern. I've never seen a wyvern so big how did you? I'll explain later. Ludia, give me the blessing. An. O power vested in the earth, O blessing. We shall fight to protect thee, lend us thy power. O Mataris, bless and sublimate this power. You received Mataras' warrior blessing, strengthened by the power of the earth. For the duration, your health and mana recovery increases greatly, and your attack and defense increases by 20%. On defense, you have a chance to absolutely defend your enemy's attack. I knew coming down was a good idea. After confirming that I received Ludia's blessing, I told Latte to fly up again. However, before Latte could flap her wings, Ludia took off her hoodie and exposed her face to the rain. Although she was wearing a mask, it couldn't protect her face from the rain. Shin, don't die, okay? Yeah. You be careful too. I lightly retorted with a grin. I wasn't sure if she could see my face clearly in the rain, but she looked like she was smiling too. Good, she was getting better. Yiyun was charging at the drake with a dagger in each hand, and I also made Latte fly toward the drake. It was then. The drake lightly stomped the ground, and a large fissure began to spread out. It was an earthquake attack. Son, let me get on too. She says she doesn't want other people riding her. I descended down to the ground like an arrow as I messaged father. No matter how wide the canyon had expanded, it was still a canyon. If the ground began to fissure in the middle, it would be hard for anyone to escape. With Lottie's claws, I grabbed the people about to fall down into the abyss. Wake. Calm down, they'll drop you off in a safe area soon. I put them on top of the canyon. It was probably safer, and it would be easier for me to deal with the drake. Without listening to their thanks, I went off with Latte again. However, after I spent some time saving people, the ordinary wyverns made me unable to focus on fighting the drake. They were attacking the rankers ferociously, as if to eat a last meal before the drake killed them. Can't you command the other wyverns? Between monsters, you either. Okay, okay. Latte flapped her wings and raised her altitude. The weather was getting worse, as the sky rumbled and lightning sparked continuously. I raised my gluttony spear. Hearing Pika's excited shout, I couldn't help but smile. Latte, we're going to use the skill that wiped out the wyverns earlier. The final target is obviously the drake. Understood. All right, then wake. Everyone, come fight me. You use provoke. All enemies in this area bears deep hostility towards you. Kayak. Quayak. The wyverns changed their target from the ability users to me. They flapped their wings violently, as they cried. The drake also faced me and shot a laser straight toward me. The wyverns in the path was completely burned to death. As for me, Latte dodged its attack with her quick movement. Good, Latte. Well done. Humph. This much is nothing. Then, let's go. Gale track. Because of the drake's laser, it was hard to place twenty wyverns in the path of Gale track. However, thinking back to the gale track Pryuta used, I violently circulated Pryuta circuit and led Latte. Wop. First, second, third changing the trajectory naturally, I killed the fourth, then fifth. The drake flashed its eyes and shouted. Volcano. What volcano? There's no volcano here wait, there is. 
A scarlet flame erupted from the crack made from the earlier earthquake. Watching the S rankers trying their best to dodge or block it, I hurriedly called Ryue. Can you freeze it? No problem. When the lava shot toward Latte and me, Ryue instantly froze it. She could even freeze lava. We immediately broke through it. 11th, 12th. Shoot, the lava killed most of the wyverns. It'll fly straight to that bastard now. Go. Ryue, block that guy's attack. Got it. Immediately after Ryue nodded, the streaks of rain in front of us transformed into ice crystals and began to spin around Lottie's body. More and more ice crystals gathered around Latte, and in the end, we looked like a whirlwind of ice crystals. With your strength, you won't be able to even scratch me. When the drake shouted, the earth tremored, and the raindrops that had fallen on his body burst out into all directions. How could a flame drake wield water? I knew he had just used his boundless mana to send the water flying, but it was still enough to damage the S rankers. Furthermore, the attack continued, almost like Pepper's machine gun. Although I was fine thanks to Ryu's ice crystal whirlwind, I urged Latte on, thinking of the S rankers. Then, the drake suddenly stopped moving. A black stream of blood burst out of its neck. At the same time, a voice filled with ominous mana rang out throughout the entire canyon. Ahaha, ahahaha. This is fun, very fun. Yuung, Earth is the greatest. Wasn't that Yiyun's voice? Chapter, 135. I was shocked, but I wasn't shocked enough that I.D. missed this valuable opportunity. Right now, the drake was almost completely defenseless. When we neared the drake, Ryue first compressed the ice crystal whirlwind that was protecting us, and shot it toward the drake. Blood spurted out of its face, and even the blood soon froze. Quiak. Ill take an eye. Gale Track's final blow. I frantically circulated Peruta circuit and added Gale Track's wind power to my lightning spear. I pulled the spear back. The frozen blood on the drake couldn't defeat its hot blood and evaporated. At the same time, thrust my spear forward. Kia. This is the power of the skull breaker. The moment the lightning spear stabbed through its left eye, tearing through the mana barrier protecting its body. At the same time that I realized a critical hit occurred, its eye exploded into pieces. There was already a bonus for charge type attacks. With Skull Breaker's effect amplifying critical hit damage, not even at SS rank boss I was safe. Because of the unexpected effectiveness of the attack, I was once became wet with blood. Kuhu, as I thought, hero is amazing. Fly back for now. This bastard's going to thrash around again. Kaya ha ha ha. Cool, you're so cool. Take me with you. When I was about to fly back with Latte, someone suddenly jumped toward us from the drake's neck. It was Yiyun. Holding two daggers flashing with black aura, she easily landed on my back. Not paying attention to Lottie's struggle to throw her off, she rubbed my back though it was covered by my armor and asked. What's your name? Hmm. Tell me. It was Yiyun's voice, but something felt different. If Yiyun talked like a middle school girl, her voice currently exuded the charm of a mature woman. In fact, the way she looked at me as she peeked her head over my shoulders was unable to describe with words. You, you manifested in Yiyun. Oh. You know my disciple. Ha. Huh. I'm, mm, I see. No. Can I have him? I felt like I could understand what she and Yiyun were talking about. I lightly pushed her face back and retorted. They'll let it go since it's an emergency situation, but you shouldn't jump on someone else's wyvern without permission. What? Kayaha, you're funny. Hmm, -hmm, as I thought, I like you. They'll kill this woman. Calm down, Latte. Ah, uh, dodge. As expected, the agitated drake swung its tail down at us. Latte quickly dodged it, and the drake's tail struck the ground, causing even more fissures to spread out. Furthermore, the drake's body became redder, and a red steam-like gas was shooting out of its body. What is that? What do you think that is? It means it got harder to jump on its neck and attack. Although the wyverns were mostly taken care of, it was still difficult for other rankers to fight the drake. 
The ground was fissured and lava was erupting out of it. The drake's body was on fire, and although a few long-ranged S rankers were attacking it, the red steam was blocking all of them. Blocking both close and long-ranged attacks. That's a cheat. Is everyone safe? In safe. That bastard's tail is as big as a floor master. Im safe too, Wawan Im. Im. Alive. As Lydia wasn't in Earth's Dungeon Explorer communication channel, I sent her a separate message. She said she blocked the earthquake with her ability and was now focusing on supporting from the distance. There weren't many with healing abilities. As such, she would greatly increase the number of survivors. Koha. The bullets just melt when they get near him. Pepper's helicopter flew near me. Although he said it with a refreshing smile, he didn't look too happy. It seemed his bullets couldn't pierce through the red steam either. However, after seeing Yi Yoon, Pepper exclaimed in a surprised voice. Mm. Lady, you look the same, but you somehow look sexier. Did I fall in love? Ha ha ha. As I thought, my appearance can't hide my charm. But sorry, I already chose him. Pepper, can you think of a way to attack? As an SS ranker, Pepper wouldn't just give up with this. When I interrupted Pepper and Yoon, S small talk and asked, he grinned. I normally would have charged forward with my bazooka, but I think the water drops it shot out earlier broke something. The helicopter isn't responding well. So, friend, I came to deliver my trump card. He threw something at me. When I received it and looked, it was a black metallic ball with a red button. It's a fragmentation grenade specially created for me. Only S ranked or above monsters were used to make it, so you should be able to imagine its power. Since it can't operate without my mana, there's no safety pin or anything. Normally, if I put mana into it and press the button, it explodes in exactly three seconds, but. You put all your mana in it, right? Bingo! Although it looked simple, the mana I could feel inside it was no joke. In detail, all of an SS ranker's mana was in it. It's three seconds after you press that button, friend. I'll entrust you with it. Damn, you cool guy. Leave it to me. I'll take care of it. Good, then I'm going to go save the others. Let's go out for a drink afterwards, friend. Good luck. Pepper grinned and crossed his fingers over the pilot seat, then turned his helicopter around to go save the other ability users. Damn, that guy was just too cool. For now, I put the grenade in my embrace. Then, the situation changed again. Hero. Hand over yourself to me. Hero this, hero that. You're noisy. When the drake shouted, once again erupting lava, Waya shouted back. In the next moment, the lava erupting from the ground shot toward her surprisingly. Startled, I was about to charge toward her, when Waya raised both of her hands. It's my turn now. Army of flames. Along with her hands' movements, the lava flying toward her fell in clumps and began to take different forms. Eagle, hawk, crow. All kinds of birds known for their aggressive nature began to appear in thousands. The animal kingdom. No, it was the army of flames, avian edition. Because of the pouring rain, their bodies continued to sizzle and give off steam, but they didn't shrink and continued to burn. As if that wasn't enough, the biggest clump of lava formed a giant wyvern. Waya got on its back and grinned toward me. Even in the rain, I could clearly see her smile. Yiyun's voice then rang out from behind. Tui, big-breasted ones should all go to hell. Yiyun wasn't even flat. I can see your past self. Although the thought crossed my mind, I thought she'd break my neck if I said it, so I kept it to myself. After Waya turned all the erupting lava into her army, the ranker's counterattack also began. Let's group up. Magicians, please protect us with barriers. Take at least one of its scale. Protect our land. We will protect America. Most of the American ability users burned with determination to protect their home country, and other countries' ability users did the same as to not smudge their country's name. The ones who cared more for their lives probably left the battlefield already. Humans always like to gather in mass. 
They also always died in mass. The drake roared. The steam covering its body transformed to long and thin needles. It then shot them out like it had done earlier with the raindrops. Immediately afterwards, Waya's army of flames blocked the steam arrows. The few that slipped through would have to be dealt with by the ability users. Boom! A steam arrow flying toward them suddenly bounced back with a boom. I tilted my head, feeling like I've seen that ability before. Then, the protected ability users shouted in thanks. Dark Knight. It's Dark Knight. Boo, both Thunder Knight and Dark Knight are here. Father's identity was being revealed for the world to see. My flames prey on the sky itself. The Drake's flames continued to get stronger. However, the atmosphere was different than before. The chaos created from the wyvern boss and the ordinary wyverns had settled down, and everyone was now focused on the drake. You insects squirming until death. Cook. New daughter, please. Yes. Lydia used her power of the earth and protected the ability users, while father was in front, shooting out shockwaves and blocking the drake's attacks. The attacks he could not completely block with his shockwaves were being blocked by Minami. Powered Guardian. Hap. Although father had blocked a portion of them, her defensive capability wasn't ordinary. However, the Drake steam arrow attacks seemed to be a disguise for its real attack, as its large tail slammed down on Minami. Although others managed to get away in time, Minami was. Kook. When I began to charge toward her, Minami shouted. Aegis. I twitched my brows. Aegis. Wasn't that the shield of Athena? Soon after the thought crossed my mind, the shield in her hand shone with a golden light. At the same time, I sensed a feeling I had grown used to by now. Although it wasn't my place to say that with my two gods' true names, the second dungeon's gold ranked Minami was. A genius. Minami obtained Athena's true name. I don't know who Athena is, but she must be an amazing god. The feel great power from her. Yeun's master nodded and remarked. While the two of us were talking, what was happening on the ground was a sight to behold. The moment the drake's tail collided with the aegis in Minami's hand, the SS-ranked raid boss tail began to petrify. It was likely the effect of Medusa's head, said to be placed on aegis. It was a bit weird that it petrified on contact rather than sight, but it was certainly effective. Qua! You little bitch! Enraged, the drake swung its tail and broke the petrified part. Because of its resolute sacrifice, the petrification did not continue. Even so, a fourth of its tail shattered and blood spurted out from the wound like a fountain, dyeing the canyon red. With that, it should have heavily drained its strength and mana. Furthermore, it should now be impossible for it to attack with its tail. As expected of a god's power. Let's go. The more agitated the enemy gets, the easier it is to stab a dagger in his enemy. Okay. I was also thinking the same. When the SS ranked boss first appeared, it carried an overwhelming prestige, but now it was just a lizard with one of its eye and tail missing. Though, its magic power was still just as threatening. The rain. Im drenched in rain. Seek immense attack. Bolstered by father and Minami's success, some of the S rankers closed in on the drake and attacked. Although the difference in their strength was clear, the drake wasn't completely immune to their attacks. It was why the drake was thrashing about. The likes of you dare to approach me. Hero, give me the hero. The steam covering its body freely transformed and swept out, still carrying its extreme heat. Few rankers who could not avoid it fell back with huge wounds. Seeing how it made S rankers retreat with such a simple attack, I grew tired of its strength. You. A mere lizard dares to covet a human. Seeing the ability users he was fighting with falling back one by one, father gritted his teeth and pierced the drake's foot with his spear imbued with shockwaves. Minami seemed to have lost Aegis power with the previous attack, but she still moved around quickly and protected the others from the drake's attack. It was then that we came near. You'll distract it, right? I won't just distract it. It'll kill it. Yeun's master whispered in my ear, and I retorted lightly as I fixed my grip on my spear. 
feeling the Prayuta circuit circulating violently, I glared at the drake. The rain and lightning pouring down strengthened me and weakened the drake. I didn't matter that it was SS ranked or that it was a 100 man raid boss. I could be its opponent. That's all that mattered. You're really my style. Good, my name is Duka Aili. Remember it well. In Kong Shin. I don't know if we'll ever see each other again, though. I can just ask my disciple. Next time, we should enjoy a heated night. With that, Duca jumped off Lottie's back. When the drake noticed us and raised its head, I shouted while drinking a highest grade mana potion. Crystal rain. The rain pouring down became fiercer. The streaks of rain became ice arrows strengthened with elemental magic and shot toward the drake. The drake had opened its mouth to attack Duca, but was greeted by countless ice arrows. Not only its mouth, but its head, body, and tail were all attacked mercilessly. My mana was also drained mercilessly. Can I charge now, hero? Not yet. Red steam waved from its body. It was to block crystal rain, but Duca was able to safely land because of it. The moment she landed on the drake, she struck down at the drake's neck with her two daggers, giving off a black aura. As she broke the scale on its neck one by one, she shouted excitedly. Kaya ha ha ha. This is fun, fun. What a crazy woman. Kuhum. Anyways, now was the time. Greya. As Latte accelerated toward the drake, birds of flame also flew toward us from all directions. The birds collided with the drake's flames, preventing them from reaching us. How was Waya blocking an SS ranked boss flame by herself? It was more than just impressive. Phew, that was fun. I'll leave the rest to you, honey. On the other hand, after scratching off the drake's scales, Duca stabbed her daggers on its back and jumped down, holding the daggers in reverse and slicing down. Did she think that was a safe way to land? The black aura plucked off the drake's scales in a line, causing it to let out a bloodcurdling scream. On the other hand, Lottie's accelerated more. Scarlet flame erupted out from the drake's body. It was as if its boundless magic power was going out of control. I could hear nearby ability users screaming. Minami SSI, protect them well. I will. Aim for its neck, where Duka stripped off its scales. I'm going now. My surrounding distorted. The flame birds could not keep up with Latte and fell behind. In an instant, we were at its neck. If we weren't this fast, the drake would have counterattacked us easily. Without a shred of hesitation, I used divine speed and heroic strike. The white lightning spear, crazily accelerated by divine speed, pierced through its neck without resistance, widening the hole that was there. Good. Eat this. I took out the grenade Pepper gave me and pressed the button. Throwing the grenade inside the gaping hole, I pulled out my spear. Latte quickly accelerated and flew back. Not even the flame drake withstand Pepper's grenade filled with all of his power. Eh. Why wasn't it exploding? Qua. You dare make a hole in my neck. I must have you no matter the cost. Peepep. Pepeer. You gave me a non-functioning grenade, you son of a bitch. Chapter, 136. At the unexpected situation, I was almost hit by the drake's fire breath. If Waya didn't send her birds to block the flames in time, I would have been seriously injured. Be careful, idiot. If you die, they'll drag you out of your grave and kill you again. Thanks, Waya. I thanked Waya, but was still embarrassed and angered by Pepper's grenade. Even in the heavy rain, I could clearly see the hole in the drake's neck and the grenade buried in it. It was amazing. What was amazing, you ask? It was that the grenade didn't explode even with the drake's fire erupting out just now. Those bastards went too far with the safety device. Leon Pepper, I swear I'll strangle you. I gritted my teeth and raised my spear again, absorbing the surrounding lightning energy. Since the easy method was now gone, I could only use the more difficult method. Ugh, it would be fine for SS rankers like me and Waya, but S rankers might get hurt, which I wanted to avoid. Ah! Mega Rock Strike! The drake stomped the ground with both of its feet. 
Ability users panicked and scattered to avoid its attack, but the Asinkhole appeared in the ground, dragging a few of the ability users underground. Immediately afterwards, a huge rock shot up from the sinkhole. Save them. If they get stuck down there, there's nothing we can do. Oh Earth, give back the ones you swallowed. Ludia and other ability users scrambled to save the ones who fell into the sinkhole, but I was more concerned with the huge rock that was shooting up hundreds of meters up into the air by the drake's magic power. What did it shout just now? Although it didn't explain what it did, I could tell what it planned to do by seeing the huge rock in the sky. That drake was planning on dropping the rock and smashing the ability users. Everyone was moving about in panic. Since I was the only one who could block it, I didn't need to hesitate. I ordered Latte to fly up. However, Latte shook her head. We can't block it. If we get hit, I might be fine, but Hero will die. That isn't a normal rock. Don't worry. I don't rush into things knowing I have zero chance of winning. I won't die. Latte sighed and began to ascend. Just in case, I activated Dragon Skin. With this, even if the method I thought of didn't work, I wouldn't die. Although my speed fell with Dragon Skin, Lottie's speed was unaffected, as she soared up quickly. It was then that the rock had reached its peak height, and began to fall. In truth, it was terrifying. Huge didn't begin to describe how big it really was. Shin, no. At that time, Waya flew over, while riding a flame wyvern. She must have thought I was planning on committing suicide, as her face was pale. As if. I wasn't remotely close to a martyr. I asked Waya, who looked like she wanted to drag me away. Waya, can you slow that rock down from falling? If I do, can you do something about it? Of course. So, is it possible? If it's just slowing it down. Yes, a little. Waya took out a potion from her inventory and put it in her mouth. Then, she raised her hand. On it, a spherical white flame appeared. She looked back at me, while putting more power into the white flame. I could clearly see worry in her flame-like eyes. I only have enough mana to maintain the flame army, so you need to do the rest, okay? Thanks Waya. You really are a cool woman. Don't say half-hearted words. I'd rather get a deep kiss. You won't even let me compliment you. When I murmured, Waya smiled and threw the completed white flame at the rock. The moment the falling rock collided with Waya's white flame, its surface became red, and the resistance slowed down the rock. Good. With this, it would be much easier for me to execute my plan. Waya, you can run now. Without waiting for Waya's response, I flew higher with Latte. Lightning flickered in the spear I held up, and Latte seemed to be slightly terrified at the approaching rock. I couldn't blame her. It was as big as an apartment building. Hundreds of people could stand on it without a problem. The rock was falling. 100 meters, 70 meters, 35 meters, 10 meters. I thrust my spear forward. Outburst. The moment my spear collided with the rock, I felt that the spear overcame the rock's crushing force. However, in order to protect the spear shaft, the spear transferred the crushing force directly to me. Along with an enormous shock in my arms, I felt an electrifying pain in my solar plexus. However, believing in dragon skin's power, I gritted my teeth and continued to thrust my spear forward. You goddamn lizard bastard. Eat this. The rock split, not from shock of colliding with the spear, but from an unnaturally strong shock. It split into dozens, then hundreds of pieces. Then, just as unnaturally, the broken pieces rained down in a straight line. Of course, their aim was. Kwa, Hiru. If I recorded it, I could use it as an alarm clock. The rain of rocks struck the drake's body. I didn't think it would receive a fatal blow, but I clenched my fists, as I had prevented S rankers from dying in vain. However, suddenly feeling raindrops in my head, I raised my hands to touch it, and saw that my helmet had been split into two. It seemed that a piece of rock had glazed past my head. My mask would still hide my identity, but I would have to pay to repair the helmet. I gritted my teeth and put the two pieces of the helmet into my inventory. 
The fight wasn't over yet. If I let the drake freely rampage any longer, my companions might really be in danger. Because of its attacks, the Antelope Canyon was already in a sorry state. The damage was even reaching outer perimeters of the canyon. Waya's mana wasn't infinite, and she wouldn't be able to block its flames forever. Without her, I suspected that half of the people currently alive would be dead. As such, I had to kill it before her mana ran out. Hugh. First, I resolved myself. Will one minute be enough? Will I be able to aim properly? Should I really do it? No, with Ludia's buff, it should just barely be possible. Qua. You used Orc Lord's war cry. All party members are cleansed of negative status effects. All party members' attack power increases by 50% for the duration. All party members become super armored, unfazed by enemy attacks. Strength overflowed in my body. Of course, that wasn't it. Standing firmly on Lottie's back, I aimed my spear at the flame drake, currently swinging its front paw and breathing fire at the S rankers attacking it. Gigantic. UK. Kook. It's heavy, Hiru. Endure it just for a second, Latte. The spear grew to dozens of meters in an instant. The spear had become incredibly heavy, and it was devouring an unimaginable amount of mana from Spirit Aura. I gritted my teeth and shouted. Sky God's rage. The giant spear transformed into a lightning bolt. Oh, the spear became lighter. Plus, when I activated Sky God's Rage, thunderclaps rang out consecutively and bolts of lightning fell from the sky. My spear directly absorbed all of the lightning and became even bigger. Ha ha ha, I feel super high, master. 1. She literally says high in English. And Shin says heavy in English. I feel super heavy. At Pika's spirited shout, I clenched my teeth. The strength from all my muscles surged. Damn it, if I didn't learn it as a skill, it would have been impossible for me to concentrate all my strength in this situation. Here I go. Heroic. Strike. I flung the lightning bolt hole. Kook. What is that giant lightning? Thunder Knight, it's Thunder Knight's power. What? That's the power of an SS ranker. It's well above it. Ah, the drake is moving. Stop it. In truth, the spear I threw wasn't as fast as real lightning. The drake was quite dexterous for its size, so it could definitely dodge it. That is, if I didn't do anything. Shadow blink. The next moment, I was on the drake's neck. It erupted strong flames from its body and through the ability user's back, and was now trying to dodge the incoming spear. Of course, I had no plan of letting it do that. I raised my whitened hand and struck down at its neck shouting, ice touch. Your target freezes for five seconds. Afterwards, it can dispel the status effect depending on its resistance. Cack. Like a lie, the drake froze in place. With a grin, I leaped off. Latte flew like an arrow and caught me. Nice, Latte. I'm falling back. It seemed Latte could feel the power behind Sky God's rage. She flapped her wings quickly and flew off. Less than a second afterwards, the spear I threw out pierced the drake's body. Kaya. Wow, a critical hit. I watched, as I stood on Lottie's back. After glazing past the drake's neck, Sky God's rage burned everything in its path and pierced the drake's body. Digging deep into it, it dyed the world golden for a moment, as formidable lightning struck its body. At the same time, even the grenade that was stuck in its neck exploded. Right, if it could withstand Sky God's rage, it would be an SS rank boss monster, not a grenade. The shrapnel from the grenade shredded the drake's throat. Although it wasn't as strong as Sky God's rage, with its positioning and the fact that all of Pepper's strength was imbued in it, it dealt critical damage. Qua. The he. Rose. Power. The drake screamed. Its voice became quieter and quieter until no one could hear it. If it didn't die from this, I would have to resort to deific manifestation. When I was resolving myself to do so, the tension in my body disappeared. I had heard the voice I was waiting to hear. 
Event Raid Success Six of Earth's Dungeon Explorers and one Independent Dungeon Explorer, a total of seven Dungeon Explorers has successfully completed an Event Raid. This great achievement increases the rewards greatly. As your average rank is lower than the Raid Boss, the reward increases again. Your dignity is worthy of receiving the attentions of Transcendence. All gods that love battles and wars begin to observe you closely. The reward increased even more this time. Plus, that message. It seemed I needed to prepare myself for what was to come. You obtained 5 stat points for completing the event raid. Rewards will be distributed in order of contribution. Kong Shin Nim's contribution is the highest. Choose your reward. 1. Rage of Vulcan Epic. 2. Bride of Ignis Epic. 3. Executioners in Two Moon Epic. 4. Elixir. 5. Volcanic Lance Epic. 6. Volcanic Guardian Epic. 7. 5 million gold. Even the worst reward is 5 million gold. And the potion reward is elixir. 2. Not the elixirs as in strengthening elixirs, compressing elixirs, etc. The Korean word for that is completely different than this potion, which is literally elixir phoneticized in Korean. If that's what I think it is. Isn't it the miracle potion that restores someone to normal from all physical or mental injuries and status effects? If the potion is elixir, then what about the other rewards? I mean, they're all epic. S. Shin, did the rewards come out? It did, right? You're the first in contribution, so how is it? Anything good? I was clearly first in contribution. It couldn't be anyone else. Waya, who knew that fact well, approached me and asked with sparkling eyes. When I looked at her, the water vapor evaporating from her was lessening. The heavy rain had passed. Seeing the ray of light shining down from between the storm clouds, I said with a solemn expression. Waya. We struck it big. Good for you Pika. You're feeling super high. The people on Munpia now are feeling super low. TN, this is referring to the fact that Munpia had some server error, and thus the chapter came out late or something. PS feeling super high, Jaja's Bizarre Adventure. Dio's famous quote. Chapter, 137. After that, everything was taken care of in a moment. Everyone's goal was to subjugate the field dungeon, Wyvern's Nest. Since I tamed the dungeon's boss, Darkwing Latte, their goal had been accomplished. However, the Flame Drake, a raid boss, had suddenly appeared. Although no one had expected it, most ability users had joined the Drake subjugation to protect their country and its honor. Although they couldn't damage the Drake much, I was very impressed by the fact that so many rankers joined forces in such a dangerous situation. If someone asked me if I could risk my life for my country's honor, I would undoubtedly say no. In any case, with the Drake now defeated, the Wyvern's nest would become peaceful. 24 ability users had died. Although an equal number of people got injured, with a few S ranked healers and Ludia, the injured could easily recover. Immediately after the Drake died, its corpse strangely disappeared. All ability users became flustered and felt empty, but the one who was frustrated the most was America's guardian. The corpse of the strongest monster ever known on earth. Since they had lost it in vain, how couldn't they be angry? I'd rather not describe the faces of the guardian members who came running to the site immediately. If I had to truthfully discuss sharing the corpse, Team Revival had the highest share. America did not have a say in it. In truth, looking at American ability users' selflessness and their treatment toward other countries' ability users, I thought the American government would be like them, but it seemed all higher-ups thought the same way. In any case, they would have to give worthy rewards to the ability users, who had risked their lives for America. The ability users gathered at the Antelope Canyon were too powerful and too many in number for them to pretend not to be blind. Seeing the situation settle, I sent my party members a message. We can split it based on our contribution later. Ah, Shin can have my share, as the guild application fee. There is no fee though. M me too. What's Shin is mine, and what's mine is Shin's anyways. No, 
that's not right either. What's yours is yours, and what's mine is mine. Mm. Son, do I have to give you my share for the guild application fee too? Plus, how come you didn't say anything to your father after getting a mansion? Like I said, there is no application fee. Also, if I told you, you would have gone mad from jealousy, father. Whatever. Shin isn't the type to take advantage of us, so we should be happy with the rewards. This dress is amazing. Hmm. I feel bad taking five million gold when I didn't do anything. Since I couldn't injure the drake at all, you can take my reward. If I accept it, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. Me too. I like this shield a lot. Wawanim, or rather, Shin Nim and Uni was too amazing. You were really like mythological heroes. I could say the same about you, Samire. When did you get a god's true name? Leaving everyone to talk happily in the party communication channel, I opened my inventory. Then, I grinned with satisfaction. Right. Within it was the complete corpse of the flame drake. I had put it in my inventory when I had gone to retrieve my spear. With divine speed, it was a piece of cake. If I left it alone, America would grind their teeth to obtain it, and there was no reason for me to let that happen. However, I had to show proper respect to the selfless rankers who died while fighting the flame drake. If I deemed that America treated them unjustly, I planned to reward their family even if I had to use up all my gold. That said, seeing how America had invited them so openly, I probably wouldn't need to worry about it. For my reward, I chose Rage of Vulcan. I didn't need 5 million gold or elixir. I considered choosing Volcanic Lance, but I already had Crimson Gluttony Spear. As such, I decided to let Father have the Volcanic Lance. In any case, I chose what looked like the best item. Although I hoped that it was an accessory, Rage of Vulcan was an epic grade sword. It seemed Spirit of the Collector didn't work properly this time. Disappointed, I disregarded its excellent effects or special skill, and just fed it to Gluttony Spear. Crimson Gluttony Spear absorbed Rage of Vulcan. Growth, 96%. Eh. Since it was at 87% before, it had gone up by 9%. It gave more percentages than the Demon Army Commander's weapon, even though they were both epic grade. With this, it wouldn't be long until Crimson Gluttony Spear's growth would reach 100%. Thinking about it made my heart beat. If it was already so strong, how much stronger would it be when it evolved? If I thought about all the weapons it ate, it was only obvious that I would look forward to it so much. Once I chose my reward, obtained the Drake's corpse, and took care of all the ability users' recovery and evacuation, I wanted to go home. Walker, Father, and Samire had already returned. Only me, Yiyun, Ludia, and Waya remained. Although we considered going back using return, I decided to see Pepper before we left. I grabbed him by his collar immediately. You bastard, I almost died because you gave me a dysfunctional grenade. Kek, it's not my fault. It was fine when the grenade was outside, but because the inside of its body had high mana resistance, I couldn't detonate it with my mana alone. You should have said that earlier, you bastard. I didn't know you'd drill a hole in its neck and put the grenade in it. Wake, the sky is shaking, T. After shaking Pepper for about five minutes to vent, I let him go and said my goodbye. Although I strangled him just a moment ago, Pepper seemed reluctant to part with me. You, Miss Mastiford, the dagger girl, and the priestess girl. It's a shame that I have to say my goodbye. We'll meet again one day. Ha ha ha. If a monster as horrible as this one appears in America, you'll be the first one I look for, T. Take good care of me then, too. Why are you only thinking of making me work? You better prepare a hefty reward. I'm sure the government will take care of that. Just like this time. Ha ha ha. Seeing Pepper's happy smile, I made a bitter smile. It was impossible to dislike a guy like this. That said, there weren't only pleasant farewells. When I was cleaning the room I stayed in, I heard a knock on the door. When I thoughtlessly said to enter, a girl entered along with six men in suits. It was Sierra Kinex. Can you hear it, Hironim? 
With her eyes closed, she raised her hand and pointed outside the window. Everyone is praising Hironim. They are touched by Hironim's accomplishment of defeating such a large monster practically alone. It wasn't just me. It would have been impossible without everyone's help. That is precisely the reason that Hironim must lead them. This is the best opportunity. I thought she'd bring it up again. With a sigh, I turned to face her, and continued. I'm going to say this without a shred of falsehood. I was genuinely impressed by the ability user's attitude. They risk their lives for their country and that should be respected. Hironim. But even without them, we would have defeated the Drake. I said concisely. They lost their lives in vain. They died for nothing. They should have shined elsewhere. Not by fighting an SS rank beast like the Drake, but by fighting monsters that B or A ranked ability users couldn't fight. They should have protected people that way. They shouldn't have thrown away their lives here. But without them, who would have defeated the Drake? Don't kid. If you knew something like this would happen. You should have known. You should have known that they wouldn't have been able to even scratch the Drake. The moment the words left my mouth, a thought suddenly crossed my mind. If that was true, then. This child. You knew, right? That the drake would appear. You said it yourself, that you knew when monsters would appear. You called me here at this time for this reason, right? And you knew. You knew that my companions and I would have been able to defeat the drake by ourselves. Even though she couldn't see, she turned away, as if to dodge my gaze. Seeing it, I couldn't help my voice from rising in anger. You, did you stay quiet because you wanted to see other ability users praising me? You let them die for something like that? To let other rankers know of my strength? 24s rankers died because of it. 24 precious lives disappeared. But their abilities will be retrieved by me, and I can allocate them to next appropriate people. Although they died, as a result, Hironim obtained an absolute authority among the awakened. I think this is a great reward beyond compare. For a moment, my head became blank. I couldn't think of anything. It almost felt like I received a mental attack. If I raised my hand and lightly punched her, she would undoubtedly die. With the rage boiling inside me, it would be especially hard for me to control my strength. When I raised my hand, the men in suits moved to protect her. When I put it back down and glared at them, they froze in place. Trying to control my anger, I continued. You should have told everyone the truth. You should have evacuated all ability users, and let my party members and I take care of the drake. Hironim, in that case, Hironim's accomplishment won't be properly evaluated. The reaction would be entirely different than what it is currently. In fact, people might have called it a scam. Not being properly evaluated or it being thought of as a scam is fine. In fact, we should have called other SS rankers and fought the drake together. That should have been the original function of your ability. Hero Nim. I felt something in my head being severed. Screw off. Right now, all of you. Screw off. You obtained the passive skill, Overwhelm. This skill appears with extremely low chance among people with high magic and charm stats. Just by possessing this skill, you decrease the stats of all opponents by percentages, regardless of whether they are stronger or weaker than you. At level 1, it decreases all opponent stats by 5%. The chance of your opponent failing to activate a skill increases by 5%. I didn't hear any response. The door closed silently. I slammed my fist down on the table, and the table instantly turned into dust. I couldn't face the approaching despair with numbers. I felt it in the Luka continent. Absolute strength. An absolute strength was needed, one that would not kneel in face of fear. Although number was important, it wasn't enough against an enemy like the Demon Lord. It would be different than the wars as Earth's history would show. Military strength would decrease the longer the fight went on. It was also our most critical weakness. Why? Because monsters and dungeons were appearing even now, and there wasn't an end in sight. If people died, could we replace them? No, humans weren't objects or weapons. This wasn't something like a war. 
It was an infinite competition for survival. And what we needed wasn't number, being consumed endlessly and heading to destruction. It was a select few with immortal strength, a hero who would stand tall against all odds and would defeat all enemies. I had no plan of saying that only I could do it. I had no plan of saying that anyone with the strength should do it. In fact, if someone forced me to fulfill the role, I would reject it with great displeasure. If someone like Brightman said head fulfill the role, I wouldn't even believe him. However, we needed to become stronger to protect the place we could stand. Before we all descend to a bottomless pit with nowhere to stand. This was a chapter where Shin's thoughts were made clear. Easily put, it explained Shin's point of view before we moved on. I don't know how the readers would take it, but I wanted to give the feeling that Shin had understood reality and the reason he should get stronger. It was also one of the hidden meaning behind the title. As everyone should already know, Sierra doesn't only have the ability to distribute abilities, but also her own ability. It's been talked about before. That she knew when and where monsters would appear and how strong they would be. She can see it through a vision of ability users and monsters fighting. In that case, it was only obvious that Sierra Keenex would know about what would happen at the Wyvern's Nest, since she was already there. With that, it's the end of the arc. Next is the long-awaited dungeon. Translator, TFWMC gets Emperor's Hockey. ED, doesn't Emperor's Hockey have the ability to knock people out? Translator, true. Chapter, 138. Using return, we left the Antelope Canyon without anyone knowing. With what happened in Britain, people surmised that Thunder Knight and the Flame which had an ally that could use mass teleportation. What was more troubling was that even in all the chaos, someone filmed us fighting the flame drake and spread it for the world to see. Perhaps. No, I was certain. It had to be Sierra Kinex's work. All I did was to fight the drake on a black-winged wyvern, so why were all the channels on TV talking about Thunder Knight? In fact, because I defeated the drake on a wyvern, my name had changed from Thunder Knight to Dragon Knight. All countries focused on Dragon Knight's identity and were shocked by Dragon Knight's strength. The fact that I was the strongest ability user seemed to be going around like an undeniable truth. To be honest, it was very troubling. It really felt like it wouldn't be weird if an organization was made. Thinking about how more troubling things would become if my identity became known, I vowed to hide myself more thoroughly. My father, of course, looked at me with envy. He was the world's greatest in terms of being unable to act his age. Cool, I'm going to obtain a god's true name too, son. Go ahead. Do you want a hint? I told you before, right? I could have missed something. Repeat it for me. I doubted hearing it for the second or third time would help, but when I explained all the circumstances where I obtained a god's true name, father let out air through his nose and ran to the dungeon. Didn't you say you were trying to make a breakthrough in your spearmanship? What happened to that, father? In addition, with this incident, mother had found out about Yiyun and Waya as well. Although Yua already knew about Yiyun and Waya, when she saw them on TV, she seemed even angrier. As Ludia lived a disciplined life, she fell asleep at 10, and at the latest, 11. After she started climbing the dungeon, she stopped clinging on to me 247. Now, she only held me until she fell asleep and shouted my name when she woke up, so I was quite free from. Eh. Why did I feel like nothing changed? In any case, with Ludia asleep, I was being interrogated by mother and Yua. So son, of the three of them, who's the real one? None. They're all friends. Just friends. Don't they smack you every time you say that? How did she know? When I opened my eyes widely, Yua let out a deep sigh, while mother laughed hysterically. Ahaha, that's so funny. I thought my son would die without ever dating a girl. When did he get so skilled? Not to mention, they're all so beautiful. Ehu, you're going to make my mouth rip from smiling too much. Why is mom so happy? I won't give appa to women like them. Never. Yua shouted then stomped up the stairs to her room. I was confused, but mother chuckled and spoke. It's about time Yua graduated from her appa too. I'm happy that you guys have such good relationship, but it's too much to be honest. 
you should really settle on one quickly. I won't say anything if you get married to Lydia now. To be honest, she's the most fair. Her personality too. Other than the fact that she relies on you a bit too much, she's kind. Although she can't cook yet, she's good at cleaning and doing the laundry. It felt weird hearing someone say that Lydia was kind. Well, since mother only met Lydia recently, it wasn't. Wait, what? Marrying Lydia. I sweated and explained to her. Mom, I'm only 21 now. What do you mean settle down? And Lydia? Not Polydia. That's what she asked me to call her. Isn't it nice? It's more friendly. Ah, that's not what's important. You shouldn't feign ignorance when a girl is openly telling you her feelings. That's the best way of getting hated. I properly declined them. What? Declined? Ehew, you don't know how lucky you are. Ah, uh, wait. I forcefully ended the interrogation. If Darkwing Latte was living anywhere near our house, my identity would be revealed to the whole world in a moment. As such, I moved her to the dungeon. Instead of the cramped mansion there was a new resident in a garden named Flame Drake, she was in a better place. It was resting place of the angels. Wow, it's Shin. The moment I arrived, Pleen noticed me instantly and ran to my embrace. As it happened every time I met Pleen, I had somewhat gotten used to her the softness of her body. Though, it was a lie. I mean, Pleen's attire was too light. Are you sleeping? What do you want to eat? Should I catch you a fish? Like her name suggested, Pleen won. Her name comes from Planetarium. I finally found out this chapter. That said, it'll still stick with Pleen since that sounds like Plan A, while Plane sounds like Plane as an airplane. Shaped her eyes like stars and looked at me, making it hard for me to decline. However, I first asked her about the new resident. Where's Latte? I don't know. She hates me. She keeps flying around. Hmm. Pleen took the chance to complain about Latte as she clung to me. Thinking the way Pleen liked to cling was exactly the reason why Latte didn't like her, I waited for Latte to come. As I thought, it seemed Latte could sense my presence too, as she soon flew down and landed with her wings folded. She was big no matter how many times I saw her. Are we going somewhere to fight, hero? No, you can rest a bit more. You too, Pleen. When dungeons start appearing on Earth, you'll both get busy. I've been expecting it ever since I joined Hero's side. Once we killed that Drake, it became too late to turn back. I will follow Hero. Mm, I like Shin, so I'll protect the people Shin likes. Monsters are bad, so I'll beat them up. Latte then looked down at Pleen and snorted. You are also a monster. I can't believe what you're saying, just because you fell heads over heels for a man. Eek. But you like Shin too. I only kneeled at the difference in our strength. Since I swore I would follow him, I would continue to do so, but that is it. Liar, liar. You like Shin too. Loretta said taming won't work if you don't like Shin. You bitch. If they really fought, Pleen would easily lose, so I had to protect her as I calmed Lottie down. Guys, don't fight and train your abilities. Please. Okay. Got it. TSK. If it's Hero's request, there's no choice. When I patted their heads, Pleen was openly happy, while Latte smacked her tail on the ground strangely. At least, it seemed she didn't hate it. Now that I was done with checking out how things were in the resting place of the angels, I had to return to my everyday schedule. Of course, that only meant one thing for me. It was dungeon exploring. For the record, there was a very simple reason that I didn't bring Latte and Pleen along to explore the dungeon. For Pleen, monsters on the ordinary floors weren't strong enough for me to need her, and monsters that were strong could resist Pleen's ability easily. Simply put, Pleen was still too weak. Thankfully, it seemed she was content with just singing in resting place of the angels. Although she was continuously growing her ability, she was still too weak to bring to real fights. That said, I suspected that I'd need to borrow her ability soon on Earth. As for Latte, 
I tried to bring her along once, but she was too big to freely fly in the dungeon. It was quite unfortunate. As such, I had to break through the 51st floor on Ryu's back. Before then, however, I wanted an answer from Loretta. Yes, Shin Nim. There's. 20 years left. For what? At Loretta's response, I asked her again naturally. With a face on the verge of crying, she answered. Until Earth's protective barrier disappears and all monsters realize that Shin Nim is the monster. There's 20 years. Until then? Wait. Hold on. I put my hand on my forehead. Wait, what? 20 years. When I asked Loretta about it before, why did she use an expression like a little while longer? Don't tell me she's joking right now. No, but she looks like she's about to cry. Is it really 20 years? Yes. There's only 20 years left. I'm sorry. This is why I didn't want to tell you. Loretta, how old are you this year? Yes, I'm too thou. Kayak. Rude, how rude. Why are you asking me that so naturally? I almost answered you. Hook. Loretta screamed. The punch she sent out glazed past my nose. What? 2000. This elf that looked younger than me was at least 2000 years old. Of course, I couldn't ignore the digits that followed. But, I see. With that, I understood. No matter how much medical science had advanced, humans currently could not live past the age of 150. Although 20 years were long for humans, for Loretta who lived for over 2000 years, 20 years could be relatively short. In any case, now that I knew, strength left my body. I fell on the ground in panic, and Loretta sat down next to me. She sobbed for a bit, and after seeing that I had fallen down, she blinked her eyes and looked at me. Sh, Shin Nim. Did my punch hit you? Oh no, it must have hurt a lot. If you think ITLL hurt a lot, don't swing your fist around. And don't worry, I wasn't hit. I was just. Relieved. Eh. Relieved? Loretta tilted her head adorably. How can you be relieved, hearing that there's only twenty years left? Well, if I have twenty years, I should be able to reach the end of this dungeon. No, I will do so for sure. Finding Loretta's stupefied expression cute, I laughed again. However, hearing my laughter, Loretta let out a dry cough and spoke with a stern expression. Shin Nim, this dungeon was here before I was even born. Back then, although the method of climbing was a bit different, the difficulty wasn't too different. You mean too thou? Something flashed before my eyes and a deep hole appeared in the dungeon's wall. Even my heroic strike could only leave a tiny gap in the wall. Loretta smiled sweetly, and I forced myself to smile back. What did you say, Shin Nim? One, seventeen years ago maybe. Was that when the dungeon was created? I answered as I sweated. Loretta looked satisfied at my answer. Hoo hoo, the dungeon was created long before I was born. In any case, many people challenged the dungeon during this time, but only three people managed to reach its end. But Ellos said no one had succeeded. Though, Loretta would know more about it. Hoo hoo, he's also right. After the dungeon changed to the method it now has, no one has managed to conquer the dungeon. To be honest, the past method was much easier and lax. Because of that, there were errors between achievements and the blessings given out, causing more worlds to. No, never mind. There's no need to think about it. I can hear you perfectly, though. I grinned, and Loretta also grinned. However, she was back to her stern expression in the next moment. The dungeon is strict. It is not a place that wantonly gives out strength to people. Shin Nim, are you saying you will conquer the dungeon in only twenty years? In that case, there's something else Shin Nim should know. What is it? When I tilted my head and asked, Loretta spoke with a stiff voice. Does Shin Nim still think that first dungeon is the most difficult dungeon? ICDS will continue for the next twenty years. Lies. If things will be peaceful for twenty years, I wouldn't have brought up the hero so early on, right? 
Look forward to the future development, everyone. Chapter 139 I paused at her question, then grabbed her shoulders and shouted. So there really is one. I knew it. Kayak. S.H. Shin Nim, it's still daytime. And not that I hate it. In fact, you're free to go ahead. Never mind that. That. Did you just consider my OK sign as something petty? Loretta, is there a dungeon higher than the first dungeon? Loretta grumbled and answered. There is. Only administrative guild masters like myself or explorers that have gone there know about it. What are the conditions? Before that, are you prepared? That dungeon certainly has higher rewards than all other dungeons, but the price you have to pay is equally high. Shin Nim might even regret going there. Just climbing the first dungeon might be better. I'm certain. Do you still want to listen? I became quiet at her words. Then, I somewhat realized why she brought it up in the first place. Thus, I asked. If I conquer the first dungeon, will I be able to defeat the world's enemy? I asked again. What if I clear the higher dungeon? If you can completely clear it. Probably. Then isn't the answer obvious? Right. Really, Shin Nim is. In what? No, nothing. Nothing at all. Loretta shook her heads at my question. The corners of her mouth was curled up to a smile, unlike before. At her extremely pleasant smile, I also smiled. Okay. If it doesn't work, they'll bring you back to the first dungeon even if I have to threaten the Lord. It's fine. They'll break through it with my strength. Okay, then they'll teach you how to get to beyond. Beyond? Yes. It is somewhere only first dungeon explorers can hope to reach. Even amongst them, only those with the greatest abilities, potential, and qualifications can enter it. As the reason for its existence is different than the other dungeons, it is called beyond. First condition. Being a first dungeon explorer. Second condition. Defeating all bosses one versus one. Third condition. Obtaining a god's true name. Fourth condition. Being acknowledged by an administrative guild master. Fifth condition. Being above gold rank. Sixth condition. Making achievements. It was truly a path of blood and iron. However, I had already completed most of them. Loretta telling me about Beyond signified that she acknowledged me, so there was only one left for me to fulfill. Is the sixth condition what I think it is? Like the achievements I've been making so far? Yes. It hasn't been revealed how many achievements you need to make, so I can't tell you when you'll be able to enter beyond. As such, Shin Nim has to focus on making achievements. Since you decided to climb beyond, it's better to go as soon as possible. Just like its name suggests, beyond is a dungeon that lies past the first dungeon. Every time you clear a floor on the first dungeon, you'll be able to challenge beyond. When you clear a floor in beyond, you'll return to the first dungeon. In other worlds, you'll be able to climb more in beyond the lower my level is. Exactly. Of course, since no one has succeeded in conquering the first dungeon, it's too early to worry about this, but Shin Nim really gives people hope. For example, if the first dungeon had 100 floors in total and I became a Beyond Explorer after clearing the first dungeon's 75th floor, then once I cleared Beyond's first floor, I would have to return to clear the first dungeon's 76th floor. Once I cleared it, I would be able to challenge Beyond's second floor. In that case, when I cleared the 100th floor of the first dungeon, I would be able to challenge the 26th floor of Beyond. But that would be it. I wouldn't be able to challenge Beyond's 27th floor even if I cleared the 26th. I wouldn't be able to conquer Beyond, being able to only conquer the first dungeon. Even if the first dungeon didn't end at the 100th floor, it was clear that becoming a Beyond Explorer later was disadvantageous. How unreasonable. Because no one has reached the end of Beyond, no one knows how many floors Beyond has. So don't worry about it too much and focus on the first dungeon. If it's Shin Nim, I believe Shin Nim will be able to enter Beyond before the 70th floor. I hope that's the case. Then, see you later. As Loretta advised me with a big smile, I also answered with a smile. 
Then, I left for the fifty-first floor, vowing to myself that I would one day reach beyond the first dungeon. You became level fifty-two. You obtained five bonus stats. You obtained the qualification to go beyond the first dungeon. Would you like to become an explorer of beyond? The moment you accept, you will be removed from the dungeon's ranking. Please choose carefully. This place is entirely different than the first dungeon, and those that pass this threshold may not go back. On the 51st floor shop, I looked at Loretta. She looked back and smiled sweetly. What's wrong, Shin Nim? You were fast today, too. To think you break through the 51st floor, which is full of trolls, in just five hours. Um. Loretta. Yes, Shin Nim. It looks like I got the qualification to go to beyond. What? I must say, Loretta's surprised expression was extremely cute. You became a beyond explorer. You can challenge beyond's first floor. Once cleared, you can challenge the first dungeon's 52nd floor and you cannot immediately challenge beyond's second floor. You made an achievement of becoming the fastest to enter beyond since the dungeon's founding. You obtained four skill points. Current skill points, eight. You became the current Beyond's third explorer. You are currently ranked third in Beyond. Beyond's explorer communication channel has been opened. The residence and resort in your possession has changed their affiliation to Beyond. After listening to the messages in a daze, I looked at Loretta, who was also in a daze. Loretta, what happened? Mm. I don't know. Loretta was too cheerful. When I sighed, she became startled and began to contemplate the matter seriously. She then came up with an answer. I think what Shin Nim did in another world as a dimensional mercenary, then defeating the drake that appeared on Earth had significant impact. Those two were acknowledged as great achievements. Yes. But you really are amazing. Fastest to become a dimensional mercenary, fastest to become a beyond explorer. If it's you, you might really do it. Don't flatter me too much. Ho ho. You don't know what I'm talking about yet. Loretta rejoiced with her hands together, but I was slightly scared at her eyes that seemed to be looking somewhere far away. Would she tell me if I asked? Or would she tell me to wait again? Suddenly feeling my heart tighten, I turned away. Startled, Loretta grabbed my sleeves. Shin Nim, what's wrong? What do you mean? I have to go to beyond now. Ah, uh, right. You surprised me, geez. Really. Don't disappear without saying anything. You have to properly say you'll be back. Loretta flapped her ears quickly as if she was angry. I was relieved. She was properly looking at me now. Then, it'll be back. Aight. Loretta tried to kiss me habitually, but as I was expecting it this time, I easily dodged to the side. Then. You received Queen Elf's blessing. For the next five hours, you receive the following effects, you are protected against all low-rank and mid-rank status effects. You can maintain your consciousness for five minutes after falling in half-dead state. Your luck increases by 100. All members of the fairy race will see you favorably. Eh. Didn't I dodge it just now? T that's. Seeing Loretta dodged my eyes as if something pricked at her conscience, I realized. It seemed these blessings didn't need to be applied with kisses. Loretta had always used blessings under the guise of kissing, and when I dodged her this time, she failed to kiss me, but the blessing had gone through. Dumbfounded, I murmured. You really kissed me just because you wanted to. I, I already told you. I'm kissing you because I love you. Even as she said that, she seemed embarrassed as she tried to cover her face with her ears. Of course, even with her long years, it wasn't possible. This person, or rather, this elf. Why was she so cute? Feeling the sense of unease I just felt disappearing, I reached my hand out to pat her head. Eh. Hmm, um, well, I appreciate it. It's just that I don't know what's what. To be honest, my head is already full because of the dungeon and the matter with being a hero. Sorry. You don't have to wait for me, so. S stupid. I'm extremely used to waiting. Even if I don't want to. For some reason, 
she called me stupid. Ah really? Really? So don't worry about something like that, and go. Just like that, Loretta chased me away. I didn't understand what just happened. Since thinking about it wouldn't help, I tilted my head. In the place where the stairway to the 52nd floor should be, a gray gate had appeared. Without much thought, I jumped into it. Commencing exploration of Beyond's first floor. You cannot stop exploring Beyond whenever you want. To give up and leave, your vitality must hit zero and you must be forced out to your home in the residential area or your world. You need one month to recommence exploration, and you cannot climb the first dungeon during this time. Loretta, before trying to kiss me, you should have told me about this. Though, even if you did, I would have gone anyways. But this means I won't be able to go back to Earth until I clear Beyond's first floor. In any case, the first impression of Beyond I had was that it was quite big. Also, its structure was a bit different than the dungeon floors I've climbed so far. Is it a maze? There were hard brick walls to my left and right. When I tried to attack it with my spear imbued with mana, it didn't budge in the slightest. In fact, the red bricks absorbed my mana and reflected it back to me. I could read the Manas movements and avoid the attack, but it was stronger than my original attack. It seemed the walls had strengthened my attack before reflecting it back. I would have to keep this in mind as I went on. Kwong. Then, I suddenly heard a rather familiar roar. Strange. I definitely heard this roar before. I tilted my head and walked forward. If I didn't, nothing would get done. Itchem, the sound is closer. The fact that I couldn't break the walls down stressed me greatly. On the other hand, I thought that this dungeon was more true to its role than the dungeon I've climbed until now. Slowly, I approached the source of the roar. As I walked, my increased intelligence clearly drew the maze's map in my head. As I understood the maze's structure little by little, I understood how far I would need to walk to meet the source of the roar. Kwong. This. Is a bit different than the other voice. I suddenly felt a chill down my back. Feeling uneasy, I immediately took out Gluttony Spear. Then, with one hand on the right wall, I slowly walked forward. I was certain. The source of the roar was up ahead. As I thought, when the wall came to an end, a large open area appeared. It was spacious enough for the flame drake to lie down. There, I found them. Orc Lord. My god, how long had it been? Orc Lord, it was an Orc Lord. The one that had helped me become a proper dungeon explorer. Glad to see him again, I raised my voice and they looked back at me. Their eyes were bright red. There are. Many Orc Lords. I found the source of the chill I felt. My god, there was a small conference being held here. But let's think carefully. Orc lords were bosses from the fifth floor. No matter how fancy their armors were or how much they exuded imposing auras, they shouldn't be able to win against me, who was level 52. Kwong. 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 Orc lord used war cry. All orcs are cleansed of negative status effects. All orcs temporarily become super armored. Their attack power increases by 50%. I couldn't help but think, don't tell me. The Orc Lord's war cries. Whenever one uses them, do the other's attacks go up. All the Orc Lords charged towards me. The ones that didn't use war cry shouted as they ran. Looking at them, I grinned. Then, I turned around and ran. It seemed I was underestimating Beyond too much. The third explorer referred to Shin becoming Beyond's third explorer. I bet no one thought had immediately go to the higher dungeon. This is what's called toik equality. Fast, fast. Also, there is something our clumsy Shin missed. I'm sure the readers will be able to pick up on it. Chapter, 140. I threw some useless items and tested their attack power. It wasn't as strong as I thought. It was just enough for the troll's bones I obtained on the 51st floor to become dust by touching their weapons. If I get hit even once, I'll die. I'll definitely die. Once I ran into them once, Orc Lord suddenly began to appear from all pathways. Once I got surrounded, 
it would be the end. I realized I had stepped off the wrong foot. I should have killed them the moment I saw them. This wouldn't have happened if I didn't run away. Kwong. Yeah, yeah, I got it, you bastards. Eat this. Confirming that an orc lord appeared in the path I was trying to charge through, I threw out a heroic strike. Although I managed to kill him, five more orc lords appeared behind him. Now that it had come to this, there was no other choice. You whack. You used crimson roar. Everything blazes as flames. Although I had not thought about it, the flames that began to burn everything continued to get stronger. It seemed the reflective property of the dungeon's walls had strengthened the flames. Of course, as the flames were created by Crimson Roar, they did not harm me, while they served as poison for the Orc Lords. Kwong. Hu, Human. However, even after taking Crimson Roar, which could be said to be my strongest area of effect skill, a few Orc Lords were still alive. If they were the same Orc Lord as the one on the fifth floor, it would not have been possible. It seemed their defense was much higher as well. Even so, Crimson Roar was still a powerful skill. After inhaling the smoke, the few that survived the flame staggered, and were then easily killed by Pika's thunder spears. Each of them gave 1000 gold. It was the same amount as what the fifth floor's orc lord gave even though Beyond's orc lords were much stronger, they still only gave 1000 gold. It was very infuriating. Huff, huff. It's been a while since I ran so hard. I didn't even have my elementals summoned. Pika, Ryue. Ugh, it smells burnt. Meat? Are you eating that? You'll get sick if you do, Ryue. First, materialize. Telling Ryue not to eat the orc lords once more, I checked the corpses of the orc lords, which were disappearing into particles of light. After gifting me gold, they were disappearing completely. I gritted my teeth at the sight. I could only use Crimson Roar once per day. As it was the same for Floor Master skills, I had to come up with a way that relied on my own strength only. No matter how confident I was in my spearmanship, against the Orc Lords, I couldn't continue to attack and retreat repeatedly. I could toy with just one or two Orc Lords, but since more Orc Lords always arrived when I found one, doing so would be foolish. No choice then. I have to use my crossbow. Silver bone crossbow, obtained on the thirtieth floor. I thought that I was too strong to use it now, but with spirit aura, any weapon will become powerful, regardless of its quality. Plus, I could use the fifty-first floor's troll bones as crossbow bolts for additional damage. It would be nice if I could use flame cartridge as well, but it only added the flame attribute and small explosions. As Pika's ability was much stronger, it wasn't useful at all now. It would be ideal to shoot crossbow bolts at their mouths, so they can't use Warcry. I can bait them. Pika shouted with confidence. With Spirit Aura's increased level, she could now control the trajectory of projectiles as well. I patted her head to thank her for letting me know. With this, I may have found a way out. Kwong. I've already killed dozens of them. Just how many of them are there? All right. Ruyue, Pika, let's go. Run. Do I run? Yeah, run. Auu. Ruyue kicked off the ground. With a potion in my mouth, I raised my crossbow. Pika, it'll give you as much mana as you need, so put lightning into the bolts like they're thunder spears. Hoo, okay. I really like Master lately. It feels like Master is filled with lightning from head to toe. No. Every strand of hair on Shin is ice cold. That's a compliment right? You were trying to compliment me, right? It seemed elementals thought of me strangely as my affinity to different elements got higher. As I broke through the pathway, I shot a bolt at an orc lord's head. Quack. Nice, Pika. The bolt went directly into the mouth of the orc lord as it flickered with lightning. There was no need to doubt Pika's ability. With that, I just had to raise my reaction speed so that I could attack the orc lords the moment they appeared. Quiakuk. Quiakak. I won't stop shooting until you guys shut up. Ryue continued to run. Once they used Warcry, 
they would continue running regardless of whether I shot a bolt in their mouth or up their ass, but as long as they didn't use war cry, they didn't have the temper to withstand the pain and shout. If other orc lords didn't appear, I could simply use elemental blade to cut them down. If they did, I just had to shoot bolts into their mouths too. Quagga gaga. Elemental blade. Can you stop making those weird noises? Shooting, slashing, shooting, shooting, slashing. Although simple, I had to make sure the bolts I shot did not miss their targets. If one accidentally hit the wall, it would change trajectory and fly back. If it hit me, even I would feel pain. 22 up ahead. Damn, there sure are a lot of them. Beyond's maze had a completely different structure than the first dungeons. Unlike the first dungeon, where I could just hunt monsters and move forward, Beyond had multiple pathways that twisted and turned. Monsters appeared in the pathways, but there were also spacious areas where a large number of monsters were gathered. The worst part was that they respawned rather quickly. In other words, if I got lost and went back to where I was, the monsters I defeated would have respawned. However, as I said before, my intelligence stat was preventing that from happening. Ack, damn it. Orc Lord used war cry. All orcs are cleansed of negative status effects. All orcs temporarily become super armored. Their attack power increases by 50%. If even a single orc lord succeeded in using war cry, like just now, I had to stop using my crossbow to shut them up. As they became super armored, it was impossible. I had to take my spear and aim at their vital spots, as I weaved through them on Ryue. It was the start of an exciting fight of cat and mouse. That said, if their number went over 30, I couldn't handle their increasing numbers with my crossbow or with elemental magic. As a result, I had to do what I had not done for a long time. Pika, materialize. I've been waiting for those words. Confirming the number of high-grade mana potions 379 in my possession, I materialized Pika. The elemental magic of a materialized elemental was incomparably stronger than when the elemental was unmaterialized. Of course, there were downsides to it as well. When materialized elementals got attacked, they would lose mana, and excessive damage might reverse summon the elementals. An elemental, it's an elemental. After appearing in midair with her elegant dress, Pika did not even have the chance to show off her beauty, as she swung around a lightning whip. Although orc lords charged toward her, as Pika could fly, they were unable to catch her. They can't get paralyzed, so you have to just damage them. I know. Pika's whip was strong enough to instantly burn the orc lord's defensive equipment, and it was fast. Her whip, which was condensed from her elemental power, weaved through the orc lords as it damaged them. Meanwhile, I secured our escape route and knocked down the orc lords that stood in its way. This damned area was half made of air and half made of orc lords. Master, the walls have amplification and reflect enchants. Oh, so those things are called enchants. I pretended to thank Pika for her currently useless piece of info, and continued to swing my spear. Then, a strange voice rang out in my ear. All right, with this, you'll take care of them at once. Thunder Dragon Wave. Ahem. Um, when I looked up, Pika's powerful lightning whip shot up past my head diagonally from below. Frightened, I jumped back, and the whip hit the ceiling, bouncing to the ground with greater strength, bouncing again and going through my legs. At the lightning whip's destination was an orc lord that was about to strike her. Quayak. The lightning whip easily tore through the orc lord's head and continued to fly forward. After hitting the wall again, it bounced back and hit another orc lord's arm. The whip continued to bounce around, hitting an orc lord's leg, then hitting Pika's body. Surprisingly, Pika looked even stronger. Hugh, it got more energy. The lightning whip then went through Pika's body, having gotten even stronger, and burned or detonated the orc lords one by one. It didn't matter that they were super armored. The whip, which endlessly strengthened itself, pierced through them without ever giving them the chance to counterattack. When it sometimes pierced through Pika's body, it only became stronger before continuing on to annihilate the orc lords. Me. I was frantically dodging Pika's whip. After some time, the orc lords gathering here to attack us dwindled until not many remained. 
Eventually, when I could no longer hear Pika's spirited shout and the flickers of her lightning whip. Done. Pika put down her whip refreshingly, like she just finished doing her laundry. The whip that had been bouncing around struck Pika's body and was completely absorbed by her. Pika's face was sparkling even brighter than when she first materialized, as she looked at me and winked. Didn't I do well, master? Why yeah. Since you don't get injured by your own weapon, you can even do that. Amazing. Hoo hoo hoo, right, I'm amazing. Kai, I can do it too. To be honest, I was surprised seeing Pika utilize the environment's special trait in her attack. Although I knew attacks got stronger when the walls reflected them, I didn't think to use that property as I needed to calculate the trajectory. After all, it wasn't my forte. However, after seeing it once, I could understand it more easily. It was just that I had not thought about it before. Now that I did, I understood how to reflect my attacks three or four times to amplify the damage. Any more could be a bit tricky as I would need to dodge the attack and calculate the trajectory again, but it wasn't impossible if I tried it once or twice. In fact, I already had a few trajectories in mind. I finally realized. If I didn't try to use my brain, it wouldn't be used. I was underestimating my intelligence too much. With all the bonus stats, my intelligence stat was now at 76. If I wanted, such calculations should be a piece of cake. Pika, you helped me realize something important. Thanks. Really? Until now, I thought I had fought rather intelligently. However, that wasn't the case. I had mistaken using the techniques I learned with my body and my reaction speed with using my intelligence. Right. Until now, I was able to get by with no problem with my superior ability. Rather than intelligence, technique and strength were more important in fights. However, from now, in beyond, that was no longer the case. If it wasn't for Pika, I would have had difficulty fighting them just now. The hint had been given to me already. The Stacking Orc Lord's War Cries The Dungeon Wall's Power of Reflection and Amplification I had wasted my effort when the answer was already there. To defeat the Orc Lords, I had to do the same thing they were doing. Using the wall's property, I had to amplify my attacks. Luckily, I even had a long-ranged weapon. Who? Good. Let's use my brain. I felt quite awkward saying it, but I ignored the awkwardness for now. What was important was to clear Beyond's first floor. It was important to utilize my potential. For a long time, I did not apply my intelligence stat in battles. Now was the time to right that mistake. Just like that, two weeks passed. I was still in Beyond's first floor. Look forward to how much Shin grew in two weeks. Chapter 141 Occasionally, orc lords dropped their meat. With a bit of expectation, I checked the meat's description. After finding out that eating it won't raise my stats, I burnt it decisively. After all, why would I eat orc meat if it didn't raise my stats? My inventory already had a hefty amount of food. The orc lord meat was likely there for explorers that didn't prepare food beforehand. If it wasn't, it was just that. Compared to the first dungeon, Beyond was incredibly big. Plus, other than the attack reflecting walls, there were tons of other traps, making it much different than the first dungeon, where I could simply charge forward on Ryu's back. Here, I had to constantly observe my surroundings, look for traps, and hunt orc lords. New pathways and orc lords appeared endlessly. Because I had to keep the maze's map in mind and accurately calculate the trajectory of the crossbow bolts bouncing around, I felt like I was overtaxing my brain. Of course, I got some benefits as well. Crossbow marksmanship broke through low rank and became mid ranked. Perhaps because calculating the bolt's trajectory gave a lot of experience, it was already level 2. My elementalist skills also grew greatly. More difficult situations led to increased experience. Whoever thought of this system had to be a sadist. I shot a bolt forward. Ite. Cack. In the blink of an eye, the bolt bounced around from wall to wall, collecting more power, before it pierced the head of an orc lord that just made its appearance. As it had not used war cry, it became paralyzed after taking lightning damage. 
I leisurely swung my spear and killed it. I had fought orc lords here for two weeks. Now, they were no longer my match. It was the result of repeated learning. Once I understood the dungeon structure and orc lords, it wasn't that hard to conquer them. When I heard an ord lord's footsteps, I would shoot my bolt out preemptively. As they all had the same size, as long as I knew where the footsteps were coming from, I could figure out where and when they would pop out. Using the volume of their footsteps, I calculated the distance between us and shot my bolt out so that it would hit their face. The result was as I just showed with that orc lord. Hunting a single orc lord was very easy. When there were two or three, the calculations got a bit trickier, but I could still manage it. The problem was when there were over twenty of them. Qua. Quang. Human. Ack, those bastards are doing that shit again. On the first floor, there were spacious areas, which were always filled with dozens of orc lords. It wasn't even big enough for them to all lie down and sleep, so I didn't know what the hell they were gathered for. Almost as if they were suffering from insomnia, they all waited with their eyes wide open. Once they saw me, they waved their hands in greeting and shouted. Seeing the orc lords swinging their glaives, which never dropped, was infuriating to say the least. TSK, like I'd let myself be hit by your crappy spears. However, if I fought them straight on, it would only be my vitality that is reduced to zero. I fell back, dodging their charges. Just like I had been doing for the past two weeks, I raised my crossbow and shot out hundreds of bolts towards the walls, as I continuously moved. The troll bone bolts ran out on the third day, and I was subsisting on skeleton bones. But now, I was running low on those as well. Once I completely ran out, I would have to resort to elemental magic, which took three times as much mana. Considering the number of mana potions I had left, it wasn't a wise choice. Kohak. Kook. The bolts I shot out bounced around without hitting each other, then assaulted the orc lords. I ducked or moved to the side to dodge the flying crossbow bolts as I shot even more bolts. Ruyue was, of course, dematerialized. It wouldn't be funny if she was hit by my bolts. Midrank crossbow marksmanship became level 3. Even without imbuing mana, you can damage spiritual bodies. After continuously shooting bolts and cutting down orc lords for 5 minutes, the orc lords were wiped out. My crossbow marksmanship also leveled up. I couldn't remember exactly when, but I became able to hit spiritual bodies with my spear when my spear technique became high ranked. I didn't know whether my spear technique affected it in any way, but I became able to attack spiritual bodies with crossbows at just mid rank level 3. In truth, it was quite unexpected. It meant I had already become skillful enough to apply the principles of spear technique in marksmanship. Damn it, somebody, somebody find my identity. I'm a spearman. It was then. I heard the ground tremor from far away. It gave me a sense of unease. Here, other than me, only the orc lords were able to make the ground tremor. At the same time, the dungeon walls shook and began to transform. The twisted pathways became straight, and new pathway opened up. It seemed to be about two kilometers long. It was a distance I could easily cover within 30 seconds, but that wasn't what was important. Gate. There, I saw the same gate I used to cross over to beyond. I tried to regain my composure, as I felt the mana emanating from the gate. At the same time, I dispersed my mana out to check for any traps on the way. The result they were both clean. The gate was real, and there were no traps. Mana detection and mana dispersion were both things I learned in the past two weeks. I had naturally developed a habit for them as I constantly used them to locate the damned orc lords and to check for traps. Although they were so basic that they didn't even register as skills, they were probably my biggest gain. In any case, now that I knew the gate was real, I knew what to do. I have to kill all the orc lords. Kuong. Human meat. This is the only chance to eat it. There was a simple reason that the pathway became straight. It was to make me unable to dodge the orc lord's rush. About a hundred orc lords came from behind, and there were even more coming from the front. As expected, they all shouted war cries as if they were competing, 
and in this narrow space, they amplified each other to a horrifying extent. My ear rang from their repeated shouting, and their endlessly amplified spirit almost made my body stiffen. Cool. I didn't think I would have trouble moving my body. Could it be? Was the reason that the maze continued endlessly to help me grow my ability to handle them all at once? Looking at the walls that still had their reflect and amplification property, I became certain. However, as the pathway changed shape, I had to recalculate the trajectory from the beginning. That said, once I defeated all the orc lords and arrived at the gate, I could proudly say that I completely cleared this place. Even though I had gotten used to crossbow marksmanship in the past two weeks, I didn't think there would be such an annoying final hurdle. Thinking how sadistic the person that made this dungeon is, I shouted. Crimson Roar. As the orc lords were all clumped up together, I easily sent them to their death with Crimson Roar. Then, I jumped into the gate and left beyond. Hee hee, with such an easy method of getting through, why would I trouble myself and use my brain? You conquered Beyond's first floor. You can challenge the dungeon's 52nd floor. Your maximum HP and MP increase by 2%. You obtained 5 bonus stats. Experience has been added to skills you frequently use to progress through Beyond's first floor. Mid-rank crossbow marksmanship became level 4. Your bolt's piercing power becomes greater, and they can pierce through two enemies at once. Mid-rank spirit mastery became level 9. Taking a step forward in handling all souls connected to you, it becomes easier to feel a sense of unity with them and their destructive power increases. Mid-rank spirit aura became level 7. Spirit aura's power increases and less mana is required to maintain it. Mid-rank elemental control became level 7. You can draw out the power of your contracted elementals almost perfectly. Mid-rank elemental contract became level 7. Your contracted elementals become even more powerful. Just by clearing Beyond's first floor, I gained incredible rewards. First, I obtained the same amount of stat points as when I leveled up. Then, the skills I used to fight the orc lords jumped up in experience. I could feel that I was much stronger than I was just a moment ago. Beyond was truly amazing. Of course, as great as the rewards were, Beyond was huge, the monsters were stronger, and the traps were annoying. It would only get harder as well. However, now that I tasted the fruit of my efforts, I vowed to conquer this place. There was someone fanning my resolution. It was Loretta, who was sweating and fanning me with a folding fan. Shin Nim, don't be mad, please. I'm not mad. I just think that you could have explained more about Beyond in the time you spent fooling around. F fooling around. That was the most important thing to me. I had to restock on mana potions and repair my weapon, but I decided to put it off for later. It'll be off then. Because of a certain someone, I didn't go home for two weeks, so my parents must be mad. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Shin Nim, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Although I couldn't go outside while I was trapped in beyond, the explorer's communication channel still worked. More importantly, phones still worked. It was a mystery I would never solve. Although my parents and friends were shocked when I told them I couldn't go back for a while, since I could call them, they didn't worry about me that much. Except Lydia, that is. After returning, I said hello to mother and father, took a shower, and got changed. Immediately afterwards, Lydia came back from the dungeon in a hurry and embraced me. Because her pale expression scared me, I couldn't force her off of me. Because I disappeared for two weeks, I couldn't make any excuses either. Especially because I didn't say anything beforehand. In Lydia's perspective, it could be seen as me leaving her behind. TSK, just when her condition was getting better. You won't get off, right? Un. Like a kitten, Lydia rubbed her face against my arm and marked her territory. How did that proud princess become like this? With that thought, I patted her head in pity. Mother, who suddenly appeared in that timing, gave me a thumbs up. I became certain that mother had an ability I wasn't aware of. After a spending a somewhat comfortable and somewhat itchy time together, Lydia regained her composure and suddenly said something absurd. Ah, our guild house's environment changed. What? The environment changed. 
Un. If you go out, it's dark, regardless of whether it's day or night. But the area I walked became a bit brighter. Also, there was a message that said something like zero. Five percent of Beyond's residential area being explored. Ah. Uh. Mm. -hmm. After listening to her, I remembered. When I became a Beyond Explorer, I had heard a message saying that my residence and resort had changed their affiliation to Beyond. My guild house had been sent to a strange place. Beyond's first floor, clear. The will show Marianas garden, flying through unidentified space. P.S. I added some information on crossbow marksmanship. Skills level up messages don't only show the result of the skill's growth. They also show effects shared between skills. That is, without high rank spear technique, crossbow marksmanship being leveled 3 wouldn't be able to attack spiritual bodies. Chapter, 142. Immediately afterward, I headed to the guild house with Lydia. In the hall, I met Shuna for the first time in quite a long time. Ah, Crown Prince Nim, Lydia. H. Hello. Hello, Miss Shuna. You can just call me Shuna. You don't have to be so formal. See can I also say Shin Nim? You want me to stop being formal, but you want to address me so respectfully. Shuna was hard to understand. However, since she was cute, it was pleasant talking to her. She was more cute, rather than beautiful. She looked good with Lydia, who exuded a more noble and mature aura. Then, Shuna. Yes, Shin Nim. Kaya, I called him by his name. I was surprised by how happy she was, but I didn't say anything as my instincts were warning me to not question it. More specifically, I had a feeling that Lydia might kill Shuna. You must have been surprised because the guild house suddenly moved. Can we still get to the residential area? Yes. We can go to the first dungeon's residential area just like before. Also. Also. Shuna stretched her arms out to the side and shouted. We can also go to the second, third, and fourth dungeon's residential areas. What? Ah, of course, it's only the residential areas, not the dungeons themselves. I was confused for a moment but I soon understood. I knew this place's affiliation changed to beyond, but I didn't think it would let me go other dungeons' residential areas. Eh. Hold on, does that mean? An absurd thought crossed my mind, and I was then shocked that it wasn't as absurd as I initially thought. Did this guild transcend the first dungeon? What does that mean, Shin Nim? It means we might get some new members, Shuna. Shuna clapped in response, but Lydia didn't look so happy. My dream of a newlyweds home. I can hear you. And that's not it. To be honest, I wanted to explore Beyond's residential area, but it was more important to confirm whether my conjecture was right. I pulled up my friend list and immediately took action. As a result, in less than twenty minutes, a few people gathered at our guild house. Ooh, is this the first present my son is giving me? No, father. This is my mansion. I won't be giving it to you, so stop dreaming. Amazing. I can really enter. Wow, this is Shin Nim's mansion. How cool. Kong Shin, how did you climb the dungeon to be able to afford a mansion like this? It's nice now that we're all here. Marianas garden became noisy. Shuna became flustered seeing them for the first time and hid behind my back, while Lydia linked her arm with mine and frowned. As you guys know, this is my friend Lydia. The pretty, pink-haired girl is Shuna, Lydia's friend. They're both guild members. Nice to meet you. Imwaya Mastaford. He. Hello. Shuna easily fell for Waya's charm and sociability. With Waya serving as the mediator, the awkwardness quickly disappeared and Shuna learned to talk with others. However, Lydia seemed unhappy for some reason and continued to stay by my side. Of course, there was a reason I called them over. It was impossible before, but it was possible now. It was to create a guild that transcended the first, second, third, and fourth dungeons. Since they all wanted to join a guild, things went smoothly. Other than me, only Waya owned a residence. Since she adamantly said she wanted to join my guild, there was no problem whatsoever. 
It felt like it was just yesterday that she said she wanted to make her own organization, but now she was acknowledging me as the guild master. It was the same for Samire, who happily joined my guild. That said, a lot had changed since the first time the communication channel opened. Of course, I had changed a lot too. Although I thought it wasn't necessary to form a group, after partying with Waya a couple times, I had changed my mind. I had created the guild on my own accord and invited others since I became a Beyond Explorer, but even if it was Waya standing in my position, I would have happily joined her guild. The biggest reason I refused her offer back then was that I couldn't trust her. Half a year had passed since then, and things were a bit different. I trusted Waya and I trusted Samir. It was the same for Walker, who was tied by a contract. We were stronger together, and as dungeon explorers, we could trust each other. The guild would only bind us together more. Guild revival became D rank. When challenging event dungeons or event raids, when five or more guild members are present, all guild members' abilities will be increased by 5%. Guild members, Kong Shin Guild Master, First Gold Beyond, Kong Yunggong First Gold, Su Yiun First Gold, Poludia Gren A were First Silver. Shuna Aran Lahita First Silver, Waya Eleni Mastaford Second Gold, Minami Violet Sumire Second Gold, Edward Walker Third Gold. Total, 8. Now, it was more like a guild. Seeing the list of guild members, I smiled. Walker had also broken through the 50th floor. With this, couldn't we be called elites? Plus, I liked there our abilities increased when five or more of us were together. Event dungeons and event raids were on earth as well. Together, our chance of survival would increase. I wish Loretta would have told me about this sooner. Ooh, when my vitality hits zero, is this where it'll come back to? How nice. Shin, you'll prepare a room for me next to yours, right? Hoo-hoo. Ah, I call the other side. Humph, I'm going to live in Shin's room. As the guild master, I'm claiming an entire hallway to myself, so stop dreaming. Ignoring the girls' complaints, I assigned them their rooms. When I did, keys were given to them, binding the rooms to them entirely. It was the feature of a guild house. Since the mansion had over 100 rooms, giving private rooms to the guild members wouldn't have any problems. Oi, Kong Shin. What's that? What, it's just a giant iron boar and a flame drake. You're using those precious things as decorations. You're as amazing as always. While everyone was focused on the inside of the mansion, Walker was looking at the garden. The giant iron boar was now seven, eight meters, making it awkward to even call it giant. The flame drake corpse was also shrinking. It wasn't that mana was leaving the corpses. Now that I could better detect mana, I could clearly feel it. They were being compressed. I didn't know what they were working so hard for even as corpses. I just knew that Marianas garden wasn't a normal space. Since it looked like they were making themselves more expensive, I decided to just let them be. Alright, there's something we need to do first. Although everyone looked like they wanted to explore the mansion more, I gathered them together. We need to find out what's outside. Monsters? Monsters can't appear in the residential area. But since Lydia said she felt a strange presence, there might be something else. Don't scare me. Waya grabbed onto my sleeve as she said that. Thinking back to the time she was scared by the spiders, it seemed she was rather weak-hearted. Lydia looked mad when she saw Waya, but she soon calmed down. You've improved, Lydia. However, feeling my body getting heavier, I looked back. Yiun and Shuna were also grabbing onto me. I smiled at them kindly and spoke. All of you, get off of me. We left the garden. It was truly dark. Because of the thick fog, we couldn't see far ahead either. However, when we walked forward, the fog disappeared. Do you want to split up? Yeah, let's split into two teams. Contact us periodically or if you find anything. I went to the right with Minami, Lydia, and Walker. I dispersed my mana as far as I could to increase my detection range, when Minami asked me. Shin Nim, you just expanded your aura outward, right? Yeah. By dispersing my mana, I can expand my senses. 
Wow, amazing. If it's okay, can you teach me how? Sure. We're both guild members, so I can teach you later. Thank you. Ah, and you don't have to be formal. You can call me Samire too. Oh okay. Now that I thought about it, I had not talked to Minami, or rather, Samire, much. When we met in Young Dunpo to clear the event dungeon, she seemed impressed by my strength and continued to address me with Nim in respect. I had seen sparkling eyes like hers often. The martial artists, who respected father, often had such eyes. Considering her strength and attitude towards martial arts, she might be a martial artist herself. I heard you learned martial arts from Yungun Ajushi, but you're stronger than him now, right? No, I'm a step behind father in terms of the depth in martial arts, but overall. I should be stronger. I knew it. Burdensome. Sumire's sparkling eyes and Lydia hugging my arm like she wanted to break it were burdensome. Wait, hold on. Walker, did you feel that? I did. It looks like a barrier of some sort. I expanded my senses, but they were cut off like they collided into something. I dispersed my mana in all directions, checking where my senses were cut off and how far they could reach. The fog in the area my senses reached also disappeared. The ground revealed a stone floor, while a huge wall stood in the distance. Beyond it, I saw a medieval castle similar to my own mansion. After that, my mana was cut off completely. Amazing. You're really amazing, Shin Nim. Ho ho. Samire complimented me and Lydia got happy in my place. I didn't know why. What do you think that is? A new dungeon? There are event dungeons in residential areas too. I don't know. I feel like that's. Some iron Lydia thought the castle could be an event dungeon. However, after observing the outline of the castle walls, Walker proposed. Oi, Kong Shin. Isn't that a mansion like yours? Almost as if to prove that his conjecture was right, a voice rang in my ear. It was the voice of a beautiful, young man. I realized after I heard the voice. It was coming from Beyond's communication channel. Go back, third explorer. I have no intention of dealing with you. You are. Excuse me. I just came here, so I was exploring the residential area with my companions. Perhaps interested in what I said, he became silent for a moment. Just when I thought he no longer wanted to talk, his voice rang out again. A guild master, I see. I was once also interested in such childish games. In any case, go back. What you desire isn't here. Go west. You'll find some treasures there. Thank you for telling me. Well be off then. Wait. You must have been acknowledged by an administrative guild master. Who is it? It's Fairy Garden's master, Loretta. Is that so? His silence continued. I sensed something from his silence. Could it be that he is? She is. No. With that, I was certain. No, it's nothing. Second explorer is also listening. It's fine, go back. Feeling strange, I turned back. He was my senior as he entered beyond before me. Although he sounded young, he must have lived for much longer than me. Perhaps, he was Loretta's. I can't understand why I'm feeling so weird. What's wrong? Did you use your mana too much? Are you okay? Shin Nim. And no, I'm fine. Let's go. That was another explorer's house. He said there's something to the west, so let's go there. How kind of him to tell us. Samir, Ludia, and Walker followed after me. I still felt weird. Loretta must have known, right? Then why didn't she tell me about it? No, it was probably me that was weird. There was no doubt about it. Whether Loretta's first love was here or not, it had nothing to do with me. After five minutes, we got a report from the team that went the other way that they found something. Guild Revival has absorbed Earth's explorers. This is the start of a legend. What did the other team find? Find out. The author refers to the guild as Guild Revival instead of Revival or the Guild, Revival. 
I thought of changing it to just Revival, but I decided to just go with Guild Revival as it comes up often and seems to be a better fit. Basically just saying Revival loses the Guild aspect the readers know it's a Guild, but people listening don't. Saying the Guild, Revival is slightly inaccurate, and also has way too many commas the author already has a billion clauses and whatnot. Chapter, 143. It looks like an event dungeon. Let's go. Pointing at the mansion surrounded by thorn-covered walls, father shouted. I retorted shortly. Let's go back. No, why? Walker answered in my stead. Kong Young-gong, this is a mansion. It belongs to one of the two other explorers Kong Shin talked about. What, it isn't an event dungeon. Father shouted in shock as he touched the tightly shut iron gate. Immediately afterward, the mana flowing through the iron gate bounced his hand off. Father really was an idiot. At the same time, a voice rang in our ear again. It was the Beyond Communication Channel. Don't. Come. In. The cold, snapping voice belonged to a woman. I couldn't help but sigh. To think the second explorer was also staying in the mansion. Sorry for my companion's rudeness. He thought it was an event dungeon. It'll take him back with me immediately. Sorry. Don't ever, come back. Don't, bother me. Just by talking for a bit, I immediately understood. The way this woman talked easily exhausted people. We'll be living together in the residential area, so how could I not come back? Even so, I told her what she wanted to hear. Understood. We'll be going back now. Sorry for troubling you. After apologizing to her, I glared at father, then brought everyone away from the mansion. Before I was about to leave, however, she asked me. Did your world fall? I see. She continued. If you think you'll die, tell me. I want to buy your corpse. It's not for sale. And what do you mean, when I think you'll die? All these seniors are annoying. The treasure the first explorer talked about was indeed that. Located in the west were event dungeons. Right, there were more than just one. They were sprawled across the field in the form of gates. There was nothing beyond them, so gates of mysterious event dungeons were the only things that were here. This had to be the treasure he talked about. Looking at the event dungeon gates scattered about, I wondered if the other dungeons' residential areas also initially had gates to event dungeons. It would be strange if only Beyond's residential area had event dungeons, and since I had entered an event dungeon in Fairy Garden, I thought it was a possibility. All right, we've looked around, so let's go back. Yeah, let's go. I'm hungry. There were food ingredients in the mansion's storehouse. I can cook something up. I wanted to treat everyone to a meal, so this is the perfect opportunity. HM, the new daughter from Japan has good manners. Shin, father recommends her as the new daughter. H how could I be Shin Nim's? Rather than that, I want to be Shin Nim's disciple. Don't marry a girl without her consent, father. No one objected to my decision of going back. We exchanged small talk and turned away from the gates labeled SS rank. Just like that, our exploration of Beyond's residential area ended. First explorer bastard, they'll get my revenge one day. As I somewhat expected it when I saw trolls on the 51st floor, large humanoid monsters seemed to appear in 51st through 55th floors. Following trolls were minotaurs. They didn't have insane regenerative power like the trolls, but the minotaur's bone axes were huge and powerful. After I broke through the 52nd floor in three hours, I challenged the 52nd floor again. It was because the minotaur's sharp bones were perfect to be used as crossbow bolts. Although beyond second floor could be different than the first floor, it was better to restock on bolts than to regret not doing so later. Shin Nim, your eyes are slightly different now. My eyes? When I returned to the floor shop to rest after spending a whole day collecting minotaur bones, Loretta suddenly spoke after staring at me intently. Different how? Hmm, they've gotten slightly more serious. They were always serious, but now they look like they're focused on one thing. Hoo-hoo, it seems beyond wasn't easy. It took two weeks for a reason. 
there were many difficulties and a lot I had to think about. With Shin Nim's level, two weeks is a miracle. Loretta, um. Yes. No, it's nothing. When I stopped in the middle, Loretta looked shocked. Sure, Shin Nim is hiding something from me. Things I'm hiding from Loretta. There are lots of them. Hook. W what are they? Hurry, hurry up and tell me. I'll listen to them all, even if I have to stay up the entire night. Women. It's about women. I won't tell you. I have to go back to collect more minotaur bones. Shin Nayim. Maybe I didn't do such a good job of evading the answer, as Loretta clung to me with teary eyes, almost making me forget what I wanted to say. Just because it was beyond, it didn't mean that different monsters appeared on each floor. When I arrived at the second floor, worrying that I might need to fight Wendigos on the tenth floor, I tilted my head when I saw more orc lords. Heh, their shouts are the same too. Just like on the first dungeon, the orc lords on the second floor were stronger than the orc lords on the first floor. However, as the wall's amplification was also stronger, it didn't pose much of a problem. It was just annoying that orc lords began to throw their weapons. Of course, as they were stronger, being hit by their weapons would instantly kill me. With their weapons' trajectories on top of the bolt's trajectories, there were more to calculate. However, once I got used to it in a couple of days, I thought of a way to kill them even quicker taking their glaive's trajectories into account. Since they threw their weapons in predictable trajectories, just by minding my position when they appeared, I could get their glaives to bounce three or four times and attack them. However, there were cases where their weapons continued to bounce around after all the orc lords died, threatening my life. I had to use divine speed to dodge these. In the end, it only took ten days to clear beyond second floor. Like last time, Crimson Roar did most of the work towards the end. Maybe. I'm a genius. Master is talking like an arrogant young master. Shin is cool. Around the time I cleared beyond second floor, it was the time for college finals. After thinking for a bit, I decided to take a leave of absence. Once I got into beyond, I wouldn't be able to leave for several days. Although I could still go to college while I was climbing the first dungeon, it was impossible for beyond. Between school and dungeon, the latter was obviously more important. After all, going to college was only to satisfy mother's wishes and to give myself a proper outward identity. Even mother seemed to have changed her mind since I came back from America, as she said I could do whatever I wished about school. However, when I told Yiyun about taking a leave, she pouted and took a leave as well. I'm going to focus on the dungeon too. I'm going to obtain a god's true name and go to beyond. No, that's not something you can get so easily. You should think about it more carefully. I did. I carefully thought about my future and plans for making a family. No, I'm certain you didn't think carefully after hearing that. There's no way well become family. You can't say that for certain. So I'm going to do my best. Damn, where did the timid and unsociable girl go, and where did this straightforward and optimistic girl come from? Although her unyielding mindset was burdensome, it was an extremely effective mindset to have to quickly improve as an explorer. Plus, no matter how much I tried to stop her, it was too late. Her leave had already been approved. Yiyun started to grind the 50th floor boss for frozen crystals, as elixirs finally began to drop for her. She should have had difficulty resisting Wendigo's freezing energy. But using her uniquely high mana resistance and a bunch of anti-freezing energy items she bought from the floor shop, she managed to defeat the Wendigo three times every day. I would be lying if I said I wasn't proud of the effort she was putting in. If her decision to go all out in climbing the dungeon was to let me see her more favorably, it was an incredibly smart decision. No, I shouldn't fall for it. As for beyond, the third floor was slightly different than the previous floors. The monster I had been expecting to eventually appear had appeared. It was the Wraith Queen, and of course, there were more than just one of them. These half-transparent apparitions wore dreary dresses, where spiders seemed to dwell. Seeing them fly around and scream in groups was quite the spectacle. Here, I came to experience a very odd situation. Kaya. Kayak. Human, living human. 
Wraith Queen used Vengeful Spirit's Wail. With high magic, charm, and luck stats, you resist the confusion and fear status effects. Wraith Queen used Vengeful Spirit's Wail. Succubus Pupil reflects the status effect. Kayak. Humans, too many humans. There are too many humans. Save me, save me. Wow. Once they fell and trembled, the Wraith Queens were rather cute. I mean, easy to take care of. As my magic, charm, and luck stats were high and I had raised my soul guard to level 5, I could easily cancel Wraith Queen's vengeful spirit's wails. Since I had also had an earring specializing in mental status effect defense, Beyond's third floor became extremely easy for me. Although Wraith Queens could also summon wraiths and shoot ectoplasm arrows, the wraiths died from a single swing of my spear and ectoplasm arrows only helped me kill them quicker, as they bounced off the walls like the Orc Lord's glaives. However, if I didn't have Soul Guard or if its level was low, I would have had to use Orc Lord's war cry every day, running around for 5 minutes, then hiding for the other 23 hours and 55 minutes. Beyond's third floor was undoubtedly a place to test one's mental or status effect defense. Though, since there were still sleeping gases, poisonous swamps, poisonous arrows, dark areas, and ice and lightning traps, it did a fine job tormenting the explorer in multiple other ways. Considering the first dungeon structure, I expected orc lords to appear on the third floor, but only wraith queens appeared on the third floor. I realized then. Even in the first dungeon, there were multiple occasions where the monsters that appeared on the first and second floors were separate from monsters that appeared on the third floors. The fourth floors would then have a combination from both, and the fifth floors would have strengthened versions of them. If Beyond worked similarly, I would have to fight both Orc Lords and Wraith Queens on the fourth floor, and fifth floor could have monsters that took the strengths of Orc Lords and Wraith Queens. Monsters that could use both mental and physical attacks. What kind of hellish monster would that be? Thankfully, my mental defense was extremely solid. However, I couldn't keep following the dungeon. Now that I somewhat knew what I would have to face, I wanted to smack the dungeon on the back of its head. As such, I sent a message using the guild communication channel. Everyone, I won't be able to see you for a while. And no, Shin, don't. It's my fault. I'm sorry, please come back. I won't be selfish anymore. I won't secretly crawl into your bed either. As expected, Lydia started by apologizing. Why? Did something happen? Can I help somehow? Also, Paludia, who did you say crawled into Shin's bed? That's great. I won't have to see your face, how for to. Kohak. Waya and Walker also responded as I expected. However, Father's response was surprising. Are you training? Father. He found out instantly. I knew you were troubled because your spearmanship wouldn't improve recently. Do you need father's help? No, I'm trying to do it by myself, father. Hmm, I see. Right, you are a proper martial artist now. I want to help Shin Nim too. But my attainment in spearmanship is still too low. Whenever Samire had time, she was learning spearmanship from me. Shin, did I do something wrong? Like father said, I'm just going to train. It's not because of you, so don't worry. How long will you be gone for? I don't know. It might be a while though. Un, I'll be patient. But if it's too long, then I'll obtain a god's true name before you come back. Gee good luck, Shin Nim. Yiyun interrupted Lydia and shouted with spirit. Shuna also chimed in to cheer me on. With a grin, I replied. I'll leave the communication channel open, so we can always talk. Don't worry too much. If you obtain what you want, let's have a spar when you come back. Sure, father. After responding confidently, I got up from the place I was resting. The wraith queens that were flying around screamed and charged toward me the moment they saw me. I raised my spear and aimed it towards them. I planned on only using my spear to fight the Wraith Queens. Ah, and Peruta Circuit as well. The reason was simple. Against the Wraith Queens, I could freely use my spear without worrying about dying, and in here. In here. 
Sorry father, but it seems skill experience goes up twice as much in here. They'll come visit with Peruta's spear techniques. Chapter, 144 There were two skill experience calculations in Beyond. The first was when I used skills while fighting Beyond's monsters. I didn't know whether it was because they were floor master class, because there were so many of them. Or because it was beyond special characteristic, but skill experience undoubtedly increased more compared to when I used skills in other places. For example, crossbow marksmanship had soared in levels, and by the time I cleared beyond second floor, it became mid-rank level 6. The second was when I cleared beyond's floors. The skills I mainly used to clear the floors increased exponentially. Because of it, Elemental Control, Spirit Aura, and Elemental Contract had all risen to mid-rank level 8. Although I wanted to raise their levels more, I wanted to increase my Spear Technique levels more. Peruta said I would have the qualification to learn his Spearmanship when my Peruta Circuit became level 7 and I mastered high rank Spear Technique. His Spear Techniques were able to deal irrecoverable wounds to the Demon Army Commander, endlessly attack by continuously recovering mana, and both attack and defend at the same time. To me, who had lived three quarters of my life without knowing mana, he seemed like a martial god. I wanted to learn his skills. This desire was as strong as my desire to climb to the dungeon. If there was another skill I wanted to raise using this opportunity, it was Soul Guard. The Wraith Queen's Vengeful Spirit's Wail was an extremely strong mental status effect magic. Just by blocking it, Soul Guard's skill experience would go up by a lot. Beyond's third floor was full of such wailing nunims. After I used skill points to raise Soul Guard to level 5, I was having trouble training it, so I couldn't let go of this opportunity to easily train Soul Guard. Kayak. Wraith Queen used Vengeful Spirit's Wail. With high magic, charm, and luck stats, you resist the confusion and fear status effects. Eat this. Putting great care to direct the flow of mana from Peruta circuit to my spear, I struck the Wraith Queen's face with my spear. The basis of the attack was Tempest, which used up 300 mana. However, Tempest was actually a technique to shoot out the uncontrollable rotational force. In other words, it was an incomplete technique. The true Tempest was different. The rotational force had to be brought out more naturally while being controlled perfectly. To be honest, I didn't know what it meant. Kia. Stop using ectoplasm arrows. One of Wraith Queen's specialty was shooting out dozens of ectoplasm arrows at once. Although I could just dodge them, because they bounced around, I had to move around to dodge them even when the Wraith Queen died. It was extremely annoying. Can't they stop using suicide attacks? Ruyue, freeze only the Wraith Queen's mouths. Pika. When you see a Wraith Queen, first electrocute her. T that sounds fun. I don't like this place. Those women's breasts are too big. Since I couldn't slack off on my elementalist skills, I had my elementals summoned and on guard against the Wraith Queens. Without the Orc Lords, I could leisurely raise my skills experience. I doubt another chance like this would come, so I had to do my best now. Mm, maybe the giant wolf and wendigo floors might be easy too. Too many humans, humans are scary, the living are scary. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. It'll let you rest soon. Human, a handsome human. There wasn't a human like that when I was alive. Yeah, it'll send you off too. Time flew when you were focused on something. After grasping the third floor structure completely, I always turned back a step before so that the final pathway wouldn't appear. Although the crafty traps would sometimes change their locations, I always detected them with my mana and destroyed them. Lydia was fine for the first three weeks, but after that, she began to call me once a day, sobbing and calling my name. Other than that, everything was progressing smoothly. Then, a month passed since I entered Beyond's third floor. It was the end of June. Meanwhile, a huge trouble occurred in the outside world. Hundreds of event dungeons had appeared on Earth. It was what Sierra prophesied. There are 18 just in Korea. I don't understand why there are so many in this tiny country. Although there's no guarantee that event raids would break out, if we were to leave them alone because we're afraid, they would only come back as bigger dangers. 
maybe, Earth will come to have a similar human-to-monster ratio as other worlds. Well have to trust Guardian and Freedom Wing. Everyone is well aware of Event Dungeon's danger now. Shin, shouldn't we clear as many Event Dungeons as we can? Alright. Once Japan's Event Dungeons are taken care of, I want to join everyone too. At this time, my spear technique was at high rank level 8. Swinging my spear and killing three Wraith Queens at once, I murmured. Several countries probably want to let low-ranked event dungeons turn into field dungeons. You're exactly right. They most likely want a source of mana stones that they can regulate and control. As for the high-ranked event dungeons, or what they call gates, most say that they should be destroyed first. They aren't wrong, but they're probably using that as an excuse to buy time. That way, the low-ranked event dungeons would turn into field dungeons for them to control. The reason was simple. It was lucrative. In truth, high-ranked dungeons had much more value. Just look at Britain's Windermere Lake and America's Antelope Canyon. After I subjugated the bosses, their monster reproduction rate greatly decreased, giving them a safe and steady source of income. Each melting tuna was 150 million won and each wyvern was 250 million won. However, as valuable as these two dungeons were, they were the most troublesome to clear. A countless number of rankers stepped in to clear them, and in wyvern's nest, many rankers died. Countries should have realized that high-ranked dungeons will be more disastrous when they become field dungeons. Yeah. A lot of the high-ranking ability users were sent to A or A-ranked dungeons. For event dungeons ranked S or above, the Guardian plans on clearing them one by one in order. They're sending all of their rankers. Freedom Wing and Rogues are also being called to prepare for event raids. That sounds like it's going to take a long time it's perfect for glancing over event dungeons ranked B or below. A lot of people are saying that low-ranked dungeons should also be cleared. But they're all being ignored. It seemed humans were still only thinking about how to benefit from the change brought by Two Moon. I couldn't blame them. A year and a half passed since the world transformed into fantasy. Civilization remained unhurt by what seemed like a calamity, and monster remains and mana stones even improved the advancement in science and technology. It made sense that some called emergence of monsters the blessing of God shifting the world's paradigm. To them, ability users killed by monsters would only be pain necessary for change. It was only obvious. As long as they didn't know about the dungeon, as long as they didn't know about other worlds heading to ruin, it was only natural. As long as their lives weren't in danger, all humans, including me, would rather satisfy their hungry stomach than to worry about the future. The reason we were making a fuss over it was that we were dungeon explorers before we were Earth's ability users. To make them understand, the number of dungeon explorers just had to increase over hundreds of years. During that time, countless event dungeons would appear and transform into field dungeons. Countless event raids would also break out and destroy Earth's civilization. Humanity will then understand that the emergence of monsters wasn't a blessing. Even if field dungeons don't appear, humanity already lost too much land to monsters. Philippines, Madagascar, Republic of South Africa, Dominican Republic. There were already several ruined countries, and ten times as many countries relinquished entire regions to monsters. Even so, humans weren't considering taking back the lands claimed by monsters and were thinking about increasing monsters' territories just because they would be able to control them. This couldn't continue. Like this, Earth would only be coming closer to ruin. Why, uh, if you have something you want to say, say it. I thrust out my spear. A whirlpool instantly formed on its tip, which then shot toward the Wraith Queen's head. But I'm not the guild master, Shin. I'm ordering you with full confidence. Do as you'd like. I want to burn all the thoughtless idiots into cinders. What you want to do before that? I want to get rid of all the event dungeons. At Waya's words, I became silent for a moment. It wasn't just because twelve wraith queens were flying toward me while shooting ectoplasm arrows. I could simply use divine speed once and take care of them all. It was because I thought of Sierra. I was displeased and annoyed that what we were about to do was exactly what she wanted. 
However, since it was unavoidable for me to achieve my goals, I would have to bear with it. If I gave up my goals just because of a slight annoyance in the process, I would only regret it later. Besides, Sierra wasn't completely wrong either. I would be safer if there were more people helping, and if I was safe, Earth would be safe as well. Just look at the current situation. Instead of helping Earth become safer, humans were doing foolish things for their own greed. Since Guardian nor Freedom Wing couldn't get out of their selfishness, Sierra's suggestion for me to lead Earth's ability users wasn't entirely wrong. That said, I wasn't wrong either. There should be countries that don't have the necessary defensive capabilities against monsters. They should be allowing other countries' ability users to enter their gates. Shin. I think you know what I'm trying to say, but for now, let's try to do it lawfully. Th. Thank you. I know what's important, Waya. I also know what's best for the future. If it's something we can do, we should probably do it. I doubt ITLL be dangerous with our guild members' strength, but don't force them to come. Only take volunteers. I don't want to use my position as the guild master to order them around. It'll help. If that's what Waiauni wants and what Shin Nim recommends, it'll help gladly. I want to help too. I want to take this opportunity to go to Earth. Clearing event dungeons give achievements right? It'll help too. If it's what Shin wants, it'll do anything. It'll help, but I want to do it alone. I want to test my improved spearmanship. I probably have to help too how annoying. No, Walker. Considering the current state of affairs, you stay home and focus on protecting Yua. Damn it. While you guys accomplish cool things, why do I have to stay home and be a bodyguard kook? Wraith queens were gathering. Traps exploded, spreading poisonous mist, frost crystals, and sleeping gas. Using tempest, I blew them all away, then gathered my aura in my spear. White aura. It was the heroic aura, only allowed for heroes. As for the others, it'll take care of them when I get out. Just wait for one month. It'll wait for you, Shin Nim. I love you, I want to see you. Wait, who was the girl that just confessed her love to Kong Shin? She used the floor shop's voice changing item. I couldn't even think about buying it because it cost one. Five million gold. How can you be certain it was a girl, Walker? There are men in this guild, too could it be you? Do you want to fight, you old kook? It was impossible to avoid getting attention. We were strong. We would inevitably obtain a special position compared to other ability users. In that case, I would rather do things my way. I don't like your methods, Sierra. People should sacrifice themselves to protect the hero. That's wrong. That would only be a never-ending vicious cycle. Furthermore, I hate the idea that people should live or die for others. As humans, we have a right to die for our sake. I didn't want to restrict others. For that to be possible, the hero had to be stronger than anyone else. He had to be so strong that they didn't need to worry about me. Thankfully, the hero in question was an excellent man of extreme talent. Furthermore, he still had 20 years left to grow. 20 years. It was enough time for humanity to grow and come to take care of itself. Coincidentally, I had the appropriate identity to influence them toward that direction. Wop. Kayak. Kia. I thrust out the aura imbued in my spear. The spiraling aura instantly swallowed all the wraith queens and exploded. Perfect. One month. I couldn't wait. Chapter, 145. Guild Revival's accomplishments quickly spread. It was only obvious. Father said head act alone, so only beautiful girls were left to clear event dungeons. No matter how weak they were, they would have received attention. What made it worse was that each of them had incredible strength. Even the lowest leveled Shuna had a special ability passed down in her royal family, granting her shocking defensive capability. Perhaps because she was similar to Samir in a lot of ways, they got along well. From what I heard in the guild communication channel, it seemed they were best friends. They were around the same age as well. 
In any case, the five girls didn't hide their identities and confidently marched into the gates of countries that allowed foreign ability users to enter them. Of course, Wyatt provided her private plane for transportation. Regardless of whether the event dungeons were ranked C or A, they cleared them thoroughly. Even when event raids broke out, they effortlessly cleared them. Since the flame which Waya Mastaford was already well known, people at first suspected that they were affiliated with Britain's Guardian. However, after they identified Ludia and Yiyun as the girls who fought with Dragon Knight in America, they began to say that the group was under Dragon Knight's command. They were right. Their decisive and swift action of destroying event dungeons regardless of their ranks drew the attention of other ability users and various mass media. They probably wanted to know our objective, but Waya avoided contact with the media. After all, even if Waya didn't explain, everyone should already know why event dungeons had to be destroyed. Waya simply led the others to clear as many event dungeons as possible. Thanks to their action, other regions began to clear their event dungeons too. They were probably thinking something like, I don't know what's what, but they must be getting something amazing. So let's do it, too. They weren't wrong. Waya and the others were getting great benefits from clearing the event dungeons. However, these benefits were only available to dungeon explorers, not regular ability users. That said, if they could reduce the harm caused by governments trying to let event dungeons turn into field dungeons, that would be good for the future. As each event dungeons gave at least one bonus stat, Waya and the others grew greatly, clearing 88 dungeons in a given time. Since they even cleared event raids perfectly, I couldn't help but be jealous after calculating the stat bonuses they must have gotten. Of course, I wasn't so stupid as to make them stop and wait for me. To me, the current training was the most important. I could bear with hearing Waya's bragging. Hoo-hoo, I just cleared my 30th. Congratulations, Father. Father also destroyed many dungeons by himself. Considering how confident he was of late, it seemed he had mastered high rank spear technique. I was certain, considering how he was bragging about reaching a new height in his spearmanship. He was worthy of the self proclaimed title of world's strongest. How are you doing lately, son? Is your spear training going well? It's a so so. In coming close to grasping it. Ho, oh, even so, you won't be able to reach father's level. Just wait and see. I had to concentrate on beyond even more. Today was the last day of the one-month period I promised. With Guild Revival's effort, and Guardian and Freedom Wing trying to clear high-ranked dungeons, 222 event dungeons had been cleared so far. It was just over half of the total. There were still two SS-ranked dungeons in Russia and America, and 14 other dungeons ranked S or above. There were 35 dungeons between a rank and S rank, which the government elites were trying to clear, and 167 dungeons ranked B or below, which various governments were scheming to turn into field dungeons. Good. With just that, it was worth a try. Kia. Kayak. Standing in the middle of a long and straight pathway, I glanced at the front and back. Hundreds of Wraith Queens were screaming and flying toward me. Soul Guard became level 7. You develop a perfect resistance to almost all mental attacks. Your League of Existence increases further. Weapons without mana can no longer hurt you. Ooh, just by being here, I can feel my Soul Guard's experience skyrocketing. However, I couldn't just stay here forever. The hasty Wraith Queens had already begun spitting out ectoplasm arrows. I shot out a few crossbow bolts, shooting down the arrows I couldn't possibly avoid. Then, I lowered my center of gravity. Below my feet, light whirlpools appeared, sending me flying. After Peruta Circuit reached level 7, I became able to apply Peruta Circuit to a certain extent. Ha! Shooting forward forcefully, I slashed the Wraith Queen in front of me. Immediately afterward, I stepped on the ground, shooting up like a spring and activating a skill. It was Gale Track. Third, fourth, fifth. Gluttony's spear beamed with golden spirit aura as it pierced through all enemies blocking its path. As spear technique leveled up, each attack drew out more damage. As a result, the Wraith Queens in Gale Track's path died instantly when they were unlucky. 
Of course, once I killed 10 Wraith Queens, adding 50% bonus damage to my attack, they all died instantly. Hua. Kaya. My heart. Pika was infused in my spear, while Ryue stayed on the outside, hindering Wraith Queen's movements and leading them so that I can kill them more easily. Pika's ability focused on attacking, while Ryu's ability could be used in various ways. Every single one of you, come. You used provoke. All enemies in the area attack you with great hostility. Kill that human. Don't let him leave. Make him our ally. A male ally Wraith King. Husband I mean, ally. Hook. The Wraith Queen's eyes were flashing strangely. They were like the eyes Loretta sometimes had. Using Gale Track, I charged through to where the gate was, shredding all Wraith Queens on my way. Once I was in front of the gate, I turned around, surging with great rotational force. The wind energy gathered on the tip of my spear, seemingly wanting to burst out at any moment. It traveled around my body, then gathered on the tip of my spear again. I raised my spear. There were still about a hundred Wraith Queens left alive. Elemental Tempest. It's a festival. Wind, fan. Super spin spin. Elementals flew toward my spear, where wind energy spiraled around. With the addition of the elementals, the spear gave off a rainbow light. The explosive wind energy and power from the elementals caused my hand holding the spear to shake, but I firmly gripped my spear with a snort. Then, I thrust it forward. Kaya. With 50% of my mana instantly leaving my body, a sense of fatigue swept through my body. I stretched my foot back and prevented myself from falling. The Wraith Queens filling up the pathway died in mass, and I constantly heard messages that I obtained 3000 gold. Who, it's over. It was really over. Seeing the wide pathway completely empty, I was deeply moved. Now, I couldn't grind even if I wanted to. Currently, my spear technique was level 9. This had happened almost two weeks ago. Still, I didn't know if the last two months of grinding would let me master my spear technique. Skill experience wasn't something I could calculate. However, I couldn't just stay here forever. Even if I couldn't master high-ranked spear technique, it was fine. It didn't mean that the two months of training was meaningless. I grew more used to practical application of Peruta circuit in battles, and I was confident I had reached great heights in my spearmanship. Soul Guard had reached level 7, and my elementalist abilities also grew. That was enough. Alright then let's go. With a sense of unease, I stepped beyond the gate. In that instant, several messages rang in my ear. You conquered Beyond's third floor. You can challenge the dungeon's 54th floor. Your maximum HP and MP increase by 2%. You obtained 5 bonus stats. Experience has been added to skills you frequently use to progress through Beyond's third floor. High rank martial arts became level 5. Positive effects will be added to all actions using your body. Mid rank crossbow marksmanship became level 8. You can shoot without aiming and hit your target's vital points. You mastered low rank gale track. The wind energy gathered for the final blow is amplified. You learned mid rank gale track. Every time an enemy is pushed away, your attack power increases by 7% up to 200%. Mid-rank dash became level 6. Positive effects will be added to all charge type skills. Peruta circuit became level 8. Even in fierce battles, you can circulate Peruta circuit and recover mana like normal. At the same time, you can effectively attack and defend using the flow of mana. Soul guard became level 8. Your lofty league renders most mental attacks ineffective and reflects them back to their user. You will not be intimidated by enemies stronger than you, and as your existence becomes more complete, your resistance to dark mana increases greatly. Overwhelm became level 2. Just by existing, you cause all enemies to tremble. It decreases all of your opponent's abilities by 10%. The chance of your opponent failing to activate a skill increases by 10%. High rank spirit mastery became level 2. All souls connected to you obtain the possibility to leap past their soul's original potential. And. 
you mastered high rank spear technique. When you're holding a spear, aura will form automatically. Even without a spear, you can create a spear using your aura. You greatly intimidate enemies with lower levels of weapon techniques. Your spear begins to sprout the potential to covet godhood. Now, you must create your own spear technique. This path is long and arduous, and is bound to happen slowly. Do not get impatient. If you can seek help, it is recommended that you do so. Unique spear techniques that surpass high rank spear technique are not created so easily. Thank you for your concern, message Nuna. But instead of worrying about that, first. Seeing Loretta widening her eyes, I grinned and waved my hand. Then, I shouted inwardly. Yes. I mastered spear technique. Shin Nim, you finally came back. Yeah, I obtained what I wanted. What is it? High rank spear technique master. Loretta's jaws dropped. Did did you just say master? A high rank weapon technique? Yes. Father seems to have mastered it too. Shouldn't most gold ranked explorers have it mastered? Do you want come with me to the residential area and try shouting that out loud? I can promise you, people will start throwing stones at you within 30 seconds. I worked hard for two months, you know. Phew, I don't know what to say to Shin Nim, but I'm glad you're back safe and sound. Because Loretta's gaze was making me feel slightly uncomfortable, I took a step back. Loretta's eyes quickly narrowed. This is our reunion after two months. Can't you be happier, Shin Nim? I just have a lot to do. I'm going to be busy from now. Loretta stared at me intently. Her golden eyes were so clear and bright that they seemed to be sucking out my soul. W what's wrong, Loretta? Shin Nim, with me. With Loretta? Loretta's lips lightly budged. It seemed she was hesitating to say something. With me no, never mind. It's nothing. What am I saying Hugh, it's nothing. Shin Nim is doing well. I'm just feeling a bit uneasy. Can you say it so I can understand? I meant Shin Nim should let me know when things get rough. Let me know even if things don't. I can at least give Shin Nim a massage. Though, it'll take proper compensation for it that's not money, hoo hoo. I know you're saying that because you're worried about me, but I won't ever ask Loretta for a massage. Loretta clicked her tongue. Then, she laughed lightly. This much should be fine. But Shin Nim, you can't overwork yourself. When things get too tiring and difficult, you have to let me know. I'm saying this seriously, okay? It's not tiring and difficult at all, but sure, I will. Tiring and difficult. It seemed Loretta didn't know me that well. As I headed to my mansion after saying goodbye, I thought, I've never been more full of energy in my entire life. Strengthening my abilities, learning spearmanship. Reaching new heights I've never seen. These things were erasing the irritation I was feeling from everything. There was no one at the mansion. It seemed everyone was busy working. That was good. If possible, I didn't want to be bothered. I headed to the basement training room. Standing in the middle of the dark and spacious room, I closed my eyes. Deific manifestation. It wasn't someone calling my name one. It wasn't even me calling my own name. Using half of your mana and vitality, you manifest the mythological heroic spirit, Pryuterello Vatifoa, for 37 minutes and 21 seconds. It was a call for the guide who would help me take a step forward. Chapter, 146. I had a feeling you'd call me soon. Really? Yes. Your mana was getting clearer. I knew you would soon reach the necessary realm. It sounded like I was a cultivator in a martial arts novel. Of course, Pryuta was probably telling the truth. I learned a lot from you back in the Luka continent. Huhu, it seems you realized something about Pryuta circuit. First, let's have a spar. I can pass my spear technique down afterward. Sure. We didn't need to say much. I immediately closed my eyes, and Pryuta created an imagined world. We now had 37 hours to work with. Within this time, I had to learn Pryuta's spear technique. Otherwise, I would have to wait another month. 
Pryuta circuit was a method to bring the flow of mana toward its user. The spiraling mana sucked in external mana, and at the same time, strengthened the mana through rotational force. The whirlpool of mana didn't just happen in the mana pathway but spread out through the entire body and the outside. A special flow occurs inside the mana whirlpool, which only the user can manipulate. Depending on how it's used, it can block an opponent's attack or strengthen one's attack. Ho, oh, you already learned the practical application of it. It can't be compared to your spearmanship though. A whirlpool completely matching the flow of Pryuta circuit circulated through the spear Pryuta was holding. As each of his attacks were heavy, in order to block it, I had to use the same whirlpool in my attacks or pour my aura into the spear until the limit. Of course, that was the past me. After the special training I went through, I could imbue aura into my spear and draw Pryuta circuit's whirlpool from it. Even so, the difference between mine and Pryuta's was like heaven and earth. If it's the current you, you'll understand it naturally while we spar. I hope so. No, I can guarantee you. If you experience it for just 30 hours. As he raised his spear wrapped in a whirlpool, Pryuta gave a teasing smile. It was my own face, but I wanted to punch it. However, before I could charge toward him, he attacked me first. I jumped to the side to dodge his spear which was slashing down vertically, then counterattacked. As expected, Pryuta read my movements and struck my spear away with his spear swirling with a whirlpool. Oh ho, your dodging skills improved. I just came back from a place where I'd die if I didn't. But you're still not there yet. Pryuta's spear was terrifyingly fast and powerful. His spear technique wasn't just utilizing Pryuta circuit's whirlpool. His spear's movement and its trajectory were as free as the capricious wind. Its methodical flow suddenly twisted and distorted, and if it caught me, it would swallow me like a raging tide. It was light, then heavy. It was calm, then violent. As someone facing it, it couldn't be more annoying. You can do it. You already know the key. I don't think so at all. Peruta's comforting only gave me despair. Although we shared the same body, the realm of martial arts he embodied was far and lofty. He was called an ancient martial god and a war god. Even so, I. Boom. Good, you're getting more natural. No, not at all. I'm only just starting. I will catch up to him. It's not like I couldn't see the difference between us before, and now, I knew the height in front of my eyes was a level I could reach. By the time ten hour passed, my white aura began to swirl around my spear in the shape of a whirlpool. The result of starting to show from repeatedly clashing with Peruta's spear. You took your first step. Good, but are you satisfied with just that? Of course not. His spearmanship wasn't the only thing I had to catch up to. His movements as he wielded his spear, his spear flowing with his movements, his footwork, the Peruta circuit's mana erupting from his feet, the flow that amplified, converged, and released. You don't need to try to follow my movements. Pryuta circuit is an unconstrained whirlpool. You just have to mix it however you want. Of course, I already know that. The whirlpool enveloping my spear was fast and destructive. Although it wasn't as capricious as Pryuta's nor was it as mysterious and elusive, it became stronger as it advanced and overwhelmed the enemy with its unpredictable destructive power. It was persistent and relentless. Pryuta circuit's current became more and more powerful as it flowed. Even as it stumbled, it did not stop, and continuously and endlessly drew in mana. The pain it gave made me happy. I felt like I finally understood how to wield mana. What was left was to direct it, not just using my spear, but using my entire body. You learn the unique spear technique, Pryuta Mad Typhoon. Although it is based on Pryuta circuit, this unique spear technique has been tempered by your martial path which naturally manipulates its shocking flow of mana into speed and destructive force. You obtain two skill points. Current skill points, 10. This message was heard 24 hours after the start of my sparring with Pryuta. Although the way I enveloped my spiraling white aura around my spear was different than Pryuta's method, I became able to clash with him without being pushed back. It seemed Pryuta had also realized it, as his smile became deeper. Congratulations. 
you paved your own way forward. I think it's a bit too straightforward. That's just your character. Once your movement is added on top of it, not many will be able to dodge your spear. After finding out that I had learned my own spear technique, Peryuta stopped. With a satisfied expression, he looked at me and my spear. For me to reach that realm, it took me seventy years in human time. This is only the start, so don't become overconfident. Seventy years. Even though Peryuta spent seventy years to reach this height, he only considered it the start. As I thought, I had a lot to learn from his mindset. After that, Peryuta advised me about Peryuta circuit and spearmanship, then disappeared saying head see me in a month. Once I was left alone in the basement training room, I collapsed. Since I did 24 hours worth of movements in 24 minutes, it was only natural for fatigue to build up. I looked at the clock. It was 2 in the afternoon. I didn't have the time to stay lying on the floor like this. Ruyue, wash me. In an instant, ice enveloped my entire body, then disappeared. My body drenched in sweat was now clean. Along with the cleanliness, drowsiness naturally swept over me. Ha I shouldn't. No. Go with the flow. Pryuta seemed to be telling me so. I couldn't go against master's words, so I obediently went to sleep. When I woke up, some ire was in front of me. Ha. Huh. I blinked. Then, I realized I was using Sumire's laps as pillows. Um, Sumire. What's going on? The floor is hard, Shin Nim. My laps are hard from muscles too, but I thought they were still better than the floor. No, you don't have to go so far well, thanks though. Yes. You trained immediately after coming back from your training, I'm impressed. I got up. Sumire also got up slowly. Is everyone back? Yes. Because Shin Nim is coming back today, we came back after clearing three event dungeons. I came down to practice spearmanship while we waited, but then I found Shin Nim here. You should have woken me up do you want to lightly spar? Yes. Sumire's eyes sparkled. It seemed she was waiting for those exact words. Looking at Sumire grabbing her spear and taking her stance, I grinned. Then, I likewise grabbed my spear. After the spar, Samair reached mid-rank spear technique. This girl was really a genius. Shin. Yeah, I was expecting you. Lydia ran into my embrace the moment she saw me. I patted her back to calm her down and reported to the others that I was back. We could now talk about the things we needed to do. We're at our limit. Even if the remaining event dungeon turn into field dungeons, the countries therein can manage them. They have tight security around their gates, preventing anyone from entering without their permission. There are 162 such dungeons. Waya explained as she gritted her teeth. I had already somewhat heard about it through the communication channel, but now that I heard the exact number, I could only sigh. How long did it take for the first wave of event dungeons to turn into field dungeons? Two months, Shin Nim. Sumire answered quickly. Since the event dungeons appeared a month ago, while I was in still in Beyond's third floor, we still had a month left. They won't be open to discussions. Walker spoke as one corner of his mouth curled up. Seeing as how he was here, it seemed Yuo was already home. Even though Mastiford specifically contacted the British government, they're still trying to protect their gates. The problem isn't just that event dungeons would turn into field dungeons. The event dungeons might not get turned into field dungeons and have their bosses freed. That would be more of a headache. Kong Shin, humans naturally delude themselves into thinking they can control everything. If there is a precedent, it is especially so. They'll think they're prepared and that there's no need to worry about it. The result will almost always be disastrous. Walker had quite a twisted view on the world. Of course, with the way things were going, I couldn't deny him. How annoying. When I looked at Waya, she was frowning. Was it because Lydia was still in my embrace? Like a barnacle, she wouldn't get off of me even when Yiyun and Shuna pulled on her. What's up, Waya? Guardian's leaders are extremely forward in protecting the gates. You can say it straight out. Brightman, right? 
I should have beaten that guy up earlier. It's not just Brightman. Most SS rankers are helping to thoroughly protect their country's gates. So much so that it's taking longer to clear dungeons ranked S or above. Hugh, I at least hoped that the ones who obtained their abilities through the dreams would be better. No, I couldn't just stay here and sigh all day. I had to do what I could do. Let's start with Korea. Is Korea also protecting its event dungeons? Of the 18 event dungeons in Korea, the three event dungeons ranked D or below were instantly destroyed when they appeared, and event raids didn't break out either. There are four dungeons ranked S or above, of which two are S rank and two are S rank. As you know, Korea doesn't have any SS rankers and only a few S rankers. Because of that, they weren't prioritized in the Guardian's ordering. They probably won't get cleared within the next month. What about the others? The list of the other 11 event dungeons are 1A, 2A, 1B, 3B, 2C, and 2C. The Korean government is also trying to protect the dungeons ranked B or below. The dungeons ranked higher than that can't be cleared because of their lack of ability users. Once they enter, they can't get out until they clear the dungeon, so they're being careful about where to send their troops. After thinking for a bit, I came to a decision. I want to clean up Korea first. Is that okay? Son, you know that the government is protecting the gates, right? Yes, father, but it'll do it forcefully. ITLL be fine. Our country is too weak to stop us. I'm surprised you can say that as a Korean. But it's true. Even if Korea's 3S rankers work together, they won't even be able to pierce through Samire or Shuna's defense. Let's split into three teams. Waya, you go with Walker and Shuna. Okay. Father, go with Samire and Yiyun. Ooh, going on a stroll with my new daughter candidates doesn't sound so bad. I'll go with Ludia. Ludia looked ready to burst into tears, so it was probably difficult to separate from her again. Plus, with her power of the earth for defense and healing ability, she was undoubtedly the best candidate to bring with me. Ah, uh, Ludia's face lit up. How cute. The way I split the members is simple. I made it so that no one in Korea will be able to stop us. Even if event raids break out, we should be able to take care of them. Let's split the 11 low-ranked dungeons into three based on their distance and start. Don't openly reveal your identities. Equip something like Otta's secret. How pleasant. You're giving us orders right after coming back. This is only the start, Walker. My goal is to completely sweep through all the event dungeons on Earth. Regardless of people coming to stop us. Who's going to stop us? With a grin, I retorted. No one can stop me now, Walker. Chapter, 147 Ludia and I were in charge of Kongwandu province, where the B, A, and A ranked dungeons were. As it was far from Seoul, it was the most efficient for me to go, as I could ride on Latte, who was faster than fighter jets. But. After getting on Lottie's back with me, Ludia muttered coldly. She pointed towards the girl wrapping her arms around my back with eyes shaped like stars. She wore a watercolor dress that was perfect for going on strolls. What's this? She's Pleen, a siren. She's a companion of mine, like Latte. Hi. I'm Pleen. Isn't it a pretty name? Shin gave it to me. Pleen smiled innocently and unwrapped her arms from me. She held her hand out to Lydia, but Lydia simply glared at her. I, I thought you were asking me on a date. No, we're going to a dungeon. What date? You're really a fool. You're the fool. She's a meanie. She won't accept my greeting. Shin, scold her. Lydia is normally a bit rude. Forgive her, Pleen. She even stole my spot. I hate her. Pleen was perfect to hold Lydia in check. Although it might be a bit cruel to Lydia, who I met in two months, I thought Lydia was using all sorts of excuses lately to be intimate with me. I'm a man and Lydia a woman. It would be fine if we're dating, but as we weren't, sticking so close was troublesome. Both Waya and Yiyun were giving Lydia strange glares as well. I said I would take responsibility for Lydia's dependence on me, 
but that didn't mean I would marry her. If she became even more intimate than she currently was my Koham. But what about now? Pleen, who liked being intimate just as much as Ludia, held Ludia in check. As Ludia spends more time separated from me, she would realize she doesn't need to always cling to me. But, strange. Why did I feel like nothing had changed other than that Pleen replaced Ludia? In any case, we first decided to clear the B-rank dungeon. This event dungeon had appeared in the middle of Kanwando's camping ground. I was shocked by how many guardians were lined up and protecting it. With that number, they could just go in and clear it themselves. The guardians didn't see us in the sky. It was because Latte was a cheaty wyvern that was even specialized in stealth. Her skills, presence concealment and invisibility, were hiding us perfectly. It was also the reason that I couldn't recognize her when we first met, even though she appeared right in front of my eyes. Shin, what are you going to do? Are you going to talk to them? Ludia asked as she raised her staff. Strange. Why do you look like you're in your combat mode rather than normal mode? Did you hit the spacebar twice by mistake? 1. Although I was dumbfounded, I would be troubled if she shouted, Oh Earth. So I quickly answered her. No, we're going to sing. Sing. Ludia tilted her head. Soon, she looked at Pleen, clearly thinking, is it her? When I eyed Pleen, she nodded with a shy smile. Then, she began to sing. La la la. Mm -hmm. Where is this sound coming from? What a beautiful voice. Idiots, it might be a monster's attack. Stay on your. With Pleen's voice ringing from the sky, the guardians began to collapse one by one, starting from the one admonishing the others to stay alert. After becoming my subordinate, Pleen's singing ability was increasing the more she practiced. In essence, it was being treated like a skill by the dungeon system. As she continued singing ever since we met, her ability, which even affected S rankers, had grown much stronger. Even magic type awakened with innate resistance against mental attacks would find it difficult to resist Pleen's singing. This song, how beautiful. To us, it's just a beautiful song, but to them. To them, a special effect would be added. One that helps them fall asleep in just 10 seconds. Just by singing for 30 seconds, Pleen made all nearby ability users drop their weapons and fall asleep. When they woke up, they would find themselves relieved of fatigue. If you're suffering from insomnia, I recommend you get a siren. They would be super popular. Thinking rather useless things, I lightly tapped Pleen's shoulder. La 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 mm. Why? You can stop singing now, Pleen. But I want to finish this song. You can sing later. They'll listen to the full song then. Just in case an event raid breaks out after we cleared the dungeon, we move the ability users elsewhere. Shortly afterward, we were the only ones around the gate. What an unbelievable ability. Pleen, Ludia is complimenting you. Really? Thank you. I like you. And no. That wasn't a compliment. As always, it was too easy to earn points with Pleen. Listening to them bickering behind me, I grinned and ordered Latte. Charge into the gate. Understood, hero. Latte flapped her wings once and swiftly flew into the gate. Our surroundings warped and the event dungeon appeared. It was an open grassland with deer running around playfully. They had turquoise skin and were three times as large as normal deer. On each of their foreheads was a spiral-shaped horn, and their feet hooves were shaped like scissors. If not for these characteristics, the entire view would have looked extremely peaceful. Deer meat doesn't even taste good damn it. You were thinking about eating them. Pleen performed outstandingly even inside the dungeon. By changing her tune, she could apply various status effects. Currently, she was using the status effect sirens were known for. Right, her singing was luring its listeners toward her like mindless zombies. Whether the deer were grazing on the grass or having mixed martial arts fights, they turned their attention to Pleen's singing. They stopped what they were doing and walked across the grassland toward us. As Pleen continued singing, we flew around the grassland on Lottie's back. Shin. What are you doing? Can't you see? I'm collecting the deer together. 
la la la. Around the time I could confidently say that we looked around the entire event dungeon, there was a gigantic herd of deer following us. Kra. K.R.R. In the past, I wanted to hunt monsters the moment I saw them. Now, weak monsters couldn't draw out my fighting spirit in the slightest. I was glad that I brought Pleen along. Do we need to hunt all the monsters before the boss appears? How was it in the other dungeons, Ludia? I think it's based on how many monsters you encountered, not how many you defeated. Since all you need to do is find monsters, it should be appearing any time soon ah, uh, it's here. Cool. Killadir Grassland's boss monster, Iron Killadir, has appeared. Defeating the Iron Killadir and clearing the event dungeon will grant special rewards. At the same time the boss appeared, I finally found out what these monsters were called. Killadir. As for the boss, just its body was over three meters tall, while its legs were made out of steel. Its large, thick horn looked like it would be a good decoration. That said, why did all animal-type boss monsters appear as metallicized versions? I carefully raised my spear. Heroic strike. You defeated the event dungeon boss monster, Killadir. 30,000 gold is distributed evenly amongst party members. You received 15,000 gold. Kong Shin Nim's contribution is the highest. Choose your reward. 1. Iron Killadir's Horn Sword. 2. Iron Killadir's Antler. Of course, Killadir's didn't disappear just by killing the boss. First, I selected Iron Killadir's Horn Sword and fed it to Gluttony Spirit didn't even grow by zero. 3%. Then, I swiftly took care of the Killadir with a single elemental tempest. Meanwhile, Ludia. Ludia, what's that? Antler. What are you doing? Pulverizing it. For what? To make Shin eat it. Ludia's devotion toward me was truly admirable. Antlers were indeed good for the body, so I was thankful too. Western scientists disagree. That aside, it seemed I needed to question Mother. Just what was she teaching Ludia? You completely cleared and be rank event dungeon. All party members received one bonus stat. You will now return. We cleared the other two event dungeons, but no event raid broke out. Altogether, we received four bonus stats. Clearing the A-rank dungeon only gave two bonus stat. It was most likely because I had long surpassed its standard. We're done. How about you guys? We're still on our second one. We're also on our second, son. How are you done so quickly? Do you want to know, father? No, it's fine. You should go ahead and clear the other dungeons. After checking the news through my phone, I leisurely cleared the other two dungeons. The Korean government had found out that we were destroying the event dungeons and sent additional forces to uncleared event dungeons. They even criticized us through the media. In any case, their actions didn't stop me in the slightest. Pleen simply put everyone to sleep, and we cleared the dungeons. Afterward, news began to spread that unidentified assailants with malicious intent were going around invading Korea's gates. Although guardians are guarding the gates, in truth, they have no right to prevent us from clearing the event dungeons. Although there were laws regarding event dungeons, as long as the dungeons and the potential event raids could be dealt with, neither the government nor the guardian could say anything about it. After all, the gates appeared on their own. They did not belong to anyone. In any case, the news claimed that we were terrorists trying to release monsters into Korea by clearing event dungeons and making event raids break out. If that were true, the Guardian undoubtedly had the right to step in. Hey, who knew being a terrorist was so hard? They were confirmed to be the same group of people, who were actively destroying various countries' gates within the past month. This group, known to be led by the SS ranker Waya Mastaford, has. Breaking news. A picture has been taken of a group of people riding on a wyvern. The man on top is suspected to be the Dragon Knight, who recently made headlines with his accomplishment in America. His current goal seems to match that of Waya Mastaford. Why could they be doing this? Some say that they are destroying Korea's gates for the same reason that they destroyed the other gates within the past month. The government has heavily deployed guardians to the uncleared GAR. 
We just received the report that all gates other than the four S or S ranked gates have been destroyed. I couldn't say it was pleasant, as they made it sound like I was a criminal. Of course, I could understand where they were coming from. They must be thinking, why us? If I could, I would tell them. Don't worry, the same will happen to all the other countries. I headed to Seoul on Mate, where we promised to meet. The other two teams were heading over as well. We were purposefully being conspicuous. That was more convenient. I didn't want to have to explain twice. Yep, looking good. I'm sure Shin will shine even in front of the camera. Shin is cool. I don't need the flattery. Thank you though. For the past month, although I wasn't there, Guild Revival had gotten rid of event dungeons. Their accomplishment would help make my announcement incredibly powerful. Thanks to them, I was ready to step in front of everyone. It was the time for Revival to step up to the world stage. Not as everyone's ally, but as a strange group that mastered the provoke skill. Sierra, you wanted to me to lead the world's ability users, but the method I chose is different. It's going to annoy you, ha. Huh? Want. Two. Go. Damn it, from sixth grade to the second year of high school, I poured in my youth to Mabinogi. Mabinogi Cafe, a Mabinogi Cafe. I want to go. That's enough of my tantrum. 1. Mabinogi Reference. Chapter, 148. It only took Latte a few minutes to get from Kongwandu to Seoul. When we arrived at the cafe we promised to meet, the guild members were all waiting around a big table. Furthermore, there was a circle of cameramen and guardians surrounding them from a distance. Even the outside of the cafe was crowded with them. I nonchalantly walked into the cafe. The ones with power should be inside. You're here. Yeah. Are you guys done warming up? Son, get these things away. They're bothering me. Because of the conversation we just had and the wyvern sitting outside the cafe, everyone turned their attention toward me. Just from a glance, it seemed all three of Korea's S rankers were in this cafe. Are you really the Dragon Knight? Dragon Knight, why are you destroying Korea's gates? Dragon Knight, are you really Korean? I raised my hand and lightly waved across the air. A small whirlpool appeared and pushed them back. Of course, the S rankers didn't get pushed back from just this, but I didn't care. I brought my hand up to Otta's secret. Then I changed my hair and eye colors. My eyes became black like it normally was, and my hair became grafy. It was Yun Wawu's appearance. Ah, uh, you are. Yun Wawu, Korea's fourth S ranker. Right, I'm Yun Wawu. Just like you said, I'm also the Dragon Knight. I replied calmly. Whistles rang and sighs were heard. Korea also had an SS ranker. Why did you keep your identity hidden? What is your relationship with the flame witch, why a masterful kook? I decided to ignore the reporter that disappeared with a scream. Although we were in a cafe, there were so many cameras that it was no different than a press conference. It simply meant that a lot of people were interested in us. Of course, I suspected that over half of them were angry at us, but when I glanced at Waya, she nodded and messaged me. It will spread to the whole world. I already confirmed it. Thanks for giving me the spotlight, Waya. I'm the one who should be thankful, Shin. I opened my mouth, looking at the people eyeing me. It is because I wasn't an SS ranker until just recently. Furthermore, I had no intention of joining Guardian or Freedom Wing. Are you saying the power of S ranker you showed as Yun Wawu was real? That's right. Then, a man in his prime stepped forward. He was one of Korea's S rankers and a close ranged type attacker. The man, who I couldn't remember the name of, asked. Do you still have no intention of joining Korea's guardian now that you have become an SS ranker? No. I believe I found my own place. Then why are you disturbing public order? People looked flustered by the S ranker suddenly diving into the core problem. I could see why. No matter how valuable field dungeons were, a single SS ranker was still much more valuable. Now that the truth that I was Korean was revealed, Korea's guardian would be better off coaxing me to join them. 
In any case, I was thankful for his to-the-point question. I didn't want to talk to them for long. I want to ask why you think it is disturbing public order. Wu, Wu Youngha's SI, you shouldn't. The S ranker, Wu Youngha, ignored the guardian trying to stop him and shouted. If this isn't disturbing public order, then what is? I do not obtain monster remains or mana stones by hunting such weak monsters. However, I know how important those things are to Korea's economy. Why is a Korean ranker trying to screw us over? When gates naturally disappear after a certain period of time, field dungeons might appear like in America or Britain, but there's also a chance for strong monsters, like the one I fought before, to appear. That is something we should control. It is absurd to destroy all gates because of such a small risk. Furthermore, monsters might appear even when you break the gates. HM, it seems you do not know what my companions did for the past month. For the past month, Guild Revival had destroyed event dungeons and cleared potential event raids without any outsider being hurt. With how famous the story was, there was no one who hadn't heard of it. Is that really it? You're destroying the gates to prevent uncontrollably strong monsters from running amok. What are you talking about? It's also to prevent field dungeons from appearing. Why is that, Dragon Knight? The reporters jumped in once again. I replied to them with a question of my own. Do you think this will be the last time that gates will appear? When gates appear again, will you protect the low-ranked gates again to turn them into dungeons? Of course not. We will only maintain a manageable number. Who said the number of gates that will appear will be within your control? Once they escape your control even once, it is all over. The number of dungeons on earth will only increase, and humans' territory will disappear. That's why we should create dungeons now. To control that exact situation. Dungeons give everything an awakened needs. Don't bullshit me. Even before the gates appeared, the awakened were free to earn money and buy equipment they wanted. Furthermore, the equipment that can come from dungeons you can manage is easy to see, so you're still saying that? If Guardian manages the dungeons, do you think they will invest the money they earn into all awakened? Looking at Wu Youngha, I continued. It will be too late if we don't start getting rid of them now. Monsters did not emerge for the prosperity of humans. They are invaders trying to chase us out and replace us. This, I can guarantee. Even if we don't increase the number of monsters by leaving the gates alone, there are still countless monsters threatening our land. You should have caught a glimpse of that through the monster called Flame Drake. Wu Young has eyes shook. I see, so he was there. No, he wasn't there while we were fighting the Flame Drake. Did he run away? In any case, he shut his mouth. I continued, not just to him, but to everyone watching. In terms of ability, we are confident that we are second to none. You should think carefully about why we are destroying the gates when we have nothing to gain from them. Isn't it to prevent other awakened from getting stronger? If we didn't act and let you all do as you wanted, they would get eaten by the monsters before they could get stronger. Why Korea? I'm Korean, and I also grew up in Korea. Shouldn't I protect my country first? Then, I lightly smiled. But I don't understand why you're limiting us to just Korea. My words made them freeze for a second. You mean? Danger doesn't go away just because all of Korea's gates disappear. My companions spent the past month destroying the gates of weak countries. Do you not understand what this means? You're thinking of destroying other countries' gates too. Dragon Knight, you are Korea's ranker. As a ranker, if you break the laws of other countries, you will also bring harm to Korea. As a Korean, there was a clear difference between clearing Korea's event dungeons and other countries' event dungeons. The former could be justified, while the latter was a crime. At least, that's what the reporters were saying. It was laughable. I want trouble countries that plan on destroying their gates on their own. But I will not allow countries to selfishly turn gates into dungeons. What you are saying is a crime. That's fine. If any country dares to regard my actions as representative of Korea, I will make sure they come to regret it. Then, Korea will not receive much backlash. And my god. I was done joking. It was now time to say what I came to say. Why? Uh, 
What I took from Waya was a piece of paper recording all the locations of event dungeons ranked S or above. I was still surprised four of them had been in Korea, but that wasn't the important thing right now. In the past, it took two months before the gates turned into dungeons. If the gates all take the same amount of time, we have exactly one month left. Alright. I heard that Guardian, Freedom Wing, and some rogues were trying to destroy these S rank dungeons. In truth, other than the fact that everyone is trying to ignore dungeons ranked A or below, I think it is an excellent plan. The Guardian headquarters and we also agree. For that, we. I cut him off and continued. And in the past month, exactly 12 gates were destroyed. They were all S rank dungeons, and in the process, over 40 rankers got killed or injured. Plus, not once did more than 3 SS rankers come together. Getting the project started was a pain. However, from now on, the number of injured or deceased should decrease, while the number of destroyed gates should increase. You mean you can destroy 34 remaining gates until the next month? I grinned. Everyone should have understood already. That it was impossible. Where will you give up and where will you save? I can guarantee that you will waste more time deciding that, and let more gates become dungeons. Can you confidently say that won't be the case? Neglecting the gates that you should be able to destroy for profit, while neglecting the gates you must destroy because you can't come to a consensus, because of conflict of interest. Because of lack of ability when the day comes where there are more monsters than humans on earth, I wonder if you can still say we are disturbing public order. I announced. We are Guild Revival. Our members aren't too different from the rest of you. Heavy and cumbersome things like humanity or nation have been put aside. We gathered to first protect our friends and family. Guild Revival. He said Revival. I heard of Team Revival before. Ignoring their murmuring, I continued, declaring my intention to all those listening from beyond the camera. We will take care of all of the gates in Korea, starting with the two S rank gates and S rank gates. After that, you should have no doubt about our abilities. We can talk again then. All of you must compensate us for helping to destroy other countries' S rank or above gates. If you wanted something, you have to pay for it. Give and take. It was the most basic principle that even children understood. Between safety and resources, what would they choose? To be honest, it didn't matter how they reacted, so I maintained my nonchalant expression. Why? It was obvious. We would destroy all event dungeons regardless. This was just a proclamation. To tell them to crawl on their own. I had no intention of letting even a single event dungeon escape. I would protect Earth, obtain stats, piss off Guardian, Freedom Wing, and Sierra, and get rewards from bosses. There was nothing so full of benefits. I already missed a month's worth of event dungeons to train, so I couldn't possibly miss any more. I hope everyone will watch over us. We will show you the power and will of Guild Revival. With a composed expression, yet eager eyes, I glared at each of the cameras and shouted inwardly. Just you wait, Event Dungeon. I'm coming around to sweep you up. Chapter, 149 After my one-sided proclamation ended, we left the cafe and jumped on Lottie's back. When I first tamed her, she refused to let others ride on her, but after getting used to the guild members and getting more familiar with me, she allowed this much. I will go too. It looks like the Guardian Headquarter won't approve of you, but I want to see with my own eyes the skills you are so confident of. A young woman popped out from the crowd and asked to join us. She was another one of Korea's S rankers but, of course, I couldn't remember her name. Feeling her glare, I nodded. Sure. You can follow us if you can. Ha. Huh. Our latte won't let non-guild members ride her, you see. If you asked me to let that whore ride on me, I would have eaten her whole. Latte muttered. I scratched her neck to calm her down and shouted. Let's go. W8. Yun Wawu SSI, Yun Wawu SSI. Latte flapped her wings. Not even the S rankers could resist the wind pressure. Latte kicked off the ground and leaped up. The concrete ground crumbled, but Latte was already flying. Wait, Yun Wawu SSI. I said, take me with you. 
My god. She was a wind ability user. That S ranker flew slightly slower than Latte as she shouted at the top of her lungs. Pleen, who was still stuck to my back, complained. I don't like that woman's voice. Now women are going after him even though he's wearing a mask. What do we do about this man? Should we just wrap his head around with a boxing tape? That's it. Don't turn me into a mummy. I'm going to go faster. Sure, Latte. Ahem. Um, um. When Latte raised her speed, the woman fell behind for a moment, but soon, she sped up and continued to follow us. Looking at her, I realized she was holding the hands of the other two S rankers. I could see Wu Young has pale face clearly, as she grabbed him by his neck like she would to a cat. Seeing me show interest in the rankers, Waya introduced them. They're all in Guardian, which is why a rank is the highest in Korea's Freedom Wing. You really know everything, Waya. And not everything. I just know what I have to you need to know your enemy so you can prepare for them. Enemy, ha it sure is getting crazy, damn it. Human's biggest enemy is themselves, Kong Shin. You should have felt it in Britain. If you think everyone will come to your side after listening to you, you'll only be badly hurt. Walker said with a snort. Seeing him crossing his arms and gazing at the clouds, I felt that he looked a bit lonely. Then, I considered why he said that. Was he worrying about me? I muttered. Are you actually a good guy? That's disgusting. Screw off. I was certain Walker was changing. Perhaps one day, quicker than I would have thought, the contract might become unnecessary. The important thing is that we're doing the right thing, son. Event raids that break out when you least expect it, and field dungeons that resets a few months after being cleared. Didn't you experience them both with your own body? Event dungeons cause too much harm. No matter how big the potential gain is, our work must continue. Of course, father. I won't hesitate. I already made up my mind a month ago. Plus, I knew from the very beginning that what we were doing was right. I lightly smiled and retorted. I wasn't troubled about that at all. What I did today although I couldn't be sure, I felt like it would go the way I wanted. Our first target was the S-rank event dungeon. Coincidentally, it appeared in Young Dungpo. I was surprised why I lasted until today with how stressed out she must have been. Really, I'm going to have to tell mom to move. Shin, is there a house up for sale near yours? Sorry, but my mother will jump for joy, so please don't. This time, the event dungeon appeared in the middle of a park. The park, of course, became off-limits, and countless guardian forces were protecting it. It was to prevent meaningless deaths. It's Dragon Knight. His wyvern sure is huge. I is he really trying to enter this gate? Isn't he crazy? Latte flapped her wings midair and glared at the gate. Frightened by Latte, they panicked. Do not enter. This place is under Guardian's jurisdiction and is not open to the public. If you want to enter, you must form a party and get approved by the government. I see. I politely responded to the voice coming from below. But I don't care. Latte immediately charged into the gate. You entered the S-rank event dungeon, Forest of Rage. It's another forest. Don't tell me there are more spiders. So this place is. We came in. Eh. I turned around at the unfamiliar voices. Lo and behold, Korea's three S rankers were there. I didn't think they'd really follow us into the gate. I can't believe you went ahead without caring about us it was hard catching up to you. A uh, good job, but you know this place is an S rank dungeon, right? Ah, uh, now that you mention it. There were no S rank awakened in Korea. These three were all S rank awakened. I wondered what gave them the confidence to march into this dungeon. At that moment, a roar rang out across the entire dungeon. Kwang. The S-rankers became stiff. For the record, Walker also went stiff. Damn it, if I die here, they'll reveal your evil deeds in my will, Cook. You won't die, so don't worry, Walker. I grinned and took out my spear. Although Yun Wa Wu was known to use his fists, he was just revealed to be the same person as Dragon Knight, 
who already fought against the drake with a spear. As such, it didn't matter even if I used a spear. Spinning the spear in my hand, I dispersed my mana into the surroundings. Then, I stopped not long after. I found it. At the same time, a great breaking sound rang out from the forest. Hero. I can feel the hero's presence. Everyone, get down and prepare. Eleven o'clock, five meters tall. It's charging straight at us. It looks like a close-ranged type, but a part of its body has mana clumped together, so it might be hiding a trump card. I concisely explained the information I gathered from mana detection, then began circulating per Yuta circuit. Lydia spread her arms out and cast blessing on the party members. In an instant, the whirlpool around my spear became stronger. With a boom, the trees in front of us fell and it made its appearance. As I said before, it was five meters tall. Although it was shaped like a human, its skin was green and unnaturally muscular, while it had only one eye. Cyclops. Hero, I will have the hero, Kayakuk. The gluttony spear I threw out easily turned the cyclops' head to dust. I hadn't even used heroic strike, so it really died in vain. I retrieved the gluttony spear by pulling on its mana and spoke to my companions. It'll support you guys from above. They shouldn't be that hard from what I see. Not that hard. They weaken others by casting the fear status effect. Honestly, you should block something like fearing. Why you? Leaving the raging walker be, I ordered Pleen. When the Cyclopes appear, sing your weakening song, okay? Un, okay. The song where we all have fun together, right? Wait, Dragon Knight. What should we do? She's asking me. What a smart woman. I won't tell you to fight, but since you decided to observe us, do it while you run away. Why you want us to run? Latte, let's go. With just me on her back, Latte flew up. Although the rankers probably wanted to ride on Latte, I didn't even turn around as I flew forward. If I could fly in the dungeon, I was clearly better off fighting on Latte. If I got into a serious fight on Latte, not only would they vomit and get motion sickness, but they would also get thrown off. What will you do, hero? My guild members are strong. They should be able to take on two of them at once. Then we should find groups of three or more. Exactly. Latte raised her flying speed. This dungeon was contained the one-eyed giants, Cyclopes. Befitting the title of S rank, they had powerful strength, resistance against mana, and ability to weaken magic and aura. However, Mad Typhoon was greatly effective against such special traits. The endlessly spinning whirlpool of aura broke down their resistance and dealt special blows that were impossible to regenerate from. Peryuta, who created this, was indeed worthy of being called a god. Gale Track. Kra. Latte roared and charged. No matter how big the Cyclopes were, Darkwing Latte was the biggest and strongest of all wyverns. Not even the Cyclopes could block her charge. Imbued with a gale, the gluttony spear pierced through the Cyclopes. The trees in Lottie's path all fell and marked our track. Latte, go there, where five of the mare gathered. Am using the final blow. Understood, hero. After sending twenty Cyclopes flying, a strong wind energy gathered around the gluttony spear, which had been strengthened by 140%. Even as Latte charged forward, the energy flowing in from all sides transferred to the whirlpool of Aura. The whirlpool almost looked like it was enveloping both Latte and me. Pika. Looking at the Cyclopes that got up from their rest and prepared to throw trees at us, I shouted my elemental's name. Pika instantly gathered golden lightning to the tip of my spear. It was a thunder bomb, which had all of her power concentrated. Thunder Tempest. Unable to hold in my excitement, I shouted out the skill name. Immediately afterwards, I strongly clashed with the group of Cyclopes. The force of the whirlpool mixed with the lightning and a violent explosion broke out. Kia. It was the hero. The Cyclopes standing in the front instantly died, and the ones behind them were also swept away by the explosion. Although the ground tremored loudly from their collapse, they were like music to my ears. I had become strong. Even an S-rank dungeon was a playground for me. 
Delighted, I made a big smile, when suddenly. What are we supposed to do if you kill them all? We're practically just spectators. Waya's voice rang out from far away. When I turned around, there were cyclopes in the path latte and I crossed. After using Gale track, I had killed all the cyclopes I could see, so I forgot to leave some for the others. Eh sorry. I went a bit too wild. No, you did well. It's better the more overwhelming you appear to them. You were cool. Scary Basta Cook. Contrary to what she just shouted, Waya had a very satisfied tone in the guild communication channel. Although I hadn't planned on it, I had ended up showing the S rankers an effective show of force. Of course, not all Cyclopes were dead. Other than the five Cyclopes that ate the brunt of my final blow, others were collapsed on the ground with their limbs or chunks of their bodies torn apart. I then traced Gale Track's path and took care of the Cyclopes left alive. D Dragon Knight. He killed these monstrous creatures in one blow. After joining the others, I couldn't help but laugh, seeing the three rankers change in expression. Although they were the only ones with that expression, once we finished cleaning up Korea's dungeons. Kwa. Kill the hero. Because of the ruckus I caused, more and more Cyclopes were gathering. I spun my spear around again as I turned around. All right, let's finish within three hours. I want to get rid of the other three before the day breaks. Taking care of Korea in just one night. That sounds fun. Father grinned. Damn, you know, I have to guard your sister tomorrow, too. Do your best, Walker. You devil. Quiak. Walker screamed. Startled, the S rankers backed off from Walker. I slightly pitted Walker, but only just a little. Chapter 150 For the past month, my companions had joined hands to clear all sorts of event dungeons. Although those dungeons were below a rank, I didn't feel that the time was wasted. They had gotten more accustomed to fighting with each other. Ha! With a spirited shout, Father thrust his spear forward. A chunk of a cyclops' leg blew up, making it fall on top of two of its friends. Of course, incapacitating the two of them didn't do much to help the current situation. Ever since a while ago, piles of cyclopes were coming at us. Just one of them is annoying enough. Where are they all coming from? It's all thanks to our cute leader. They must have realized that they have no chance of winning unless they all join forces. Waya leisurely retorted, reaching her hand out and burning the Cyclopes in that direction. Some Iron Shuna were blocking the Cyclopes from the front, while Waya burned them with long-ranged attacks. As for us close-ranged attackers, we ran around killing incoming Cyclopes on our own. One thing for sure, we had too many close-ranged attackers compared to the one long-ranged attacker we had. Shin Nim, help the right side. Got it. Responding to Sumire's call, I kicked off the ground, while a whirlpool surged around my spear using Peruta circuit. The two cyclopes attacking Sumire were sent flying by the spear I thrust out. Pleen. La la la. When five new cyclopes appeared, Pleen began to sing energetically. Every time she sang with a delightful expression, it looked like strength were leaving the cyclopes' bodies. Kook, im losing strength. Damn it. The S rankers, who weren't considered to be in our party, were also affected, but it was fine since they didn't need to fight. Without caring about them, I continued hunting. Latte. I know. As I decided to fight with the party members on the ground, Latte and I were moving separately. Latte harassed the Cyclopes while freely flying in the sky. The black flame she breathed out could heavily injure them, and even cast curses. Qua. A bird with wings keeps blocking us. That bird is a harmful bird. The Cyclopes tried to attack Latte, but without any long-ranged attacks, it was impossible. As Latte also knew this, she jumped in and out, drawing as much of their aggro as possible. Meanwhile, we used the opening she created to attack them. Eight. Eight. Die. Yiyun made cute shouts as she tenaciously focused on the Cyclopes' weak points. In her hands were one black and one white pair of daggers, the reward she got from the flame drake raid. 
Her shouts and expression didn't match at all, so I wished she'd stop. What are we doing with their corpses? Waya asked, as she endlessly generated flames to burn the Cyclopes. She gave me a small wink. Although we already talked about it, it seemed she said it for the S rankers to hear. I also replied casually. Well sell them. I'm sure many people will want S rank monster corpses. Ah, well keep a few as souvenir I wonder if they taste any good. Cool, cool. T the hero is scary. After hundreds of Cyclopes died, the situation changed, as black Cyclopes began to appear. These Cyclopes were bigger than the normal ones and were holding gigantic clubs in their hands. Since Waya's flames couldn't easily burn them, it seemed they also had higher resistance to elements. The boss is going to appear soon, Waya. If you're tired, fall back to the defense line and rest until the boss comes. Waya shouted in response to my words and shot out white flames at all sides. It was a powerful attack, which made all of the Cyclopes step back. Walker immediately ran to the back. It seemed Father was tired from the constant fighting, as he also ran back after Walker. Hook hook, damn it, my attacks are barely effective. Walker, if you keep it up, you'll get stronger from the stat bonuses. If you didn't force me into being your sister's bodyguard, I would have been much stronger right now. Walker, you have to seize the opportunity when it arrives. Like I said, you prevented me from doing that. Although I wanted to talk to him in the guild communication channel, it seemed Walker didn't want to. It probably didn't matter, since the S rankers were too focused on what was happening in front of them that they didn't pay attention to our conversation. I became seriously sorry for Walker. I hope to reward him soon. Chatting with Walker was fun, but it was about time to clean up the battlefield and prepare for the boss. First, I took out a highest grade mana potion and put it in my mouth. I fixed my grip on my spear, bending down and leaping up. Shuna, Samire. Get back. Yes. Shin Nim. After instantly jumping over 10 meters in the air, I pulled my spear back and activated Peruta circuit to its limit. A five-colored light then began to gather in my spear. Kayak. One-eyed giants. Are you teaching them a lesson? Prince Nim, are you teaching them a lesson? I can ride this. Strangely, I'm fine. Everyone come, it's a special spin-spin. Countless elementals caused the whirlpool enveloping gluttony spear to take a rainbow hue. In the short moment where I stayed in the air, I thrust my spear toward the incoming Cyclopes and shouted. Damn, I wonder when I'm going to fix my habit of shouting. From the sky to the ground, a violent elemental storm raged. The black Cyclopes in the front were quickly swept through, as were the Cyclopes behind them. Although not all of them were dead, they were incapacitated. Waya, let's clean up. Waya. Waya, who was blankly staring at me for a moment, snapped out of her daze and began to quickly kill the Cyclopes that managed to survive. She simply threw her white flames into their throat. If there was no response, they were dead. Otherwise, they choked on it and died. It was quite convenient. After landing, I drank the mana potion I put in my mouth. After Elemental Tempest ended, countless elementals scattered, giving me blessings and blowing me kisses. I couldn't help but smile. I had heard that I would be able to see the elementals I wasn't connected to as I grew as an elementalist. It seemed that was true. Although they were still a bit hazy, I could somewhat recognize them. Why Yen Wawu SSI, what ability was that? Wasn't your ability lightning? You don't really think he'll tell you that, right? I responded to the female ranker's question and gave her a wink. Then, I threw away the empty potion bottle. Although Elemental Tempest took 50% of my mana, if I prepared a potion beforehand and drank it in time, most of my mana would be restored by the time I was done. Since I could reduce the potion's cooldown time, it was quite smart. What an enviable ability. Mm. Shockwaves are good too. That's enough chattering. Get ready. Wyatt shouted acutely. Since we would be going up against AS rank dungeon boss, it was understandable. Plus, she was likely preparing for the potential event raid as well. Shin, they'll use blessing again. Yeah. 
Thanks, Ludia. Pleem, get ready to sing again. Ludia stuck her staff into the ground and began to chant a holy scripture with a silvery voice. The fatigue that had unknowingly built up disappeared and my body brimmed with strength. It was truly mysterious. Even after her world fell and Ludia moved to earth, she still maintained the power of the god she believed in. Although I didn't think too deeply, I thought about the existences called gods once again. The boss is probably going to be a cyclops. After Latte breathes her black flame to decrease its resistance, we'll each use our strongest attack. The boss fight will start from there. Understood. The Cyclopes boss I can't even imagine what it would be. The party members began to prepare their attacks. Father's spear was vibrating since a while ago. I suspected that it was the new path of martial arts he created. Then, it finally appeared, seemingly out of nowhere. It just suddenly appeared in front of our eyes. Goo. It was over ten meters tall, and its red skin and ghastly eyes exuded an oppressive aura. As if just two arms weren't enough, it had an additional two for a total of four. It held a club in each hand. At the same time, Gluttony's spear began to vibrate. Eh. Wait, could it be? As a thought crossed my mind, it opened its mouth. Since it probably wasn't going to breathe flames, it was probably going to shout. Black Curse Breath. What a cool name. Before it attempted to fear the entire party, Lottie's poured black flames on it. The word pour was extremely suitable for her attack. Like tar, her flames stuck to its body, unpleasantly squirming around and burning its body. If she wasn't on our side, I would have been frightened out of my wits. Gook. It won't last long. ITLL reduce its attack power, movement speed, and resistance to everything. Why didn't you use that against the Drake? I couldn't back then. I acquired it after being with Hero MM. It seemed like Latte was embarrassed, but I didn't have the time to think about that right now. Waya was the first one to attack. Her flames were so white that they could be mistaken as light. Was that a universal shout? Her flame struck the Cyclops' chest, scorching it until its bones could be seen. Even more shocking was the fact that Lottie's tar was preventing it from regenerating. Father's spear attack then struck the same place. An explosion boomed and it trembled from the shock, coughing out a large amount of a blood. Father dodged its club swing and fell back, all the while shooting a condensed shockwave aura. Really? It just sounds lame. We don't need to all say the same thing. Ite, die. Hugh spear charge. I, am going too. Shield rush. The other members exploded out with their attacks. The Cyclops let out an enraged scream and tried to swing its clubs at them. Lottie's tar was slowly losing its effectiveness. Oh power of the earth, stop the sword of the mobs. Gook. Ludia's silvery chant rang out, and the Cyclops clubs halted in midair. Its wounded chest was wide open. Now. Lydia shouted. Her staff was radiating incandescence. I aimed my spear at its chest. I had long since finished turning it into a white lightning bolt. The chest wound burned by Waya and dug by father. I could even see its beating heart. D. E. Embarrassing. Almost as if my spear was being sucked in, it pierced its chest with a huge explosion of aura. The whirlpool of aura devoured its regenerative power and successfully blew up its heart. You defeated the event dungeon boss monster, Cyclops Lord. Two million gold is distributed evenly amongst party members. You received 250,000 gold. Kong Shin Nim's contribution is the highest. Choose your reward. 1. Shin killed it, now's our chance, everyone add a eh. It died. Just like that we perfectly cleared the forest of rage. 1. Cyclops Lord's Broadsword. 2. Cyclops Lord's Rags. 3. Half Elixir. 4. 1 million gold. 5. Cypress Dagger. 6. Cyclops Lord's Golden Eye. 7. Lump of Refined Blue Iron. 8. Death Blood Ring.